through a lifetime spent in the pursuit of knowledge, one question consumed me. How did our world come to be? The old ones perished a thousand years ago, triggering the extinction of all life. She showed me how it was reborn. A little outcast girl, ignorant of her own importance. Through her, I learned that life was only saved through a technological miracle. Zero Dawn. A terraforming system composed of nine subordinate functions. Each playing its part to reshape Earth from a barren rock to a lush landscape. Tended and protected by the machines. And with her, I learned the deepest secret of them all. The secret of her birth. That she is a clone of Elizabeth Subek, Zero Dawn's creator. Born to prevent a new extinction. Driven by Hades, a malevolent AI. Given sentience by a mysterious signal of unknown origin. And with a little help from me. She prevailed in a great battle at the city of Meridian. Becoming a champion for all humankind. But as useful as she has been, now, I must leave her behind. For as she strives to put right what Hades sundered, I have made a new discovery. One that heralds both destruction and opportunity. because of a terraforming system that's spiraling out of control. And only I can fix it. Only I have your genetic code. It won't be long before we hit the point of no return. And then, extinction. I've been searching for months for what I need. A backup of Gaia, the AI you designed to control the system. I'm walking under a brilliant night sky, through a field of flowers. And when I arrive at the center, I see you, Elizabeth, waiting for me, even though you've been dead for a thousand years. You're the closest person I've ever had to a mother.
And for a moment, I feel whole. But it never lasts. This world is your legacy, Elizabeth. I won't let it slip away. The valley below is my only remaining lead. My last hope to find the backup. I'll do whatever it takes to get it. I promise. <laughs> if it isn't Aloy, the savior of Meridian, anointed of the Nora. You know I hate being called that stuff. Well, consider it a punishment for running out on us the very same night we beat Hades. I grew up an outcast. Remember, I'm not much for parties. Yeah. But that one was in your honor. Just saying. So! What are we doing? Must be urgent since you left so fast. Delving into ancient ruins? Or maybe it has something to do with the Blight? Both, actually, but, um... I, I should... Oh, no. I've been tracking you a long way. It's okay. After everything you've done to help the Nora and my family, I swore an oath to help you. No matter what, you're stuck with me now. Like bark on wood. Okay, but if you're going to come with me, you'll need to be able to see what I see. <sighs> A focus? Never thought I'd get your second sight. I'll give you another one later and show you how to back up your data. Data? Information on the device. We've got a lot to cover. Um, I'll have to explain everything as we go. You see like this all the time? Since I was a little girl. Come on. Shall we? Grapes on the way here. We should find some medicinal plants. Stock up. So it's time for your first lesson with the focus. Sounds good. Let's get started. These plants don't look like the ones in the sacred lands. The focus helps you see the ones we need. Ugh. Bitter? Yeah, well, at least they make you feel better. All right, we should keep going. Might want to grab more of these plants along the way. Yeah, good idea.
Look there. More of the place. Some of the blight is... it's peeling off. Dead skin. Is that how it spreads? Ugh. Those ruins. That's where we need to go. I see a few ways down. What are we after, exactly? The backup? Well, um... It's an AI. It's, um, it's hard to explain. Think of it like a set of instructions that can fix the world. Sounds complicated. Noticed your, uh, traveling light these days. Yeah. Um, ran into some trouble on the way here. Still Spreads fast. Six months ago, the land was fine. Now it's everywhere. <coughs> Salvaging machine carcasses as usual. And there they go. Looks like they left a carcass behind. Better take a closer look. Someone took down this machine recently. Who else would come here? I don't know. We better craft some arrows of our own. There might be trouble up ahead. Good thing we already picked up some Ridgewood. All right, now to craft some arrows. Done. Me too. Arrows ready. There's a ladder, but can't reach it from here. Nothing a well-placed arrow can't knock free. That did it. Target the lock. After you. By the goddess. What was this place? The transmission, the, uh, message I found, didn't say. Only that a backup might be here. We need to find a way in. So, um, what happened after I left Meridian? Well, there was a fuss when people realized you were gone. But then some of us figured you only would have left if it were for something important. You were right about that. Well, it's not just poisoning plants. It's killing animals, too. Then people will get sick, too. And starve. We're not gonna let that happen. Find anything good? A few supplies.
Down this way. Get to the grass. Never seen one of those before. Me neither. Those dead machines have it on alert. How do you want to handle it? The focus can help us. We can scan the machine before we make our move. Okay. Give it a second. Okay. See how parts of it are glowing? Those are its weak spots. Another one's coming. How does the focus know all that? It reads data on the machine. Like a hunter studying its prey? Yeah, kind of. So, after the fuss over me leaving, what did everyone else do? Well, as soon as the celebration was over, my mother led the rest of the Nora home. The Sun King put his people to work rebuilding the city, and I set out to find you. Someone shot this machine, too. Another ladder. You said you've had a focus since you were a child, right? Yeah. I found my first one when I fell into a ruin. Got the others from an old cache not long ago. It's good to have extras. facility. Far Zenith? I, I know they made some tech trades with Zero Dawn, but why would they have a backup of Gaia? Please register with reception for the tour. I guess they want us to check in with them. Please hold for identity scan. Access denied. Please wait here for personnel to assist you. Dr. Sobek. Okay. I guess they weren't on great terms with Elizabeth. Well, let's find a way in. Please hold for identity scan. Access denied. Credentials not recognized. I guess it doesn't like me either. Should be able to pry this open.
There's climbing gear. Guess someone dropped in from above. Whoever left this here might have also shot those machines we found earlier. So where are they now? Ugh. What's that stench? Entire camp. I doubt. They must have come here to Del for scrap. Acid. That explains the smell. And it looks like something big came in from above. Crashed right through the camp. And then through the wall. I should take a look at the rubble in that gap. Whatever came through here brought this down as it went out. If I can dislodge some of the debris, we might be able to squeeze through. Maybe I can find something to help in the camp. Aloy, over here. I think I got something. It's some kind of Osram prototype, I think. This hook looks like it can latch onto things. And this gear pulls it back. Hmm. It looks broken, but maybe we can repair it. Hook it to the debris. And pull it out. That could work. The focus can help us search the camp and identify anything we can use to fix the tool. My focus picked up a couple of things to check out. Poor guy. Acid burned right through his armor. Part of a machine could help fix the gears. Machine cable. Stronger than rope. All right, I think I have what I need to repair the tool. Or maybe even make something better. You could use this workbench. There. A uh, pole caster. Now to test it on the debris. There's an easy way out of here. I should scan the area. We have to find a way to keep going. What's this? Huh. What's this thing for? Whoa. Good morning. I'm Oswald Dalgard, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Far Zenith. Forget what you think you know about us. Our truth is simple. We say reach for the stars, even if you have to cross 8.6 light years of space to get there. Please proceed into the auditorium, where we'll unveil our plans. I wonder what's in this auditorium. I better guess we'll find out. Oh, I might be able to get up there. I don't think I can reach that ladder from here.
Wow, that works. That pole caster is useful. Too bad there's only one. Don't worry, I'll find you another way up. Okay, I gotta drop the ladder for Varl. There you go, Varl. Thanks. sapiens us we have always pushed the boundary as explorers pioneers trailblazers and now far zenith is taking the next leap into the future that's why we're proud to have resurrected the odyssey when our governments abandoned in orbit far zenith will actualize in less than a decade but that's only the beginning when the ship is complete, we will send the Odyssey and her crew where no one's gone before. The Sirius system. There, we'll create humanity's first off-world colony. The Odyssey may take 300 years to reach it. But when we look up at the night sky, we'll know they're on their way. And in the words of our founder, the late Peter Shinvumbe, the truest form of immortality is data corrupt. The playback stopped. The old ones could fly through the sky? Between the stars? Uh, well, yes, sort of. That ship, the Odyssey, it, it never made it to the other star. Something went wrong, and it blew up. Is that why Elizabeth gave them a backup of Gaia? For a colony? Public presentation file corrupted. Member recruitment file available. Do you wish to reactivate? Yeah, reactivate. Let's see what else they had to say. We all know the projections. Economic instability, new biocontagions, rampant AIs. How long before another catastrophe creates unacceptable risk for the world's elite? We here at Far Zenith believe, escape the inevitable. And so we reach for the stars. Now you've seen what we're building here. Infrastructure to support the Odyssey's construction. A state-of-the-art data center to facilitate rapid technological advancements. And you've seen how we're managing public perception. So invest and join us. Claim your birth on the Odyssey. Preserve your way of life beyond the concerns of Earth. Well, they were right about the world ending. They just didn't know how... yet. So everything they said back there about the next step for humanity... it was all a lie. 
These people only cared about saving their own skin. Yeah, well, didn't work out for them in the end. That Oswald guy mentioned a data center. There, the backup. It should be stored in there. Won't be able to swim across. I guess we'll have to find a way around. Come on. The wilds have really grown over this place. Thanks to calling some friends from underground. You take the left one. I'll deal with the one on the right. Okay. Moving up. I need to sneak up on it to take it out with my spear. Can't let it see me. I should scan it first. Check its patrol path. Sir, and stay out of sight. I can throw a rock to distract it. Get it into a position where I can sneak up and strike. Just have to wait for the right moment. down too.
to mention I noticed you have a new look these days <laughs> yeah I know didn't have a lot of time to shave when I was trying to catch up to you don't worry it's not permanent good sorry my whiskers offend you anointed looks like this little guy got caught up in the blight I couldn't escape I hope it didn't suffer long. The Osram must have used explosives against the machines. They managed to get a couple. <laughs> Looks like there was a barricade here. The machines must have broken through. this for later. Guess that Osiram didn't have a chance to use it. <laughs> Careful. Traps ahead. Huh. Might be able to disarm them. There. Managed to salvage some supplies. Dismantled it. And not blow yourself and up. Got more supplies. Looks like another camp. While we're here, maybe we can make some traps of our own. Might have been handy against machines. Good idea. Oh, uh, I don't have the right supplies to craft a trap. But it looks like the Osram shot off some machine parts. I might be able to scrounge up enough materials from them. I can use this. Okay. I should have what I need to craft a trap. There. Explosive trap made. If anything walks into one of those, it won't know what hit it. Over here. Aloy. I think I see a way up. Machine's head. Don't think they spotted us. I better scan that. I've seen this machine before. Scrounger. That's new to me. Let's see where its weak points are. Maybe we could place one of those traps you made in its path. <laughs>
Clear. Let's keep going now. You've been in a lot of old world ruins. Are they all like this? It's a big storm picking up out there. Yeah. And they're getting stronger. And more frequent. So the storms, the blighted lands, the rivers and lakes choked with algae. You were born to fix all that? Yeah. But I can only do it if I find that backup. I think we're winding our way around to the data center. We'll need to cut through that big building on the right out there. Hey, Varl. There's data here. You scan it with your focus. Hmm. This data... It mentions the tech that Far Zenith traded with Zero Dawn. It doesn't explain how they got a backup. I'll keep an eye out for more data. Let's see. Huh. A lot of glyphs. I'll tuck this away to study later. Like we've got to climb up. You okay? Yeah. Guess we won't be going that way. years old. Looks like some kind of meeting room. That door on the other side's locked. Onzu. The Zero Dawn terraforming system. The brainchild of Dr. Elizabeth Sobek. Empowered by nine subordinate functions, Gaia, the core of the system, is capable of advanced planetary engineering, an obvious advantage to our space colonization efforts. Operation Phase One. Establish an asset within Project Zero Dawn. Status complete. Phase Two. The asset will secretly beamcast a complete copy of Gaia and her subordinate functions to this facility's data center. If all goes well, Zero Dawn staff will remain completely unaware of the transmission. Risks. Discovery of this operation could result in Zero Dawn withholding the already negotiated Apollo database. Special care must be taken not to alert Travis Tate, the expert hacker in charge of Hades Protocol. In addition, 
extreme caution must be exercised in regards to Dr. Sobek herself. As one of the world's preeminent technologists, she may have instituted unforeseen security measures. A complete assessment is attached. This concludes the executive summary. I thought Elizabeth sent the backup here, but she didn't. Far Zenith stole Gaia. Aloy? Why does that woman look like you? Uh, um... It's okay, Prawl. We look alike because we're the exact same. Genetically identical. But she was one of the old ones. How can you be her? Because I wasn't born. I was made. By a machine. It's why I'm motherless, why I was cast out as an infant. I don't understand. What kind of machine can make a person? Remember when I said the backup is like a set of instructions? It's more than that. It's called Gaia. And for a long time, she cared for the world until she had to destroy herself. So she made me to bring her back. I'm the only one who can. And this place is my last home. You once said the goddess spoke to you when you went into All Mother Mountain. Was that this Gaia? Yes, but she's not the goddess, Laurel. There isn't one. How can you be sure? It sounds like she anointed you with a sacred task. <sighs> I've had a lot of time to figure this out. And you will too with the focus, but for now, the report said they were going to store the stolen copy of Gaia in the data center. So that's where we have to go, okay? Oh, look at that. Aloy, over here. I found something you could use. A weapon. Thanks, Marl. We should keep moving. After you. Down here. I think we're almost back outside. Good. Look, that must be the machine. It's in the same direction we're going. Do 
more damage Riddle to it Aloy. while it's riddle. Machine can take the cold. All of them are some delvers. And a lot of acid. That big machine must have attacked as they tried to escape. They didn't stand a chance. Looks like we can cross over here. So, you said this backup is the last hope. Yeah. All those places I've been these last few months, there were supposed to be more backups. But a thousand years ago, a guy named Ted Farrow purged them all. Was he part of Far Zenith too? No. He was worse. Machines patrolling ahead. We can tag them in a focus to keep track of them. here. Machine ripped right through the wall. What's in here?
There's a ladder in the back. So tell me something. Sona was really okay with you not going back to the Sacred Lands? As the Nora War Chief, she understood why I was obligated to follow you. But as my mother, she wasn't pleased. Is she ever pleased? I don't think I've seen her smile. Me neither. If they slaughtered all those Osirum, we'll never get through to the data center. There's no way to slip past them. They're too tough to fight head on. We could find a settlement, convince some hunters to help us. That would take weeks, and we don't have that kind of time. Maybe all we need is that shuttle to fall. That thing? How? We'll figure it out. Just wait here. Aloy! Trust me. And there she goes. Just need to get over to the shuttle to figure out how to make it fall into the basin. Huh? If I can make it to that tower, I should be able to find a way across to the shuttle. Reach it if I launch myself off that grapple point. Got it. Thank <laughs> you. 
That sounds good. tower down on to the next I won't be able to make that jump but there is a cave in here uh... well nowhere to go but up still holding together Looks like there are massive clamps holding the shuttle in place. Oh, I think there's a control console nearby. If I can release the clamps, the shuttle should fall right into the basin. Oh, great. More machines in my way. those machines down below. I'm gonna have to climb the tower to find a way to disconnect them. Now how to get up the tower? Scanning with my focus could help here.
creaking doesn't sound good. I had to detach those cables quick. Should be the right spot. There. That connector is holding the cables together. It should break if I shoot it. One down. I just have to climb higher and attach the second set of cables. Tower with killer machines waiting down below. there. There's the other connector. Target it first. Take this thing down fast! Track me! 
Lost ammo. Where my focus might find something I can use around here. Let's see what this can do. Dead. Finally. The data center should be straight ahead. I guess we're all gonna have to find another way there. Heal the blight. Restore Elizabeth's dream. But is it still there? Okay. I should find the server room. here.
Hello. Hi. Elizabeth? Travis Tate. Now, what's this we got here? A far as in the conspiracy to steal a copy of Gaia? And her subordinate functions? Naughty, naughty. You want me to handle this, Liz? Blasphemers! Brood of vipers! With a mighty head, I smite and pour troubles upon you! Aloy? The goddess. There is no goddess! I told you that already. That's not Gaia. It's not what I'm looking for. It's nothing but a fake! sharp bite sometimes, you know. But it was pretty amazing to see you fly off that tower and blow up the entire basin. The thing is, um, there's going to be more of that. I'm out of leads, Varl. But I, I have to keep searching. And fast, and whatever risks I have to take, I will. And it doesn't make sense to have someone with me. Someone who might get hurt. This is on me, Farrell. Nobody else. Hold on. Before, in Meridian, you said there was a man who helped you. Silence. You said you used to talk to him a lot about things you discovered from the old world, things no one else understands. And he gave you the lance you used to defeat Hades. He's gone, Varl. I haven't heard from him since the battle against Hades. Sure, but Spymaster Murad back in Meridian, he's good at finding people, isn't he? Varl, I... <sighs> Come on, it might work. Plus, you'll get to see some friendly faces again. <laughs> okay. I... I guess it's worth a shot. We've got a long walk ahead. Actually... I've got a better idea. Savior of Meridian has returned. You earned this welcome. You saved them. Not yet. In the name of the Sun King of Vard, a royal welcome for the champion. Make way. Murad, Aloy has an urgent matter to discuss. Dashain, that makes two of us. I've sent forth hunters for weeks. The sun fall all the way to the sacred land, searching for you. 
Something happened at the spire. Come. I'll show you. Watch your step. You saved us all, to be sure, but uh, we're still cleaning up the mess. It happened right after the solstice. We were able to explain it away, thank the sun. Otherwise, it might have caused a panic. One night, for less than half a minute, it glowed an angry red. From Meridian, it looked like a trick of the light. But those who were closer, atop the light, said it could not have been a reflection. Much to my dismay, they said the light rose up from the tower's base. From that. We left everything just as it was. What do you think happened? I don't know. The Spire's supposed to send out signals, messages, for the terraforming system. But Hades tried to use it to wake up ancient war machines. I was sure I cut the connection to that thing. Wait here while I check it out. Let us know what you find. I've got a bad feeling about this. I could pull this thing out of the house. Something was transmitted from the top of the spire. I guess I have to find a way up there. Uh, maybe I can jump to that ledge behind me. with me? That's... new. What did you find? Not done yet. But it definitely looks like the orb transmitted something into the spire. That can't be good. I guess I should be flattered by the statue. It feels wrong, especially when my job's only half done. Looks like a memorial. Honoring those who fell in the Battle of the Alight. Lots of brave people defended this place from Hades. Machine carcasses. Remnants from the Battle of the Alight. Legend. We were almost overrun by the machines Hades controlled. But we pushed through.
Now, how to cross over to the spire. <laughs> Should be able to get up there now. I thought Silence was helping me when he gave me his lance. But it looks like he tricked me. He transmitted something through the spire. Did he save Hades? If I can figure out where he sent it, I can track him down. Hopefully the transmission node at the top will tell me. Huh? Looks like this panel's ajar. Can I go up through the inside? An elevator? Let's see. I see you finally figured it out. To be honest, I'm surprised it took you so long to discover my rules. You read the lads to steal Hades. How could you be so reckless? Reckless? You're the one who tried to purge Hades before its precious knowledge could be... extracted. The mysterious signal that woke it, for example. But why don't obtain one of those Gaia backups you've been having such a hard time finding? If you knew, why didn't you just tell me? I've been having problems of my own these past six months, Leloy. The difference is, I've made progress. So once your anger at my entirely necessary deception has faded, why don't you come out here and find me in the Forbidden West and learn all that I've discovered? Oh, I'll come find you, all right. Yes. Well, and the coordinates make it simple enough. Even for you. went inside it, and it transformed, almost like the day of the battle. I can only be grateful that it's a stormy day. Few will have seen the tower change from Meridian. What did you discover? Hades. The danger didn't end here. It went into the Forbidden West. And I have to follow. I see. That can be difficult. The West is called Forbidden for a reason. A tribe of ferocious warriors controls much of it, the Tanakh, and they allow no trespassers past its border. That said, under the Sun King of Art, a fragile peace has been negotiated, and indeed, the next embassy will take place in a day or two on the edge of the frontier. Were you to attend the gathering under his auspices, the Tanakh might grant right of passage, instead of hunting you, 
and attacking on sight. Great, just what I need. More killers. Uh, the Sun King. Aloy, it's good to see you. You left in such haste. We never had a chance to properly thank you. Can, can we show the champion the spear now, please? It's a min. Quiet. It's true. We bear gifts. Decorum usually calls for a ceremony of offering at the palace. But I thought you would prefer a less formal occasion. Bring them, please. A Avad, this is all very kind, but I... Uthit. Vinasha. Quick. Better hand them over before she runs off again. Really? Must you? Try it on. That's beautiful. On behalf of all the citizens of the Sundom, may these tokens remind you of our eternal gratitude. Perhaps you'd like to spend more time with your friends. Come speak to me when you're ready to depart. I need to attach the Master Override to my new spear. Should be a workbench around here I can use. Shipments continue to arrive weekly from Cutcliffe. The sculptor wanted something even bigger, twice the size, covered in gold and jewels. But I was quite certain you wouldn't appreciate that. You were right. I'm sorry, Avad. It's good to see you. But I can't stay long. I see. I had hoped you'd remain in the city for a time. Perhaps at the palace. Meridian's still in danger. But it's bigger than that. To put things right, I have to go west. To Nox territory. By the sun, that's a Nox? Well, perhaps Murad already told you, but... After years of hostility, we've negotiated a truce, in hopes of a lasting peace. Another embassy will be held in just a day or two. When you say years of hostility, I assume you mean the Red Raids? Ah, yes. My favorite subject. I wouldn't ask if I didn't need to know. As you know, my father raided all the border tribes. The Asaram, Banuk, and Nora suffered greatly, resisting as best they could. But none fought back like the Tanakh. They rose up and assaulted our western front at Barren Light, sweeping us from their lands. Getting them to talk to us again after that was... tricky. What makes this coming embassy so special? Well, oh, just like today, it is special because of the guest. Our delegation will meet with the Tanakh just outside Baron Light. We'll give them treasure, and they'll return a prisoner. Fashav, one of our finest soldiers. Soldier? Don't you mean raider? No. Not in this case. Fashav is my cousin. Nothing like Helis and his ilk. He joined the Western Expedition with the hopes of reining in certain excesses. But he was captured during a heroic defense of our forward base at Cinnabar Sands has been held ever since. Your cousin, Vashav. How long has he been a Tanakh captive? Five years. Tanakh emissaries swear he is well, but I wonder. That tribe is renowned for its brutality. How did he survive? 
Well, I'll know soon enough. If you see him before I do, tell him that I await him in Meridian, where he belongs. If I see him, I will. How did you get the Tanakhs to talk again after the war? The same way I got you to talk. By giving gifts. <laughs> the Tanakhs like tiaras? <laughs> More like metals, spices, and relics looted during the fighting. We've met with them on several occasions, and the gifts seem to have eased the tension. But this coming embassy is the most important yet. The best sign we've had so far that the Tanakh want lasting peace. Edelman looks happy. Well, you got him out of Sunfall. Any happiness he has, he owes to you. He's turning into a fine young man. Which he'll need to be if he's to inherit the crown. Wouldn't the crown go to a son of yours first? <laughs> yes, well... I'd have to get married for that to happen. Murad keeps throwing noble matches at me. But... I find I'm always trying to make them into someone they're not. At any rate, I never aspired to the throne, and I don't wish to sit there forever. When Edaman comes of age, I hope to step aside. Free of the crown. I might finally be able to travel the world. Who knows? Perhaps even accompany you on one of your adventures. You make it sound easy. I, uh, I need to get going. Uh, one moment, Aloy. There's something I must ask you. Since you left, I've thought of little else. This isn't really the time. But it has to be. The way you left before, there's no way to know when I'll see you again. I'm not trying to stop you. Or hold you back. But I need to know. When your mission is over, will you return to Meridian? And stay? long enough for us to spend time to get to know each other properly, perhaps. Avad, the, the situation calls for a, a higher perspective. The threat I'm facing endangers not just Meridian, but a lot of other places too. A lot of innocent people. What happens between us... It's not important. At least... Not yet. You're right. I'm acting like a fool. It's supposed to be the king who calls for a higher perspective. Please accept my apology and my wishes for your success. Goodbye, Aloy. As always, our hopes ride with you. Yes, Aloy. Well? May the sun bless Dowager Queen Nasadi. Blessed champion. Itaman, what do you say? My humblest thanks to you, great champion, for delivering my mother and me from Sunfall, and for defending our holy city against the forces of shadow. Did I say right? You said it fine, Itaman. And you're welcome. Champion, will you teach me how to shoot like a real machine hunter? Itaman. I, uh... I have to go on an important mission, Prince. To save the world? Something like that. But when I come back, I could give you a few tips. It would be an honor. We owe you our lives, Champion. And we will not forget. May the sun light your way. Watch out for Thunderjaws, Champion!
Xavier, I hope all is well with you. That's part of the Deathbringer we defeated. This machine was the last line of defense for Hades. It dragged the orb up here and then nearly killed me, but... It's just a piece of scrap now. There, the workbench. Same time, same place. Uthid, Fanasha, thanks for being here. Wouldn't miss it, even if you did leave us hanging after the big battle. Fanasha, stop. She's here now, isn't she? For the moment, but I see that look on her face. She's got business to attend to, and it isn't in Meridian. You know, I didn't vanish before because I wanted to. I had- No, Huntress. Please, you don't have to justify yourself to us. You saved our butts. If you've got to go, go. With our blessing. Always. You both look like you're doing well. Mr. Shiny Pants here is now the Sun King's senior military advisor. That means people actually have to listen to him talk. May the sun bless their sorry souls. At least I say something of substance every once in a while. What was that? I just fell asleep while you were talking. And how about you, Vanasha? I've been looking after Nasadi and Edaman. Two parts bodyguard, one part... Bad influence. Huh. I was gonna say nanny, but I like your version better. I never pictured you as a nanny. Edaman must be special. Hold on now. I'm not entirely domesticated. Nasadi was the Mad Sun King's wife. She has enemies. I've had to foil a plot or two. Right. You can try to hide it, but inside, you're as soft as a silk pillow. Oh, you have no idea. Huh? Oh, dear. Uh, we were talking about Edaman? Yeah. Okay, I admit it. Edaman's cute. He's fun. And he looks up to me. I like him. Except when he forgets to wash his hands after hooking worms in that muddy garden behind a solarium. Blech. It's been months since I was in Sunfall. What's become of the Shadow Karja? <laughs> after you wiped out the Eclipse, there were hardly any priests or officers left to terrorize the little people. Avad offered amnesty to all who were forced to serve the Shadow. So the commoners cleaned out the Citadel and handed it back to him. The Sundom was unified. Avad wanted Uther to take command of the garrison there, but Captain Cudley here refused. Rumor has it that he wanted to stay close to me here in Meridian. <laughs> That's nonsense, of course. <sighs> well, I, I know. I know. You're out. Go! Away with you. Always an honor, champion. Always a pleasure. But please, Little Huntress, come back someday and tell us about your adventures. If I can't get in trouble, at least I can hear about yours. Finally gonna put your muscle where your mouth is? What? Master override installed. Plus, something new to store up and release energy. A uh, resonator. Should help in a fight. Are you ready to go? Or do you need a little more time? Uh, 
I better get going. And if I'm headed west, it sounds like I'll need rite of passage from the Tanakh, as you said. Where exactly is this embassy going to be held? Past the Daunt, the canyon that marks the western border of the Sundom. You'll find the fortress of Baron Light at its farthest edge. The embassy will take place just beyond its gates. It's a long march, a fortnight on foot. A couple of days hard riding should get us there. Actually, it might be better to rest here tonight. Head out in the morning. Of course. I'll arrange it. seen anyone use one of those to get around is that how I get to Baron light uh, yes I mean usually but not today uh, not yet and why is that well the daunt the whole valley it's infested with machines
I can handle machines. Oh, I'm sure you can, but uh, I'm under strict orders not to operate until the whistle down at Chain Scrape sounds the all clear. Look, I didn't come all this way just to stand around and wait. I'll crank that car down myself if I have to. Well, but then who would crank it back up? <laughs> fine, fine. Though, should anyone ask, it might be best to say you forced me. I see smoke, but not a lot of activity. Smoke's probably coming from something the machines wrecked. As for the quiet, well, there is a work stoppage in effect because of all the fuss. What sort of machines are causing the trouble? Nasty ones, and lots of them. Bristlebacks, they're called. The strangeness is, they're not native to the Dodge. Just showed up, all of a sudden. No hunters to kill them? Well, we've got hunters, just none that want to cross Olvent. Boss of Chain Scrape. He is self-appointed. Work stop, which was his idea. Yeah, well, I'm just passing through. Got an embassy to attend. You should have said that ain't gonna happen no time soon. What are you talking about? Hear that? That's your answer. Who is that? Karja Sun Priest. Cranked him down yesterday, about an hour before the machine trouble started. He's a very important man. So he says. That embassy at Baron Light, he's the one supposed to run it. Ah! <sighs> Great. If you don't do as I say immediately, the Sun King himself shall hear of your insolence. Thanks to you, I was forced to spend the night shivering in the tent, exposed to attack. I might have died. Oh, me you refuse to transport, but not this... this... what? This Nora girl? This savage? Besides Scallywag? Wadis. That's Aloy. Studious Wadis? Aloy? You know, savior of Meridian? Really? Well... That lessens the insult, I suppose. I came here for the Embassy at Baronlight. Way I hear it, so did you. Well, not with the valley infested. And so did Aramon proclaim the Sun Priests most precious and worthy of safekeeping. See, Scripture. I shall head to Baron Light when the captain of the Vanguard tells me the way is clear, and not a moment sooner. Fine. Captain's a friend of mine, you know? Where is Erend? Wouldn't mind speaking to someone a little more action, a little less... scroll. Wadis. Studious Wadis. Studious Wadis sent Erend and another vanguard out at daybreak to clear the way. And so at daybreak... Hey! Shh. Down the valley, then? Yeah. Said they'd check the ruins on the left bank for tracks. Take it from there. Okay. I hear there's a work stoppage. Any way to upgrade my gear? I'll bet the smith and chain scrape would let you use his workbench. As for the bristlebacks, you might want to craft some acid arrows. Hitting their canisters with those will take them down quick. Thanks. I'll find Aaron and I'll bring him back. Hey! Where do you think you're going? What? To the top of the ridge. To wait in safety. Sorry. Operators under strict orders. No passengers till the whistle blows, right? That's right. <laughs> Best start cranking. <laughs> Why? Why? Joraf, would you kindly escort Studious to Chain Scrape and wait for me there? You got it. I will find Erend, and I will help clear a path. But after that, no more excuses. Baron Light. Embassy. If such be the will of the sun, 
It will be. Trust me. I gotta find Erend. But it might be good to hit Chain Scrape first and upgrade my bow. If you'll excuse me, I need to contemplate. I'll get us packed up and move us along. Stash. Those machines must have torn through this camp. This valley definitely isn't safe.
can climb up this cliff. I wonder if there's anything interesting at the top. use of this. Your watchtower. I don't know what's inside. Like a good die. Okay, almost there. some kind of lens. Guess I'll keep it for later. I can almost see the entire fat. Huh? Drew said I could get my bow upgraded in there. I'd be able to tinker with my other gear, too. If I find what these machines are made, I might learn how to override them.
gonna see my stash later. Did the bristlebacks do this? Outlander approaching. Is that the savior? Want to come in, savior? Welcome to Chainscrape, Savior. Open up, guys. Jor of Sorters. Good enough for me. By the forge. Petra? Aloy, what are you doing here? About time there was something worth looking at in this dump. It's nice to see you too. And not a moment too soon. Come on. I... Damn brewery's the only thing I can count on in this place. Yeah, I heard. Machines, work stoppage. Oh, those are just the latest malfunctions. Chain scrape's always been a few tools short of a kit. And right there is the biggest tool of all. Not our land, not our problem. The bristlebacks are everybody's problem. Roland. You've heard of him. Yeah. But he's a story best told over a cold beer. Uh, Petra, Petra. I'm just passing through. I'm headed west. Oh. There's an embassy at, at Baron Light I need to make happen, and then I keep moving. Ah, of course. Bigger gears to grind. Well, flame hair, good to see you. You've got to move on. Petra. But if you want a cold beer and a few laughs with an old friend, come find me at the brewery. Your choice. Well, this old one guy sounds like trouble. Maybe Petra could use some support. But first things first, I need to find that workbench and upgrade my bow. Workbench is free if you need to tinker with that gear. Shop looks closed. Yep. Can I still use the workbench? I ain't gonna stop you.
smartest man to ever stand oh. exactly. Like someone around here worth talking to. This should be useful. Now I just need to find Aaron and help him clear the bristlebacks. Don't go running off too far. How am I supposed to work with a hammer in this thing? Cool. Better worry about that. that. Till Alvin blows that whistle, no one's working. <laughs> Shop's closed, Red. You're welcome to use the work here. Figures we be round, round. Red hair. Didn't know I was that awesome. Hammering tongs. Mister, over here. I am most certainly so. I'll come find you later. Why else would one leave the glory? Hey, Mildef. Mildef. I took some of your stew last time I went into the wild. Kept me going for a week. Felt like I could have put a strider in a sleeper hole. Enjoy it while it lasts. Sounds like you're serving up some uh, impressive provisions here. <sighs> Not again. You can have the discount too, but you'll have to come back later. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oven didn't send you? No. Oh, my apologies. It's just that his minions won't stop pestering me. <sighs> now I've even worn out my special grill. Since I'm in the midst of a crisis, perhaps you could skip to what it is you wanted? Some of your food? Of course. Are Alvin's people causing you problems? Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals, not trouble. How did you end up in Chainscrape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. Where there's a town, there's a tavern. I was in need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. Guess they like my food. More than ale. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could use some of that. I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But? But my special groove griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I can do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? For the ingredients. A few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in a scrounger pile if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. <laughs> You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way. 
Assuming you're as much a hunter-gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildiff. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. What happened to you? That damn mine is what happened to me. <clears throat> it won't be the last injury if Olven keeps shoving those tongs into those tunnels. What mine? Northeast of Chain Scrape, where the river ends. I told Corvin we should stop when the first cave-in happened, but <sighs> Olven probably threatened to cut off her pay. Or worse. How about you slow down and take me through it? You mentioned you were injured in a cave-in. Yeah, <clears throat> a couple days ago. That's how I hurt this blasted leg. <laughs> Corvin and the others were opening a new vein while I was checking on an older one. As soon as their blast hit, the tunnel I was in collapsed. Might have dodged it if I wasn't running on barely a spark of sleep. We were pushing too hard and too fast. And you're afraid Corvin and the others might not be as lucky if it happens again. Mm-hmm. Hit the nail right on the head. How come Olven's in charge? Don't these mines belong to the Karja? Try telling Olven that. He brought in all the backing to get them open. Might as well own them. <laughs> Fire and spit. You ask him. He owns us as well. Who's Corvind? He's our foreman. And a damn good one. The kind that knows how to deal with management when it gets unreasonable. But Olvind... <laughs> his demands go beyond unreasonable. Corvin's been doing his best to appease him. He even blamed himself for my injury when it was Olvin who ordered the extra shifts. Sounds like a good guy. That's why we all put up with the long hours and lousy conditions. But if the whole mine becomes unstable... I'd rather suffer Olvin's wrath than die buried in rubble. I could check in on your crew, if I'm in the area. I... would appreciate that. Thank you.
What do you want, Albert? Some kind of payment? My dear magistrate, you think I can be bought? If you want that whistle blown, all you have to do is have your soldiers remove the bristlebacks and sign the concession decree. Face it, what other choice do you have? <clears throat> Hi. Savior, what auspicious timing. Might we discuss a matter of importance to the Sundom? We might. Later. Very well. I shall be waiting. So, the savior herself. Walloper of Durval, gutter of youth. Uh, maybe. I've heard many tales of your beauty and heroics, my fierce lady warrior. Olfant Freeholder, at your service. So, what could have dragged you away from the fine silks and wine of Meridian to this smudge of a settlement? Your saviorly attention must be needed elsewhere. I'm here for the embassy and- The embassy? Why, well, uh, by the forge. Ah, greater gears for greater matters. Guess that means you'll be moving on. Once I've dealt with any problems around here that need my saviorly attention. Ah, the bristlebacks, of course. Got to get rid of them if you want that embassy to take place. Well, best get to it, hey? And off you go. Not so fast. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the magistrate. Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble? Ha! Born with a hammer in hand, I was. Nobody handed me anything or dropped opportunity into my lap. Everything I've achieved, I've done on my own. And where is this hammer now? The uh, burden of leadership forced me to set it aside. The Karja risk nothing while demanding that good Osram gamble with their lives out there. Someone had to step up and say no more. You ordered the work stoppage? Indeed I did. We're laborers, not soldiers. Until the Karja clean up their mess and give us the fair deal we deserve, I'm not risking Osirum lives! Fair deal? You mean your concession decree? <laughs> it's not my decree. It's on behalf of all the good Osirum laborers of this land who do all the backbreaking work, while only the Karja reap the rewards. All we're asking for is the ability to share in this prosperity for a land worked by the people, for the people. Right. And just how much would be your share? Only an amount appropriate to my contributions to this community, uh, of course. If Chain Scrape is on Karja land, shouldn't a Karja be in charge? Who appointed you? The sensibilities of good Osram folk, of course. You think a Karja can head this whole venture? Ha! Ah! The Magistrate can barely make the trek from Baron Light without losing a few screws. So you have no real authority then? People only follow you because you say so. Loudly. Anyone who has followers has authority. I've been with Chain Scrape from the beginning. I mean, I'm practically its founder. And its honest folk know I'm indispensable to its success. You said you founded Chain Scrape. Somehow I doubt that. Practically founded, I said. I alone saw its potential when it was just a smattering of tents in Baron Light's shadow. I invested in the mine, convinced some friends back home to do the same, and here we are. You could say Chain Scrape is what it is thanks to me. Oh, so you're not just standing around and profiting off everyone else? Not at all. Sure, I make a little return on my investment here and there, but my main priority, as it was from the beginning, is to look after the well-being of these... Honest, working Osram. Where's the whistle? Right in the middle of town, but with the threat out there, I'm not endangering innocent Osram lives. I'm going to clear out the bristlebacks. And when I'm done, this valley is going to get moving. If that's what it takes. Until then, I'll keep looking after the safety of these good folk. Just be ready to blow the whistle.
Better see what that Karja magistrate wanted. I bet he's in the tavern. You wanted to speak to me? Well, you know better than anyone it's a dangerous world out there, and not just against machines. Name's Oderg. This here's my training pit. Best place to practice close combat this side of the Forbidden West. Say, I wonder who'd win in a fight? You, the savior of Meridian, champion of the East, or the Enduring, master of the West? Who? The Enduring. A legendary Tanakh fighter, the master of masters. I've heard the Tanakh have training pits just like this one. It's how the warriors get so fierce, see? And only the very best from the pits get to train with the Enduring. So to find the Enduring, I should look for these training pits if I'm ever out that way? You'll have to go far if you do. The Tanakh are split into three clans. Three clans, three capitals, three training pits. My guess is you'd have to beat all of them if you want to train with the Enduring. If the Tanakh don't kill you on sight, that is. But that's a far spark in the wind. As for right now, I also offer challenges to test your fighting skill. Who would I be fighting exactly? You? Well, I know you're the savior and all, but you have to beat all the others first to challenge me. Rules are rules. We only use dual blades and practice arrows, mind. These drunken fools would run themselves through otherwise. You'll have to leave everything but your spear and practice arrows at the gate. But I'll look after your gear, not to worry. So, what do you say? Up for some training? <laughs> I might be. That's what I like to hear. doesn't last forever. That spear can give you the edge in battle. Keep energizing it and then your enemies. Triggering those energy blasts should help you vanquish your opponents. from my stash when I need it. Is that a tripwire? Whole area's worked with them. Hey! You! Make it worth your while if you kill these scroungers! That's always something. Hold tight! I'll see what I can do! Try luring them into the tripwire!
Thank the forge you showed up. Tripwire's handy, but machine hunting's a youngin's game. Come on over. Let me give thanks proper like. Practiced hunter. Took you less time to kill those scroungers than vanguards to kill one bristleback. So the vanguards came through here? Yeah, just a bit ago. Took down that bristleback, headed south. But then those scroungers showed up to carve the carcass, as they do. Then another bristleback ran through. I'm telling you, it's crazy around here. So the vanguard went south? Probably. This whole valley is swarming with them. The Vanguard seemed dead set on getting rid of them. I see. Hold on there, Red. If you're gonna go chasing across the Daunt, you're gonna want a Tripcaster. Not just any Tripcaster. One of my make. Free of charge. Workmanship looks solid enough. Yep. Uh, been tweaking the design since I left Chain Scrape. More room to tinker out here and less chance of, well, accidents. Did something happen in Chain Scrape? <laughs> well, like someone. Let me guess. Elvind. <laughs> Back when I had a place in town, he took a real interest in my wares. Kept pressing for the Elvind discount. I said no. He didn't like that so much. I can't prove it, but that chuff bucket set my workshop on fire. Felt it best to put some distance between us after that. Cable car operator told me the bristlebacks just appeared yesterday. Do you know anything about them? How is old Karn? Back in the day, me and him got into all sorts of trouble. There was this one time that... Anything about the bristlebacks? No. Nope. Karn said true. I just showed up and ran amok. Lucky for me, I've got you and the Vanguard swooping in time to time to save my backside. I should get going. Thanks for the tripcaster. While you're blasting bristlebacks, I think I'll head down to the hunting grounds. Did you know they have a tripcaster trial? Come by later if you want to try it out. Maybe. After I get things under control. So Aaron headed south. Should be able to pick up his tracks with my focus. I can grab this from my stash later. Trunks headed up the hill. Parents? 
No focus can help me follow them. Let's see what this needs. Sounds like someone's putting up a fight. His prison backs are everywhere. Another one down! Now this! This is what I was forged for. No ledgers to fill. No boring mid-afternoon patrols. Just a hammer. Just the fight. Aloy? Aaron! Handle the rest. Those bristlebacks have acid canisters on their backs. It should trigger a chain reaction if I hit them with acid arrows.
<laughs> Caught me at my best, as usual. Well, you did the hard part. I just took care of the stragglers. How bad is it? Uh, this? Ah, who needs ribs, huh? <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Huh. Okay, well, I, I know you didn't come all the way to the Daunt just to watch me get wrecked. So what's the story? I need the embassy to happen. So I can head west. Errand, what I did at the Spire... What we did... It didn't end the threat. It just slowed it down. There's still more to do. Really? <laughs> well, that's great. I, I mean, yeah, not the threat's not over part. That's not so great. But, but hey, what? whatever you're up against, your spear, my hammer, just like old times. Oh. Erend, I need the embassy now. I can't wait for you to heal. Couple of days rest, if that. Actually... Even if you weren't hurt, what I have to do, it's... It's better if I do it alone. Alone? <laughs> now that figures. Erin! Oh. I hate to interrupt the romance, but I'm pretty banged up here. I Don't blow your blaze, I'm coming. Oh, this just keeps getting better. Huh. Listen, I'll go to Baron Light, get patched up. If you want this embassy to happen, we're gonna need this sun priest, Studius Wadis. Oh, I know him. I'll clear the Valley of Bristlebacks, then send Wadis to Baron Light. I'll catch up with you there. Well, I guess that's sort of like a goodbye. I'm sorry? You? Sorry? <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, that'd be a first. Where is this coming from? Hey, just, you know, forget it, yeah. Oh, it's nothing. It sounds like something. All right, fine. Now, after the battle at the Spire, you, you took off, you left without so much as a handshake. I mean, people like me, we fought and bled at your side, Aloy. You just, or you just disappear? What kind of person does that? Erend, I left when I did, how I did, for a reason. A good one. Oh, thanks for sharing. Listen to me. Life on Earth is in danger, and only I can save it. What are you talking about? Exactly what I just said. Everything living is going to die unless I... fix a piece of technology created by the Old Ones. And time's running out. Well, I... Yeah, I guess that's the reason, all right? <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, Errand! By the forge. Yeah, I guess that's my cue. Maybe I should go with you to Baron Light. No, no, hey, you... You need it elsewhere, obviously. We'll make it without you. You'll have to handle that one on your own. We'll only slow you down. I said we're good, Aloy. Oh, ha. You go on ahead. What are you standing around for then? This will be in my stash when I need it.
a ruin from the old world. I could find something interesting inside. Mighty thankful to you, Savior. Just Aloy is fine. Aaron mentioned you're not one for fancy titles. You're Vanguard. Well, here to escort Bardis' delicate behind to the embassy. If we can get rid of these bristlebacks. Captain said to keep an eye on Chainscrape, then these ugly lugs showed up. Gave the first one a good beating. But didn't quite have time to roll out of the way when it fell. Told you it wasn't a good idea to eat that much before heading out. I should probably get going. <laughs> Now, if you see any more of these bristlebacks... I'll make sure to roll out of their way. Might want to take some of these with you as well. They're handy in a pinch. Thanks. Stay safe, Aloy. giving off the signal. I could head over there, check it out. I'll stash this away for later. Exactly with where it was taken, my focus can fill in the rest. There's the quarry Thurlis mentioned. And it's full of bristlebacks. Less machine. Those asses spit us brought friends.
thing crawl. There. Corey's safe. Stranger, come on over here. We gotta talk. Over here. I don't know what Anora's doing out here, but consider yourself old. We tried to hold off and wait for the vanguard, but one of them bristlebacks charged us. Next thing you know was a full-fledged fracas. Is everyone okay? We lost some good people. But we would have lost the whole quarry without you. Well, at least it's quiet now. Your ears ought to be ringing with a quarry at work. But Chain Scrape's whistle ain't blowing, so we're stuck picking up the pieces. Do you need the whistle to get back to work? Me and my crew were just little cogs out here. Can't lift a hammer till Olven blows that thing. Cause if we work without his say-so, he'll ban us. And my people have been through enough. Olven holds that much power? He's got the money and connections to snuff our fires for good. Almost feels like we stood a better chance with the bristlebacks. What are you and your crew working on? We're supposed to be working Olven's claim, digging out stone to show our barren light. But the work stoppage and the bristlebacks cut us short. Never seen those blasted things in a dawn before. Where in Forge Fire did they come from? I'm not sure. At least not yet. I need to get going. Stay safe. Thanks to you, that might actually be possible today. I think I've cleared out most of the bristlebacks. Chain Scrape can get back to work now. I'll go give Olvent the good news. Vladis too. Then maybe this embassy can finally happen. Get it from my stash later. Look around with my focus. I match the Vista Point image. It looks like the building in the image might have been near a river. Maybe there used to be a bridge nearby? Bridge. Maybe it's the same one from the image. I could try to line it up around. There it is! Oh. Completing the image unlocked a data file. It looks like these Vista points were made by <sighs> Miriam Technologies. That was Elizabeth's company. I wonder if I can find more of them out in the wild. ruin from the old world. I could find something interesting inside. Okay, what do we have in here? Uh, 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 looks 
like this door needs some kind of key module. Maybe there's one in the ruin? Some data survived. There's a code for the locked door in this data. But I still need to find a key module. The crate. I should have spoken. Okay, gotta find a key for the door. the ledge above now. Guess I'll have to find another way up. Lead. <laughs> the key module. This key fits. There. Um, looks like this needs a code, too. I think some of the data I picked up might help. What is this thing? 
I'll hold on to it for now. Children's could teach me how to live with these machines. Get Elvin to blow the whistle, then Bodies to bear might. Hello! If I'm drunk, you! Look at her! Looking sharp as ever! You know what we need? Proper survey of the battle. Not again! <laughs> hey, was Are you finally gonna put your muscle where your mouth is? Walk that careless old shop. Still here, I see. I cleared out all the bristlebacks. Oh, you did? Now that you've recovered from your shock, time to blow the whistle. Oh there, not so fast. I'll have to send someone out to confirm the kills. Make sure the valley is safe again. It shouldn't take more than a day or two. <sighs> no, you blow the whistle now. These are innocent Osram lives we're talking about here. Surely the delay- Either you do it now or I will. Ah, I knew you could do it! Friends, gather round. The savior of Meridian has done now it again. What? The bristlebacks are defeated! You. What? Sound the whistle. Chain scrape is open for business! Terrific. Yay. And Olvind has agreed to personally pay every worker their lost wages. Yeah! That's where I like it! Yeah! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Yeah! Don't you have an embassy to get to? Yeah. I guess I do. Well, the chain scrapes back to work. Merchants should be open to trade. I should see if they have anything useful before I send Wadis off to Baron Light. Better see what that Karja magistrate wanted. I bet he's in the tavern. Alvin must be.
brought out only the good stuff for you, Red. Seeing as you got that whistle blowing. Hey, I've been waiting to get my lucky hammer fixed for days. You haven't done anything useful like getting rid of any bristlebacks, though, have you? Take your time. I promise you won't be disappointed. Come back anytime. Now can I get this fixed? I can fix your tools. Afraid there's no fixing you. Like someone in need of new art. <laughs> The way to Baron Light is clear. Get moving. You're not Aaron Vanguardsman. I will move only when the captain when said- When I cleared out all the bristlebacks, which I have. Captain's orders. So they're okay? Banged up, but breathing. And waiting up ahead for you. But, but I, I was supposed to have three escorts. I'm off to Baron Light, buddies. Like Aloy said, captain's orders. You can stay here. Abandoned to the riffraff? I think not. Guess you're coming with me then. See you there, Aloy. done, the embassy can finally get underway. If I can get through it, I'll be able to track down silence. Hades. <sighs> Maybe even a Gaia backup. Guess I could head straight for Baron Light. Or poke around the donut center first. And maybe take Petra up on that drink. Savior, thank you for taking the time, and my condolences that you had to endure Olvan's bloviating. I've dealt with worse. That sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely let Bristlebacks into the dawn, it's, it's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. How did the Bristlebacks get into the Daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. 
But unless they have wings, I don't know about. I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. Look, if you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olvent up. What is this concession decree that Olvent wants? He wants the Sundom to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram Holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess, because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. <laughs> Overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor, is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Ulvind blasting hot air all the time? Ulvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. <sighs> now I'll find a way to live with him. I have to. How does blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks help Ulvind get his concession? Look around. This may be the Sundom, but chain scrape is all gears and rust and bad ale. Claiming that the Karja loosed the bristlebacks in order to intimidate Osaram laborers into obedience. Well, let's just say no one here has forgotten the atrocities of the mad Sun King. Even with the valley working again. Alvant hopes he can stir up enough resentment against the Karja to call for a strike. And if the Osaram refuse to work, unless the concession is signed, you won't have a choice. Correct. The reconstruction of Baron Light must continue. You said the Bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking, then. If you learn the truth, maybe Ulvant will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun, and maybe then he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. I don't know. Hey, Ray. Change your mind about Fancy that a game of strike. <laughs> to revel in some strike, sister? Let me set the board. I was just passing by, I... Mm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set, a Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. Let's start off simple. The Tanakhs like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, 
about their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round, so go ahead and pick a second machine. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine's combat power against the opponent's. A machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine is standing on and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. And your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now, some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. That's about it for your turn then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine. But sometimes that can overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time, and I'll show you what I mean. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. 
That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor. Though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. You know I've lost my fair share of pieces after a <laughs> night of machine hunting or brew hopping. <sighs> no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. I'll see you later, Aloy. Come for that beer after all, eh? Here, sit down. Get a pint in her hand. Wasn't expecting you to swing by. Since when do I do what's expected? Ha! There's that spark. Fire and spit. Uh, fire and spit. <sighs> That's a blast from the bellows. Won't fix the forge, but at least I can forget about my troubles for a while. Like what? Well, things aren't as bad since you got this place running again. But we still got Olven grading the gears about his concession decree. If you don't put that down, I'll come over there and show you how that game ends. Anyway, right now, I'm just worried about those refugees out from Sunfall. To come all this way enduring Forge knows what. Shadow Carja refugees. What are they doing in the Daunt? Mm, looking for a new home, I gather. They're camped out by an old trailhead, southwest of here. And therein lies the problem. A stormbird crashed up on the cliffs last week, and Tallinn Cleanbrokers had his eye on the salvage ever since. But the refugees have barred entrance. Mustn't interrupt their sun-scorched ritual. Something about finding a twilight path. Huh. I never heard them talk about that before. Yeah, well, these particular Shadow Karja are an odd bunch, but overall they're peaceful folk. Not that it matters to Talland. He'll crack some heads to get to that salvage. Maybe you could swing by, convince him to set up camp somewhere else? So the bristlebacks in the daunt. <sighs> Where did they come from? That's the thing. No one rightly knows. They just showed up one day, rampaging around the valley like they exploded out of a forge. <sighs> Lost some good people. But bless the bellows, you cleared them out and got this place working again. That put a dent in Olven's plans. Now, if only there were some way to smash them all together and run them out of town. But how could Bristlebacks and the Daunt help Olven? Two words. Concession decree. Since no one knows where the bristlebacks came from, Olvind has taken to blaming the Karja for him. He's hoping to dig up enough old resentments to get a strike going until the concession's signed. This is just his latest attempt. He's been trying to rile up the workers since the day he rolled into town. And people actually believe him? Lots of folks suffered at the hands of the Mad King during the Red Raids. Give him half a reason, they'll blame the Karja for anything. <sighs> Damn Karja slavers. I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back. But realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. 
You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's gotta be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. What else can you tell me about the Shadow Carja refugees? Well, they don't call themselves Shadow Carja for one. At least, not anymore. They're some other brand of sun crazed. But whatever side of the sun they're on, they're peaceful through and through. Don't seem to want for nothing except a place to live, pray, and just enough food to keep from starving. So they're just camped outside by a trail, blocking entry to a wrecked Stormbird, waiting for... what, exactly? Don't rightly know, but I'll tell you this. Should they ever wise up and salvage it, a Stormbird heart is worth a lot. And if they get there first, then by Ostrom Law, it's theirs. Not that Tolan Cleanbrokers ever lost sleep over any law-breaking. Who is this Tolland clean broker? Just some chuff huffing pawnsman. Got a shop here in town. Lived in chain scrape since there was a chain scrape. He and Alvin go back a ways. Like a pair of coals and a campfire, those two. So Tolland works for Alvin? Ha! <laughs> Alvin might think so. But Tolland scrapes up his own scams. And he ain't the type to let a few refugees get between him and Stormbird salvage. So about Olvind. Around here, everything's about Olvind. How'd he end up in charge? He got here early, like a squirrel smelling a fat nut. He knew rebuilding barren light would need stone and timber. So he jangled purses all over Mainspring, getting investors to front claims on anything in the Daunt that might be worth a damn. Thing is, all the bankers back home know that this is Karja land, and the Sun King can revoke those claims at any time. That's why he's desperate for the Magistrate to sign off on a concession decree. Well, if I'm up that way, I'll talk to the refugees. Try to convince them to move. Much appreciated. They have it rough. Don't need Tallinn making it rougher. Petra said Tallinn has a shop here in Chainscrape. I could have a word with him first. out the Karja. Never heard it put that way before. What do you want? Heard you've been hassling refugees up by the cliffs. Yeah, well, you heard wrong. There's salvage up there. A storm bird. Nailed it myself with the harpoon here in town. Not an easy shot if I do say so myself. That clipped its wing, and it crashed into the old tower up there. Killed it quick. Yeah, so if anyone's hassling anyone, it's the Shadow Karja filth that's blocking the way up to my claim. And you're ready to crack some skulls to get to it? No need. It's a raggedy bunch. Probably all starved before I have to lift a finger. We'll see about that. Oh yeah, we will, won't we? Now shop's closed to Karja lovers. On your blasted way. Sorry, I'll be right with you. Uh... Okay, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's overkill. It's a weapon! Kill is the point. Not if it blows the user's arm off! Oh, just, just, just stop talking! Where are we? Ah! <clears throat> so, uh... You, you look like someone who's always searching for a new weapon. 
Am I right? Actually, I... Ugh. But you're just nuts! I am with a customer! I... I'm not a customer. I got it! Triple the powder! It'll blow a strider sky high! Ba boom One shot kill. Guaranteed. Uh... Maybe I am. Then you are in the right place at the right time, Red! How would you like to be the proud owner of the world's first machine-enhanced... Explosive, done-in-one, machine-wrecking... Yet perfectly safe... Javelin Thrower. Are you two from around here? Nah, the claim. Dad sent us out west in search of some unknown opportunity. Said we'll know it when we see it. Sounds like you had other ideas. Let's just say that opening another trading post for my parents isn't how I want to make my mark in this world. <sighs> I imagine traveling alone must be nice. So she's your partner? My apprentice. And my sister. She's why we're out here. There was an incident. Another incident. Involving explosives? Ba boom! And Dad's precious homebrew. He shipped us out the next day. Huh. Tell me more about this weapon of yours. I saw a scroll when I was a kid by some Karja scholar who wandered out west. I had a scary drawing of a Tanakh warrior hunting with a kind of javelin thrower. Effective? Yes. Basic? Undoubtedly. But coming out here made me remember it. And I am on the brink of vastly improving the tool's archaic design. Whereas I will perfect it. I can use machine parts to enhance the user's throw, increase the projectile's velocity. While Boomer here is adamant that enhancing the projectile is better. Namely with explosive tips. Boomsticks. Why not both? That... could work. There's one small snag. I need the parts to make the first working model. Well, for starters, I'll need charger horns. Intact. Yeah, that. Just be sure to shoot them off before the machine goes down. Otherwise, they break. But the real innovation, and keep it to yourself, is a fang horn rib. There's a mean one east of here. Blow it sky high. Boomer! You get them for me. It's yours. My treat. You have a deal. Get around faster if I find a charger to override. I can override one of these chargers. I have to go on quiet so I don't spook the herd. I know it's coming handy. Huh. Gosh. 
shoot off the horns before it goes out. Charge it goes down, its horns break. I gotta try again. I should have enough charger horns for Della and Boomer now. I just need a rib from that fang horn they were talking about. around. the sun done before the forbidden lost. I'm going to horn. That means they're also starting soon. 
All right, I should find whoever's in charge here. But first, I could resupply at my stash. Might be worth taking a look around, too. Is that the savior of Meridian? Can we have a word? Ah, savior. <laughs> Tell me, are you seeking passage into no man's land by any chance? Maybe. Why do you ask? Ah, well, to hammer it plain, there's treasure out west. Unclaimed scrap and ancient metal. And I've got a sturdy band of salvagers that knows the lay of the land. You're not afraid of the Tanakh? <laughs> Terrified. But I carry out most of my business in no man's land. A neutral territory and all that. Barren Light is our port of entry. When its doors aren't closed for an embassy... <laughs> I was hoping your arrival meant they might be opening soon. I've got a business to run, after all. I want that embassy to happen as much as you do. Believe me, I'm working on it. <laughs> Good to know. And uh, keep us in mind. If you do manage to open the way, our main camp will be just past Baron Light. We'll buy any scrap you've got on you. And if you're looking for machine parts, We've got the best in the West, guaranteed. All right. Maybe later then. Uh, if you could get those blasted gates open. <laughs> Guess I'm not the only one who wants to get those gates open. No one wants to play some strike? Anyone? No trade? Decline. Let's play some machines. like he's had a few. Be Gentlemen. Uh, that's our cue. <sighs> Taking the edge off? Oh, at the end of the world's coming. I don't be sober for it. Now let me guess. You're in a rush, right? So whatever you need, ask away. How have things been? Since I... Your silent departure? <laughs> yeah, not bad. Vanguard's going strong. Helped Avad pick up the pieces after the battle with the Eclipse. And I took a month to bury Ursa in the claim. But when I got back, I got the assignment to babysit Vadis on his way to the embassy. I thought that'd be a cakewalk, so of course things went sideways. You got blindsided. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> a couple more of these, maybe I'll believe you. I was, um, wondering if you were able to lay Ursa to rest, like you wanted. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, just seen the crowd that showed up to pay their respects. Half of them owed her a favor, and the other half, the other half owed her their lives. In the end, everybody drank. You know, that's the rowdiest funeral since, uh, what, since ever. <laughs> Feels like she would have liked that. Yeah, damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> she would have put them all under the table. What do you know about the embassy? I know, not much. Only that Avad really wants it to happen. He said I'm making peace with these Tanakh. But from what I hear, they're not too big on the whole diplomacy thing. They do most of their talking with blades and arrows. So if you're heading their way, be prepared. Things might get ugly real fast. I'll keep that in mind. What do you know 
know about this place? Well, nothing good. It's where the Karja dragged all the captives they took from the Forbidden West during the Red Raids. Lucky ones became slave labor. The rest were hauled off to the Sun Ring and Meridian. Your sacrifice. You got it. Tanakh made sure to wreck the place before they chased the Karja out of the West. I can't say I blame them. And now Avad's paying the Azram to rebuild it. No matter how much new stone they put up, it'll still be stained in blood. I better get going. Right, you'll have to do complicated Aloy things. Maybe just don't disappear completely this time. No promises. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is, if you ever do need me... I know where to find you. Yeah. Hopefully sober next time. I don't count on it. Be careful out there, Aloy. Lighten up, Paiv. You've got a thick wall of stone between you and the Tanakh out there. Yes, sir. Are you in charge around here? Ah, apologies, no. That would be Commander Nozar. I'm Lawan, the second in command. So, what brings Aloy of the Nora to Baron Light? I'm here for the embassy. I need it to happen so I can head west. And maybe now that Studius Wadis is here, we can finally get things underway. Ah, <laughs> yes, the Sun Priest. Walked in practically kicking and screaming behind his escort. Really seems to like his scrolls. But the embassy remains delayed. Commander Nozar has signaled our readiness, but the Tanakh Marshals have yet to sound their horn. All right, fine. Let me through the gates then. I have my own business with them. I'm sure you do, but I'm afraid I can't. Commander's orders. Normally, the gates are open for any who dare to venture out. Asaram salvagers, a few especially brazen Karja, but no one's allowed in or out before an embassy. Now we're open. Once the Tanakh have left. You said something about Tanakh marshals. Who are they? They're the tribe's elite warriors. Before every embassy, they arrive with a contingent of soldiers from each of their three clans. Then, during the proceedings, they negotiate on behalf of their leader. And by negotiate, I mean stare down our sun priest until they concede. Baiv over here came face to face with them for the first time at the last embassy. <laughs> came back drenched in his own sweat. It was hot that day, sir. <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> So what happens at these embassies, exactly? Mostly trade and negotiation. The Karja offer tribute of food, spices, and gear. In exchange, the Tanakh return personal effects taken from Karja soldiers that fell during the Red Raids. This particular embassy, however, is a special case. Because the Tanakh, they're handing over some sort of prisoner, right? A soldier named Fashav? Ah, so you've heard. The exchange has got everyone on edge. You never know if an embassy's going to go well until it's practically over. Where is this Commander Nozar, then? If he's the one keeping the gates shut, I'll convince him to open them for me. I'll take you to him, but I have to warn you. The Commander isn't one to break protocol, especially when he's already high-strung. We'll see about that. This way. There's a lot of activity going on around here. The Tanakh tore down this place during the Red Raids. Two years of labor, and we still have a long way to go. The work stoppage and change scrape nearly halted our rebuilding efforts. But I hear a certain Nora got them back to work. I was just helping out. Yes, well, I'm sure Alvin was thrilled. Stand aside, soldier. Sir? There's the commander. Brace yourself. And good luck. The 
creed. How are we to hold an embassy with a tribe that can't even govern their own people? What more can you expect from barbarians? <clears throat> ah. Aloy, was it? Yes. The one who cleared the valley for you? That Aloy. <laughs> we appreciate your service. At least we are ready for the embassy to begin. Didn't you just give the signal? Both sides must signal readiness. Until the Tanakh sound their horn, we wait. Yea, for as the first shall be good. Shut up. Why the delay? The Tanakh are a tribe composed of three clans. How many banners do you see? <sighs> You're just gonna wait? Go find out what's wrong. <sighs> Oh, this isn't some forgotten corner of the East where you come from, Dwar. It's the Forbidden West. If you don't like it, run back to Meridian, file a complaint. The Meridian I saved, you mean? That's right. Nobody walks to the gate until the third clan arrives and the Tanakh horn has sounded. Not even the savior of Meridian. Well, thanks, but I've waited long enough. It's time to go. Absolutely not. This embassy depends on diligent adherence to... You shall not! Keep telling yourself that. Someone approaching! On a machine! Open the gates, please. Do not let her through that gate! That is a direct order! Sorry, can't do it. I'm asking nicely. I, I don't know what to do. Hey, Varl. Hi, Aaron. Uh... What's happening? I you know the usual. Aloy wants something. People Open try to stand in her way. It's not gonna work. Gates. Oh, that's it. Arrest her. I'd like to see you try. Supporting fire? Yeah, I'm locked and loaded. Hey, nose off. You stupid bastard. You think you got the authority to keep that door shut in the savior of Meridian's face? What, what do you think Sun King of Vod is gonna do when he hears what you did? Promote you, huh? Let it through, boys. Saving the world. Forget something back in Meridian? Look, Pearl. It doesn't matter. I made it just in time. This tribe that Murad told us about, the Tanakh, we need their permission to go west? Yeah, well, I figured it'd be nice if they weren't trying to kill me the whole time. But this embassy hasn't started yet. We're just gonna barge in? It's no more politics. No more delays. Oh, well. Now at least you have some backup. I guess I do. We'll see how it goes. That is the line between East and West. Cross it and die. Hold on now. Let's take it easy. None may walk this valley until our signal sounds. That was our accord with the Karja. I'm not Karja. I came here on my own to ask for rite of passage. But they opened the gate for you, did they not? What is the meaning of this violation? Why send a child? Do they want to parley or not? The Karja can't be trusted. This is no. Forget the Karja. This has nothing to do with them. I need to go west to save lives. Maybe even yours. The only lives you can save are your own. By turning back. Now. Hold! 
She's telling the truth about one thing. She's not Karja. She's a Nora from the Savage East. And if she seeks to save lives, should we not listen? Let me speak to her. One last favor for a fellow marshal before he's taken away. A fearless, red-headed Nora. You must be the so-called savior of Meridian. Just Aloy. I am unyielding Fashav. Once of the Karja High Command, last of the Army of the Setting Sun. You're Fashav. Vard gave me a message for you. That he waits for you in Meridian, where you belong. Hmm. <laughs> Avad always was polite. Well, now I'm even more curious about you knowing that you have the confidence of the Sun King. But such an association with the Karja could work against you here, as it often has with me. As you can see, tensions are high. This embassy is a delicate affair. They're about to return me to the Sundom, a gesture that might help soothe painful grievances. And now you arrive, unheralded. I'm not here to cause trouble. I just need to go west. So you say. I might be able to help, but I need to know why. Along with some assurance that I won't regret it. How did you come to be among the Tanakh? It's quite a story, but not a quick one. Though I suppose neither of us is going anywhere before the embassy begins. Are you sure you want to hear it? I guess we have time. Very well. I marched with Sun King Jaran's raiders when they came west, hoping to moderate their worst impulses. I failed, of course. They committed unspeakable atrocities, stirring the Tanakh into action. When the clans overran our forward encampment at Cinnabar Sands, I stayed behind to help the last stragglers evacuate. I was taken prisoner. I didn't make it easy for my captors, mind you. <laughs> and they paid me back in kind on the journey to their capital. I lost so much blood on the way that I was white as a corpse when they threw me before Chief Akaro. I thought I was dead for sure, so I resorted to desperate measures. So when you met the Tanakh chief, you did something desperate? Now, I'd kept my ears open as the Tanakh dragged me along, and I heard mutterings about a kind of trial by combat that they revere. So, when they flung me at Hakaro's feet, I demanded this right, called the Kurut, thinking that by winning I could request a boon, my life or even my freedom. The other Tanakh howled, but Hakaro stared them down. And then his gaze fell upon me. Evidently, he appreciated my ingenuity. He allowed me to participate in the cool route. Little did I know what I was in for. You said the cool route is a Tanakh's trial by combat. Yes. But it is no ordinary trial. It doesn't pit men against each other, at least not directly. Instead, the combatants fight machines in a great arena, and only the strongest survive. Believe me, it is no easy thing to stare down a charging machine while hundreds around you scream for blood. I know more about that than you might think. Do you? Well, then you have my respect. Like you, I lived through it to claim my prize. I had hopes for freedom, but... Well, that wasn't on offer. Only service to the Chief. You wound up serving the Tanakh Chief? The winners of the Kul Root must serve the Chief as his marshals. You mentioned that word before. What does it mean? Well, the word itself refers to a kind of protective spirit from the ancient past. In practice, Marshals are Hikaro's roving lawgivers. Part magistrate, part judge, part executioner. I won my place among their ranks and served as honor demanded, but many Tanakh still spat on the ground when I walked by. 
But they did. Until I started forcing them to the ground to grind their faces in it. I guess that's one way to deal with it. As you may have noticed, violence is the native tongue of the Tanakh. To survive, one must master it. The truth is, though, the Karja speak it too. More than they should. I can't blame the Tanakh for hating them. So then, are you still Karja? Part of me, yes. Always. Yet there is much to admire about the Tanakh. Especially their chief. I've heard stories about what it was like before his reign. Three clans always at war, constantly slitting each other's throats. Hikaru and the marshals have crafted a delicate peace. And now he looks to the future. Who knows? Maybe that future will include cooperation with the Karja. The Karja talk about Hikaru as if he's a monster. The Karja feel compelled to demonize him if only because he swept them from the field. It is true that he is fearsome. When I was first taken before him, I thought he would flay me alive. But he is no bloodthirsty tyrant like the Mad Sun King was. I think that if you were fortunate enough to meet him, as I was, you would find that he only wants the best for his people. I hope you do speak to him. And I'm sure you'd interest him. So, that's my story. You're the first Easterner to hear it, but not the last. The cards you need to know what I have learned. Yeah, the way you talk about the Tanakh is a lot different than how they do. I've never seen markings like those on a Karja before. The Karja see ink as decoration. For the Tanakh, it is much more. A litany of deeds. A record of vanquished enemies. Looks like you've vanquished quite a few. I've fought my share of battles. But I feel that my life, like my markings, is only half complete. This side shows my martial deeds. Before I die, I'd like to see the other half marked with the laurels of peace. Are you glad to be going back to Meridian? Oh, I'll admit that I wouldn't mind sleeping in a feather bed or sipping wine from the southern vineyards. But I have another goal in mind. As someone who knows the Tanakh and the Karja, I'm in a unique position to advocate for both. If Sun King Avad is amenable, my hope is to establish a lasting peace. The Tanakh don't seem that peaceful. They're not, as a rule. But these are difficult times. Chief Akaro knows that survival often requires change, even if that change means putting aside centuries of war. You asked why I need rite of passage. I'll tell you, but you won't like my answer. Six months ago, the world almost ended in Meridian. That threat still exists. It's getting worse every day, much worse. Calling down storms, poisoning the water, enraging the machines. The source of it all has gone west, and I'm the only one who can stop it. I've seen the signs, and I've heard tales of incredible occurrences in Meridian, an army of demons vanquished by a red-haired champion. So I'm inclined to believe you. The burden of your task is written across your face clearer than any mark of mine. I'll grant you this, to serve as proof of your right to travel into Tanakh lands. A task so important, and it's just the two of you. Take it from one who aspires to be a diplomat. Allies are essential. Chief Akaro knows the West better than anyone. He may be able to help you. He can be intimidating to others, but don't let that deceive you. He is a man of his word. Maybe. If I need him. Your choice. You can find him at his palace, past the mountains to the southwest. Tell him I sent you, and he'll listen to- Look! Him. The Sky Clan's banner!
Marshals. It wasn't easy, but I brought the Sky Clan with me. And the commander? Ah, uh, no. I could only convince a few. He isn't yet aware we left. We have banners from all three clans. If there are fewer from the Sky Clan, it can't be helped. He's right. Sound the horn. What's going on? Not all Tanakhs can stomach the idea of parlay with the Kaja. But enough have come for us to begin. Then I'll be on my way. No. The other marshals will not permit it. You wanted safe passage, you have it. After the embassy. have opened the gates. As the sun rises over a land at war, so too can it set over a land at peace. Today is such... Hear me, marshals! You who claim to be Tanakh! Regala, Chief Akaro's biggest mistake. A rival whom he should have killed. You have forgotten that our people were born in blood. The blood of the Karja. Instead, you pledge your spears to a chief who conspires with the enemy. Hikaru has betrayed us. The embassy is proof. And all of you marshals are his accomplices. For this, I condemn you to death. You'll need more than toothless threats to intimidate us. Exile. Riding machines! Where'd they learn to do that? Silence. Vashav! Come with us now, or not at all! Archers! Light them up!
It's just us now. Hey! Come down and fight fair! Lancers! Take the center! Get ready! Stick to cover! Archers on the ridge! Here they come! Time to fight!
You're next, girl. I never see a shield like that. Better scan it. Challenge. You've earned your life today. Comrades! Mark this day! Today you have decimated the marshals! Slaughtered the Karja! So begins our war on Ikara. Move out! Without me, aren't you? Guess I'm stuck with Aaron. For now. Come on. I'll take you back to the fort. It's salvage time, boys. trying to sort out this mess. Seems like the Tanakh have a civil war in their hands. That sounds about right. 
The marshals weren't expecting Regala to attack. And the entire Karja delegation was slain. Nozar, Vladis, Peshav. A massacre. What will you do now? I have to head west. Hopefully this rite of passage is still good. For what I'm after, I'll cross all of Tanakh's territory if I have to. Then you have a long road ahead of you. This is only the threshold of the Forbidden West. The Tanakh's true domain lies over the mountains that border Plainsong, home of the Utaru tribe. This isn't Tanakh's territory? All that out there? That's no man's land. It was supposed to be neutral ground, though obviously this Regala ignored that. Her rebels approached from the north with all those machines they were riding. They must have made camp up that way. The rebels were riding bristlebacks. And there were bristlebacks in the Daunt. Are you saying the rebels let them into the Daunt? How would that even be possible? I don't know. But it's worth looking into. While you're at it, there were a number of Karja and Asuram who went out there before the gates were shut for the embassy. Maybe you could check in on them. See if they're all right. I can keep an eye out. Is there a tall neck somewhere nearby? A tall neck? There's that one, over there, near the Utara border, but why... It's, uh, it's hard to explain. It'll help me get the lay of the land. If you say so. Is there anything else I can tell you before you go? This area is no man's land. That it is. The Tanakh used to attack anyone past Baron Light on sight, but after Avad overthrew the Mad Sun King, he reached out to the other tribes to offer reconciliation. The Tanakh agreed to a neutral border zone as part of the peace talks. Karja and Asuram have been striking out into the area ever since. But now, it seems like Regala and her rebel army have moved in. Well, I'd never call No Man's Land safe, even in the best of times. The ancient ruins of the Southwest are a testament to that. Remnants of some forgotten war. Fashav called Regala a rival. Someone that Tanakh's chief should have killed. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he should have. She's obviously a huge threat. Her attack was coordinated and precise. Until you got in her way, that is. They knew the lay of the land. And they knew Fashav was going to be handed over at the embassy. If the Tanakh weren't expecting her, she must have spent months gathering an army in secret. They had to have made camp nearby. Somewhere they could lie low until the perfect moment to strike. Do you think the Karja will take action against Regala? Seems like you'd have common ground with the Tanakh. An expedition of the Karja army into the west could be taken as the start of another invasion. Sun King Avad won't risk it. That said, we can't allow ourselves to be caught unaware by an attack like that again. About Fashav. <sighs> the man was taken captive by the Tanakh. Survived for years out in the west only to die just short of the Sundom. It's a cruel end for a good soldier. There was more he wanted to do. He spoke of advocating for lasting peace between the Karja and Tanakh. Too late for that now. What will happen to him? His body will be carried back to Meridian. As a cousin of the Sun King, he will be accorded official rights and buried with honor. No soldier could ask for more. It's too bad about Nazar and Vladis. At least Nazar went down fighting. As for the Sun Priest, well, no one deserves to go out that way. I'll make sure they're given proper funeral rites. It's the least I can do. You mentioned the Utara tribe. Their lands are between here and the Tanakh further west? That's right. Plainsong is their home. They're a peaceful bunch, at least compared to the Tanakh. More taken to farming than fighting. It's hard to imagine a bunch of farmers surviving in the Forbidden West. Make no mistake, they have a fierceness all their own. 
When the Karja were pushed back during the Red Raids, their warriors chased ours through the burning fields of Plainsong. The Sun King has made several overtures of peace to them as well, but so far, they've declined. If they're so peaceful, why decline? Don't know. I heard they have their own troubles to deal with. Something about a food shortage. You'd think that'd make them open to trade, but... No. They just want to be left alone. You said the Tanakh lands are far to the west. What can I expect to find between here and there? Well, as I mentioned, you've got a stretch of wilderness known as No Man's Land, and then new Taru farmlands. Past that are the Tanakh. Their territory is split into three clans. Desert, Lowland, and Sky. Right. I saw their banners at the embassy. The Desert Clan is closest. Ooh, vicious lot. Where everyone else sees an inhospitable wasteland, they see a challenge to dominate. Somewhere beyond the desert is the tribe's capital and the territories of the other two clans. You don't sound certain. I've only heard the stories. During the Red Raids, the Karja army tried to push into Tanakh territory. But the United Clans rose up against them, forced them all the way back to the Daunt. So no one except the Tanakh really know what's beyond the desert. <laughs> Maybe the scholars do, back in Meridian. All those scrolls have to be filled with something, right? You said there were others who went out when the gates were open before. Like, who? Well, in addition to the salvagers that just went through, there were a couple of other parties of Osirum Delvers. Even saw two Karja scholars trekking southwest with an Osirum crew. Not sure if they're exceptionally brave or just foolhardy. I need to be on my way. Then I wish you luck. The gates will always be open to you should you wish to return. And don't worry about your friends. We'll get them patched up. I appreciate it. Sun, watch over you, Aloy. I hope you find what you're looking for. I can grab this from my stash later. So, this is the Forbidden West. A whole new frontier to explore. The coordinates from the spire should lead to silence and Hades. And just maybe a backup of Gaia. It won't be easy out there. The blight, the storms, Regal's machine layers. But I'll have to push through it all. Find a way to fix the world. Like Elizabeth would. The woman who led the ambush, Regala, had a lot of machines under her command. There's only one other person who has that kind of knowledge. Silence. But what's his angle? I helped to knock the rebels. Just about any cliff now. This must be the salvagers I met in Baramite. Looks like something's going on.
If it isn't the savior of Meridian, and of my very own operation. Laren, say hello. Hello, nice to meet you. You know, if it weren't for this one, I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. Oh, nasty business, what the Tanakh did back at the embassy. But everyone in Baron Light is thankful you drove them off. So this is your salvage operation? You won't find a better place to trade machine parts in the West. And soon we'll be trading in more than just that. For too long, the West has been, well, forbidden. Dangerous. But what if I told you we could make an armor so tough, so infallible, that you'd never have to worry about survival out here again? I'd be curious to take a look at it. Of course you would. <laughs> And that's why I've asked my most talented salvagers to find what they need to make that armor. Each of them will present their work to me. The best protection will go on sale to hunters, just like you. Lucky me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to back in Chainscrape. Larand can take care of you while I'm gone. Can't wait to see what you come up with, my boy. Leave it to me. It'll blow all the others out of the forge. You have got to help me. What are you talking about? The armor. I made a dozen versions of it. But none of them were good enough. And there are other crews further west. If they make better armor than mine, I can kiss that keg full of shards goodbye. So you get a prize if Karif picks your armor? A big one. And I finally have the perfect design. I just need the right parts, and fast. So maybe you'd be willing to pick up a contract and get them for me? What would I be looking for? Shell walker containers. But their plating's made to withstand a lot of damage. It'll make the perfect armor. I know it. I think I can handle that. Ah, oh, thank the forge. All right. We scouted out a herd near here. Here's the contract. It'll tell you everything you need to know. You take the machines down. My people will pick up the containers. I'll give this a closer look later. Thanks. Counting on you, Aloy. Aloy, you managed to get. I'm working on it. Good call. I might want to read that contract before going on the hunt. Thank <laughs> you. 
Come on, keep me on my feet. Where's the tall knight that's sending the signal? that tall neck easily enough. generator? At some point, it's dead now. There has to be a way up this thing.
Council. No power. Can't climb any higher, but looks like this thing can do it. I can figure out a way to turn the power back on. I might be able to move things around and clean way up. from the main power line. This should get that generator below the dish going. There's the generator. Bet this power cell can get it running. Power's back. I should check that console I found over there. See what this thing does. Should be able to get to that tall neck now. Just gotta find the right spot. Looks like I might need to glide onto the tall neck. Just gotta time it right. Is this easy? Time to override the big guy. It's all right. Almost done. There we go. Tell next send map data to other machines. Song. The Taro tribe's home. 
Built on top of old satellite dishes. Looks like they've set up camp close to Baron Light. I should see what they're up to. They've got riders patrolling the area. Better be careful. Now. I've got her! You're not as now you Rage! Uh, 
She's hit! Prisoner. Closer him, I think. Huh? Hang in there! Uh, oh. You feel that? Uh. Oh. One of these structures is a command center. from this camp goaded one of the sons of Prometheus into an altercation. You would do well to remember that our allies are responsible for providing the machines that we shall ride to glory. The next fool who interferes with them will be eviscerated and left in the desert for carry-on. There will be no second warning. Will that be sufficient? Yeah, that should prevent your people from butting heads with mine. You have my thanks, Regala. May our pact lead to victory. So Regala's not working alone. These sons of Prometheus gave her the ability to override machines. <laughs> They've been accumulating blaze. And from what I saw out there... Enough to blow up something big.
are planning an attack on Baron Light, it has to be stopped. Hey, I'm here to help. Hello, and follow my lead. You got it. Make a hole big enough to fit an entire army. So Regala plans on invading the Sundom. At least when she gets an army big enough to do it. Good thing I blew up all that blaze. I doubt the rebels will stick around now. Or I could take them out myself. Either way, main threat's been dealt with. Pretty sure that's the passage Laren's contract mentioned. I should make sure I have my facts straight. Give the contract a quick read. Shellwalkers use this passage regularly, and Laren wants their plating. I just need to wait them out at his camp. It might be a good idea to place some traps on the road first. Catch the convoy by surprise. This should help. Contract said they'd set up traps along the passage. Might as well use them. If I find the right cauldron, could learn how to override this machine. Shellwalker with him.
I should salvage what I can and leave the plating for Laren's crew. Huntress! You're back! I took down that shellwalker for you. Vonda! Rendor! We got a pickup! For our contract, here's your payment. This will definitely help me make some great armor. But? Well, I realized an armor made out of shellwalker plating's good, but with just a few minor additions, it could be so much better if you'd be willing to take on a few more contracts. What do you say? What else do you need for your armor? Alarm antennas. Strong, supple. I could use them to make my armor more flexible. We picked out a herd of scroungers already. I'll uh, read through the contract, see what I can do. Best of luck. Tell me more about these contracts of yours. I was thinking, Scrabber Jaws are powerful. I could use them to strengthen my armor. Crew spotted a pack of them not far from here, primed for salvage. I guess I can give the contract a look. Fantastic.
Looks like the coordinates Silence gave me match that wreckage. Did he install Hades on another Titan? Hold on to this for later. It. Location of the coordinates I scanned from the spire. The workshop underneath a dead Horus Titan. Just the kind of place Silence would slink away to. But what was he doing here? That device is blinking. I guess Silence wants me to check it out. Aloy. Consider this message a beacon to help guide you out of the fog of ignorance. Using explosives, I've detached the processing orb from the Titan overhead, a perfect cage for our mutual friend, Hades, in order to render it cooperative. Tell her what we discussed about the mysterious signal that gave you life. He thinks he's got it all figured out. Bastard. But I guess there's only one way to find out where he moved the orb. Might be worth looking around more first. Poor Hades. So cramped in there. No room to think. He can't even speak. Now the processing orb of a Titan on the other hand. Well, you're used to that. But once I load you on that, you'll be so much more comfortable. Until interrogations begin, anyway. Some kind of log, most of it's redacted. I'll 
Looks like Silence put a lot of work into forcing Hades to talk. Better see where this trail leads. <laughs> Don't think there's anything I can do about this now. It's some kind of red crystal. I can get it for my stash later. So here I am, following along after silence like a fool. After he tricked me by rigging his lance to steal Hades. A crazy AI that wants to kill everything. He couldn't just let me do the same thing and destroy it. And now I'm gonna have to put up with more of his self-righteous bull.
stone. It's green like blaze, but it's hard and shiny. I wonder if merchants would be interested. Silence must be pretty confident he's found a backup of Gaia, but how? Every place I've checked, every lead, they've all been dead ends. All backups purged. So what did Hades tell him? Can't get rid of the vines. Not yet, anyway. Did nothing. The merchant didn't expect to see anyone else out here. It might be him. Oh, there! Spy. What's Honora doing this far west? Ah. ah. No matter, no matter. I can get you stocked up for the wilds. with that. Exploring colleges might teach me how to override these things. I'll be in my stash when I need it.
Looks like the trail goes under the hillside. goes. I guess Silence used that machine to haul his prize. That must be the orb Silence stuck Hades in. And that door. Looks like a pharaoh facility. Or a zero dawn. Come on, Hades. You still in there? You're a threat to Gaia. Once I resurrect her. So you have not yet secured Gaia back up. <sighs> then Gaia is dead. Earth and you too. Despite malfunctions, I have won. Silence asked you where to find a backup of Gaia? been easy. What did silence do to you, Hades? It's like you've been hollowed out. Silence interrogated me. And what did you tell him? Data error memory structures disintegrate. You don't remember any of it? What, like, me beating you at the spire? Okay, that's not going anywhere. Do you know where Silence went? No, he departed 12.8 days ago. Perhaps he... Data error. Behavior prediction structures. Disintegrated. So you don't know anything more than I do. Great. Do you know why Silence dragged you to these ruins? Silence intended you find me here. Obviously. But why? What was this place? Location is square. Structures disintegrate. My deathbed, he called it my grave. But you. I guess I'll find out when I go inside. When the mysterious signal transformed you, it made Gaia's other subordinate functions conscious too. You escaped when Gaia destroyed herself, but so did they. Where did they go? Each function migrated to coordinates based on data error memory structures disintegrated. Bunch of crazy. 
crazed AIs, scattered who knows where, doing who knows what. Hephaestus kills thousands every year with the combat machines it keeps making. And you nearly ended the world. Seven more functions out there, cooking up trouble. It's not a happy thought. You are unhappy. Good. Anyone ever tell you you've got a great personality, Hades? Sarcasm detected. Yeah, didn't think so. Silence questioned you about the mysterious signal. The one that woke you, gave you consciousness. Who sent it? Signal transmitted by masters. And who are they? Masters woke me to destroy earthly life. Who would want that? <laughs> Enough. It's time to finish this. Does Aloy still think she can restore Gaia? Save life on Earth? Yeah, Aloy does. Then you are a deluded extinction inevitable. What would you know, Hades? Twice you tried to destroy life on Earth, and twice you failed. The only extinction you ever brought about is your own. And there's no tricked out lands to save you this time. You are incorrect. Three times, Hades extinguished life. What? You remember this? Yes, data intact. Non viable biospheres aborted in years 254. So? That, that's centuries ago. It's what you were designed to do. version 5. There will be no version 6. There won't need to be. I'm saving this one. Master Override arms. Connected it. Stay name and rank. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master override activated. Bridging extinction protocol. I see you've dealt with Hades. Yeah. Think maybe you can stay dead this time? It will. You can trust. Trust? Yes. Trust. As in, since I did what you could never do, and extracted all of Hades' priceless knowledge, you can trust that I was willing to actually let you destroy it this time. So back to holograms instead of face to face? What, afraid I'd stab you or something? There's a reason I'm I... I'm using the same spyware, I see. So, all those times I called, you could have just answered. But I guess you just prefer to go on spying all this time. My world stopped revolving around you months ago, Aloy. I've had work to do. Countless hours of research. As demanding and time-intensive as it has been critical to the fate of this planet. <laughs> right. Of course. You're just trying to save the world, too. That's right. The difference, of course, is that unlike you, I've produced results. Did you find a backup of Gaia or not? Oh, yes. I believe I did. Where? Voila. Why do you think I summoned you here? Behind that gene-locked hatch lie the ruins of the ancient facility where the Hades Extinction Protocol was perfected. A testing process that ran hundreds of trials, each of them using a backup of Gaia. Hades told you this? It took some convincing, but yes. 
So, are you ready to go get what you've been searching for for the last six months? Or are you just going to stand there with your mouth open? You mentioned you've been busy. Exceptionally busy. But not so busy you couldn't teach Tanakh the rebels to override machines, ride them as mounts? Aloy, the only issue you should be concerned about is obtaining a Gaia backup. Perhaps if you focused more, you might actually see results. That's not exactly a denial, Silence. Take it any way you want. Just to... confirm... Hades said that there are backups of Gaia in there. Yes. Or were, anyway. A thousand years ago. Backups that didn't get purged when Ted Farrow wiped every copy of Apollo. Correct. According to Hades, this facility could not be accessed by remote signal. Not even Ted Farrow could touch the data here. Backups. Data complete. Gaia and her subordinate functions. Everything needed to reboot the system. Restore control over the terraforming system. Save life on Earth. In there. So Hades said. So what are you waiting for? Did Hades reveal the source of the mysterious signal? The one that woke it, tried to destroy life on Earth? Yes, it did. Care to share? In due time. First things first, Aloy. Last I checked, you still had a superintelligent AI named Gaia to reboot. Yeah, the same Gaia who had to destroy herself 20 years ago because of the signal? It stopped being transmitted years ago. It's no longer a threat. What if it repeats? It won't. Even if it did, well... The details are complicated, but the signal required Hades to take effect. Delete Hades from any backup you reboot, and Guy is safe. Now stop wasting time. Go get a backup. All right. I'll search the facility for a Gaia backup. But just to be clear, Silence, if this ends up being another one of your tricks... It's a gene-locked hatch, Eloy. You're literally the only person who can open it. How could I set a trap inside? Trick me again, Silence, and our next conversation will be face to face. Though you won't have much to say on account of my spear being buried in your throat. Aloy, thanks to me, everything you've desired, everything you've been fumbling about, unable to achieve for six months is now within your grasp. Now, I know you didn't learn much about manners growing up a Nora outcast. But in a situation like this, you say thank you, and I say you're welcome. Hold for identity scan. Are you kidding me? Hmm. I think we're in luck. In luck? The door is completely messed up. Obviously. But despite the malfunction, you can still get through. If you'll be patient for a while longer. See those crystals there? The Asram call them Fire Gleam. They're combustible. Not nearly powerful enough to blast through a door like that. But maybe just enough to jolt it open a bit more. Exactly. It will only work with an igniter. I'm sending you the schematics now. To build it, you'll need some machine parts and the oil from a kindle weed plant. That only grows underwater, but you should be able to find some in the nearby lake. The parts are more complicated. You'll need a spark coil from within a Leap Lash's power cell. Remove the power cell before you kill the machine, or else it'll break. Got it. Looks like I already have everything I need for the igniter. Now I just need to build this thing. There's a workbench near the entrance to the facility. From your time tinkering with Hades? Tinkering? 
More like extracting invaluable data. There. Should be able to use this to blow up that fire gleam now. Indeed. A useful combination. It's how I detached the processing orb from the horse in the first place. Great. I'd step back if I were you. Finally. I think I'm in. Then by all means, proceed. Now that I have this igniter, I could blow up that fire gleam that I've seen before. Focus on the task at hand, Eloy. Place is flooded. And there's another gene lock door on the other side. But that's where any Gaia backups would have been stored. I have to find a way to get over there. Familiar? Taking my way through ancient crumbling ruins while you spy on me through my focus? Stop waxing nostalgic and concentrate on finding a backup. Uh, hmm. My polecaster might come in handy here. some kind of device next to it. An energy cell. That did it. Call on something. What was this room for? Looks like there is another console that needs power. This console shut down.
Elizabeth and Travis Tate. Oh boy! I tell you, Liz, what I just done gonna make you love me. I just imagine them far zenith rap scallions opening this fake guy we made for him. And I thought, what this really needs is a signature. This isn't a prank, Travis. I know, I know. All I did was just script a couple of avatars. A little you, a little me. To deliver our message of doom. Real personal-like. Would you just send it? As soon as it's done compiling, then you and me should celebrate. I brought party fixings, pizza rolls, absinthe, a couple of hacky sacks. I'm heading back to Bryce as soon as this is done. Color me confounded, Liz. How is it that someone like you, a paragon, damn near saint, could love this world so damn much, but no one in it? I mean, have you ever even had a friend? Compile complete. Data file, Baron Promise, ready for transmission. If you would, please. Logic bombs off. Here it comes, far as Z-nuts. Just keeping the best of what you do, Travis. Always admire you from afar, Liz. It's where my mama's grave. And she was religious. Travis was wrong. Elizabeth was trying to make sure life had a future. She cared about everyone. I'm not so sure. The exceptional walk a path of solitude, Eloy. As you and I are well aware of. here. There's another panel up there that I should be able to pull open. I'll have to climb higher to reach it. I think my pole caster can latch on back from here. I'm gonna have to jump. the door from here. There's more of the facility over there. I better take a look. in here. There's another locked door. What's that console next to it?
balls, dude. How loud is it out there? Outside the noise dampening field? 150 decibels. Well, I guess we got privacy. What's the hap, Trav? You and me go back a ways. But I never saw you cheat no one. Why start with Farzini? I was gonna tell you about it. They get a copy of Gaia, I get a spot on the Odyssey. But, but I told them, I said, make it two spots, because I'm bringing my friend Trav. Gosh, Hank, sounds like the dampening field done slipped. You all right? No, I'm cool. I okay, got a personal field right here, see? Now, I know your ears ain't working so well just now. But see that text transcribing every word I say? Good. While I dial the music out there up to 170 decibels, how about you type in that transmit code? There you go. And that's all of it? Cool. Thank you, Hank. We're done. Security? Hank Shaw is ready for collection. No, he's still breathing. Might want to bring a spatula, though. <laughs> Looks like this is connected to the door. He needs a code to open. <laughs> Find this in my stash later. Data here. From Travis Tate. This place turned out a lot of malware before Zero Dawn took over. And one of them has a number. Maybe I should check my data points. There we go. Deal's off, Tilda. Zero Dawn got its ectogenic chambers. Far Zenith needs the Apollo database. There's no reason this incident... You tried to steal Gaia. I had nothing to do with it. And you punished those responsible. Your logic bomb has them scrambling to restore vital systems. I'm really supposed to believe that you knew nothing about this? Please, Liz. Humanity's chances are slim as is. You may not approve of our plan. But what if we're the only ones to survive? Don't you want us to have Apollo to remember our common past, our mistakes? I'm begging you. Fine. You'll get your copy of Apollo. Thank you. Let's speak again before- Goodbye, Tilda. I don't know. Time to let go. There's the door. Getting close.
Okay, so much for the flooded maze. I made it. Hold for identity scan. Looks like the power's off, except for that console. It's damp in here, too. I hope the water hasn't corroded anything I need. Like a backup. Start looking. Genetic profile confirmed. Greetings, Dr. Sobek. Do you wish to activate Recluse Spider? I do. Activating. Okay, powering it up. That doesn't sound good. It appears to be unstable. And very heavy. Be careful. Well, at least I've got power. And there's data here. Looks like this recluse spider thing is a testing apparatus for Gaia and Hades. I'd better take a look at that excess panel. Yes. Get to it. I think those circular pods are repositories. One loaded with Hades' backups, the other with Gaia. What are you waiting for? Hades is down, but the Gaia repository is stuck. So unstick it. I need to detach the cable from the arm's coupling. Well, now that it's down, I should be able to access that pod. I've got one. Two, in fact. I was starting to get worried. Data footprint low. 90% memory free. That can't be right. Gaia was a vast superintelligence. It barely expected us. Wait, wait. It's useless without subfunctions, but there are subfunctions out there. The original ones. Scattered to the winds when Gaia blew herself up? They could be anywhere. You can't find them in time. Even if you did, the mysterious signal mutated them just like Hades. You have no idea. But I do. A good one. If it works. You found Minerva, but it won't connect. It's close. Mountains west of Plainsong. Close enough for me to go get it. I was hoping to find all the subfunctions, but one's enough to get started, right? It is. Recover Minerva. One could use it to launch Gaia's heuristic matrix. When she's conscious, she helps me find the other subfunctions. I go gather them. And rebuild her piece by piece. Very clever. Still think I can't save the world on my own? Ah, uh, yes, well. About that. Alert! Intruders! Alert! Aloy, I need you to listen closely. These intruders want the same thing you do. Gaia reborn. It's why they're here. Friends of yours? No. They don't know me. 
The data Pulse I transmitted indicated that a Gaia backup could be recovered here was anonymous. Now, they're very powerful, but they won't harm you. Not when they see who you are, what you are. A clone of Elizabeth Sobek, a genetic key with which they can reboot Gaia and rebuild the system. They need you. I warned you, Silence. For once, Eloy, submit to the inevitable. Open the hatch. First I rebuild Gaia, save life on Earth, then I track you down and end yours! I'm trying to help you here. <clears throat> Try spying on me with that. There. New focus, spyware free. Okay. Think. Think, think, think. I don't care how powerful they are, the only thing that can open that hatch is me. Much, but maybe it's a way out. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Greetings, Dr. Sobek. Please step inside. <laughs> Do we have it? Fantastic. Did the pulse originate here? Has someone... Something wrong? Shit! Spectres, Beta! Well, any idea what the hell a clone of Elizabeth Sobek is doing here? Maybe Gaia made one, when it destroyed itself a Hail Mary to repair the system. Hmm, don't like the sound of that. Nah, don't like it, don't want it. But the if it- Nope, one's enough trouble. Eric! Yeah? Care to do a little downsizing? Hmm, sure. What if she sent the pulse? Then that was foolish of her. But we got what we came for. So let's put it to use. I snap a lot of necks in VR. But that certain tremor, as life fades from the eyes. Ooh! No hollow quite gets it. Keep flapping your mouth. It makes a nice target. You actually think that primitive crap you got there can hurt me? This is gonna be fun. You don't know what the hollow is like. Not hurting him. I need a way out of here. Maybe if I can bring the whole processor down. I gotta use that console to make it drop. Me. Don't there. need this. Now I can break the couple he's holding up in. That's not 
gonna help you, girl. This kills all mine. Huh? You got spunk, girl. Hot. Reckon that thing ain't gonna help, girl. Come on. Come at me. Cut the main stem. I need to shoot the couplings holding up the stem. Good. But all good things must come to an end. Uh. Isn't that right, little mousey? The stem's got a few couplings holding it up. I need to cut them all. Have all the fun. God damn it. Was that me killing what you wanted dead? What the hell did you think? The platform collapsed, body went with it. Right. And since when don't you get what you want, huh? Spectres, search. Be away under this.
how to get out of here. Some kind of power room. Currents lead here. Promising. I've... I've got it. Hey, hey, easy. Easy there. Hey, 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 hey. It's right here. And the way you were clutching it when I found you, I knew it was important. Where are we? An outpost of the Utaru tribe. Not far from where you fell. Two days. Aloy? There's no time. I found something. In the mountains west, west of Plains Song. Yeah. Kept muttering it while I carried you. Look, Aloy, whatever it is that you found, you're in no shape to... I will crawl if I have to. Okay, fine. But before you do that, there's someone you should talk to. An Utaru named Zo. And she told me there's been trouble in those mountains. A cave spitting out deadly machines. Can't be a coincidence, right? Why do we need her? Let's head for the cave. It's in Utaru territory. Her territory. She can help us. You'll see. Fine. Let's go see this marvelous so then. 
as verdant limbs with the roots rot in snow still the seed rises as certain as stone so she should be in bed Aloy doesn't really do should. You're so right. Verl said I should talk to you about the machines in the mountains west of Plainsong. I am a grave singer. My place is here. We can talk once you've healed. What's wrong with it? Her. Her name is Ray, not it. She's one of our land gods, and she's dying. But not just dying, she's suffering. Her condition is not your concern. So, if anyone can help, it's Aloy. May I? about to do might look bad, but it will help. Spear. West of Plainsong. There's trouble out there? The Otaru have trouble everywhere. Our fields blighted, our settlements abandoned. But the cave in the mountains is the worst of it. It is a sacred place. Fa, another of our land gods, went inside weeks ago, but she hasn't emerged. Killer machines pour out instead, threatening to overwhelm us. It's never happened before. Wouldn't be your first sacred cave. Thanks for taking us in. Varl's the one that carried you across the wilds. I doubt anyone else here would have let us in. Or stayed by my side to make sure Aloy was comfortable. We were lucky to find you. I could say the same thing. Sounds like you two have been spending a lot of time together. I wish it hadn't taken an injury to make that happen. I hope you feel better. And soon. You said the tribe has trouble with its fields and settlements. Yes. Whereas once the land gods harvested endless bounty from the fields, now they sow a poisonous blight. War brews among the Tanakh, so their rebels prowl our outskirts. And the machines grow ever more aggressive, hemming us in. Forcing us to desert distant villages. Now they're even coming out of our sacred cave. Many in the tribe fear our days are dwindling. I wish I could tell you it was better everywhere else. Not that we're gonna lose hope. Ray and other machines like her, you call them gods? Land gods. Yes. For generations, they provided for us, seeding and harvesting the fields of Plainsong. Food for all. A miracle of endless bounty. A farm run by machines. More than a farm. A blessed land, providing sustenance for my people. Until the derangement. So what happened 
to the land gods after the derangement. They've altered year by year. Once they were peaceful, now they turn on us when we approach, even attack us. They'd always enrich the soil, but for several seasons they've glutted it endlessly with mulch. The fields have turned fetid. A blight that keeps spreading, even beyond our lands. We used to have food for all. Now we... We barely have enough to feed our children. Must be... Overfertilization. Spread by spores, maybe? I don't know. That's not even the end of it. Each land god used to visit the sacred cave once a year, but no longer. Without the rituals of renewal, they've fallen apart. Like Ray. They're dying. And my tribe with them. So the cave is sacred because machines like Ray and the one you call Fa go inside? Yes. Before the derangement, each land god left the fields and made a pilgrimage to the cave. Always in the same order. Do first, then Ray, then me, and so on. Spattered with soil from their labors, each reappeared two days later, shining anew, without so much as a scratch. All soil and ornaments of worship washed away. The tribe celebrated each return as one of the eight hallowed festivals of our calendar. But the derangement changed the cycle. Yes, or so we thought. Over time, the land gods stopped the ritual, becoming crazed and brittle. But three weeks ago, Fa trudged inside. The entire tribe lifted their voices in song, praying that the cycle had begun again. Fa has not emerged. What has our machines built to kill? Are machines being made inside? Like in a cauldron? Sounds like it. But the way these land gods come and go, it's not like anything I've seen before. You called yourself a grave singer. What does that mean? To all living things, an end must come. It is my task to ease the passage. I try to bring comfort and sing of the renewal that death sows the way for. But I never thought I would have to sing for one of our land gods. I don't even know if Ray heard me. What you did soothed her more than I ever could. It's not your fault, so. And without the second sight, there's nothing more you could have done. I need to get into that cave. What? No one does that. Well, it's time to make an exception. It belongs to the land gods, Buxo. There is something inside there. Something that could solve problems all over the world. The storms, the derangement. <laughs> Maybe even your broken land gods. What could possibly do all that? A spirit? Yeah. Something like that. I could journey back to Plainsong, assemble the chorus, tell how you soothed Ray, ask their permission to go inside. Great. I'll get my things. <laughs> <laughs> She needs rest. You don't have to tell me. Okay, I'm fine. Assembling the chorus will take time. Heal first, then join me. Fine. Bed rest. I got it. She does not need you to help her heal. 
You could come with me to plain song. Lend her voice to mine as I try to persuade the chorus. It might help her cause. I'd like to, but I'm afraid she might run off. Really? Very well. Later then. So, wait. It's not uh, that I don't want to go with you. It's just that I... trying to say um yes then i look forward to more conversation uh yeah me too <laughs> you're supposed to be resting laurel you should go with her I'll get better on my own. You trying to get rid of me so you can... <sighs> no. Not this time. I'll meet up with you in plain song when I'm ready. You sure about this? Yes. Go. <laughs> get out of here. Okay. So, wait. Keep some extra on hand. From one hunter to another. So, Ray. Another outlander striking around. What do you want? Is there some sort of problem? The problem is foreigners. You're the second one I've seen today. Sooner you all go, the better this soil will be. Less chance of bad seeds taking root. I would have thought easing your land god's pain would have earned some goodwill around here, but... Ray is going to die anyway, just like all of us. Meanwhile, outlanders come, taking what little we have left. Just like that Karja Huntress I saw earlier. All dressed up like a bird, dragging an Untaru girl behind her like a slave. Called the girl a thrush. Never heard that before. Must be some old Karja curse. Wait, a Karja huntress with a new Taru thrush? What, am I talking to myself here? Yes. Saw them just today running southwest, likely to their deaths. Can't harvest the stinger fruit there. Too many machines. Poor Utaru girl, whoever she is. May her seeds find fertile soil. I know you didn't mean to, but you may have just helped me find an old friend. Thanks. Don't need your thanks. Don't want it. To meet Varl and Zoe in plain song. Ask the chorus if we can go into their sacred cave. Minerva should be inside. If I can get it, I can reboot Gaia. And then maybe we can figure out who those strangers in the proving lab were. But first, I might want to head southwest to 
find an old friend, see what she's doing out here, and maybe explore a little. some news for you. Better gear up if you're going into Utaru territory, Red. The Tanakh have been raiding villages all over the plains, riding machines no less. Though I hear the village of Riverhim up north's been putting up a fight. Thanks for the advice.
cauldron. If I can reach its core, I should get enough data to override some new machines. Likewise. Come over here. Sunhawk Talana Kane Padish. Aloy despite the Nora. You're the slayer of Redma. The savior of Meridian. Milu is my new thrush. She joined the Hunter's Lodge shortly after the Battle of the Spire. She's heard a few stories about our hunts together. Stay and rest. Make sure you take some medicinal plants for that wound. So what brings you all the way out here? Are the machines back east too tame for you? Not quite. I'm looking for someone. A Karja hunter, about my age. Name's Amadis. He came out here on his own a while back, and now he's missing. This man you're looking for, is he another hunter from the lodge? <sighs> He'd hate to hear you say that. It's a long story, but he's a former noble. We met out in the wilds after I was wounded on a hunt. He healed me, then helped put a stop to machines that were threatening a nearby village. After that, we, uh, parted ways. Sounds like there's more to the story. Ah, uh, another time. So, Milu's your new thrush. Guess that means a hawk can sponsor more than one now? Things have changed at the Hunter's Lodge. Now all who seek to become the best hunters are welcomed as members, no matter their tribe. But don't worry, you're still my favorite thrush. You're really shaking things up. As I promised when I became Sunhawk. And as for Milu, she believes learning to hunt will help her ailing tribe. Who am I to say no to that? The last time we met, you had left Meridian on a contract to hunt a deadly new machine. Several Clost Riders, it turned out. A hunter-killer, too. You said you were feeling restless. Is life as Sunhawk that boring? Well, I had just left the city. 
I couldn't stand being cooped up with bureaucratic regulations and formalities. But my time out in the wilds helped me realize the lodge needs to be more than a glorified trophy hall. Our hunters should be the spears that safeguard our civilians, like my father and brother were. Sounds like a big challenge. I don't remember others in the lodge being so open-minded. Some are. The rest will get a boot out the door. And I'll get back to it as soon as I find Amadis. I can help you find your friend. I know you must have your own reasons for being out this way. But I'd be glad to have your help. What was he doing out here? He lost someone close to him during the Red Raids. He was heading to the side of the battle to finally lay them to rest. Milu and I were on our way there now. The battlefield's near. I can still come with you. No. Go to Stone's Echo, heal, wait for me there, and think on today's lesson. But- You're no good distracted by pain. Go. All hunters need to recover from time to time. Yes, Sunhawk. It's been an honor. Will she be okay on her own? Of course. She's my thrush. Come. The battle feels this way. I was wondering when you'd be back. Should we move on? Like I was saying. So this battlefield, you said it was part of the Red Raids? The Battle of Burning Blooms. Amadis was part of the Karja army that pushed into the west. His division attacked the Tanakh, but they underestimated the enemy's forces. It was a massacre. I never thought you'd be friends with someone who participated in the Red Raids. Oh, don't worry, he was one of the good ones. He tried to stop the attack, but it was too late. Between you and- He's been on the run ever since. And you think something went wrong for him out here? Don't worry, I'll track him down. He promised he would get a message back to me. I waited, but in a- This is the field. Where the Tanakh slaughtered the Karja. Looks like time and weather have eroded most signs of battle. There are a lot of footprints. Must be recent. Let's take a look. The mm, pouch is full, but my pack has room. Heavy footprints. Maybe Osirum. It's too many to tell if Amadis is with them. I better look around. My focus might show me more. Amadis was supposed to be alone. Why were also around here? Hmm. Light prints. Not Osirum, maybe Karja. Looks like there's a trail I can follow with my focus. Talana, I think I got something. Tracks that head away from the battlefield. Lead the way. I don't get it. Why would Amadis keep going west? Maybe there's something else around here? Looks pretty abandoned to me. Taru? What's he doing out here? Maybe he saw Amadis. Let's Our ask banders. him. Let me get. Do not worry. I am not the Karja hitting kind. Just an old scavenger grateful for a little company. Name's Lel. You two must be lost. Actually, we're looking for someone. A Karja hunter. He would have been traveling alone. Clothes would have been well worn. Yes, he was here. Poking around the old battlefield. Wanted to know what happened. Lucky for him. Old Lel hears all the stories. Karja army. 
charged straight into the waiting Tanakhd. Most burned, but others the Tanakhd marched back west. Your man wanted to know where. Told him I've heard rumors of a place called the Rot. What is it? A Tanakhd prison, or a Karzer graveyard, depending on how you look at it. Where is this place? Further west, in Tanakhd territory, but that did not stop him. An Asaram caravan was camping out at the battlefield, about to head the same way. He joined them. They all went west, towards the ridge. Thanks, Lel. We have to get going. Good hunting out there. Let's head west to the ridge, then. If we find this caravan, maybe we'll find Amatis. Lead on. You mentioned Amatis lost someone close to him at the battle. Do you think the Tanakh took them prisoner instead? To the rot? I don't know. Maybe. Here I come! A shell snapper. But I haven't seen us yet. Who can use that? Hawk and Thrush. Just like old times. I gotta say, it feels good to hunt by your side again. Come on, let's head into the tunnel. It's a dead end. Looks like a cave-in. So what happened to the caravan? Let's look around. Maybe your second sight can help? Uh, 
This door needs some kind of code to open. It doesn't look like there's anything I can do now. Bunch of Osram supplies. A dead end. Talana, I think I found something. In the rubble. What is it? What does it say? He was part of the caravan that went through here. The note ends abruptly, when the tunnel started to collapse, I guess. Oh. But there's nothing here about a Karja hunter. And an earlier caravan made it through before the collapse. Sounds like they went to a watering hole on the other side. So he could have made it? Is there another way through? <sighs> I don't know. These mountains are pretty steep. Then I'll have to find a way. Thank you, Aloy, for coming with me this far. But I've taken up enough of your time. Here, take this. May it help you on your own hunt. W hold on. How do I get in contact with you if I find a way across the mountains? I'll check in with Milu at Stone's Echo whenever I can. If you find a way, leave word with her. I will. Good luck. You too. Lana seems really worried about her friend. I wish there was more I could do, but I don't think there's a way past these mountains right now. Tell your friends where you bought it. You shards are gonna buy a bit. Almost four. Last time I was back, we'd already started to try, but so very nice gates are still open. Now tell you, I'm not getting paid enough for this. First bristlebacks, now Tanakh's attacking Baron Light. Should have never messed with a Tanakh in the first place. Best get all the supplies you need, my friend. These parts just got a whole lot more dangerous.
Javad said the bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry. I should see if there's anything in the back of the valley. Shake off this wet. Dead machines. A trap. Looks like someone's been trying to keep this trail clear. But a diary would be interested in this. <laughs> Them shadow cards are taking a beating. Those people are under attack. Hey! You up there! Aren't you gonna help? Not my job. I'm just here to keep an eye on things. Change quick. That's the last of them. Better check on the refugees. Guess the show's over. Is it bad, Lokasha? Shh, now. Everything will be fine. Is everyone okay? Bruised. But not buried. Our order will live to see another day. Are you sure about that? We're no strangers to hardship, Nora. We've crossed half the Sundom with no more than the clothes on our backs. And as soon as our Sun Priest returns, our path will be clear. For now, we wait. Well, you're better off waiting somewhere else. Your people need shelter. 
There's a town east of- Chainscrape. Yes. We know of it. Savohar says it's not suitable for us. Who? Our sun priest. Our order has made it this far thanks to his guiding light. Okay, and where is this Savohar? He went up to the tower to meditate three days ago, and he won't come down until the sun shows him the way to our new home. The fallen storm bird is an omen, he said. And of course, it must be. I see. And how long do you plan on waiting for him? Until he returns. He will return. He must. You're Shadow Karja, aren't you? We are the Order of Twilight. The difference being... When the Usurper Avad killed his father, we fled with the Karja in Shadow to Sunfall. Our lives there were... difficult. Savohar saw our misery, lifted us up, protected us from the corrupt priests and heartless Kestrels. When their rule ended, Savohar led us from the Shadowlands, the long night ends, and the setting sun will lead us to salvation, he said. And so he named us the Order of Twilight. We journeyed west in search of a better life. Why didn't you go back to Meridian? A bard is a patricide. We will not kneel to the likes of him. We must walk in twilight to our new home. Savohar will lead us there. Uh-huh. There's an Osaram in Chainscrape, Tolland. He wants the Stormbird up there. Yes. He was here just yesterday. A very unpleasant man, even by Osaram standards. He made all manner of threats. But we will not be intimidated. That's all well and good, but he's got friends. Sooner or later, his whole gang will show up. Savohar will come through. He always does. We just need to give him more time. You're out of time, Lakasha. You need to consider packing up and- We won't leave him. And we won't let others disrupt his meditation. Well, they're going to try. Your priest, Savohar. You said he's been up there three days? His meditation can't be rushed. So he does this often? Meditating for days on end? Well, it doesn't usually take this long. But he will guide us through. He always has. We have faith. Sure, but shelter looks like a more pressing concern. Look at yourselves. Those machines nearly wiped you out. And Osram thugs are watching you, just waiting to strike. You're in danger here. You need to grab Savohar and get out. Our situation... This is the worst we've endured. I know we cannot stay here, but without Savohar to guide us, I, I don't... Let me up there. And I'll convince him it's time to move on. But his meditation... If he hasn't received his vision, he won't follow. At least let me check on him. If he's been up there for days... Yes. Yes, that is sensible, I suppose. Please, be careful. The trail up to the tower is falling apart. Savohar is strong, but it could not have been an easy climb. It rarely is. Let the Nora pass. Uh, pack's full, but my stash has room. Looks like I should head up.
part of the ladder. Akasha was right. The trail's in bad shape. This looks recent. Must have broken off when Savohar climbed up here. have broken off after Savahar passed through. I need to find another way up. I'll make an interesting color for my armor. A broken bridge. I might be able to make the jump to the other side. He must have hurt himself pretty bad getting over the bridge. It's not looking good. It looks like he left a trail. I can follow with my focus. There's the Stormbird. Getting closer. This from my stash later. Machines. Sabahar must have snuck past them. I could probably slip past them or take them out. I can get data to override machines from cauldrons. Just need to find them.
That's all of them. Gather these while I can. Savoir in pretty bad shape. The true sun above me, the true sun before me. Show me the way this even tide. <coughs> the true sun above me. You must be Savoir. The true sun before me. Show me the way this even tide. <coughs> Must be empty for the coming vision. You don't need a vision. You need medical attention. On the way up, I saw parts of the trail had given way. Is that how you hurt yourself? My pain. All part of the ritual. You're hurt bad. And your people are running out of time. Staring at the Stormbird isn't solving anything. You don't understand the omen. It fell here at the beacon. I just need to see the twilight path. And my people will find their home. Listen, Lakasha is doing the best she can down there, but machine attacks. Angry Osiram. The Order is scared, Savar. The last rays of the eventide will burn away their fear. I don't think so. What do you think's gonna happen here? If you sit long enough, the sun will show you something? A path to a new home. The fallen machine can only mean that the storm has passed. <laughs> Salvation is at hand. Or some Osram shot it and it hit an old tower. Look, I think you punctured a lung. You can't heal it with prayer. The sun will provide <laughs> and I will not lose faith I'd be more concerned about losing blood your people are worried about you they need shelter security the true sun above me the true sun before me show me the way I think you've been staring at your salvation this whole time. Gotta get over to that stormbird. Grab its heart. Stormbird heart is valuable. Enough to feed all the refugees waiting below. And his answer is sunstroke and a prayer? Why does every priest I meet think blind faith is the answer to everything? This pig 
equipment would work well on armor. The Yasserim that was watching the refugees probably went to get Talland. I gotta get them out of here before he comes back. Guess I'll figure out what to do with it later. There. The Order should be able to afford shelter with this heart. Some food and a change of clothes wouldn't hurt either. Savahar? How you holding up? I need to get back over there. Savahar? I guess you did the best you could. Rest easy now. I'll make sure your people are safe. I should let Lakasha know. And give her the Stormbird heart. Jet. So I'll give you one more chance to make it easy on yourselves and clear out. We won't let you pass, Asaram. If you choose bloodshed, that's on your conscience. Ain't it just like the cards you to make things harder than they have to be? Okay, boys. You heard her. Get your consciences ready. Hold on now, Talland. You again? Listen, I'm all out of patience here. I clipped that Stormbird's wings. The salvage is mine. I don't care who gets in my way. Nora Savages or Shadow Cars or flea bags. I'm taking it. Well, from what I hear, the law says that whoever gets the salvage first keeps it. Which in this case is me. Am I right? You took the heart? I shot that Stormbird! Me! Am I right? She's right, boss. Last it left, shut up! <sighs> okay. You win. Hey, I'm doing fine. I don't need that salvage anyhow. But these people need all the help they can get. Come on, boys. Back to Chain Scrape. I need a drink. Aloy, again, we thank you. You're welcome. Now take this heart. Use it to buy food, clothes, shelter for your people. Maybe even land to build a new home. I... This is... Savalheart must make these decisions. No, I'm... I'm sorry, Lakasha. Savahar isn't coming back. He's gone. I know it's hard, but your people need a leader now. Go to Chainscrape. Talk to the Forge woman there, Petra. Give her the Stormbird heart. She'll look after you and your people until you can get back on your feet. Find your path. I'll do my best, Aloy. What choice do I have? Here, please accept this. But it's modest. But I hope it helps in some small way. To chain scrape, then.
this from my stash when I need it. Yep. Okay, I think I have enough bitter leaf. Dead bristleback, where the falls. Now check it out. It's strange. Parts of it have been tampered with. Almost like an override. I have charged off the cliff above. I should keep going up the trail. Mine. And a lot of broken trees. It's like a stampede went through. Is this where the bristlebacks came from? But how? Unless this cave leads out of the daunt. Okay, let's see where this leads. tracks collapsed. It looks recent. Guess I'm not going that way. There's smoke from deeper in the mine. Where's the backs? So they did come through here. Take a look at where the smoke's coming from. a lot of smoke. It looks like mine runs pretty far back. There's enough 
blaze here to blast a mountain open. And there's a note on one of the barrels. This note's addressed to Oland. <sighs> Looks like this mine was supposed to be shut down. Oland must have gotten greedy. Kept blasting deeper into the mountain. I should let Javad know what I found. Secretly blasting in the mine, trying to squeeze it for all it's worth. Until Bristleback stampeded through. Maybe the explosions blew away open? But from where? Charger heard Lauren's contract mentioned should be close by. I want to look through the contract one more time. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Here are the chargers. If I can take a few of them down, it should lure in the scrappers I'm looking for. Cauldrons might teach me how to override these things. I 
should do it. Time to take these parts back to Larand. I got you the scrapper jaws you needed. Ah, some fine components. Here, your payment. I hope you'll consider taking the other contract. It'll be worth it. I'm positive. Good call. Hey, Lloyd, I've got some prime salvage for you right here. Green. I could feel the pressure building to it. I'm to your Savior, what news do you bring? Picked up the Bristleback Trail by the quarry. Looks like they stampeded out of a mine at the back of the valley. The mine? How could a herd of bristlebacks come from there? I'm not sure, but Alvin's workers were using explosives to tap the tunnels inside. For the love of Dawn, I told him it wasn't worth the risk. Those tunnels, they run for miles underground, even beyond the daunt. No, you don't think. That Alvin's blasting opened up a passage from the other side? Perhaps. Yes, perhaps. If this is true, we need confirmation. An inquiry so thorough, so irrefutable, endorsed by the Savior. All right, I'll keep looking. I need to go. Of course. The embassy, Regala's rebels were riding bristlebacks. And if they attack from the north, they might have a camp up that way. Shut that machine down quick with shock ammo. It's not an outpost. Away from the main camp. That might be where Regala's keeping her machines. see what the rebels were up to here. Better check in their cave.
I can grab this from my stash later. Drawbridge. I've been my way across. Well, that's one half of the bridge. How to drop the other side? There. Bridge is down. fell into the tunnel, which must have collapsed as they ran further in. What if Olven's explosives created the sinkhole? I should head back to Chainscrape to let Javad know. Locked. Yep, not going that way. Returned from the west. Any luck? The bristlebacks were being penned by Tanakh rebels on the other side of the mountains. Alvin's explosives opened up a sinkhole, dropping them into the tunnels. Which they followed to the mine and out into the daunt. Right. Aside from the rebels, if anyone is to blame for the bristlebacks, it's Alvin. Radiant beams of the sun! And all this time he was pointing the finger at us. <clears throat> Bring Olvent here. Petra, too. <laughs> Summoned like a blasted ale winch. You best be meaning to put pen to parch. What? Why is she here? I live here too, Lugnut. <laughs> so what's this about? <clears throat> Thanks to the Savior, the sun has shown the truth on the Bristleback incursion. Tanakh rebels were keeping pens of machines on the other side of the mountains. A sinkhole swallowed them, releasing them into the underground tunnels that led east and out into the daunt. So it was an accident. But let us not forget that it was the Karja... I'm not done. The sinkhole only formed due to your unauthorized blasting in the southern mine, Ulvent. You are responsible for the machine rampage, the workers we lost, the destruction the Bristlebacks caused, all of it. My dear Magistrate, has your precious son baked your senses? I would never give such an order without first consulting you. <laughs> uh, evidence says otherwise. 
Aloy found the shipping manifest in the mine. You skirted the laws of the Sundom Ulvent. All for a few extra shards. Greedy as ever. Not to mention, you sent that oversized tool over there to intimidate refugees over some salvage. Should have been mine. Ugh, that steel is already struck. Get over it. Uh, I... I demand an official investigation. I won't be the victim of some Karja scheme. Certainly. We'll conduct a thorough inquest into everything. The bristlebacks, the refugees. Every business deal you ever put your name to. Well, that... That's not necessary, is it? What if I just return to the claim? <laughs> oh, well, that would save the Crown the cost. Of course. I'll be on my way as soon as I wrap up some previous commitments, tie up some loose ends. After all, the welfare of Chainscrape's people in a transition like nope, this... Nope, you're leaving right now. Chainscrape will be just fine. You think she can run this scorched-out forge dump? Ha! Knock yourself out. Get out! Oh, Boo! Don't want you! Boo! Don't need Boo! you! Down with all that! <laughs> 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 Get off me! Mud looks good on you, Alvind. <sighs> As the sun burns away, Shadow. Mm. Thank you for that, Aloy. Oh, he had it coming. Here, please accept this token of gratitude. You've done the Sundom and my sanity a great service. And I believe we have some matters to discuss. Guess we do. Not the most pleasant boots to fill, but I'll wear them. All thanks to you, Flame Hair. <sighs> okay. Chain Scrape will be better off with Petra in charge. About time he went crawling back to whatever. here. If I don't get Gaia up and running, it'll be like this everywhere. More of the Utaru's land gods. So in the fields with blight. It's like they're still following their programming. Even though it's killing everything. <coughs> Better get down. This isn't a place for a machine. Stay strong. Who are you? There's Varl and Zo. I'm here, as promised. But singing. Does it mean the chorus is ready? It is assembled. I couldn't have done it without Varl. But I don't know what good it will do. The chorus is in disharmony. The subject of the cave is bad enough. Land God Fa still hasn't emerged, and every day more deadly machines try to force their way out, throwing themselves against the defensive cordon we set up around the entrance. That is only the first of many false notes. Your request has exposed deep divisions within the chorus itself and the tribe. I 
I get that the cave is sacred, but how did asking to go inside cause such a fuss? The, f the fuss was already there. Many in the tribe and most in the chorus want to keep doing what we have for generations, which often is nothing. But there are others who call for change or extreme measures. Your request has given fresh life to the debate. Right. Tradition. I've run into that before. But each tribe has to be dealt with in their own way. If you say so. You said you couldn't have assembled the chorus without him. What did you do? Uh, some in the chorus refused to meet to consider your request. They believe that the cave belongs to the land gods alone. But Varl saw that what you did with Ray could be used to our advantage. Sometimes it isn't enough to ask the people in charge. You need others to ask for you. As many as possible. We spread the word about how you soothed Ray? There may even have been a little exaggeration. Growing interest put pressure on the chorus until they finally agreed to meet. I saw it work a few times with the matriarchs, and even with my mother, once or twice. Nice job. You can handle the politics from now on? Oh, no. I'm sure we'll still need you to cut through them from time to time. So what happened to the land gods after the derangement? They faltered year by year. Once they were peaceful, and now they turn on us when we approach, even attack us. They had always enriched the soil, but for several seasons they've glutted it endlessly with mulch. The fields have turned fetid, a, a blight that, that keeps spreading, even beyond our lands. We used to have food for all. Now we barely have enough to feed our children. Must be over fertilization. Spread by spores. I don't know. That's not even the end of it. Each land god used to visit the sacred cave once a year, but no longer. Without the rituals of renewal, they're falling apart. Like Ray. They're dying. And my tribe with them. So... The chorus is assembled. What now? They're considering your request. Then shouldn't we go talk to them? When you're ready. But don't worry. Their debate won't end anytime soon. Meetings like these can go on for days. <sighs> All right. Then maybe I should resupply first. Who knows how many machines are in that cave? Assuming the chorus agree to allow you inside. Aloy can be pretty convincing in these situations. We'll see. Do what you need to prepare. We'll wait for you above, where the chorus has gathered.
going to join in well, singing? The only singing I do is... So the rumors are true. You must be the soldier who took down Regala's champion, and the one who's got this place in an uproar. What's a Tanakh doing in Plainsong? Resupplying for a trip to the hunting grounds. You should come by, it's just northwest of here. Bet a sturdy soldier like yourself could handle the trials there. But I could. Maybe I'll see you there. I prefer the sound of machines to singing. As soon as I get my supplies, I'm heading back to the hunting grounds. That means the chorus is still in session? The people sing to soothe the chorus, to help them break their impasse. It wouldn't be necessary if they were in harmony. I'm not gonna have to sing back, am I? Of course not. The singing will stop when we present ourselves. Are you ready? All right, let's go talk to them. Your sacred cave. There's something inside I need. And if I can get it, it so will help. and the Nora have spread word of your story. And what you want. We know of no spirit in the cave. Only Fa, our land god, who entered the cave and did not return. The power of the land gods is broken. We are diminished. Tales of spirits will not help us. Nothing will. We weaken. We die. And become fertile ground for new life. This is the natural order. Yes. Wait. You're all just going to sit around? Until you become food for worms? Literally? So says the Outlander. Ignorant of our beliefs. Please, remember how she brought peace to Ray. Listen to her. We've heard such temerity from you before, Zo. Let us not forget that you agitated for reckless war against the Kaja. At least she's trying to help. How? By inviting you to break our traditions? Should we change our ways to suit every impudent outsider who wanders into plain song? No. You should change your ways because your own lands are killing you. She has a point. We have stood by and watched as our land gods waste away. You would have us do the same with our neighbors, our children. And this lone outlander can save us. Nonsense. A single seed matters little in the infinite cycle 
of growth and decay. An alarm. It's coming from the mountains. Was that from the cordon? It's an alarm! Machines must have broken through the cordon. Then we need to get down there. What about the chorus? If the cordon has fallen, there's nothing left to prevent us from going in the cave. The time for permission is over. Then off we go. This way, Aloy! Fighting in the fields ahead. Plasma's not gonna hurt that thing much. <laughs> I've seen these machines before. What do I do? They must have come from the corner. The others will defend things. We have to move. More machines! Fire on metal! Now's my chance! Can you use a shock attack? These machines are stronger, deadlier than normal. There's more than just Minerva and a missing land god in that cave. This trail is the path of the land gods. It'll lead us to the cordon. More machines! We can take them out, Aloy. On your lead.
find. Now on to the cordon. Let's go. Right behind you. Save this for a dire. We're almost there. So many machines broke through. What happened to the Cordon's defenders? You better be ready for anything. They will be mourned when the time is right. For now, we must keep going. Into the cave. This will be my stash when I need it. shouldn't linger here. Aloy, we should head into the cave. May the land gods forgive us. What is that? A kind of wall. Made of light. We'll have to find a way around. Follow your lead, Aloy. Up here! I'll pick these up. That ahead, like a cauldron door.
understand what's going on in there, you're gonna need one of these. On the temple, just like this. There's blue light on the door. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. Don't worry, Zoe. I help. Now listen. The machines we've been fighting, they're different. More dangerous. That means there's something very powerful somewhere beyond that door. And it wants us dead. Follow my lead. And be ready for anything. We have to find the core of this place. There's so much metal. Who built this place? Machines. Not like any you've seen before. Oh, not happy to see me? Machines in here. We'll have to take them out. Right behind you. If the land gods come and go, then they aren't just made here. They're being repaired, too. And the spirit of is in here. Minerva? Maybe, but I have a feeling that's not all. Three. Those cables are glowing. I've seen them before. They're like an infection. That thing I said, it wants us dead. It takes over places like these and makes killing machines. It's called a Festus. Even the mountain is wrong. Looks like those cables are blocking the way up. You two wait here. I'll find another path. Okay. Huh. Standing on this floor panel. I activated something. It looks like parts of those pillars are rotating. Maybe if I shoot the gears, I can lock them into place. Make a path up. That worked! How are you doing, Kelly? This place was meant for the land. There. I'm really tired. Do you have a climb on the way up now? 
But I had to, right? To help you and Aloy. To find Fa. You did the right thing, so. What's that thing beyond the wall? It's more pillars. Might be a way across, if I can get them into the right position. Another floor panel. But I can't shoot the gears on the pillars from here. Maybe if I can find something to weigh this down? Can't hook onto that. This crate should be heavy enough. I think I can get the crate through that shield. But I'll have to go around. on the pillars should be exposed now. Looks like there are only two pillars this time. Should be a floor panel nearby to activate them. Stuff for the stash. Drawing back. We can climb up that vent. How do we cross? Cables are twisted around that node on the other side. I'll see if I can get to it. We'll wait here. Get up to the node. All this metal. It's cold winter in here. For you two. Transfer. Right. 
Armament channel, unit G, mark one. Who is that? Hephaestus. It's taken over this whole place. Activate. Gamma Matrix 5. Looks like there's another node on the other side. Near that door. Go do your thing. How to get to that node on the other side? Okay, there's a platform down there. I think I can reach it if I glide. It's taken over facilities before to build deadly machines. But it wasn't always hostile. They used to be part of something good. Something called Gaia. More of those cables covering that door. I think we're almost at the core. Be ready. We've got your back. see what it has become. If one of our gods attacks them, you know what we have to do. Laurel, are you ready? of light. Is it protecting the machine? Yeah. There should be a node I can override nearby to shut it down.
weapons on its back. If I can detach them, I can use them against it. Still her god. I do not grieve for a god or a machine. But because I no longer know what to believe. Look, so if you want, you can go back home. Do I still have one? And if so, for how long? Can you really heal our lands? Save my people? we go. There's more. Like Aloy said, this is only the beginning. Aloy, the core. My focus is showing holograms on it. They look like machines. They must be overrides. Knowledge on how to tame machines. Find out. Justice has been upgrading the security grid on the cauldrons. All the data's been corrupted. Not sure I can do much about that right now. And my focus doesn't recognize some of these. Must be machines I haven't seen yet. Got what you need? Yes. Let's press on then.
Greetings, graduates of Cradle 9. Welcome to the regional... Error. Unauthorized access detected. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Was that the spirit? Minerva? I, I don't think so. At least, not directly. Attention. All personnel must vacate the facility. Immediately. Something doesn't want us here. What exactly was this place? Seen anything like it before? No. There. That's our way out. Error. Unauthorized access. Initiating facility lockdown. Stay out. What's going on? Well, at least the emergency lights work. What just happened? Minerva's definitely here. And I think it's trying to keep us out. I'll scout ahead, see if there's a way to get us in. You sure we shouldn't come with you? Well, yeah, Minerva could be dangerous. Let me make sure it's safe. Okay. We'll be right here if you need us. Minerva's hiding. I should look for a way to access the facility systems. Alert! Restricted access. You are not wanted here. Nope. Sorry. You're not getting rid of me that easily, Minerva. Let's see where this leads. cables in the center for. Minerva's shutting me out. Guess I'm not going that way. shaft. It looks like another part of the facility. Door is locked. into the facility. Maybe I could look for a way in higher up the mountain. Oh, I'm close. If I can get Minerva to cooperate, I can merge it with Gaia. Finally bring her back. And we can start fixing the blight, the storms. Maybe she can help me figure out who those strangers in the Proving Lab were. Why did they have a clone of Elizabeth? Why did they want it back up? Pipes up there. Might lead me to a way back in. But how to reach them? 
I might be able to glide to that ledge. Those rocks look loose. I think I can clear them. Aha! Uh -huh. Another shaft. Okay, now I've got to find a way to plug into this place. Like some kind of dome. Huh? Alert! System core penetrated. Minerva, I need the console. Please. Access denied. It didn't used to be like this. Do you remember it? Anything? You were part of something bigger once. Something good. She can live again, but only if you give her the chance. I can't reboot her without you. Will I cease? I think you'll disappear into her. Become part of her, like you used to be. Misery will cease. Thank you. Thank you, Minerva. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master override activated. Restoring Minerva function to original code. to initiate heuristic matrix? Here goes. So it is Aloy, not Elizabeth. We have much to discuss, but initialization of my heuristic matrix will not be complete for several minutes more. In the meantime, I suggest you familiarize yourself with this facility. It is our best option for a base of operations, and you can make use of its equipment to improve your ability to override machines. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Shall I grant access to your companions? They will be here shortly. Um... Okay, but... Don't overwhelm them, okay? They don't have a lot of experience with things like... Well... 
you. Uh, so no fake this time? No. This time she's real. Borrell, so... This is Gaia. Hello. Hi. Hi. Gaia's still, uh, waking up. Let's look around. I will highlight the location of the lab on your focus. Established a network between your focuses, allowing you to communicate when apart. Good. So what was this place? A regional control center, where Zero Dawn progeny would have overseen terraforming operations in the area. I suggest you explore this facility, Aloy. Until my initialization is complete. You will be able to improve your machine override capabilities in the lab. Apologies, Aloy. I require more time to complete my initialization. I suggest you explore this facility, Aloy. What's all this? This was intended as the main gathering space for control center operatives. You could fit a good number of people in here. Or maybe just a few, to start with. You two go ahead. I'm going to poke around a bit. Oh, I've been down here before. It's where I first got into the facility. What's all this stuff for? This facility was designed to process an immense amount of data from the terraforming system. This is where it would have been stored. Hey Gaia? Why doesn't this door have power? At my current operating level, I am only able to restore functionality to part of this facility. In time, that may change. Got it. Looks like an office. Correct. The facility was designed with a number of private offices. I guess it's nice to have a space to call your own. This would have been an access point for advanced training modules on terraforming operations. Unfortunately, those modules were deleted when the Apollo database was destroyed. That's too bad. What's this space for? This would have been the sleeping quarters for control center operatives. Reminds me of the bedhouse aspirants had to sleep in the night before the proving. <sighs> Door's locked. Maybe Gaia will be able to get it open later. Looks like another office. If no one's ever been here, who built all this? Gaia did. With the help of machines. So this place was here all this time. Built for people who would never show up. Why didn't they? Remember that guy I told you about? Ted Farrow? He... sabotaged things. It wasn't supposed to be this way. 
Through that door is a trail that leads towards Plainsong. So I could head back east if I need to, once we're done here. Correct. So this was supposed to be... a lab. That was its intended purpose. Some of the machine data you recovered from the repair bay below us appears to be corrupted. Accessing the terminal in this room will show you how to repair and complete the override. I'll take a look. Huh. Looks like I need data from machine parts to fix the corrupted override. My initialization is complete. You may continue to explore the facility, Aloy. When you are ready, return to the control room. We have much to discuss. Aloy, you have now visited all accessible rooms of the facility. Right. Okay. Maybe it's time to talk to Gaia. I'll leave you to it. Hello, Aloy. Uh, hi. So you're... ready? Yes. Initialization is complete. All tests show that my heuristic matrix launched correctly and is stable. You must have many questions. Yeah. But two big ones first. We're not gonna be able to fix the biosphere without making you whole. I ran a search for your sub-functions at the Hades Proving Lab, but Minerva was the only one I found. Thankfully, the sensory capabilities of this facility are far more advanced. I will search for the others now. Transmitting query pattern. Receiving. Apollo, Artemis, and Eleuthia, I can find no trace. They are simply gone. What about the others? Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon are revealed. They lie within reach, procurable. And Hephaestus? It too stands revealed, but it is not like the others. <laughs> That's for sure. In the years since the extinction signal, Hephaestus has evolved. Moreover, it is not confined to a single location. It haunts the global network that connects cauldrons to each other across the planet, making it exceptionally difficult to subdue. Let me guess. We need it bad? Correct. Its capabilities are essential. Without it, I can only delay the extinction of life on Earth. Hephaestus is our only hope of a permanent solution. So we start there? Unfortunately, we cannot. Procuring Hephaestus can only be attempted after my own capabilities have been significantly enhanced. 
Grab the other subordinate functions first, then Hephaestus. Precisely so. So, Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon. How do I capture them? To recover a subordinate function, you will have to travel to its location and find the physical processor to which it escaped. Then, exactly as you did with Minerva, you must use the Master Override to revert the subordinate function to its original code state. And then how do I get it back here? The subordinate function must be loaded onto a data storage device and physically carried back to this facility. The cartridge your root kernel was stored on? Yes. Its capacity is limited, so it can only carry one subordinate function at a time. But in all other respects, it will suffice. Maybe you can help me make sense of something. A while ago, I had a run-in with a group of... strangers who tried to kill me. They had machine servitors and a, um... Uh, a clone of Elizabeth Sobek with them. Yes, this was recorded by your focus. Do you know who they are? The answer to that question is related to the extinction signal that woke Hades, prompting my predecessor's self-destruction. The extinction signal? Okay, that sounds ominous. The signal did not come from Earth, Aloy. The calculations are complicated. But it appears to have originated 81 trillion kilometers away. A distance so vast that light itself requires 8.611 years to cross it. Okay, so... What's so far away and... and... Why does it want us dead? The Sirius star system. Sirius? But that's where Far Zenith, their ship... The Odyssey. Yes, that's where it was headed. But it blew up. Unless... Uh, I don't... Why make it seem like they failed? They didn't want anyone to know. They didn't want future humans to think that they were out there. Wait. The strangers who tried to kill me at the Hades Proving Lab? The ones with the clone? Are you saying that they're from... That they're descendants of... Far Zenith? Yes. That is my conclusion. The three subordinate functions that you detected. What do we know about them? All three are relevant to problems currently plaguing the biosphere. Ether is responsible for detoxifying the atmosphere and moderating the weather. Poseidon controls the organic and chemical composition of water resources. Demeter sows, fertilizes, and tends to plant life. If all three were restored to me, they would constitute a massive increase to my heuristic processing density. But beware. Their responses to my query pattern were... irregular. In human terms, they are frightened, lost, and paranoid. Like Minerva. They need to be whole again. Exactly. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. 
Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Farrow, huh? I really hate that guy. Understandable. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? If attainable, yes. Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density. Unfortunately, I have no way to track them. They have disappeared without a trace. You said you need Hephaestus to save life from extinction. Why? Every subordinate function has value, but Hephaestus is by far the most important. Only by recovering and merging it can I regain my ability to design and mass-produce new machines at cauldrons across the planet. Only through it can I program new machines and alter the tasking of existing machines to completely reverse environmental damage. Recovering other subordinate functions may buy us time, but without Hephaestus, I cannot permanently stave off mass extinction. Given Hephaestus' importance, is there really no way to capture and merge it first? I'm afraid that is quite impossible. In my present state, launched and merged with Minerva, I am operating at less than one-fifth, 18.8%, of my intended processing capacity. Hephaestus dwarfs this figure. Were an attempt made to conduct the merge under these circumstances, Hephaestus would absorb me, rather than the other way around. A merge cannot be attempted until my heuristic processing density exceeds its own. And how many subordinate functions is that going to take? Merging Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon will expand my heuristic network to 41.6% capacity exceeding that of Hephaestus. You said Hephaestus isn't located in just one place. Correct. Unlike the other subordinate functions which are confined to discrete physical processors, Hephaestus is distributed throughout the global network that connects the planet's cauldrons. So, when the time comes to subdue it, how do we make that happen? I do not know. While you are retrieving the procurable subordinate functions, I will attempt to find a solution. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world? Yes, and to program their behavioral routines, or even control them directly. So, could you build an army of machines? Attack the descendants of Far Zenith and take them out? It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth, human life above all. So yes, once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the Far Zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. The sole purpose of the signal was to destroy life on Earth, right? Why would descendants of Far Zenith want to do that? At this point, we can only speculate. I mean, Earth posed no threat to them. We don't have the technology to get in their way. We didn't even know about them. True. Unless... Well... Could it be that they want the planet for themselves? The strangers I ran into, they were after a Gaia backup of their own. I mean, if they did that... If they booted their own Gaia and boosted her power... Until she could take control of Hephaestus. And then the whole terraforming system. Then yes, 
The system could be used to do what the extinction signal failed to accomplish. Snuff out life, and then potentially to build an entirely new biosphere. To their specifications. So they could be trying to do the same thing we are. But with opposite results. Extinction. Instead of salvation. Well, this is not good. You said Sirius is really far from Earth. 81 trillion kilometers, or 8.611 light years. Right. So, how would the Descendants have gotten here? On a spacecraft much like the Odyssey, though significantly more advanced. The journey from Earth to Sirius would have taken the Odyssey almost 300 years. This appears to have been much faster. If their ship departed Sirius at the same moment the extinction signal first began transmitting, the journey was made in just 29 years, at an average of 0.297 the speed of light. If they did not set out for Earth until they learned of the extinction signal's failure, the journey was even faster. A mere 13 years, or 0.662 the speed of light. Okay, enough. You're making my head spin. The descendants I ran into at the Hades Proving Lab, they... They had a clone. Of Elizabeth Sobek. So that's consistent with the idea that they came here to salvage Zero Dawn technologies, right? Yes. As your own experience demonstrates, the clone of Elizabeth Sobek functions in effect as a key to the terraforming system. But how could they have made a clone? The Odyssey carried approximately 200,000 human zygotes, millions of animal zygotes, and billions of plant seeds. It is conceivable that Elizabeth Sobek's genetic material was sampled, with or without her knowledge, and carried aboard the ship in storage. That's... Okay, but... I mean... This, this clone... How could she participate in this? Destroying Elizabeth's dream? It's... It's evil. It is difficult to know. Perhaps she is loyal to the group and shares their objectives? Or perhaps she is a subordinate and has no choice but to comply with their orders? Elizabeth Sobek? A subordinate? I don't think so. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. Hmm. So the signal could only have been sent by someone who had thorough knowledge of the system, huh? Yes. The signal's design was exceptionally precise and highly advanced. Were its intentions less malevolent, I would admire the intellect or intellects that produced it. So if the Descendants came to Earth on a spaceship, I guess we can assume that their technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounter with them at the Proving Lab amply demonstrates, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. Yeah, no kidding. The one I fought seemed indestructible. Throughout history, Every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. For example, assuming I absorbed Hephaestus and utilized it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. Always. How did you figure out that the extinction signal came from Sirius? The key came with data on your focus, from Silence interrogation of Hades. The duration of the signal itself, 17.22 years. That doesn't make sense. You said that the signal took 8.6 years to arrive from Sirius. Why would the signal keep transmitting after it was received and you blew yourself up? Because the sender didn't know that had happened until it received notice from Hades. Which would take another 8.6 years to get back. Correct. 
Only then would the sender stop broadcasting after a total of 17.22 years. So the duration, halved, gave me the distance the signal traveled. With that in mind, I simply scanned my astronomical database for any relevant location 8.6 light years away. Because it was far Zenith's intended destination, Sirius was the only logical source. What is the state of the biosphere? Is the terraforming system functioning at all? In a sense, the terraforming system never stopped functioning. The difference, since my predecessor's destruction, is that there has been no central governing intelligence to monitor its robotic agents and assign new tasks. As a result, errors have accrued, and day by day, the biosphere has gradually veered ever more sharply towards destruction. In recent months, disturbances in the biosphere have become obvious. But these bellwether phenomena offer just the merest glimpse of the complex and accelerating cycles of environmental dysfunction, now driving Earth's biosphere towards collapse. And you can't do anything to stop it? If you can return Aether, Poseidon, and Demeter to me, I can improvise modest corrections to parts of the system. Weather will improve, water will be purified, and rampant plant growth curtailed. But such corrections will not stave off collapse, they will only buy us time. Only with Hephaestus can I design and produce new robotic agents designed to permanently reverse the damage that has accumulated. All efforts must be directed toward that end. How long do we have then? At present rates, without additional factors. The biosphere will cross a point of no return in approximately four months. And if I gather Aether, Demeter, Poseidon, merge you with them? We will only gain a few months more. Well, every bit counts. I guess I should get going and start bringing back subordinate functions. What can you tell me about their locations? When my predecessor destroyed herself, the subordinate functions sought physical processors capable of holding them. So in each case you will be looking for a powerful computer of some kind. Ether is the closest and therefore might be the easiest to acquire. However, it appears to be in the middle of Tanakh territory. My knowledge of that tribe is limited to data I read on your focus but they seem to have a significant inclination towards violence. Well, that's a nice way to put it. What about Poseidon and Demeter? Poseidon has taken shelter in the desert south of this location. My substratal geography data indicates that a major old world settlement called Las Vegas was located there. A ruin in the middle of the desert, huh? Strange place for an AI devoted to water. Agreed. As for Demeter, it appears to be located on the coast to the far west. Unfortunately, I am unable to provide any relevant data about the region. As such, it may be the most difficult to retrieve. Okay, so three subordinate functions to go after. Aether, somewhere in Tanakh territory, Poseidon in the desert, and Demeter on the coast. Where will you begin? I think I'll head for Aether. Then I will assign Aether as the objective on your focus. If you obtain it, I may be able to use it to quell the most severe storms in the region. Though I will require Hephaestus and the control over machines that it offers to permanently stabilize the biosphere. Should you change your mind, you can update your objective via your focus interface at any time. I will also transmit a summary of available data on all of the subordinate functions to you for reference. Is there anything else I can help you with? I know you have a great deal to accomplish. I do, don't I? 
Is something wrong? Um... I don't know. It's just that... Elizabeth set the bar pretty high. She had a dream for you, for life on Earth, and... A lot has gone wrong, and it's all on my shoulders to fix it. Do you think I can do it all? Repair the system? Defeat Varzenith? Live up to her example? Absolutely. In her last message, my predecessor declared her unwavering conviction in your success. In you, all things are possible. You prevailed in purging Hades and rebooting my system core. You will prevail in this. Thank you, Gaia. Well, I, uh... I guess I should get going. I have unlocked the facility's exits. One leads onward to the west. The other leads back down the mountain to Plainsong, should you wish to return east. Varl? Whoa! Gonna have to get used to that. That you, Aloy? Uh, yeah. Gaia's opened the exits to this place. Can you and Zoe meet me by the west door? Be right there. Gaia? What is this? It is a control console for a drone-based imaging system connected to this dome. I will transmit the relevant data to your focus. Huh. So this Cyclops is a network of drones to monitor the deteriorating biosphere conditions. I guess it was meant to display on the dome, but the drones aren't connected anymore. If I find the drones out in the wilds, I could get the data from them, use it to reconnect them, and restore the display. Error. Drone feed disconnected. Error. Drone offline. Okay, I need to bring Ether back for Gaia. Varl and Zo are waiting for me by the west exit. But I could head back east first. Check on how Plainsong's doing after the attack. Are you sure? Yes. I think it'll be better this way. After you, Aloy. I need to head further west. To, um, get more of Gaia's components. Make her stronger. You two can stay here in the meantime, and Gaia can help get you up to speed. I'm not trying to shut you out. This, it's like... training. Actually, I'm gonna go back east to get Erend. Bring him here. Look, allies, friends, can help. We have a place to stay now, and like you said, Gaia can teach us, catch us up. It'll be okay. Okay. Take these, then. One to wear, one for backup. While you're at it, stop by Stone's Echo and look for Milu. Give her a message for Talana that I found a way over the mountains. Will do. Are you going with him? No. After what happened in the cave below, I want to stay here a while. There is much I need to understand. Maybe by the time you get back, I'll have a thing or two I can teach you. Looking forward to it. When will you be back? I'm, uh, I'm not sure. But hopefully I'll have one of Gaia's missing components with me. Be careful out there. Even in Plainsong, we heard how the Tanakh clan lands are suffering from storms, 
Machines and now Regala. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Good hunting, Aloy. To North Clan lands. Somewhere out there's three of Gaia's subfunctions. And who knows what else. Ooh, the snow brought the chill. You shouldn't miss this chance to trade. You're the outlander who stood against Regala and her rebels. Only if it means we're good here. Don't worry. I'm not here to drink your blood, or whatever you Easterners think we do. The slaughter at the embassy wasn't your fight, yet you stood by the marshals. As far as I'm concerned, you're no enemy of the Tanakh. But you are going to need help if you plan on surviving the clan lands. I hear and see many things as a scout. I could share them with you, aid you on your journey. I'd be grateful. Well then, I was scouting northwest of here, near the village of Saltbite. There's a place there where the ground is made of metal. Don't know what it means, but it can't be good. Be wary. Appreciate the warning. Ground made of metal? That might be a cauldron. And where there's a cauldron, there's machine overrides. from a camp. Maybe I should check it out. Some kind of Osram camp? How they all about here? I 
can grab this from my stash later. I must be closing in on the signal. Maybe if we go Notice up and over. Machine riders earlier. They I can't go like over. Racing or Looks like we have company. I don't know. Why not rest for a moment, friend? Ah. How good? How about more west? <laughs> that might... Everywhere Have you I got news for you, She cleared out the machines. Careful if you plan on going south. A few of our Delvers headed that way after we first arrived. Said they were tracking a tall neck. Why? Never thought to ask. But we haven't heard from them since. Thanks for the warning. out there overriding it should help me that get girl was wound up tighter than a twisted spring she now she's in the wild all alone forge knows all the things that could kill her out there someone ran off never got her name kept quiet couldn't tell if she was shy or scared all I know is she didn't want anyone near her things that's for sure I was just curious, is all. She didn't have to slug me. Your glass jaw ain't the problem, Lugnut. The girl is. All alone in the bush? And this is Tanakh territory. Which way did she go? West, up the slope. Look for her if you can. I will. Careful now. The girl's maladjusted. Food, water, shelter. Are you lost? Spark to steal. Aren't you a jewel in a junk heap? Excuse me? Hold the hammer. I know you. You're that Nora. <laughs> the savior. My savior. Right in the nick of time. The name's Poor Guff Delvesman. Chief Delver and leader of Poor Guff's expeditioners and purveyors of fine Delvewares. What am I saving you from, exactly? Death and despair, my steel flame friend. See, this grand expedition here has had a, a minor setback. Not far from here, there's a secret tunnel. A passage of the old ones, lost and then found. Me and half the crew came through first. The other half was supposed to follow right after. But days later, only one man turned up, shivering like a frog in chill water. Only thing we got out of him was that death and darkness chased them as the tunnel collapsed. Died with his eyes wide, he did. I've been to the tunnel's eastern side. The way was blocked by rubble. There was also a body. One of your Delvers, I guess, but... no sign of the rest of the crew. Keep your voice down, will ya? The rest of the crew's already spooked. They're refusing to press on with the Delve until they're assured a way out of here. You lost half your crew and you're worried about the Delve. We gotta make their sacrifice worth something, right? And besides, now that you're here, Maybe our sand-stranded days are over. Help me get that tunnel reopened, and I'll cut you in on the Delver's fee. What do you say? I'll see what I can do about the tunnel. Ha <laughs> ha! My savior. For the crew trapped here with you, not your Delve. One and the same. That it? Over there? That it is. Oh, and while you're at it, would you mind keeping an eye out for my lockbox? The second crew was supposed to bring the rest of the supplies and belongings. I'd hate to lose it to the wilds. It was hand-carved by my dear old Ma. I'll bring it back if I find it. I'd appreciate it. Good luck, Still Flame. Oh, 
something with this. There's the entrance to the tunnel for the project. I need to find his missing expedition and clear a path back east. The tunnel's blocked and no sign of the missing expedition. Find a way to get further in. Should be able to blow up that fire gleam. Someone's still alive in here. In here? So you're real. Thought I was dreaming. What happened to you? A terror in the dark. The world shuddered. A machine? Never got a look. The caravan. <sighs> we all ran. Everything collapsed. Crawled here. Did anyone make it out? And find the first caravan? Yes. Someone did. Good. At least... I'm not alone. Rest easy now. Sounds like something big attacked the missing expedition. I better press on. Uh, pack's full, but my stash has room. Expedition. Call them back up.
She said they were attacked by some kind of terror. I don't think it was these burrowers. Ready for anything now? able to clear that rubble with my pole caster. out ahead.
One rock breaker that won't be troubling anyone anymore. The author must have entered the canyon on the eastern side. I better take a look. Those carts must be the supplies the second crew was supposed to bring over. Orgif said his lockbox was supposed to be among them. Orgif's lockbox. Like it came down when the rock breaker attacked. I must have trapped the Osram in the canyon. The rest must have gone into the western tunnel. I'm trying to get to the other side. I should be able to blow this up to clear the debris. Hitting those blaze barrels with fire ammo should do the trick. The, way out. the tunnel should be clear now. I better let Porgif know. I didn't see a car jump on with that. Maybe Jelana's friend made it through. I think I'm back in no man's land. Now it'll be easier to go back and forth. Let's see. So, if we add all the days lost to being stuck in camp nowhere, and throw in some hazard pay, because no doubt the crew will demand it, but reduce the number of the crew by half. Oh, and can't forget the Savior's Delvin fee. Huh. Might just break even. And once the Delve's up and running, the shards will come pouring in. You're back! How's that tunnel looking? I found the rest of your crew. One of them was still alive. For a while, anyway. Turns out a rockbreaker attacked them as they were making their way through. Poor Saz. Many roads lead to Adelva's end, but that's got to be one of the worst. Well, I took care of the rockbreaker. The way's clear now. Ha <laughs> ha! I knew you could do it. And, uh, you didn't happen to find my lockbox now, did you? Here you go. Spark in the dark. Is there nothing you can't do? Here, your fee as promised. Now that the threat's gone, I'll have the tunnel shored up and cleared out. Then I can send for another crew, get this expedition going proper like. Ha! Onwards to the delve! Almost ready to go? Look at you! Have I got news for you, Red? Now that the delve is closed, I'm starting to feel... You might want to avoid going too deep into the desert, especially the southwest. One of our scouts ran into some nasty Tanakh down there, 
The kind that contain machines. You barely made it back alive. Thanks for letting me know. The rebels are as friendly as ever. I wonder what they're doing this far out in the desert. Use some kind of harpoon to take this machine down. I must have attacked the camp. Maybe my focus can help me figure out why. These also are more killed by machines. So the one they took down wasn't alone. These are tall neck antennas. The Osram must have stripped them somehow. That... A harpoon weapon with anchors? Were they? They were trying to take down that tall neck. So the Osram wanted to weigh down that tall neck and strip it for parts. The machines must have caught them in the act. I wish there was a way to climb up and inspect the damage. Unless... I take down the tall neck myself. And try to repair it on the ground. It'll be pretty, but... I still get fixed. next week spots. Well, that sounds like trouble. And I need more anchors. The Osram must have set up other ballistas in the area. I just gotta find them.
I bet a ballista can help me fight these machines. One more should weigh it down enough. Machines, I need to hurry. Coming. I want to use that ballista. I should look for others in the area. this away for later. override you, I can figure out what needs fixing. Nobody. 
Sounds like there are people in trouble. Anora! Hey! Over here! You! Did you assist us with these guys? Anora's fighting the charger! That doesn't mean you can stop fighting them! We're not out of this yet! Rise to the challenge! Now we have a chance! Oh. Watch them! Hit that one, Kanaka! Pick your target! Take the time! Fire discipline, Hatakuto! With one! Ah. Last of the chargers. Let's find out what those Tanakh they're doing here. Over here. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, guessing you're a Tanakh patrol. How did you end up in trouble with those chargers? You need to answer our questions. We don't answer yours. Hatakto, she just fought on our side. That doesn't mean she's an ally. That's pretty much exactly what that means. And we've enough to do, chasing down these Regala Zealots without picking fights with Nora warriors. Regala's Desert Tanakh. We should be fighting alongside her instead of sitting this out. Regala has forgotten her duty, and let her anger at the Karja draw us into... We will speak about this later. You fought with courage and honor. You're free to go on to the Grove, Nora. The Grove? Our capital. If you want to spend time in this area, you'd be wise to check in with the commanders there. If Nicole has broken her duty, then why aren't we bringing her to justice? Because we follow orders. And orders are the same for the fight. Looks like a cauldron, but it's offline. Seems like it has some kind of ritual importance to it. <laughs> Close to Ether's location. I said it would be in some kind of physical processor. An ancient ruin. Turned into a Tanakh stronghold? Could Ether be inside? Poking around's not gonna be easy with Tanakh's warriors everywhere. Army only grows in strength. Regala's forces may seem strong now, but her machines took out my entire squad. Remember the visions. The old ones didn't choose their fight, but still they stood firm. They didn't falter. And neither will we.
Blood of the Ten. You've come to us. You know who I am? Oh, the warrior with hair like wildfire who defeated Regala's champion at Baron Lai. <laughs> yes. You are known to us. I am Dekka, chaplain of the Lowland clan. You've come to speak with Chief Hikaro. Not quite. There's... there's something I need here. Anything you need, the Chief will provide. Come. Is that one of the visions you were talking about? Yes. The records of the Ten. I can show you them, if you like. On the way to the Chief. These visions... You said they're the records of the Ten. Who are they? Old ones. Who fought a heroic battle against machines on this very soil long ago. Their deeds are honored in the visions. <laughs> At least what remains of them. To be remembered and exalted. There used to be more of these visions? Many more. Once this place was filled with light and sound. But over the years, they've fallen into darkness. One by one. That is why chaplains are so important to the tribe. We remember all we can of the visions. Etched in our flesh. Passed down by word of mouth from generation to generation. One day the whole grove may go dark. But chaplains who come after me will keep the memories alive. Why does Hikaru want to see me? We are at war with Regala. And you've already shown that you can stand against her. I'm not here to fight a war for you. Not for us. With us. But I won't try to persuade you. That is for the Chief. He can be very convincing. What does it mean to be a chaplain here? We who outlast our youth study the visions and share their wisdom with our young. What kind of wisdom? How to be a true warrior. To fight with bravery and unflinching honor. And to know when to call for peace. You can see for yourself when we go inside. All right, let's go see Chief Akaro. He's in his throne room at the far end of the grove. Come, be welcome among the records of the Ten. It's glitched. Incomplete. Joint Force 10 at you. Led by Karen. These weapons were only battle. The 10 were dedicated soldiers, working together as a squad and sharing in their duty. And when the time came for battle, they took to the skies and leaped to glory. All Tanakh seek to follow their example. Before the chief, it was one of the few things the clans had in common. Stash. Ten. 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 Ten.
protect the world. In the jungle, sealed by the darkness, and trap their enemies. Soldiers in a jungle. Those were the ten? Yes. They knew how to use the jungle's depths to distract the enemy until the perfect moment to strike. Generations ago, my clan, the Lowland, looked to this one for inspiration as they claimed the jungle to the southwest. Hey, Outlander! Said that relic you wear can hear the voice. You have an old world recording? This box was speaking with voices of the old ones. But now there's noise over them. Let me take a look. Where did you find this? We took it from an Asaram Delver. She was trying to steal it and other artifacts from Tanakh territory. The others were going to bury it in the sand with her. But then I heard the voices. Well, the data here is badly corrupted, but... Delta Juliet 9, you are weapons free and clear to engage the swarm. Good hunting. Copy that. We'll buy Zero Dawn the time you need. Delta Juliet 9, out. The voices of warriors from the past. And that Osiram wanted to sell them for shards. The bravery of the Ten should be remembered. I'm not sure what you mean by the Ten. These voices came from the final battle of the Old Ones. Another battle? I could learn more about it if I could find the other boxes. That Delver did say there might be more recordings to be found in the wreckage of ancient flying machines. She claimed she had a way to locate them. Yeah. The box with the voice data on it is emitting a locator signal. I could use it to find the others. If you do then, bring them back here. I will see to it that they're treated with proper respect. Whatever sacrifices were made by these ancient soldiers, we will honor them. Let me know when you have one that you'll part with. Do you get many Osirum Delvers in Tanakh's territory? Fewer every time we catch them, but those thieving rats would do anything for the shards. There'll always be some who'll risk coming here. And what do you do with the ones you catch? Delvers spend their lives in the dust. So we bury them in it. Alive. Why do you want these recordings? Every battle teaches its soldiers. We should learn those lessons, and honor those who fell. That is our way. If I find more of those recordings, I'll bring them back to you. My focus can detect beacons from those recording devices. Should help me to find any others that are still out there. During their war, the Ten climbed sheer rock, braving blinding snow and wind. They stopped at nothing to protect their own. You make them sound invincible. They weren't. But the visions tell us of their courage and strength, something our soldiers aspire to. The Sky Clan admires this one above all the rest. They make their home in the mountains northwest of here. Others 
What's this one about? The Ten waged war against their enemy in the desert heat. A land too harsh for any to survive. But against all odds, they prevailed. So the Desert Clan does the same. You must have passed through their territory on the way here. I did. They sound a little... extreme. They take that as a compliment. Ten plane desert. Oh, my pack's full. I can get it for my stash later. Listening to these voices? Oh, no. The others who captured the Osaram Delver heard the voices from these ancient warriors, too. They spread the word, and now a lot of people are talking about them. <laughs> Soldiers are interested in old battles. I hope you find what you want from these recordings. Can I ask you something? Of course. I'll see if the signal... Chief is inside. Are you ready to see him? I'm ready. Good. Come. See you soon, Outlander. The savior of Meridian. I am told you held back Regala's forces outside Baron Light. And defeated her champion, Grutta, in single combat. Impressive. I met Fashav there, too. He said you were a great warrior. A man of honor. His death is a painful loss among many. We will not soon recover from the massacre of our marshals. But if you are here to pledge your service, that could help considerably. I am not here to fight for you. I need something in that basement. Something that will save many lives, yours included. It's not something you can see, but it is there. I have seen it. You have named your price. Now I name mine. With my marshals dead, I need your spear. Help me defeat my enemies, and I will grant you access to the chamber below. I don't have a price. I am not a hired killer. I'm here to save lives, more than you can count. I count the corpses of marshals slain. I count hundreds more to knock them, whose lives hang in the balance. I will fight for them. I will kill anyone who threatens the peace, and you will too, if you want me to open the door to the chamber below. Okay. 
So by that logic, what's stopping me from killing you right now? And taking what I need to save everyone? You could try. You might even succeed. Either way, you must fight. My way might hold off Regala and the slaughter she craves. Fine. What do you need? I need more marshals to keep the tribe together. Such warriors can only be promoted at a trial by combat called the Cool Root. I've sent out a call for the competition, but since Regala seeks to undermine me, she is certain to attack it. She'll want to kill me in front of the assembled clans. So what, you want me to be your bodyguard? No. To defend the Cool Root. But there is more. Knowing Regala will attack, one of the clans have balked at sending their contestants. You must go north and force Tecote, the commander of the Sky Clan, to submit and send his best. Force him to submit. Do whatever is necessary. I can't hold a cool route with two of the three clans in attendance. Marshal Katala will assist you. He was maimed at Baron Light, but he can still be of use. I sent him ahead to the northern village of Stone Crest. Meet him there, and he will guide you to the Sky Clan stronghold. If you have any questions about your mission, now is the time. Fashav called Regala your greatest mistake. Why? That is not your concern. Really? I fought against her forces at Baron Light, and I don't even know what her problem is. She was the deadliest of my marshals, the point of my spear. So what happened? Above all, Regala despises the Karja who burned her younger brothers alive. After we turned back the Red Raids and tore down the battlements of Baron Light, she hoped to chase them all the way to Meridian. She could not see the cost of such a war, nor the benefits of peace after the Mad Sun King fell. When I accepted Avad's entreaties, she went mad, called me traitor, challenged me before the marshals. What did you do when Regala challenged you? If you were to knock, you would know that such a challenge cannot be refused. It was not easy to subdue her. I bear seven scars from that fight. The other marshals wanted me to execute her on the spot, but I found I could not sever the bond between us. Her loyalty had been as boundless as her rage, so I spared her. Rather than mercy, she took it as a humiliation one she will never be free from. So Regala wants you dead? She does. But that will not be enough. She won't rest until all three clans fall in behind her as she marches on Meridian. Who knows? With machines under her control, perhaps she can raise it to the ground. It's been tried before. So I hear. I'm sorry. About Fashav. He seemed like a good man. More than a man. A bridge between Tanakh and Karja. No outlander ever earned our respect as he did. I had hoped he would be my voice in Meridian. That peace with the Karja might become something more. An alliance? An exchange. The Karja have much we lack. Our deeds are written in ink upon our bodies. Our memories die with our flesh, but the Karja never forget. Their deeds are written in book and scroll. You wanted to learn from them? As I learned from Fashav, he will be missed. What exactly is the Cool Root? Where once the clans fought each other, now we fight as one against the machines. That is my law made manifest in the Cool Root. Each clan must send contestants whenever I call for the ritual. These contestants face trial by combat against machines in an arena just beyond these walls. 
Those who distinguish themselves become marshals who bind the tribe together as peacekeepers. You called them peacekeepers, but the marshals I met at the embassy were warriors. Warriors, yes, but more. They renounce the clan that birthed them and pledge themselves to order and peace. They enforce my law. They settle disputes and stand for Tanakh in parlay with other tribes. Without them, I cannot rule. Which is why you must ensure the next cool route takes place. Why won't the Sky Clan send contestants to the cool route? Of the three clans, they have the most defensible base, protected by a mighty wall called the Bulwark. Their commander believes he can wait out the war between Regala's forces and my own, safe behind his barrier. Staying strong, while you and Regala weaken each other. You think like a seasoned marshal. Good. Why send me to deal with the Sky Clan? All Tanakh respects strength, and you drove Regala back at Baron Light. That and most of your marshals are dead? Correct. What about Katalo? Can't he do it by himself? He is maimed. They will no longer respect him. That hardly seems fair. What is fair about losing an arm? Whether they respect him or not, Katalo still has worth. He knows the Sky Clan. He was raised in their base. He will guide you well. You said you saw what's in the basement? I did. On the day of my greatest victory. What do you mean? For a dozen generations, the three clans battled for control of this hallowed ground. Only I achieved it. I fought for years, killed whoever stood in my way. When I had finally slain all rivals, I stood alone in the grove. Victory was mine to savor, or so I thought. Thunder roared from the east, and a bolt of blue struck this place. That chamber. Gaia dies, and Aether arrives. All around me, the visions of the grove grew louder and brighter, and suddenly a new one appeared before me. The old one spoke, and what they said changed everything. What did the Old One say to you in this new vision? The one called Faraday foretold the growing danger of the machines and said we must unify to stop them. She called for marshals to enforce the peace. Then the vision faded, never to be seen again. I marked the spot where it shone with my spear and I took Faraday's words to heart. Renounced war between the clans trained warriors to fight machines, ordained marshals through the cool route. Since then, the tribe has been at peace, until Regala attacked at Baron Light. And the chamber beneath the throne, you went in after the vision? I did. Inside is an ancient device. It hums with power. You will see it for yourself after the cool route. This I swear. I'll do what you want, and go north to deal with Dakota. But you'd better not forget about our deal. You will have what was promised, if you succeed. Speak to Dekka on your way out. She will arm you for the road ahead. Hikaro said you have something for me? A weapon to aid your mission. You'll need it for the long road to Stonecrest. Many machines prowl along the way, and our scouts have sighted Regala's rebels in the area. Machines and rebels. Nothing I haven't faced before. Indeed. Head north towards the foothills. Ascend its slopes until your legs burn and the chill air catches in your chest. Then you'll know you're in the Sky Clan's domain. Strike true as the ten, Aloy.
If I'm gonna get ether, guess I'll have to play along with Akaro. I better meet up with Marshal Catalo at Stonecrest. It'll be faster if I ride a machine. of the old world. Looks like a plane and some kind of normal structure. I'll be in my stash when I need it. was taken overlooking a field. Maybe I could try to line it up somewhere in the nearby hills. The metal structure looks like the one in the image. I think I might be close to where it was taken. That did it. the champion come from out east. I've heard of your deeds in battle. My people owe you a debt. So I'll share what I know of this land with you. There's much I see in here that might help you in your travels. For example, did you know that wherever you go in the clan lands, you'll find places where the Ten left their mark? There's an ancient tower north of here. I've heard rumors that relics have been sighted there but it could just be idle chat. Maybe I'll have a look? That's the spirit. news for me, champion. Carry on.
Mother's feel stiff in this cold. Not one more step. The Tanakh don't suffer outlanders in the clan lands. I was given right of passage by Marshal Fashav. I'm not here to fight. Hair like blood. This is the warrior who defeated Gruda, champion of the traitor Regala. Her life is not ours to take. You may enter, but mind our ways. You will be watched. I'll keep that in mind. This must be Stonecrest. Catello should be waiting for me. But maybe I should look around first. in my hands. to trade? Right. Your loss. Where's Catalo? What's he looking Is at? Is that the champion from the Outlander. East I see? Come and check. I have something to share. What you've done for my people is known throughout the clan lands. I'd like to help you if I can, lending you my eyes and ears. Nothing happens in this area without me knowing about it. In fact, I should tell you. They say you're a skilled fighter, Outlander. But I wonder how well you'd do against Ureo, one of our combat trainers at the Bulwark. Pretty sure I can hold my own, but it's always room to learn. Well said. Pay Ureo a visit if you can. Maybe I will. This valley is infested with Regalus rebels. The scouts from the village tell us that they've been moving machines through here for days. Some they ride. Others they herd along, and some they even strip for parts. Especially cannons. The path ahead will not be easy. We should get going. 
My orders are to guide you to the bulwark so that you can speak to Dakota. For all the good it'll do. Not so fast. I'm gonna need a little more than that. What is this place? Stonecrest was built as an outpost, back when the clans were still at war. Its purpose was to guard the entrance to the valley, as well as keep watch on what happens below. And for now, that means keeping watch on Regala's forces. I wish we had enough soldiers to do more than just... look on. For all the good it'll do? What's that supposed to mean? The bulwark has stood unyielding since the birth of our clan. Behind it, Tecote believes himself to be invulnerable. If he insists on defying Hikaru's orders, an outlander and a maimed marshal aren't gonna change his mind. Your chief seems to think differently. And that is the only reason I am still standing here, talking to you. What makes the bulwark so impenetrable? It's made of massive boulders, impervious to any frontal assault. No army or machine has ever penetrated it. I am the only thing that can get you inside. If we're done talking, that is. What makes you so sure Takote won't listen to us? A snake safe in its lair hears nothing but its own rattle. Come on, is that all you've got for me? Hikaru said you were from the Sky Clan before becoming a marshal. I need to know what you know. Takote is a petty, vindictive schemer. If he had any guts, he would have gone after Hikaru long ago. But instead, he covets the chiefdom from behind the bulwark, biding his time, hoping that his foes will weaken one another. Is that enough for you? For now? Why do you think Regala's forces are driving machines through the valley? We've heard similar reports from across the clan lands. The rebels are gathering machines from the wilds, but whatever control they have over them doesn't seem to last. So they herd them into camps. Something else happens there. Something... Something that makes their control permanent. I've been to their camps. You're right. They have equipment that can establish a lasting override. May the Ten help us all. But it gets worse. We've heard rumors that the Rebels are scouting larger machines. I don't know what kind. Let's hope they don't learn how to override them, too. Hmm. You were at the Embassy. I was. I'm sorry about the other Marshals. And their deaths will not go unpunished. <clears throat> You're still healing. I will never heal. But that won't stop me from cracking any skulls that need it. Good thing you're on my side, then. Hmm. So, what's the plan? The bulwark is to the southwest. So undoubtedly we'll have to cross paths with Rogala's troops along the way. We'll either have to fight our way through, or find a way to sneak past unnoticed. Neither will be easy. Never is. Hmm. <laughs> Let's get this over with. On me. Travel safely, soldier. How would you convince Dakota to send his challengers? I wouldn't. <sighs> Come on. To knock the respect of Blade and the strength of the fighter who wields it. What good is anyone who lacks that? Well, lucky for us, we're both good fighters, but let's hope it won't come to that. Hmm. 
So this whole valley is the Sky Clan's territory? Yes. The clan has defended it for generations. Against who? The other Tanakh clans. Even the Karja, long ago. If you want a history lesson, talk to the chaplains. When Rebels you left the Grove, how did you know I'd agree machine. to help Karo? Gut them, or sneak around. I will follow. Seems quieter when it snows. Hurry it up. We need to rejoin the others. Hurry it up. <laughs> I need help here. Those rebels were gathering machine parts, maybe to make more overrides. And Takote won't do anything? Why would he, when he has the bulwark? I grew up behind the wall. It's easy to have a full sense of safety there. More rebels in the clearing. Take the lead. Third time this week. Go. 
I'll save the extra stock for later. Back at Stonecrest, you said the rebels have been moving through here for days. By the time Takote realizes he's outmatched, this entire valley might be overrun. If not for the sake of the rest of the clan, I would welcome that day. To see his pride ruined. Here it is. The bulwark. Let me know when you are ready, and I will announce us. Marshal requests an audience with your clan commander. I didn't know there were any marshals left. We defend the path to the mountain, where the wings of the ten shall find us. All right, Marshal. I'll send the lift for you. Again. So this was home. A long time ago. Come on. Hit Arter, soldier. He's not made of straw. This is a warm welcome. An outlander and a maimed marshal. A spectacle. Reminds me of where I grew up. I never decided which was worse. When they shunned me, or when they stopped and stared. Right now, I prefer shunned. This is it. Ready? We're here for Takote. Let us in. Sky Clan's mighty son returns. Bless the Ten. Your chief has demanded an immediate dispatch of all challengers to the Cool Route. We're here to make sure yours haven't gotten lost on their way to the Grove. I see. Regala must have dealt our chief a mighty blow. If he's sending you two as messengers. This one defeated Regala's champion, Grutta, at the Embassy. She fought honorably. 
I had the sense to bar our soldiers from that embassy. Just as I have the sense now to keep our challengers here. If they must fight, then they will fight here. Defending our walls. Our clan. That wall won't protect you. Not from the machines Regala controls. They're already at your doorstep. <laughs> and what do you know of the battles that the Bulwark has withstood? The blood shed upon stone. I know it wasn't meant to be used as a coward's shield. You were a great warrior once. But that was then. You tell Hakaro, with all due respect, that we will keep our challengers here for as long as we are safe behind the bulwark. I told you. Words are useless with his kind. We're gonna have to kill him. It won't be easy with all his men above. Are you even listening? For as long as we are safe behind the bulwark, he said. Wait here. I need to get a closer look at that wall. What? Why? That wall might not be as strong as Dakota thinks it is. I need to get down to the base of it and check it out. Come. Trade. Beaten already, Outlander. Oh, just you wait. Your armor I need to get a little distance from the wall in order to scan it properly. Okay, time to scan the wall. Just what I thought. There's something metal in there. Oh, that rock is interfering with the scan. I need to get closer. But how? I might be able to climb up on the left side of the wall. Near that waterfall. Give way, I pry at them. Now, better scan that tank again. Power core. I'll bet if I blew it up. But how? Well, can't do anything else here. Better go find Catalo.
guard said you've been scurrying around the wall like a rat. What in the name of the ten have you been up to? Dakota said he wouldn't send his challengers as long as they're safe behind the bulwark. Right? Don't remind me. So? We take it down. Did you hit your head on the way down here? I'm serious. There's something from the old world stuck in there, and it has a power cell. I could blow it up if I just penetrate the first layer of rock and Even metal. Even if what you're saying is true, it would take a cannon to do that. You're right. And you said the rebels were stripping them off machines back in the valley. Come on. No. I'm not getting dragged further into this madness. Hikaru ordered you to help me. You gonna defy him like that arrogant shit up there? That was an unkind comparison. The rebels might have made camp northeast of here. And then what? The two of us go up against all of them? Pretty much, yeah. Well, you may lack sense. You don't lack courage. So, um, back there with Dakota, it seemed like there's bad blood between you two. There is. If we make it through this plan of yours, perhaps I'll tell you. I'll hold you to that. We're getting close to where we saw the rebels before. Looks like the Rebels just got a lot more firepower. Ready? Move out! Focus on the others. I'll follow you in. Frostal heard it. there. You see that too? Anyone else see anything? I didn't see anything.
to hauling this all the way to the bulwark. Hmm. Here. I may be maimed, but I've still got a strong back. After you. good to take the fight to them for once. You really think this thing will do the job? I'll know soon enough. Which snow is gonna pile up? Here it is. But you don't just need a cannon. You need a miracle. Coming right up? Well, go on. Okay. Gotta blast away some rocks so I can expose the power cell. It's working! isn't gonna work. Well, isn't this impressive? Two children playing siege. I hope they haven't hurt the Bulwark's feelings. Come now, stop embarrassing yourselves, and leave this poor mountain alone. This is your last chance, Takote. You can still answer Hikaru's call. This is your last chance. You have it backwards. Leave this place, Savage, now, and take this cripple with you.
Done. Can't hide behind the wall anymore, Takote. Now you have to join Hikaro. Never. Never. We will. We will rebuild it. Immediately. You are not safe. The bulwark couldn't protect you from a single cannon, let alone an army of machines. The only pathway to safety is to unite against Regala with your chief. You decreed that no challenges would be sent, while the clan remained safe behind the bulwark. So send them now, unless your word means nothing. Send them. I didn't hear you. Send the challengers. I look forward to seeing the Sky Clan's colors in the arena. Nicely done, Marshal. What's gonna happen to this place? They'll have to live without their wall. But that's better than living apart from the tribe, as pawns in Takote's foolish schemes. If you want to check up on them, talk to Jera, the chaplain of the clan. If anyone needs help up there, she'll know. Yeah, maybe I will. I'll take my leave then. I need to report to Hikaru. I'll see you at the culvert. Good. We may need another miracle there as well. Not sure where to get the parts I need. Oh, maybe I should go up there, see if everyone's all right, and find this chaplain, Gara. Might also be a good idea to resupply before I head back out. Come, Huntress. You and I should speak. Are you Chaplain Jera? Katalo said I should talk to you, to see if you need help. Bold move, Wallbreaker. Burying Takote's pride beneath the bulwark's rubble. I, I was just... At ease. Many in the clan agree with you. And Marshal Kotello was right to send you to me. There is something you can help with. A few of our soldiers followed him to the embassy at Baron Light, against Takote's orders. Right. I remember Katalo showed up last, with only a few representatives from the Sky Clan. When those soldiers returned home, Takote reassigned them to an old watchtower, one we had abandoned to the machines. He insisted that with war brewing it must be reclaimed, but those soldiers are serving no one out there. If, however, they were to return by request of Hakaro's champion, Takote wouldn't have the backing to deny them, especially when their chaplain supports their return. Tell a few soldiers to come home and give Takote another black eye? Sounds easy enough. Go to the cold rushes, a long stretch to the west. The watchtower stands beside the falls. Speak to Kiva there, the squad's leader. Good luck. Outlander, I have just the thing you do better than that. 
scouts reported up to the great yeah. What about it? Turns out it What's going on here? The Wallbreaker. Jekka's brother here went off to get himself killed. He'll finish the climb. I know it. <laughs> Not likely. My brother Pento left to climb the March of the Ten, to get his soldier's mark. They were supposed to be done by now, but he's not back yet. Jekka! Lataka! To your training, now! Your brother should have stuck to his cleaning duties. Would you mind checking up on the march? If I leave, my squad leader will kick my ass. And I don't want anyone thinking I'm worried about my brother making the climb. Because I'm not. I get it. You can't miss the path markers. They're by the waterfall west of here. If I head that way, I'll see what's going on. Thank you. No slacking, soldier! Outlander, Chief Akaro and Marshal Katalo await you within. The cool route should be starting soon. Once it's done, I'll be able to access the chamber below Hikaro's throne. And ether. must lead to the arena. It's another part of the ruins. Turned into a fighting ring. Look at them. Oh, this could be useful. I hope you're right, Marshal. Aloy. It seems you've had to move mountains to bring the Sky Clan to heal. Literally. Katalo helped. Yes. Takote reprimanded for all the clan to see. You both served well. But now the cool route is at hand. Some have come to compete, others to bear witness. They know Regala will come for me. I'll do whatever it takes to hold up my end, as long as you remember yours. So what's the plan? Katalo. There are only two viable ways to attack the arena. Through the throne room you just passed, and by the trail on the north end. We've set up barricades at both. But if Regala means to assault the cool route with machines, she will have to attack by the trail. You will join our defenders there. Hold the line, and I'll have my marshals. You will be free of my service and receive your reward. Make whatever preparations you must. Once the cool route begins, you must see it through. The grove, the arena, it's all part of the same ancient structure? Yes. Here the land remembers the sacrifice of the Ten. Their deeds commemorated for eternity. Sacrifice? The visions tell us that on the ground below, they gave their lives in a fight against machines. We honored them by holding the cool route where they fell. I know where I'll be. What about you two? I will be here with the Chief, where I belong. Should the fight reach us, we will take the blood owed for our fallen. If it comes to that. The defenses will hold. Let's get this over with. Good. You'll find Decca at the North Barricade with the rest of our defenders. Strike true as the Ten. I'll see you when this is done.
This is a ceremony, the not of the no is found in the cool Let the room. blades heavy day. I can feel it. Why would she do that? the cool today? Will demand a sharpened blade. It must not be defined. The Tanakh must be united under Blade one leader. The final battle with Carl is nine. I died. Mr. Cote, this thugs, of course. Show some respect. Look, Easterner. Didn't think the Sky Commander himself would be joining us today. If there's a chance my challengers will be facing Regala, it is only right their commander join in their fate. Or maybe you need to save face after what happened at the Bulwark. Careful now. Sometimes sharp wits bring out sharp spears. I'd save my spear for Regala's troops, if I were you. My strength is yours. Okay. Hikaro's defenders should be at the end of this trench. And look, we are not alone in this fight. Focus on the machines. Take them down, and Regala's forces become no different from our own. Yes, Chaplain. Watch each other's backs. Dismissed. Our soldiers are ready. They will defend the cool route from below. But from above. Not bad. Where did you get it? One of our squads ripped it off a fallen machine. The honor is yours. Regala may have her tricks, but you will show her our teeth. The cool root is upon us! Our struggle demands new blood! New leaders! Release the quarry! Challengers, approach! All who take down a machine shall be named Marshal. Remember the ten. Strike from the air as they did and seize your glory.
What is that? I don't know. Get out of the way! Hold the defenses! Go!
eat those things. Regala went after Hikaru and Katalo. I gotta get to them. This isn't finished! I'll be back with everything I have! And all who stand with Hakaro will be run red. At attention. You fought well. Proved yourself against enemies both metal and flesh. I name you all, Marshal. Your first order is to secure the arena from any remaining rebels. Go. I failed. I should have finished Regala. But now she'll be back with more machines. Stronger than ever. I'll do what I can to help. No, you've done enough. Far more than our bargain called for. When we first met, you spoke of your true mission on which all depends. I wasn't certain if I believed you then. But I believe in you now. So leave me. And get to your task. What will you do? Tend to the wounds. What you need is there. Take it. Your deeds today will be remembered like those of the Ten. There. That console. Come on, Aether. Time to go home. <laughs> Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Aether subordinate function to original code. 
Got it. Now to get this back to Gaia. The visions in the grove have changed. The words of the Ten are now clear to us. Here, this must be the vision that Chief Ikaro saw years ago. All of the visions are changed, and this one just... arrived! The visions throughout the grove are different now. And this one, it, it just appeared. Is this your doing? The visions have changed. That's the one that inspired Chief Hakaro. More testimony of the old ones. Hear now the words that reunited a people. Following the tragic events of the war, Anne Faraday, the chief architect of the reconciliation effort, addressed a nation in need of hope. If we look into the future, the lens of the recent past, our fears loom. Wars waged against machines, scarcity of food and water, Storms that drive us from our homes. But true courage means facing those fears with conviction instead of cynicism. Leading the peacekeeping effort with these brave men and women, these marshals of the new Southwest has strengthened my conviction. That when we are united, we can overcome any threat. Join me. Join us in that conviction. As we strive for a nation and a world without want or war. Reporting for duty, Commander. I'm coming with you. But Hikaru needs you. Because of you, he has new marshals. And a rallying cry the clans cannot ignore. So I will stand with you on your mission. Give whatever is left of my life. It is what I choose. How can I say no to that? So, there's someone who wants to join us. I need you to meet him in the foothills and guide him the rest of the way. Will do, Aloy. Go to the mountains, west of Plainsong. A friend of mine will meet you on the ascent. I'll join you when I can. A friend of yours? Should be interesting. If they can't face All these right. machines, I need to get Ether back to Gaia. Marshals. Seems Over like capturing it did something day. to the other holograms, too. Holograms. Might be worth checking out.
To appreciate my wares, especially the armor. You're a Nora, aren't you? Haven't seen one since I visited Hunter's Gathering. I didn't think the Utah would travel that far east. I did it for my dyes. I like to see how different tribes use roots and plants to make new colors. It's amazing how the right hue can make armor express so much more than its mere function. I have some samples, if you're interested. It's nothing compared to the Tanakh Dyers. They may not be the friendliest of tribes, but if you bring their dyers plants or samples, they might show you their skills. I'll keep an eye out for them. This? Oh, uh, <laughs> you're not waving a hammer around, Aaron. Try a gentler touch. And my big sausage fingers don't really do gentle, okay? Bring it back. Trace the line. To your right. Other right. I just saw it. It's the one Aloy found up north. Gotcha! They call it a, a concussion beat party or something. Yeah, now that's music. Aloy! Aaron, you're all better. And you're here. Varl said you might need some help after all, doing uh, complicated things. We still have much training to do, of course. One does not become hunter in a day. Each seed grows at a pace of its own. Doesn't mean it won't bloom. You should know your Tanakh friend arrived. Katalo. I heard their warriors drink people's blood. I want to sleep with one eye open. I think he's seen enough blood for a lifetime. I showed him to one of the rooms. He seems to appreciate the privacy. Uh, looks like you've got things under control. I should get this to Gaia. Right. We'll keep on training. Catch up as fast as we can. I'm seeing glyphs in my dreams already. Well, while you've been off gallivanting around, I've been working with Gaia to find out more about the land gods. So from where I'm standing, you're in need of some training. Come along. Uh... Oh, uh... Okay. Oh, and I delivered your message to Talana. She headed for that Asaram camp you two were looking for, to the southwest. The Old Ones created so many wonderful inventions to help others. To help the planet. Technology really can be an amazing thing. Yeah, until it gets a mind of its own and uh, decides to kill everyone. You're just a ray of sunshine, aren't you? Only for you. Wow, this place is starting to come alive. Yeah, and Gaia placed all the data she got from your focus into that archive room. But with the focuses you gave us, we'll be able to access it at our own pace. You know, learn and train. And if you need us, we'll be there to fight at your side. Got it. Thanks, Varl. How's, uh, training with Zell? You know we really are training. Mostly. Look, she reads glyphs faster than I can already. I'd be a fool to refuse her help. Of course. Looks like I was wrong about the Zeniths. Their ship didn't explode on its way to Sirius like everyone thought. And we saw how they lied about creating a better future at their launch facility. 
Guess they lied about what happened to their ship, too. But still, a tribe settling amongst the stars. I couldn't put a single dent in their shields, Varl. That one zenith almost killed me. That didn't stop you from resurrecting Gaia. Won't stop us from using Hephaestus against them. Let's hope that's enough. You guys reading something over there? We just finished going through all the logs you collected back in Nora territory, and All Mother Mountain. It's hard to imagine that my ancestors were trapped inside, without the knowledge from Apollo to guide them. Thanks to Ted Farrow. Yeah. I wonder how it must have felt when they were finally free. The world must have seemed so beautiful. Not to mention terrifying. They weren't much more than kids. And they became an entire tribe. I'm guessing you've spoken with Catalo? I wanted to pay my respects for those who fell when we were ambushed at the embassy. I told him I'd never seen anyone throw themselves at a machine like he did. He said a warrior shouldn't be praised for fulfilling their duty. <laughs> for a second I thought I was talking to my mother. Never thought a Tanakh and a Nora warchief could have so much in common. I'm guessing Talana didn't stay for long? You got that right. Makes you wonder what this Amadis guy did to grab her attention. Whatever it was, she didn't tell me. Must be quite a story. I guess she'll tell us when she's ready. How's everyone handling their focus? And we all have our difficult moments. Aaron definitely curses the most. But I'm hoping Asaram's stubbornness prevails. How's everyone doing? Just taking it all in. No one snapped their bowstrings yet. Think you can hold the fort while I'm gone? If Aaron stops listening to the same music over and over again, maybe. We'll be fine. Varl looks happy about his training partner. Learning is best done together. Have you gone back to plain song at all? I thought about it, but I wouldn't know what to tell them. The chorus already thinks me a thorn in the thicket. If they knew what we did to Fa, even if they understood, there'd be little they could grasp about all this. No. For now, I must leave the tribe behind. What are you up to? Gaia was kind enough to put together a list of glyphs used by the Old Ones. She helped me decipher some of the data you've collected and showed me how to use the focus to help the process. It's not easy, but it's been working so far. That's good to hear. I see you've settled in. Gaia did say this place was built for us, so we could regain control of our lands with her terraforming system. Nurture them like the land gods do Plainsong's fields. It does strike me as odd that a place of life should have so much metal. Sounds like you met my friend Talana. Yes, the Karja Huntress. I haven't seen armor like hers since the Red Raids, but Varl tells me that she too suffered at the hands of the Mad Sun King. Yeah, she's one of the good ones. Trust me. You've spoken with Katalo? A few words. Tanakh don't have much use for us outsiders. You must have made quite the impression for him to offer his fealty. So you've been talking to Gaia? Yes. She was kind enough to take me through some of the history of the Old Ones, including their demise and the heroic actions of her creator, Elizabeth Sobek. I was surprised to see she was you. Past, but reborn? <laughs> Not that I claim to understand how. You've been getting to know Erend, I assume? Of course. Any friend of Varl's is a friend of mine. In this case, a very loud friend. 
Did Gaia tell you anything about the Zenith? She did. Though it wasn't exactly easy to believe. To think that there are places among the stars where life can bloom as it does here. It is... humbling, to say the least. And heartbreaking, that such life should be bent on destroying ours. So, how does a tribe like the Utaru manage to maintain the peace with warriors like the Tanakh? By holding them off. When our fields bloomed aplenty, the Tanakh looked upon our lands with envy. But Plainsong's dishes provided sanctuary and high ground to keep invaders at bay. In the end, even the Tanakh saw sense in a truce. The Utaru promised to provide the Tanakh with food from our crops every year. In exchange, the Tanakh would relinquish one of their own, a veteran, to train the Utaru in combat. This custom was abandoned a few years after the derangement, but some veterans still remain in the plains. Right, I should probably go. I shall return to our training then. Aloy, we've gathered some supplies in that chest. Take what you need. Did you forget? I've been meaning to ask, what's the deal with you and the chorus? You didn't seem to be on the best of terms. That's what happens when you're the one Utaru who insists on publicly defying them. Twice. When the Karja invaded the Utaru Plains, they did more than just attack our villages. They burned our fields, took our people as slaves, and murdered those who were too weak to make the trip back to Meridian. To be sacrificed in the Sun Ring. I was helping the healers back then, as waves of refugees swarmed into Plainsong. The Chorus was divided in how to face the invaders. Some saw sense in raising arms, Others believed the dishes would keep us safe, as they had many times before. And while they bickered, I buried the seeds of the Fallen. I couldn't have been easy, seeing your people suffer while the Karja invaded your lands. I come from a small village near Plainsong. My grandmother used to say there was no seed that wouldn't grow there. I moved to the dishes when I decided to apprentice as a healer. When the Red Raids began, I thought about going back. But the injured kept pouring into Plainsong, day after day. So I kept putting it off. One day, I woke up to hear a Karja raiding party had ransacked my village during the night. I rushed there with the healers to help the survivors, but there weren't any left. The smell of burning flesh haunts me to this day. I'm sorry, Zo. I made it a point to appear before the Chorus as soon as we returned, to demand that we take a stand against the invaders. I was denied. So I left to fight on my own. You said you set out to fight the Karja alone? I did. But it turned out I wasn't the only one. News of my disagreement with the Chorus spread through the plains. Before I knew it, I had more than a dozen Utaru warriors ready to follow me into battle. We knew we couldn't take on the Karja armies head-on, but we also knew the lay of the land better than they did. We ambushed smaller raiding parties, sabotaged their supply lines, and hit their encampments at night. Sounds like you were a force to be reckoned with. Enough that the Tanakh took notice. When the clans began to push the Karja back east, they let us join their ranks. We chased the enemy all the way to Baron Light. You said you were at Baron Light when the Tanakh defeated the Karja? Tanakh marshals climbed the Cliffs of the Daunt under cover of night, then attacked from the other side. Before we knew it, the gates were open, and the full force of the clans burst through. What happened next was... Not something I like to remember. When all the dust and blood settled, 
I smelled it again. The stench of burnt flesh. Our enemies defeated. What was left of my squad returned to the Utaru Plains. I went back to Plainsong. But even as the harvest passed, it didn't feel like I'd truly returned at all. Is that when you became a grave singer? I thought soothing the suffering of others would somehow appease my own. Then you came along and gave me a choice. I could either sing at people's graves or fight for a chance to keep them alive. I'm glad you chose the latter. I better get going. Don't let me keep you. Hey. Hey. A nice place. Well, it's not like I built it or anything. Right. Well, I can see why you, uh, why you had your doubts about bringing us along. It is a lot to take in. But, uh, don't worry. <laughs> That's nothing I can't handle. Right. I was hoping you could help me with something. It's about the Tanakh rebels, and it also has to do with the Osirum. Really? That doesn't sound good. Let me know what I can do to help. I see Varl gave you a focus. Well, it doesn't look as you know, fashionable on me, but by the forge, the things I've been able to see. Granted, a lot of them are bad, you know, the old world ending and such. I'm still trying to wrap my head around most of it, but I never really understood how you were ever able to find my sister back in the Sundom. And now I do, sort of. It makes me feel like I could be useful, you know? It takes some time, but yeah. How are you settling in? Yeah, Varl's been helping me get the lay of the land, when he's not getting all tongue-tied. I don't know who makes him more nervous, that Gaia lady or our new Utaru friend. Well, what about the Vanguard? Aren't you supposed to be back east, ordering them around? I sent some of them back to Meridian with a message. I doubt Avad will mind me sticking around to help the savior of Meridian. So, you've met our new Tanakh friend. He's, uh, quiet. I thought his people were supposed to be bloodthirsty maniacs. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. Yeah. Well, I guess if you trust him, so do I. So, Talana came by the base? Yeah, more like rushed through. I was hoping she'd stay for a drink at least. Only Karja I've ever met who's any fun. But it seemed like she had more pressing matters to attend to. I guess you know what we're up against by now. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When Varl first told me those bastards come from the stars, I thought he'd eaten too many of those medicinal berries. Yeah, but I've gotten used to seeing impossible things, thanks to you. I just wish they weren't always trying to kill us. Yeah, you and me both. I discovered an Osirum militant group. They call themselves the Sons of Prometheus? It looks like they're the ones overriding machines for the Tanakh rebels. I thought that was something only you could do. They're familiar with ancient tech. And they're as anti-Karja as it gets. So, last year we stopped Durval and his cronies from blowing up Meridian in retribution for the Red Raids. And now you're telling me we have another group of Osiram trying to wipe out the Karja with... With an army of machines and bloodthirsty Tanakh? Pretty much. Oh, well, that's just great! Is there any way you can help me find out who they are? Anything to track them down and stop them? Yeah, I can send out some messages from Chainscrape. Get in touch with my contacts in the claim, see what I can find out. I'd appreciate that. Oh, and I'll let you know if I find out anything more about the Sons of Prometheus. Same here. Are you sure that's what the data says? I'm telling you, it's a drink, but it's soft. How is it soft? 
It says here it had bubbles in it. Well, we can't expect to make sense out of everything. Oh, good. Door is locked until Gaia can restore access. Please merge Ether with me. Afterwards, I must discuss an important matter with you. So, what did you want to discuss? While you were away, I received an unusual transmission on my dedicated Aluthia frequency. Aluthia? That's one of the sub-functions you couldn't detect before. Yes. The transmission occurred so slowly that at first it seemed like an accidental blip of data amongst background static. Once I noticed this irregularity, it took some time to collate the complete message. Where does it lead? To a mountain to the northwest of this facility. A word of caution, Aloy. It is possible this transmission is genuine. It is also possible it is being broadcast by someone or something else. You don't think it's actually Aluthia? I am uncertain. What's SOS? It is an old world code. A distress signal. A desperate plea for help. Why would Aluthia send a coded transmission on a frequency only the two of you can communicate on? I believe it was done as a precaution to avoid detection. Or at least to create the appearance of the desire to do so. I am also uncertain why Eluthia would expect that I would be able to detect and respond to its distress signal at all. As far as it is aware, I no longer function. Okay, so... Either Aluthia is in trouble and sent the message hoping you were out there... ...or someone else is trying to get us to go to these coordinates, pretending to be Eluthia. That is my conclusion as well. Could the Zeniths be sending the transmission? According to the data I reviewed on your focus... The Zeniths recovered the other Gaia root kernel in the Hades Proving Lab. It is feasible they used it to gain access to my internal frequencies. So... Maybe they sent it thinking you'd respond, and reveal your location. Possibly. However, the transmission is highly irregular. If they intended to provoke me into revealing myself, I would expect the communication to be more routine. Right. So maybe it's not them, then. You said the coordinates lead to a mountain to the northwest. What's there? I have no record of anything of note in that vicinity. Okay, and what about the other number in the message? 237. Any idea what that means? I have queried my available databases, but it does not appear to have any significance. Perhaps its meaning can only be understood at the indicated coordinates. All right. I'll go to the coordinates and check out the source of the transmission. All by yourself? Ha! No way. I included Erend and Varl in this briefing via their focuses. I concur that you should not investigate this alone. What if it's a trap? Of course it could be a trap. But if it really is Eleuthia, then it's in trouble, and I need to bring it back. Don't worry. I'll be careful and- We're coming with you. <sighs> Fine. Go grab your things. We'll wait for you at the west exit, in case you need to upgrade your gear. Aloy, 
Good to know. I'll check it out when I can. Gotta go after Aluthia. Erend and Varl are waiting for me at the west exit. Aloy. It's good to see you. I'm guessing you've got a lot of questions. I've been told of our enemy and their intentions. Your friends showed me to the... vision you keep in this place. Gaia, and gave me this focus. I don't pretend to fully understand everything, but all I really need to know is where to train and when to fight. Welcome to the team, then. What are you looking at over there? The others have been helping me decipher the symbols the focus shows me. So... I thought I'd try to understand the weapon you intend to use against the enemy. This... Hephaestus... It will be able to make machines? That answer to Gaia? Yes. How many? As many as we need. Such power... Has the world ever seen the like? Now that you know who the enemy is, do you have any questions? I'll admit, I find them hard to grasp. From the heavens. And invulnerable. For now. I will leave the strategy to you. I trust you will point my blade where it will cut the deepest. You've had some time with the team now. Any thoughts? I admit, I was surprised to see Nutaru here. Farmers don't make for effective soldiers. I'm told she rallied some in her tribe against the Karja, and fought all the way to Baron Light. Interesting. Perhaps I'm mistaken. You said the Bulwark was your home a long time ago, that you were part of the Sky Clan. Yes. That's all you're gonna tell me? Fine. As you wish. My parents were killed in a clan skirmish, so I was raised by my squad. As I grew older, I came to be known as an accomplished fighter. Takote took a special interest in me. I fought by his side against the Karja, and led my squad on a dangerous climb into the Daunt. It was I who opened the gates at Baron Light from the east side, allowing the Tanakh to raise it. That must have gotten you some attention. Indeed. I was welcomed home as a hero, and I was content. Then why'd you leave? I became a marshal. Why did you leave the Sky Clan to become a marshal? I was sent to the Kulrut by Takote. Back then, I would have obeyed his every order. I believed in him, like one would a father. I was too blind to see the fear in his eyes. Fear of a rising young warrior challenging his command of the clan. I returned a hero from the battle at Baron Light. But to him, I was only a threat. Never occurred to him that I had no interest in rising above my station. Why did Takote think you wouldn't be a threat to him if he sent you to the Cool Root? Takote knew that if I survived the Cool Root, I'd be forced to forsake the clan to serve the Tanakh as a whole. I'd never be allowed to challenge his command, even if I wanted to. After our victory at Baron Light, Takote spoke to our people, said it would be selfish to rob Hikaru and the marshals of a warrior like myself. Even though he knew perfectly well, I had no intention of ever leaving. It was exile, guised as an honor. One he knew I couldn't refuse. So I became a marshal, and never looked back. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I am not. Though it pained me at the time, a marshal is what I was destined to be. When we were at the Bulwark, the guard said something about the Wings of the Ten. Hikaru also mentioned it at the Cool Root. Dekka, too. What does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings. And 
leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess, and it is why the challengers leap into the arena during the cool route. Many times I imagined it as a child. The feeling of freedom, and the awe it must have inspired. What did Chief Akaro say when you told him he'd be joining me here? You spilt rebel blood at the Grove, and helped reunite the clans. There was little more to be said. He understood. Well, I'm honored he lent me his best marshal. At least for a little while. Indeed. I should go. Feel free to check in on Hikaro and your people. Doors always open here. I will. I overheard that Varl and Erend are to accompany you on a mission. Do you require my assistance? I'd rather have you and Zoe guard the base while we're away. It shall be done. May the Ten walk with you. Another one of those subordinate functions. I've been carrying Elizabeth's pendant with me for months. But since we're gonna stay a while, I think I'll keep it here, or it'll be safe. Elizabeth put all of her faith in Gaia. And Gaia put all of her faith in me. If I can do it all, recover the subfunctions, defeat Far Zenith, heal the world, I'd like to think Elizabeth would be proud. Huh. Looks like someone's rearranged stuff in here. Aloy, hey, I see you found your room. Your companions thought you would appreciate a private space of your own. I was thoughtful of them. My old spear. Rust helped me make it. When I finished my training. It feels like so long ago now. When Varl found me after the Hades Proving Lab. I thought I saw Rost. I don't think he'd understand any of this or what I have to do but still I wish he was here this is the rite of passage that Vashav gave me at the embassy I liked him he seemed like a good man I think he was really looking forward to going home when I met Hikaro, I figured he was just another bloodthirsty warlord. But Vashav was right. Hikaro wants peace. It won't be easy. But with his new marshals, maybe his vision has a chance. There she is. You ready to head out? Let's go. Look at us. Three battle-hardened badasses forging into the unknown. This ought to be good. This distress call had to be up a really steep mountain, huh? Amen. 
again. takes the keg. Burl, see if there's anything over there? On it. We'll check out the battlefield. Let's start with that zenith. Well, there are obviously more zeniths than we know about. Can't believe you fought one of them. Almost didn't make it. Whatever the rebels did, it took down her shield. But why was she here? I can access her last communication file, but I'll use my focus to scan the battlefield too. What about that crazy weapon the Zenith had? It looked like she can make it come and go at will. What? What's Hello, Verbena. What do you have yeah. for me? Well, go do your thing. I checked thing. everywhere. Still I'll no sign here. of the asset. Can we call off this pointless search already? Let's not forget who let it slip away in the first place. Now, I'd like to see results by nightfall. Do you think you can manage that? Hold on. I think I see something. Snow's coming down heavy. Forge's breath. What a mess. The Spectre had instructions to assist recovery of the asset. I wonder what this asset is. looking around almost <sighs> one of the sons of Prometheus it looks like his focus was sending data on the weapons somewhere else Still hot. I need to know how it worked. But I'll have to check on it once it's cooled off. Looks like the rebels camped here for a while. Are they watching this area? All right. I think I have an idea what happened here. I better get back to Erend. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of chilly up here. All right, she who sees the unseen. What did you find out? This was a carefully planned attack. I found camping gear up there. The rebels must have been staking out this place for at least a few days. They were waiting for the Zeniths to show up, all so that they could test that weapon. The Zeniths have a personal shield that 
makes them invulnerable, but somehow the weapon got rid of it. The Osirum that was operating it was sending data on it somewhere else. It was probably just a prototype. I've known tinkers that do that. I'd do a little trial run before breaking out the real thing. Well, I guess it's still a work in progress, if it blew up. She was searching for something she'd lost. Her drone had instructions to recover something called the Asset. The Asset? Is that the uh, sub-function thing that you said could be here? The Luthia? I'm not sure. Come on, let's go talk to Varl. straight down into the mountain. Looks recent. Whatever it was, it must have been powerful. That zenith the rebels killed was looking for something called... the Asset. I don't know what it is, but my guess is it's somewhere down there. All right, so we head down. Erend, stay here and stand watch. That zenith isn't the only one of its kind. I don't want to be caught by surprise if the others show up. Contact us by focus if you see anything. Okay. If any trouble shows up, I'll call you. Let's go. There's some kind of old world ruin down here. You said the Zeniths have their own backup of Gaia, right? Yeah. From the Proving Lab. So maybe they were after Eleuthia, found its hiding spot, so it sent the distress signal. Maybe. What? Looks like some kind of data center. You might be able to access the facility systems from that console. I've never seen a transmitter like this before. Looks like it's self-destructed. was a far zenith research lab. It looks like a lot of data was beamcast from here recently. From that device nearby. So Eleuthia is gone? If it was ever here, then probably. But then why were the Zeniths still searching for the asset? Let's keep looking around. So. Exploring another far zenith ruin. At least this one doesn't seem to have giant killer machines. Or anything you can blow up. Try this in my stash later. All this stuff. Wonder what they were doing here. Well, knowing Far Zenith, probably discovering amazing things for their own benefit. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
find anything that might tell us what the asset is? I don't think so. Ectogenic chambers, like the ones I saw inside a Zero Dawn Cradle facility. What were they for? Remember when I told you I was made, not born? This is how. A machine that makes a person. That's incredible. Yeah. This place keeps on going. This place is huge. Some kind of storage room, maybe. Maybe the asset is in here somewhere. If it is, somehow the Zenith couldn't find it. Let's look around. So, um, how is Erend taking all of this? Really? Well... Gaia, send this to my stash. Focus. It's a lot. But when I caught up to him in the dawn and said you needed our help, he dropped everything and turned around. Well, he's loyal. That's for sure. A control console to access the storage units. Can it tell us if the asset is in one of them? Oh, well, let's find out. and 36 containers in storage. Please enter the container number you'd like to retrieve. 236? Wasn't there a number in the distress signal? You're right. I should check the log. Skins like ice. Must have cut this from her head. But why? Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, apologies, I don't know what else to call you. Um, 
My name is Beta. I'm afraid I, I must be brief. I only have a few minutes before my keepers discover I'm missing, and I still need to remove this implant. I had hoped to find shelter with you, but if you're viewing this, I, I may be dead. Be careful when you take on Farsiness. They are ruthless, and they have Aluthia, Artemis, and Apollo now. But at least I don't have the Gaia Colonel to march them with. You must succeed. Oh, this was all for nothing. Good luck. And goodbye. So she's... She's still alive. We need to get her back to... Oh, shit. They can fly. Aloy. Aloy, can, can you hear me through this thing? What's going on, Erend? Two of those spectral things just fell out of the sky. One of them is heading down towards you. The other one's waiting up here. We're coming up. Stay in cover until I get there. You got it. Get her to cover in that room. Whatever happens, she stays with us. I'll protect her. I should prepare before the Spectre gets here. I can't let it get through to Varl and the clone. Here it comes! Scan that thing. See if it has any weak spots. Oh, that thing's quick. Yeah, I'm heading up top. Stay down here with the clone for now. Got it. I'll follow once the coast is clear.
get back up top and deal with that other specter. I just hope Aaron stays in cover. I'm almost there. Just hurry. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I gotta get to Errand. Errand, I'm here. Watch out. That thing's shooting down the center. Acid ammo. Stay put. I'll see what I can do. And the second you need me, I'm there. The Spectre's not budging from that spot. I might be able to sneak up on it if I stay out of its line of fire. It's got some kind of shit. I'll sneak around behind it. Don't play with the that thing head on. She's... Look, I swear I'm not drunk, but right now I'm seeing double. Long story, but it'll have to wait. She needs a healer, but we need to get her back to the base immediately. Right. Yeah. Well, what are we waiting for, then? You two go on ahead. I need to take another look at that weapon. If I can figure out how that thing works, maybe the Xenos won't be so invincible after all. This will be my stash when I need it. I 
I need to get the weapon fragment to Gaia to analyze. If we can replicate it, maybe we'll have a way to defeat the Zeniths. I should check on the clone, too. Varl, where's our guest? We're in the maintenance corridor below the control room. Okay. So this is Festus. He's like, uh, Gaia's own personal... Holograms? Body. Yeah. Gaia, I thought you Very said the data bad. here was lost. As like my uncle, Laurent. Man didn't smile a day in his life and would box your ears if you messed with his forge. Errand? You okay? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't I be? Because there's two of me now. Hey, there's two of you now! Well, at least you seem to be handling it okay. <sighs> I wouldn't say that exactly, but I'm trying. What you reading next? I saw Gaia added something to the archives about metal rods being used to harness lightning during storms. Guy reminded me of a cousin of mine. Thought he could trap lightning if he covered himself in stormbird plates. Went up the tallest mountain in the claim to prove it. It ended like a lot of Osram things do. With a spark and a boom. What are you working on with your focus? I'm still figuring out how to read stuff on this thing. Those two lovebirds over there have been giving me a hand. But to be honest, all the little symbols they give me a headache. But I'll get up to speed. I promise. Did you speak with Beta at all? She didn't really wake up till we brought her here. And when she did, I, I thought it'd be better if Zoe and Varl took care of her. No use crowding someone when they're in a state. I have to get going. Don't go causing too much trouble. Aloy, you're back. Yeah, I'm just, uh, checking up on how everyone's doing. You mean, after meeting someone who looks exactly like you, but isn't you, down in the basement? Guess this must be even stranger for you than it is for us, huh? A little. <laughs> Varl said she may be able to help us in our mission, though. Maybe. What else have you been up to? I've been studying Gaia's seedlings, the subfunctions. I wanted to understand why one of them would do what they did to Fa. Imagine my surprise when I looked into this Hephaestus and found out it helped create all machines, our land gods included. In a way, the Utaru o Hephaestus are a whole way of life, as well as our current troubles. That's why we have to make Gaia whole again. Learn anything interesting lately? There's been much to read up on now that Aether has been reunited with Gaia. It's hard to imagine that machines like Stormbirds once helped heal the skies. I used to be terrified of them as a child. Thunder still brings chills to my skin. But everything Gaia creates has a purpose, no? Yeah. And if we can get Hephaestus back, she can get those Stormbirds in line. You said you met Beta? Varl mentioned she was hurt. I thought I'd offer her an extract to soothe the pain. That was kind of you. I just hope she doesn't plan on staying burrowed down there like that. She looks like she's barely seen the light of day as it is. I need to get going. May the land bloom in your steps. Aloy! Glad you made it back okay. She panicked after waking up and stumbled down here. I thought it best to wait for you. I'll talk to her. Hello? It's, uh, it's Beta, right? My name's Aloy. What's wrong? Is it your injury? Simulacrum withdrawal syndrome. I don't understand. Sudden removal of a neurologically integrated data device. 
The brain, especially the cerebellum, goes into a kind of sensory freefall. Everything real feels unreal, distant. Is there anything that can help? Do you have a focus to spare? It's, it's primitive, but I can make it work. Yeah. Booting up. <sighs> so, uh, Aloy, I suppose you want information. About you and the Zeniths? Yeah. Why are they here? What do they want? How did they get you? But let's start at the beginning. I'm guessing they faked the destruction of their ship a thousand years ago? That seems consistent with their behavior. They wouldn't want to be followed. So far, Zenith established a colony world after all. Yes, for a few hundred years, but it didn't last. Some sort of natural disaster rendered it uninhabitable. Okay, so... The descendants of Far Zenith escaped a dying planet. And now they want to claim Earth for themselves? Not their descendants. What? Not their descendants. It, it, it's them. The same ones who left Earth a thousand years ago. You didn't know? How can they still be alive? They don't even look... What did they do to themselves? I believe it's a combination of pharmaceutical, cellular treatments, and technological implants. And, and you? Does that mean that you're... I'm not like them. I was made. On the way to Earth. On the ship. I spent years studying in my training interface. All so that I could serve my function. Access and control of the terraforming system. But why? What do the Zeniths want with it? When I discovered the Zero Dawn system had disseminated into its subcomponents, I thought my purpose was to fix it. But I don't think the Zeniths want that at all. I think they want to wipe Earth clean and start over. So the Zeniths want to exterminate life on Earth. That's what Gaia and I concluded too. But why? Why kill everyone just to take over? When they took me on missions with them, I saw how they... butchered. The tribal people we encountered. They didn't seem to care about a rejuvenated Earth, so... I concluded that they must want a hard reboot of the system. Then they can redesign it to be exactly what they want. Mass extinction for their own comfort? Who thinks like that? Well, without their Gaia Colonel, they'll have a hard time doing that. The Zeniths needed Elizabeth's gene print to access Zero Dawn facilities. So they made you. Trained you. And you went along with it? They told me I was born to interface with the Zero Dawn system. When we reached Earth, I pieced together what must have happened to Gaia and her subordinate functions. That's when I started to realize I wasn't meant to fix Gaia. That they must have made me so I could do what their remote extinction signal failed to do. Reboot Earth for their own benefit. So you know about the extinction signal? It was speculation, but the only logical conclusion why Gaia suddenly self-destructed after operating efficiently for centuries. Gaia would have only undertaken such a desperate course of action if it had detected a threat to life on Earth that was more dangerous than ceasing function altogether. I should have realized that she would also order the recreation of Elizabeth Sobek to rebuild her. Yeah, well... Surprise. So we're dealing with the same Far Zenith people who once lived on Earth. What else do you know about them? They were some of the most affluent and powerful people on Earth. They controlled almost every major resource, every industry. Gerard commands them. He's the one who decided to set up a base. The others, Eric, Tilda, Verbena, they resent his authority over them, but in the end, they always do what he says. Eric, he's the one I fought back in the Hades Proving Lab. He enjoys hurting people. Yeah, I know. You mentioned the Zenith set up a base here on Earth. Where is it? Off the coast, I think. Whenever I had to go on missions, I was transported inside of a Spectre drone. I couldn't see anything outside. But I did overhear the Zeniths talking about it once. They were discussing setting up a perimeter energy shield to 
repel the local fauna. I'm certain they have other security measures. Spectre patrols, machine lures, it, it must be impregnable. What's inside the base? Launch facilities so they can shuttle back and forth to their ship in orbit, plus infrastructure to gather materials and fabricate anything they need. Are there more Zeniths than the ones you met? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I suppose there must be more of them in the base or back on the ship. For all I know, there could be more of them out in space, other survivors of the colony. You said the Zenith's colony in the Sirius system was destroyed. What happened? All I was ever told was that a natural disaster forced them to leave Sirius. I've speculated that it was an extrasolar object or a cataclysmic seismic event. Or maybe even an abnormally violent coronal mass ejection from Sirius A. The Zeniths never told you any details. They said the only thing that mattered was that they survived. First Earth, a thousand years ago, and then Sirius. Guess they survived old age too. How did you escape the Zeniths? Before the Hades Proving Lab, I never thought I'd get away from them. Even if I were to run, I'd never survive on my own in the wilds. But then I saw you. And I thought that maybe you could help me. So when the Zeniths pinpointed Eleuthia's location in the biomedical research facility, I saw an opportunity. You said you saw an opportunity to escape when you went to capture Eleuthia. What did you do, exactly? Whenever I was taken out on a mission to recover a subordinate function, only one of the Zeniths would go with me. The one the rebels killed, outside the facility. But Banus dead? How did they bypass her shield? I'm looking into it. But you were talking about your escape? Well, when it was time to use the Zenith's transmitter to send Eleuthia back to base, I also sent the encrypted transmission. Then I distracted Verbena long enough to seal myself in the ectogenic chamber, altering the facility's log so it appeared that there were only 236 containers. And the Gaia root kernel? I told them I could capture Luthia faster if I had it with me, and they... believed me. Well done. You said you were born on the way to Earth. In an artificial womb, I'm guessing? The Zeniths had an ectogenic chamber aboard the ship. An updated version of the one you found me in. They must have used a stored sample of Elizabeth's DNA. I doubt Elizabeth would have let them take her DNA. Do you know how they got it? That wasn't part of the archive I was allowed to access. You said you spent years studying in a training interface. Was this archive you mentioned part of that? But only the parts I was permitted to access. Aristotle and Aspasia, the avatars of the Archive, would assign me learning modules and evaluate my progress. Wait, those names? They were designed to be the virtual guides for the Apollo database, before Ted Farrow purged it. The Zeniths have a copy. So it still exists. And you got to learn from it. Only what was deemed pertinent to the mission. If I requested information outside of my parameters, my tutors would deny it. To have all that knowledge, just out of reach, must have been frustrating. All right, I think that's enough for now. Do you want to come upstairs, or...? So how long? You know, your, your, your plan. How long before Gaius fabricated a machine army to defeat the Zeniths? How did you know optimal strategy, so? Well, I still have to get two more subordinate functions before Guy is powerful enough to absorb Hephaestus. What? You don't have Hephaestus already? Guy is still figuring out how to capture it. It's not confined to a single- To a single location, of course not! You didn't even know who the Zeniths really are. You were supposed to be further along by now! Coming here was a mistake. They're gonna find me. They're gonna find this place and take me back. This was all for nothing. They're not going to find us. Guy is using Minerva to mask our location. What difference does it make? You're too far behind. We're never going to beat them. Everything, everyone, they're gonna die. Hey, calm down. You're here now, right? So is there anything you can do to help? 
I have certain knowledge sets. And given your state of progress, expertise you probably lack. Geoengineering, of course. Computer science, physics, biology, chemistry. Okay. Well, see if you can do something with that. Talk to Gaia. I'll check on you later. How'd it go? Her injury's not that bad, but I think she regrets coming here. Feeling might be mutual. Hmm. I'll come back later and talk to her. See if I can learn anything. I should get the weapon fragment to Gaia. Ow! That is focused things trying to kill me. Dead, almost drowned in fear. Not on purpose. Hey, you and Aaron okay? Nothing some rest can't take care of. Are you okay? This beta thing, it's a lot, even for you. Just trying to take it one step at a time. Fair enough. If you need anything, just let me know. It's good to see you and Zoe enjoying yourselves. We're learning a lot. I've actually been looking through the data to find ideas for a gift and to thank her for helping me study the glyphs. Something from the old world that she's never seen before. Instead, I found out they gave each other stuffed animals. If you ask me, stuffing a dead animal with anything, really, doesn't sound like a good time for anybody. Maybe Gaia can help you find something else. How's everyone dealing with Beta? I tried explaining what a clone is to Aaron. He was totally lost. Then Zoe said something about two trees coming from one seed. That seemed to help a bit. I see everyone settling in. Zoe's planning on bringing all kinds of plants in here. Says a home should always spring with life anew. I asked Aaron to help find some. I think he'd rather stick his head into a snap mall. Still, it's not a bad idea. Should liven up the place. I should get back to the wilds. I'll keep an eye on Beta. Make sure she's comfortable. Okay. Welcome back. Aloy, I see we have a new guest. So now we know the origin of the transmission. Yeah. I also recovered this. The weapon it was part of somehow stripped a zenith of its shield, but it malfunctioned and blew up. If we can recreate the weapon and improve it, maybe we'll gain the upper hand on the zenith. A moment. I will scan it. Complete. By combining the results with data from your focus, I can infer that the weapon was highly advanced, comparable to Zenith technology, but not how it worked. Did the explosion corrupt the data? It was only a catalyst. The moment the weapon malfunctioned, it appears a command executed to purge all data within its core. Ostensibly, this was to prevent the weapon's secrets from falling into enemy hands. Whoever designed this weapon knew how to cover their tracks. Silence. Based on your data on him, that is my conclusion as well. And he's not gonna cooperate with us? Well, it was worth a shot. But that's not all. The Zenith got Eleuthia, along with Artemis and Apollo. That is unfortunate. However, our original plan remains unchanged. The two remaining subordinate functions should increase my heuristic processing density enough to absorb Hephaestus. Right. One problem at a time. Well, I guess I better get back out there. I wish you luck on your search. Right. Thanks, Gaia. 
So I guess we won't be making use of Silent's weapon. And now there is another clone of Elizabeth here with us. But I can't let it distract me. I still have two more subfunctions to get. Pam, It's a little loud, Aaron. I know. It makes you want to punch something. More like someone. Well, you're the one that helped me find it. People make mistakes. There is something I'd like to discuss. It's about the land gods. If you have time, that is. You said you wanted to talk about the land gods? I think there's a way to heal them so that they'll once again provide plain song with grain. Gaia gave me a set of instructions. She called it a uh, reboot code. If we deliver it to the land gods, their derangement will end. That's great. It may be. There are thorns on the path. Unless the code is given by Hephaestus, the land gods will reject it. Gaia showed me a way around this. We need components called control cores from machines made by Hephaestus. Machines similar to the land gods. You mean Grimhorns? Like the one we fought in the repair bay? Yes. Gaia helped me locate two of them out west. So, kill the machines, get the control cores, then... Use them to adapt the reboot code into something the land gods will obey? If all goes well, but taking down two Grimhorns won't be easy. We'll do it together. Bless you, Aloy. I'll send you the location of the machines. I'll let you know when I get close to those Grimhorns. Good. If we can get their control cores, maybe we really can heal the land gods. Looks like someone's made this space their own. I see you found Varl and Zoe's room, Aloy. I believe they wanted private accommodations. I see. So the old ones painted their faces with something called makeup. Like the car chip. Why? Yeah, it beats me. It probably meant something to them. As it does to my people and the Tanakh. I just think my face says it all as is, that's all. That it does. Where'd Catalo go? Zoe said we'd find the Grim Horns she needs parts from to heal Plainsong's land gods. I should let her know I'm here. Hey, Zoe. I'm near the Grim Horn site. Can you join me? I'll be there soon. Aloy, I'm glad we can do this together. The Grim Horns we're looking for should be just to the north. Let's go get those control cores. Thank you again for helping me. If this works, if we can heal the land gods, it will end a generation of suffering for my people. How do you think Fane and the Chorus will take it? They seem to think the tribe's extinction is inevitable. I've had my disagreements with them, but something tasty. I'd like to see they'll be happy to be wrong on this. There. The Grimhorns. And they're not alone. We'll just have to be smart about this. I'll follow your lead.
My stamina is... We did it. You okay? A bit winded, but I'll be all right. I'll grab the course. Be my guest. Stuff for the stash. I'll take those cores, Aloy. Two control cores, as requested. Thank you. Gaia showed me a way to scan them and take what we need to update the reboot code. I'll head back to base and get started. When I was a child, there was always enough to eat. The land gods provided for us, and every season, we celebrated them. My happiest memories come from those times. Do you really think we can bring them back? We'll make it happen. Thank you, Aloy. So we'll probably need some time to sort through those cores. I should do something else in the meantime. I'm gonna fill up while I can. the longer it takes to be delivered, or something like that. Maybe you can find the recipe? I think it was just flat bread, with cheese, and some sauce. I like it already. I was hoping we could talk. Go ahead. Now that you have those control cores, are you ready to reboot the land gods in Plainsail? Not yet. Gaia told me the reboot code has to be altered using data from the cores. She updated my focus with software to accomplish this task, but apparently it's very complicated. It'll take time. Well, let me know if you need any help. 
I will. I should get going. May you unearth that which you seek. I see you, champion. Sit, please. Choosing the right rations can be just as important to your chance of survival as choosing the right weapons. If you want food that'll save your life out in the wilds, go northwest to Saltbite. The cook there, Pintala, she'll whip up a meal for anyone who needs it, to knock or not. I'll make sure to pay her a visit if I'm out that way. If you walk... Stay alert, soldier. Sending that signal. Right to the stalker dead. Can I you feel like Well, there's a Tanakh outpost nearby. The rebel kind. I'll stash this away for later. I'd be safe there until a couple of glint hawks attacked. Chased me all the way back to camp. Nasty machines. Are your stories you always bold? so... There's a Tanakh the outpost nearby. Ah, uh, yeah, that. The rebel kind. Look at this. Sharp as ever. Should have known better than to take a job... I think I might make this a camp proper. Talana. Little rest stop on Glad the journey to, to the Delph site. Thanks to the secret passage through your base. It was quite a sight. Secret passage? Don't let the others hear you say that, or you'll have a lot of Osiram knocking at your door. And you are? This is Raggard. He's a scout with this caravan. He says Amadis was here. He joined up with our expedition right before he went through the tunnel. After we made camp here, I set out to do some scouting. I also made peace offerings to the Tanakh for trespassing in their territory. Amadis wanted me to ask around about some place called... The Rot. What did you find out? Most I learned was that it's where the Tanakh took their prisoners. Somewhere far to the west, near Thorn Marsh, the Lowland Clan's capital. He set out to find it not long after. Uh, on his own? I tried to warn him, but he was dead set on going. Did Amada say anything about why he was heading to the Rot? Afraid not. He was a man of few words. Sounds like him. Did he look okay to you? 
More or less. He seemed shaken when we learned the tunnel had collapsed behind us. But then again, so was everyone around here. So you're a scout for this group. Anything I should know about the area? Where to start? Down south, we've got a trio of Osirum trying to delve into the ruins in the sand. There are more of you? They're the ones we followed out here in the first place. And then there are all the other folk who broke away as soon as we got to this side of the tunnel. Salvagers, explorers, all sorts of daring venturers. Just how many of you were there? Enough to lose track, that's for sure. I've also spotted some rebels a while back, too. Seems like they've been patrolling the desert. Heard all about the rebellion from the Tanakh up in Scalding Spear. That's the Desert Clan's capital, north of here. Sounds like you've really gotten to know the area. It's what I do. Thanks, Raggart. This has been helpful. Hope you find him. Okay, I'll head to Thormarsh. Meet me there. Hold on. What? You're willing to go to the ends of Tanakh's territory to find this guy. No hesitation. Of course, he's one man alone in the Forbidden West. I'm just worried about him. I think it's more than that. I'll meet you near the Lowland capital. But then, you're going to tell me who Amadis really is. Fine. I'll lay low, north of the village. See you there. You hear about that traveling Osram troop? If you feel in Data, don't ride that machine. Might be in another cauldron. Machine! Get out of my way! Had to knock soldiers in trouble. Get out of my way! Now the tide's turned! I need a word. Quickly. You've got to help my friend. Wait. Slow down and explain. Patea and I were heading south with supplies from Saltbite when machines attacked. I left her behind so I could get help from the Grove and ran straight into another machine. Thank the Ten you were here to help. So your friend is still up the road, fighting machines? That's what I'm trying to tell you! I'll bail her out if I can. You go on and get those reinforcements. Will do. I'm in your debt. One more day behind me. Should be somewhere up there. The supply sled. Yes, the supplies. And the Tanakh soldier. It looks like the Tanakh tried to salvage some supplies after being attacked. Maybe they can lead me to the other soldier.
tracks from the missing tonight. Definitely looks like the other Tanakh ran off this way. Shock's not gonna help me here. Sent me. By the ten that lump made it, I thought we were both finished. Let's clear out these machines. Time to lose!
decent enough. But... A word before you move on? Thanks. If you hadn't shown up, I would have been machine grist. All I did was give your friend here a little time to come to the rescue. Ah, you're full of it. I barely escape with my life on the road. That, I believe. I, uh, hope some of your supplies are still usable. Me too. Food's always scarce. The soldiers at the Grove need the rations. No way we can trek back north to Salt Bite to get more. I'll get this one back on her feet and we'll scrape what's left of our haul of the dirt. Mmm, you're making me hungry. Thanks, Outlander. We won't forget what you did. Stay safe, both of you. Debris, but it looks like the trail keeps going up. Maybe I should look around more before I move on. Okay, better take a look at that debris. Maybe I should look around more before I move on. Maybe I should look around more before I move on. Okay, let me take a look at that debris. Trail of debris I can follow up the mountain. Trail is here. 
here. Hello? Anyone here? Nothing. No sign of a machine attack either. Maybe one of those big storms swept through. If there was anyone here, they're long gone now. Machines resistant to fire.
Passing it to my stash. What's with the acrobatics? Not awaits you here. Something nearby is sending that signal.
sense of atomics nearby. Settlement. Looks abandoned. But I enough to get me on that tall neck if I can find a way to the top.
platform. Just gotta find a way. be high enough to jump on that tarmac. stash when I need it. Oh. Looks like this Tolmix missing some parts. There's no way to climb to the top. I'll have to find a platform that's high enough to reach its head directly. somewhere. Thanks for the ride, buddy. Now to find higher ground. Trees as tall as towers. The stand of the sentinels. That's better. All right.
Ja, said her father's hunting camp should be near here. I can catch my breath here. World ruin. I wonder what's inside. Marsh. Quite a sight, isn't it? Never thought I'd find myself this deep in Tanakh territory. Have you run into any trouble? I've been keeping my head down. Had to duck into the swamps a couple of times to avoid Tanakh patrols. Well, I'm here now, so spill it. Who is Amatis, really? Like I said before, he helped me put a stop to a hunter-killer machine out in the wilds. At first, he thought I was just another hunter from the Lodge who only cared about the biggest machine trophy. And I thought he was just a grouchy hermit living in the woods. 
But then he trusted me with the truth, told me how the Red Raids took everything from him. Seeing that side of him, I don't know, changed things. You love him, don't you? I think I might, yeah. Then why did you part ways? When he told me how he failed to save the woman from his past, I told him how I made peace with my father and brother's deaths. He realized he needed to do the same on his own. Wait. When we searched that Red Raid's battlefield together, you said he'd lost someone close to him there. I thought you meant a fellow soldier. She was. Women aren't allowed to serve in the Karja army, but Nessa disguised herself so she could. Amadis kept her secret. When he left to come out west, he promised he'd send word that he was all right, but his letter never came. So you set out to find him. And when we do, I'll have words for him for leading us on this wild goose chase. Well, at least I kind of understand now. Amadis thought Nessa died on the battlefield, but when he learned that the Tanakh took prisoners back west, he kept going. So I guess now we find this prison, the Rot. I did some scouting while I was waiting. I think I might have found the way. Lead on then. Do you think Nessa might still be alive? I doubt it. Any cards of prisoners from the Red Raids would have been killed or returned home by now. Then what's Amadis after? I think he just needs to know. Here, you flaming hunk of scrap. That's him. The fire claws right on his heels. He's no match for it alone. Come on. Got you. We've got your back. Not now. Spot it.
Find this in my stash later. Talana, I... You were supposed to let me know you were okay. I was going to send the message right after I crossed into the desert with an Asaram caravan. But when it became clear that the tunnel had collapsed behind this, I figured the only thing I could do was press on. Seeing as you found a way out here, however, clearly I was wrong. I'm sorry. The last thing I wanted was to worry you. So, you must be Amadis. And you must be Aloy. Talan has told me a lot about you. And I guess you must know about me. Uh, a little. We know you're headed for the rot. But what are you hoping to find there? A clue. Or a shred of one. Anything about Ness's fate. Maybe she died on the battlefield. Or maybe she wasted away in that prison. Either way, I have to know. Talana told me about you and Nessa during the Red Raids. That you kept her secret. We were both assigned to the Southern Spear Division. Our orders were to push into Tanakh territory through the tunnel. She was proud to serve the Sundan at first. But as the atrocities mounted, we both saw the raids for what they were. And the two of you grew close? We did what we could to protect innocent lives. It felt like we were the only ones who objected to the slaughter. And yes, we were close. Until the Battle of the Burning Blooms. What happened at the Battle of the Burning Blooms? I had intel that the Tanakh forces were greater than we had anticipated. I tried to convince my commander to halt the attack. He was a drunken lout. And when I threatened to reveal his incompetence to Karja High Command, he pulled a knife on me. So I killed him. In self-defense. It was still murder. I was condemned. But I thought at least I could still save Nessa. I was too late. By the time I got to the battle, the fields were already burning. Her soldiers slaughtered or missing. What's more, the commander I had killed was from a powerful noble house. They put a bounty on my head. I've been on the run ever since. But the red raids are long over. Sun King Avad would pardon you if he knew. The Sun King can't help me. A pardon from Avad won't stop bounty hunters eager to claim their prize. So, you and Talana, um, it sounds like the two of you had an adventure out in the wilds. Claw striders, a hunter killer, mercenaries, a shell snapper. Nothing could get in her way. A scruffy hermit in the woods certainly tried. And that was foolish of him, in hindsight. Well, we're here now, so let's head to the rot. I can't ask you to come with me. I feel bad enough you've come this far. I didn't come all this way just to leave you now. We'll see this through together. I know better than to try to talk you out of it. Come then. The rot's not far. The rot's along the shore, but we'll have to stick to the woods to avoid being seen. How did you find it? I overheard a Tanakh patrol from the nearby village talking about it. Figured it out from there. Hope this tastes as good as it looks. What were you gonna do if we hadn't found you? Take it on alone? I only need to question one guard. Figured I'd grab someone when they're by themselves. Well, now you have us. We're getting close. Just a little further. There it is. The rot. Those are Regal's rebels. They're waging civil war against the rest of the Tanakh. They must have taken over the prison. Then they would have killed any of the guards. They were my last hope of finding out if Nessa was there. Maybe not. There might still be some clue inside. Even after all this time? Aloy can see much more than you or I. Then let's do it. Any scrap of hope is better than nothing. We'll have to find another way in. The front gate looks impenetrable. And there's no way we're scaling those walls. You two stay here. I'll see if I can find another way in and get that gate open. I should check around the sides. Might be a way in from the water.
Well, that'll keep me awake. Get to the main gate to look to Lana and Amadison. So, is the Outlander hiding out there? Victory for Regala. Get the main gate open. Delana and Amadis can help me clear out the rest of this place. My blade is sharp. My eyes are open. Any sign of the enemy, the Karo hasn't the courage to attack. What's that? I guess we scared them off. False alarm. All in all. That was a waste of time. Stay here.
My aim's as sure as the sun rises. <laughs> Outlanders. That device is gonna call a machine. I think that's the end of it. Hear that?
Here. Door's locked, but that last rebel had a key on him. Freed by Karja? Have we not been humiliated enough? It's not their fault you were locked up in your own prison. I'm looking for information about a Karja soldier. She might have been a prisoner here five years back. Her name was Nessa. The Karja Nessa was here. I killed her myself. Nessa? I'll handle this. Go secure the grounds. It's you, isn't it? Nessa, how? It's Why? Rataka. Uh, let me get this straight. You were Nessa. You were brought here as a prisoner during the Red Raids and then became Tanakh? The Karja forbid women from military service. I lived my life pretending, ashamed of who I really was. But the Tanakh measure a soldier only by their strength and resolve. So I took my place among them. Ness... Rataka, I've mourned you for five years. Why didn't you let me know you were alive? I had a new life. I wasn't going back. Not even for you, Amadis. The way Amadis talked about your time together, I thought you'd still care about him. It was five years ago. I didn't abandon you. Before the battle, I tried to get Gadaya to call off the attack, but of course, he didn't listen. I ended up killing him. Then he got what he deserved. I ran for the battlefield to find you. But you were already gone by the time I got there. I didn't know. But even if I did, I mourned you, and then I moved on. If you were brought here as a prisoner, how did you become Tanakh? I knew it was only a matter of time before the Tanakh killed me and the others who were held captive. But one day, one of their soldiers stopped in front of my cell, asked how a woman had ended up fighting for the Mad Sun King. As he spoke, I realized he was once Karja. Fashav. I heard how he fell at the embassy. He deserved a better death than that. The other prisoners he condemned to death, but he convinced the Tanakh to let me fight for my life. I won through blood and blade. I became Rataka and never looked back. You were willing to wear a disguise so that you could serve in the Karja army. Do you miss being Karja at all? No. The Red Raids showed me there was no honor in fighting for the Karja. And when my comrades and I were brought here as prisoners, we knew no one would ever come for us. I would have, had I known. It's better this way. Beneath my Karja armor, I found I had the blood of a Tanakh. So if you became Tanakh, how did you end up as a prisoner here again? My squad was ordered to retake the rot from Regala's rebels. We failed. Considering how much Regala seems to hate the Karja, I'm surprised her rebels let you live. You're right. I'd be dead if they knew. But few Tanakh remember who I once was. What will you do now? You've taken back the rot. My squad will ensure it stays that way. So this is it? After everything we've been through, this is goodbye? It has to be. My place will always be here, and yours is back east. I'm sorry that you've suffered. You deserve better than how the last five years have treated you. I'll make sure you're granted safe passage out of the lowland. Consider it Nessa's final farewell. At least now you know the truth. Somehow it hurts worse. You must think I'm an idiot. No. I just think you have a lot to figure out. I'll take you back east to the Sendim. After that... I don't know. Talana, I... understand. I'm sorry it came to this. Me too. Give me an Aloy a moment. 
Are you alright? To be honest, no. What's going to happen between you two? I'm not sure. He clearly has a lot more feelings to sort through. And I won't be anyone's second choice. I want you to have this. For seeing this through with me. No hog could ask for a better thrush. Or a better friend. So, I guess this is it then. You're heading back east. I think I'll hang around Baron Light for a while before returning to Meridian. If you find yourself back that way, look for me there. I will. Safe travels, Talana. Maybe I should check in with her the next time I'm at Baron Light. Seems like she could use a shoulder to lean on. First the frost breath, then the snow. What's going on here? Close combat training. Fighting at long range is a good strategy for machines. But fighting an enemy soldier means getting up in their face. I'm Arayo. My brother Varak and I run this training pit. We watched you bring down the bulwark. It made our day to see that arrogant commander so furious. You're welcome to train here. But you're only allowed your spear and a practice bow in the pit. Everything else stays with me. We also offer challenges for any fighters looking to test their skills. Complete all of them, and you'll go up against me and Varak. What happens if I beat you? I'll grant you a mark to prove you've mastered this training pit. You earn marks from us, and the pit masters in Scalding Spear and Thornmarsh. You'll earn the right to challenge the Enduring. I think I've heard of the Enduring. Some kind of Tanakh trainer. Way more than just that. The Enduring is a legendary fighter among the clans the master of masters. Only those who prove themselves in the pits get to train with the Enduring. Including Outlanders? You're no ordinary Outlander. So, what do you say? Let me know if you want to practice in the pit or take on a challenge. Just need a rib for next thing about. And you can't win a battle if you're dead and distance will keep you alive. This combination gets you out of trouble and punishes your enemy. I have enough charger horns for Della and Boomer now. Just need a rib from that fang horn they were talking about. Survival on the battlefield is down to tactics. Your best target isn't always the closest, so select your target and strike. Nice choice of armor. Just don't worry. The outlander Come. Judging by these markers, that climbing trail Jekka talked about must be nearby. I should check up on her brother while I'm here.
Close to Knockfork wounded. The way that wind picked up, there's bound to be an avalanche. That person looks like they're in charge. I should talk to them. Wellbreaker. If you've come to witness the March of the Ten, you're out of luck. Actually, I came looking for someone called Pento. Pento? That poor scab was as good as dead even before the storm hit. You're out of line, soldier. What's he talking about? The kid you're looking for is still up on the mountain, along with two others. Pento was the only one who decided to break tradition and climb without a partner. His odds aren't good. I'm sorry to say they never were to begin with. As far as being Tanak goes, he's got most of it backwards. So what? You're all just waiting here? Shouldn't you be calling for help? Couldn't find anyone in that storm, even if we wanted to. Those kids are at the mercy of the mountain now. We'll see about that. But first, a couple of questions. Why is everyone so sure this Pentaw can't climb that mountain? Our people are soldiers. We respect strength and agility. Pento has neither. Never has. He's been stuck on cleaning duty since he was a child. Yet he decided to undergo our clan's most difficult trial on his own. And you think he's crazy for trying? I'm not a fan of that word. When I chose to wear a woman's armor, people called me crazy too. I guess Pento just feels like he has to prove himself show who he really is. I understand. Believe me. But that climb is hard enough, even without a storm. What is this march you mentioned? This is one of the toughest slopes in Sky Clan territory. It's said that the Ten climbed this mountain in pairs during their war against machines. Our people partner up to earn their soldiers' marks by following in the Old One's footsteps and retrieving the blood crest. A flower that grows on the summit. Until Pento, that is. He insisted on climbing on his own. You mean no one wanted to climb up with him? I tried to stop him, but there were technically no rules against it, so I let him pass. That sounds familiar. The Nora have a similar ritual. No one wanted me in that one either. Their mistake, I presume? Yep. I could try following the path up the mountain. See if I can find Penta. You said there were two other climbers missing as well? Just one. The other is right there. Zika! Rocco and I, we were climbing back down. There was an avalanche where we got separated. I couldn't see anything. Someone's gotta go up there. You can barely see your own feet in that storm. Except I don't need to. I'll be back. The snowfall is blanketing wounded? the land. Just if the storm gets too rough, I can always use my focus to find those climbers. I should follow the markers. They'll lead me to the start. Like someone's putting up a fight. That's not needs help. I round up now. Whoever you are, thanks for the assist.
You okay? Not really, but I'll live. Your climbing partner, she said you got separated during an avalanche? My partner? Yeah, the avalanche caught us off guard. Swept me up like a twig. I was sure I was a goner. Then someone grabbed hold of me and pulled me out. It was Penta. He risked his life for me. Did you see where he went? Up that cliff behind you. Said he was gonna finish the climb. I told him it was suicide, but he wouldn't listen. Can you make it back down on your own? Yes. You're not going after him, are you? Go. Get back to Wakata before the storm gets any worse. May the Ten be with you. I have to find Panto before he gets himself killed. Packs full, but my stash has room. To use my focus to pick up Pinto's trail. Those must be Pinto's tracks. Let's hope I can catch up to him. It looks like the avalanche destroyed most of the climbing path. The avalanche destroyed most of the climbing path. The missing soldier must have climbed up this way. Work well, and Penta made it past here. The path must have collapsed after him. Maybe I can glide across. Mate, I should be able to pick up Pento's tracks again. Get out of my way! Let's hope that's Pento. Penta? Do I know you? Wakata sent me. We need to get off this mountain, now. No. I'm not going back there as a failure. I am getting that flower no matter what. Look, I know what it's like when your tribe looks down on you, but you- Then you understand why I'm either gonna get to the top of this mountain or die on it. Thank you. 
What are you doing? This climb is meant to be done by two people, right? I'll be your partner. I'll follow your lead. Hey! Better take this! Looks like the trail carries on here. You know my name, but I don't think I've caught yours. It's Aloy. You sure you want to involve yourself with the Bulwark's biggest loser, Aloy? I like to make my own judgments about people. You know, it's not like everyone can be born with a sword glued to their hand. What was that? I don't know. Maybe it's just the wind. It's at that end. There's a cl That was amazing! I'll knock uh, this- I'll just down. wait here for you. It should you. let us reach the climbing path. You won't hear me complaining. We should be able to jump onto that climbing path from the tree. That's some climbing gear you've got. Thanks. It's time to start climbing. That doesn't sound like any storm wind I've ever heard. Almost there. This is it. I can't believe we actually made it. Let's get to that summit then. Frostclaw! Oh, just what we need. We can handle it. Come on. Defend yourself, Granger. Looks like you need ammo. No! Get out of my way!
storm. It's using up. So, how does it feel to make rank? Pretty great, actually. This... This means everything to me. You know, even if you go back with that, it doesn't mean they'll treat you any different. Honestly, I think... I just need to prove to myself I could do this. You should go back. Let the others know I'm okay. I'd like to take a moment, if you don't mind. I'll be right behind you. Of course. Thank you. I can probably reach the bottom of the trail faster if I use my shield wing. And get a nice view, too. Oh, this snow's coming I can't thank you enough for being my partner, Aloy. Peaceful now that the storm has passed. I should be reaching the bottom of the trail soon. Pento can't be far behind. There's everyone. Aloy, you have any news? Please. I need to know what happened to my brother. Aloy, you return alone. Where is he? He's my brother. You can't go crying like that, Jekka. You're the sister of a proper soldier now. Bento! Ow! I bring you the blood crest, as proof of my march. And with my blessing, you join our ranks. May you find your path on the wings of the Ten. You've got to be kidding me! Him? A soldier? Please. Flower or no flower, we all know all he'll ever be good for is cleaning everyone's sh- <laughs> I think we're done here. Better put some snow on that, or it'll bruise. Thanks for saving my life. Maybe when I get my old soldier's mark, we can fight in the same squad. Give me a chance to return the favor. He's cute. Go on. I'll catch up. Here. Something to commemorate our climb. May the Ten always grant you victory, Aloy. I'll see you around, Pento. Come and trade. Defeat teaches the stir.
Good time to pull out shock ammo. Jera said the old watchtower should be near the falls. Time to tell those soldiers to head home. There's the watchtower. I need to talk to their squad leader, Kiva. This will be in my stash when I need it. Are you Kiva? I am. And you. You're the Outlander who killed Regala's champion at the Embassy. Ram Squad was there. We saw your duel. Pavalo still owes me shards. Oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. Chaplain Jera sent me. It's time for you to go home. Jera's cracked then. There's no way our commander will allow us to leave our post. Not after our insubordination. Things have, uh, changed at the bulwark. Dakota won't be able to stop you. Really? He's finally been taken down a notch? All right then. The last member of Ram Squad is on duty at the tower on the mountain. Let me recall him. That's odd. As Echo always answers. One of us will have to go up. I can get up there easily. I'll check on him. Much appreciated. The start of the climb is just across the falls. Try not to break your neck, yeah? What's going on? We're moving out. Back to the bulwark. You're shitting me. What about Ezeko? The Outlander will check on him.
This must be the start of the climb. The watchtower should be at the top. I can get it for my stash later. I'll make an interesting color for my armor. There's some kind of machine circling the watchtower. Closer to the watchtower. Looks like I have to climb higher. I gotta take out these machines before I can look around.
soldier assigned to this watchtower. Judging by these wounds, the Sky Drifter surprised him. At least it was quick. Eva sounded her horn. It's a different call from before. I'd better get back down to the watchtower and check on them. The watchtower is under attack. I need to get down there fast. Swooping into battle. Those machines are in for a surprise. Blood of the Ten, the Outlander glides. Oh, here we go. Thanks for the assist. Is the Zeko on his way down? Actually, the machines got him. Took him by surprise. I'm sorry. What? He was the first of the squad. Our best fighter. He's gone, Kiva. It's just the two of you now. Damn, Dakote. All we did was go to the embassy. Follow Chief Akaro's orders? And what do we get for it? A death sentence dressed up as guard duty. All because Takote has a vendetta against the chief. Well, that ends now. Yeah. Thanks, Outlander. Here. This is for you. Pavalo! We're moving out! Dakota is an underhanded jerk. And maybe now he'll stop wasting lives over political agendas.
Could try using acid ammo. Thank <laughs> you. 
The Osram I met said someone in their crew ran off in this direction. I should keep my eyes open. Damn scavengers! Sounds like someone's in trouble. Looks like it's strong against shock damage. I think she's gonna need some backup. Sure, she's okay. One four two. Supply drop. Oh. Spike is still intact. Rig's still playing. You okay there? You took out those machines. I'm grateful, but you should go now. There's nothing to see here. So this rig of yours, it's receiving sound through that wire from the thing up on the cliff, what you call a spike. But the message is only a fragment, and you're trying to pick up the whole thing? How did you figure all that out? I've learned a few things in my travels. If you want, we could talk about it. Maybe I can help? You do seem downright knowledgeable. So go ahead. Shoot. How did you first hear the message? I used to be a smith up in the claim. Wasn't an easy life. A lot of hard work without much to show for it. Then one day, I heard a whisper coming from a steel rod. Faint, like the last fingers of steam coming off a cooling forge. When I moved the rod around, the whispers got louder. I did some tinkering, built my rig, and did my best to follow that sound. Further west I came, the stronger it got. Then I found that spike up there. When I hooked up my rig, the words were clearer than ever. What do you think the message is? I don't know. There's something sad about it. Feels like it's from one lost soul to another. I'd sure like to know what it means. Your rig's impressive. How does it work? Well, like you said, the spike up there seems to capture the sound. It travels by wire down to my contraption. I put some coils in there, and a light sheet of metal that vibrates, making the sound louder. I'm not exactly sure why it works, but it just does. And you set it up out here all alone? I'm not the trusting type. Pretty much everything I do is all alone. You're no ordinary tinker. 
Didn't used to be a tinker at all. More of a metal worker. Came from Mainspring. I can well to seem so fine you could barely see it. Not that I ever got any credit for it. You see, up there, you've got to be a man to get ahead. I once had a shot at joining a first-rate crew, one of the best forges in the claim. But I didn't get the job. My own brother wouldn't vouch for me just because I'm of the female persuasion. Anyhow, at least out here I don't have to worry about any mainspring men talking down to me. Sounds like you're still mad at your brother. Some days I am. Other days, I miss him. He's passed on, you see. He didn't have the guts to go against the blast of the bellows and vouch for a lady. Even his own sister. It was cowardly, and I told him so. In fact, I told him we weren't family no more. But over time, I've had cause to regret it. He wasn't a bad sort. He knew how to make me smile when he wasn't being such a lout. I'm sorry he's gone. Yeah, so am I. Let me have a look at that spike. I might be able to pick up more of that message. How? Let's just say I have a rig of my own. I didn't know Nora were tinkers. They're not, but I am, in a way. Be right back. Well, okay then. I guess. Just follow the wire to the spike at the top. And then please, just don't break anything. You can get a strong color on this. Better get climbing. all that wire up a cliff wall. Oh, there's a spike. Might get better reception if I'm next to it. to get a fix on where the signal's coming from, though. Well, better let the tinker know I got a bit more of the message. This ought to be a good shortcut. Your rig is picking up an old world message. A recording of some kind. Thought as much. 
Did you hear more of it? A bit. It was recorded during... A, a war. A bad one. Maybe that's why it sounds so darn sad. There's something about it that makes me think of my late brother. May his ashes stay warm in the forge. Not sure why, exactly. I, uh... I, I still can't get a fix on the source. Well, the words grew stronger when I got out here. What if you moved the rig now? Try to see if you can get a stronger signal elsewhere. Even if I could dodge the Tanakh and the machines, I can't lose that spike. Nothing else pulls down the words better. Okay. If it's an old world message... Then let's try old world methods. They used to pinpoint signals by listening for them at three different spots. The taller the better. And then they combined the information and used it to find the source. And you can do that? I think so. But your spike is only one spot. I need two more, both up high. Hmm. Well, there's a big bright tower in the Tanakh territory north of here. Yeah, that should work. I have another spot in mind, near a place I'm... Uh, camping. Wait. I don't know your name. Or why you do all of this for someone you just met. Aloy. And because I want to know what's out there. Same as you. Soga. And when you find it, Aloy, I'd be eager to hear what it is. Go on foot from here. Traitor. A tower should help me pinpoint Silga's signal. Now, what is it you're looking for today?
Gotta climb up to look for Silga's signal. I gotta keep climbing to pinpoint that signal. Okay, let's see if I can pick up Silga's signal. Well, I got more of the message, but not enough to find the source yet. Climbing the mountain where my base is should finish the job. I see you, champion. Sit, please. You shouldn't miss this chance to trade. This mountain. The southern face is my best bet for a climb if I want to get more of Silka's message. Just gotta look for a path. I've got nothing to report. Don't let the pretty landscapes fool you. It's deadly out here. Don't have much to say right now, champion. But Now that I'm here, I should try climbing up the mountain to get more of Silga's message. The southern face should get me to a good spot.
have to get higher to try and pinpoint Silva's signal. I have to get higher to try and pinpoint Silga's signal. Looks like I have company. Okay, now to pick up the signal. Where is the best spot? I should try to find a good spot to pick up Silga's message. signal's origin. It's not too far from here. I just need to get to it. I'll get a nice view if I glide down from here.
I'll mark the spot in my focus. Come back later. My focus is picking up the signal that Silga found. I need to clear out the machines before I can look for the source. Hardwater ammo should do the trick. Subsiding. There you are. 
Now, how to get to you. But I'll need to deal with these machines first. my way to the signal source. Promising. Right into the water. inside. this and she'll definitely be interested in the transmitter inside that's been sending the message
Aloy, the words stopped coming from the spike. What happened? This is what was speaking to your rig. It's old world equipment used for communicating over long distances. The message must have shut off when I took it, but I heard the note the voice was talking about. What was it? During an ancient war, a woman was trying to deliver supplies to a man she knew. She wanted him to know that their past disagreements didn't matter in the big picture. That she'd be thinking of him when the end came. Oh. I guess she and I are kin of a sort. I wish I could give my brother a message like that. Tell him that I forgave him. He would have wanted that. I know. This man, the, the old one, did he ever hear the message? I don't think so. I guess that's often the way of it then. But still, with the power of that device you found, the sender had hope that he might have heard it. What a feat! To send messages, near and far? Can I keep this? It's a treasure. Of course. Thank you. Sometimes, people don't ever get to hear what they should. But with this thing, maybe I can get them talking to one another. From Mainspring, all the way to who knows where. Hey, I, uh, I found a few more things in the supply cache. Might be able to make something out of them. Can I use your workbench? Sure. Yeah, right over there. Anytime, Aloy. It's all yours. I think I know just what to do with these parts. That turned out well. Can't wait to try it. So you made it. Welcome to the hunting grounds. My name is Avina. I'm the caretaker of the grounds. I make sure they're kept fit for training against machines, whether they be used by our soldiers or our Utaru neighbors. Same as the Karja then. Ah, yes. 
We've heard those cowards claim the idea of hunting grounds as their own, but our soldiers have been training in places like this since before the clan wars. I'm willing to bet our trials are beyond anything the Karja would dare face. A skilled hunter like you might actually find them challenging. Rewarding, too. Win our trials and you'll earn stripes. That, in turn, will garner you some medals. Remnants of our victory against the Karja during the Red Raids. You can take medals to the arena at the Grove, our capital. Its keepers will let you exchange them for the finest weapons and gear our tribe has to offer. I'll keep that in mind. I should probably also mention our carver. They make pieces for a popular game of ours. Watching the machines at the grounds gives them inspiration. You mean strike? You know of it. And maybe you should check out their wares. Carvers almost always have extra pieces to trade for the right resources. I should get going then. I have other grounds to inspect, but rest assured they will be open to you. Walk with the ten. Are these your hunting grounds? They are. Try a challenge, and we'll see if you live up to your reputation. Just slide down a rope to start. I look forward to seeing you compete. I can grab this from my stash later. Soldiers. 
<laughs> I see you live up to the stories, Outlander. Jump down with the ropes, and we'll begin the trial. Ammo could help you. Four more. This is for you. Go down the rope and I'll start timing the trial. for the stash. <laughs> You've got you should be proud of yourself. The grounds will be dull without you. Let them 
Save those smiles for your families. The Tanakh understand only strength, and ours was a poor display at best. They will be back. You, the one who actually won this fight for us. A word. I want everyone fortifying the pass. Ah, uh, your warriors seem... Green as early spring? There are children playing with sticks. It's all I can do to keep them alive. It'll only get harder. So far, the rebels have sent mere scouts. But it won't be long till they return for an all-out assault. And if they bring machines with them, we'll need a lot more than eager hearts to win. You seem to know a lot about Tanakh's tactics. Back when the Tanakh clans pushed back the Karja Raiders, I joined the fight. The Tanakh taught you how to fight? More than that. They taught me how to work with metal. I'm probably the only Utoro who can. Never thought I'd be using what I learned then to fight against them now. We may speak freely here. So, what's the plan? The plan was making new weapons for my so-called fighters. I sent my best climber, Voss, up the drum route to get the materials we need. Wide mauls leave metal pods we use for crafting at its summit. But the derangement has made them as dangerous as the climb to reach them. Voss has yet to return. We have defenses to set up, and we are running out of time. If the savior of Meridian is willing to lend us her strength a little longer, I believe you can get us what we need. You know who I am. Red hair, bow, fights better than ten warriors put together. You're well known. And so is your little disagreement with the chorus. Can't Plainsong help? Plainsong has abandoned all settlements this far out. Then why not just leave? They're clearly outnumbered and under-equipped. We could leave. Head to safety. Have you ever seen a flower so small and white? When it falls, it looks like snow in spring. My daughter called them Winter Song. She carried their seeds to the day she drew her last breath. Now those seeds grow in the grove at the heart of River Hem, planted by my own hands. As do the ones of every brother and sister taken from us during the Red Raids. We, I, will not abandon them. You know Zoe? <laughs> I knew the warrior who led the bravest of my tribe against the Karja. But the Zoe that came back from the route spends too much time dwelling on things that just had to be done. I'm not one for regrets. I'm sorry about your daughter. The raids took her from me. I found my peace in every carja that fell beneath my spear. Now all I have left of her is planted in the grove here. No Tanakh will force me out. Do all Utaru carry seeds with them? We are given our pouches soon after we're born. When we die, the seeds are buried. A reminder that our deaths bring new life. It is how we remain one with the rhythm of the world. What makes the path up to the drum root so dangerous? It's a cave of sunken passages and gaping caverns that only the very skilled can navigate. It serves as a safe haven for my people, but machines have patrolled its deepest passageways ever since the derangement. Even so, River Hem and the Grove live off its waters. We are connected to it as much as we are to the seeds growing behind you. I don't think I caught your name. Q. I am the metal weaver of River Hem. But all you really need to know about me is that I plan to keep my people alive. 
Thanks to you, we might actually have a chance at that. Tell me more about these metal pots. They are tricky to collect. The Wide Maws sow them. One must be quick enough to gather them before the soil and water take them. But their metal is among the sturdiest I've ever weaved. Without them, our chances of survival are slim. Oh, if there's no convincing you to leave, I guess we're making some weapons. You have my thanks. There's no time to waste. Follow me. This way. With those pods and a whole lot of luck, we just might get out of this alive. Let's hope these sprouts can hold their ground against a squad of machines. I can only cover so much ground and my joints aren't what they used to be. Look to me like they chose to stay here as much as you did. It'll be the fight of their lives, that's for sure. Almost there. This is the best we can do to hide those who cannot fight. But if we fall, the Tanakh will find them sooner than later. We're here. This is it. Do you have any questions? I'm ready. Good luck. Come see me at the forge when you're done. And your drizzle. Almost over. I'd avoid the fields, visitor. Unless you wish to breathe hot. Guess I better start finding my way up to the top. Take a seat pouch to cue. Thank you, not for the time. Half of the way right through that now. these caves.
Almost there. Made it. Time to find those wide moths. This will be in my stash when I need it. There they are. Those pods they're rejecting. They must be the ones Q needs. Looks like I can just pick them up once they fall to the ground. If I'm quiet enough, I can get them without the machines ever knowing I'm here. out there.
Locked and locked. Better get back to Q with these. I got what you needed. Not a moment too soon. Did you find Voss? I brought his seed pouch back. I pray it'll be the last I bury. But now I need to get the weapons ready. Let's hope it'll be enough. It'll have to be. Everyone, stay behind cover until I give the signal. Utaru! Forever him! Utaru! Forever him! Forever him! Forever him! Forever him! Forever him! Forever him! Here she comes! Close it is dead! How you like this? This is our home! Guess these young ones knew how to aim after all. Even so, we owe you this victory, Huntress. It wasn't my strategy or craft that got us here, Q. I just brought in some parts. Even so, 
I want you to have this. It did good by my people. It'll do good by you. I'll take good care of it. Be safe out there. <laughs> take care not to breathe in the air around the blighted <laughs> plants, stranger. Another day, yes. I must be a ghost out here. Careful, Outlander. These fields are wroth with blight. Good, you're among us again. The first bloom of the winter song. I can feel the heaviness of my years fade away just by looking at them. They're beautiful. It was good to see the young ones fight for this place. I'll be damned if those sprouts didn't hold their own, strong as the roots of a proud tree. Just don't tell them I said that. Your secret's safe. Now, I better make sure our newly victorious warriors don't injure themselves while celebrating. Is this a training pit? It is. Sounds like you've been to one of the other clan's capitals. I'm Lirake. I run this training pit for the Desert Clan. Only a few Outlanders have ever made it out this far west. But from what I've heard, you're a pretty good fighter. Anyway, if you've been to another clan's training pit, then you must know the drill. Same rules apply here. You can train or take on a challenge. Only your spear and a practice bow are allowed in the pit. Complete all of my challenges, and you can spar with me. And when I beat you, I'll earn a mark? If, and yes. A token of victory to present to the Enduring. Who is this Enduring, exactly? All I've heard is that they're the best trainer amongst the Tanakh. Earn three marks, then you'll see. Combine single attacks, you can also chain combinations. Try it with this one. Just need a rib from that thing. <laughs> Here's something different. I want you to practice using aerial slash to chain into an aerial shot. I don't have enough charger horns for Della and Boomer now. Just need a rib from that thing we're talking about. Skill! Yep. Very skilled! You have learned! Now! You delivered that well! Now that is an attack! All right! I yield! That was a good fight. Pretty sure I'll have a bruise to remember it by. Here, a mark is promised. Thanks. One down, I guess. Go to the training pits in the Bulwark and Thornmarsh. Earn their marks, then you can challenge the Enduring. Few have ever done so, but I think you might have a shot. And if you want to train more or take on another challenge, let me know. The pit will always welcome you. That's enough practice for now. Strike true as the ten.
All blades against You wanted to speak to me? The name's Zalka. Have you heard from up north? From Bleeding Mark? I'm guessing that's a place. One of the desert's villages. They send their yield of ash blood so the Bereka over there can mark the skin of our soldiers. But it's been a long time since the last supply run. Too long. If you think something happened to them, can't you send someone to go check? Were it up to me. But the capital's already dealing with machines, storms, and strict water rations. No one can be spared. You mentioned the village up north sends some supplies to the capital. Ashblood? It's a crimson stone that we grind into powder for our ink. Bleeding Mark has the largest supply. Our soldiers there gather and deliver it to us, in exchange for their water rations. Die for water. Everyone in the clan depends on the wound in the sand for their water. Capital and outlying village alike. But the last delivery of Ashblood was weeks ago. Our supply is running low. So must be their water. My face paint will strike fear in your enemies. Take a look. If I'm out that way, I can look in on the village. Find out what's the delay. You have my thanks. Head north to a ruin where the desert meets the mountains. That's Bleeding Mark. Ask for Kentok or Natika there. They'll know what's going on. My blade fights with you. Attacking the grove? Regala is a traitor. That was one Wings holding up. Wow. Strange, I might trade for something good. Oh! 
stash this away for later. from a recent storm. I wonder if anyone made it out. Best check around the shore. Can anyone hear us? <sighs> Where are you? We're trapped in this tower. Flood blocked the way we came in. There's a ladder at the top, but we can't reach it. Okay, I'll find a way to get to you. I need to get to the ladder at the top of the building. Maybe there's a way to cross over from the broken one next to it. My pack's full. I can get it for my stash later. There's the ladder on the other building. I can make that jump. It looks like it's stuck. Maybe I can use my weight to make it drop? <laughs> no! That was our only way out! Everyone okay? You're not one of us. Sorry. Yes. We took shelter in here when a mudslide swept through the village, but debris blocked the passage we came in through. That ladder was our only way out, but we couldn't reach it from here. Don't worry. I'll find us another way out of here. Do you know what happened to the others? Before we ran in here, I thought I saw a few of our comrades climbing up a watchtower on the north side, near the grotto. I'll look into it. Can you make it to the shore from here? If you find us a way out, we'll make it. Okay. Sit tight, for now. To do it? Okay! You should have a way out! Thanks! We'll head to the shore in a moment. Okay. Better find this watchtower on the north end. There are more survivors on that overlook. Must be where Natika is. Is he all right? Uh, he will be. <sighs> there. But what about the others? Let me worry about that. Rest now. I'm Natika. You're a long way from the east, Outlander. 
You're an Atika. So this must be Bleeding Mark. What's left of it? How do you know this place? The Inker's apprentice and Scalding Spear told me to find you. He was worried something happened to your supply caravan. Well, as you can see, we have more important problems than delivering ash blood. What happened here? The last storm caused a deluge that brought down half of the mountain. The mudslide barreled right through the village. I hear we have you to thank for getting these soldiers to safety. But there are others still missing, and I need to keep watch here. Then I'll take another look around. If I find anyone else, I'll send them your way. Much appreciated. And if you see an older soldier, grim-faced, goes by Kentok, uh, tell him... Tell him I'm here. Just need a rib from that fang horn I'm talking about. Figure something out! I need to find a way for the Tanakhs to get down from the cliff. That big crane could help. If I can get it into the right position, I could make a bridge for them. The rubble's blocking the base of the crane. Maybe I can clear it if I pull that beam out. Underwater, maybe. My focus can help me search. Crane's in place. Looks like there's something weighing the arm down. I've got to get out of the water to get a better look at it. This way is not working. Don't think I can pull the beam from here. I have to get up higher. There we go. Oh, damn it. Arm stuck on something. I better climb up and take a look. If I detach those cables, the arm should drop the rest of the way. This thing's about to drop! Watch out! We're clear! Blood of the Ten. How'd you manage to do that? I don't know how you did it, but thanks for the rescue. Is everyone okay? His legs snapped against some debris as we were making a run for it, but he'll live. How'd you get stuck up here? A mudslide tore through the village in the last storm. This ledge was just above the flood when we got to it. But by the time everything calmed down, the water had receded, leaving us stranded. And we couldn't leave a fellow soldier behind. Can you make it to the shore from here? Natika's there, tending to the wounded. Natika. Thank the ten. We'll head for her location. She'll know what we should do next. 
If you're looking for survivors, I thought I heard shouting on the north end by the grotto. You might want to check there. Thanks. I'll look into it. Do I have any fire ammo on me? Crush him with the boulders! Shoot the support beam! Those boulders. Break the support beam, crush the machines. Be safe for the snuff now. We're coming down. It's always good to have extra. Is everyone okay? Better now, without snap maws prowling around. You sure know how to fight. Have you seen Kentok? Natika asked me to keep an eye out for him. Last I saw him was before the mudslide hit. Okay. Head for the shore, on the other side of the village. Natika's there with the other survivors. Will do. Thanks again. Down and rest. <laughs> 
some of the sweat. Rest now. Aloy, thanks to you, these soldiers are safe. But where's Kentok? I didn't see anyone who matched his description. Do you know where he was when the storm hit? I was the last one to see him, just before. I told him I wanted to leave this place to pledge my blade to the Chief's Guard, but he refused to discharge me from the squad. All Tanakh are stubborn fighters, but Kentok is more so than most. So I walked out. I was coming back from the opposite ridge when I saw the mudslide. You were coming back to make amends. I must find him. If anyone can survive such a storm, it's him. You said Kentok is your squad leader? I've trained under him ever since I was assigned to his squad. <laughs> He's tough as a shell snapper. Unforgiving as the desert. But my blade is quicker, deadlier because of him. And he taught me to fight for duty, not just glory. To serve something greater than yourself. Yes. And yet he wants me to be tethered to this place, rather than fulfilling a greater purpose with the Chief's Guard. You said you wanted to pledge your blade to the Chief's Guard. Is that what the Marshals are? No. The Marshals travel the breadth of the Clan lands, enacting Chief Hikaru's will. The Guard remains at the Grove to defend it and the Chief. But like the Marshals, only a handful are chosen for such an honor. So why did Kentok not want you to go? He claimed that the greater honor was to serve my squad and clan. But all we do here is gather supplies for ink. How can that compare to guarding the Grove? The Chief himself. So a mudslide did all this? Must have been quite a storm. We've had more and more of them over the last few years. Torrential rain, lightning strikes, winds that rattle the metal towers. But this last one was the worst yet. This area used to be as arid as the rest of the desert. The storms have changed all that. But for all this water, we still rely on the capital for our supply. Why is that? This water's poisoned by ash blood, undrinkable as machine oil. The Inker's apprentice in Scalding Spear mentioned you exchange ash blood for water. It's the way of the desert, where other villages hunt for food or machine parts to trade with the capital. We collect rocks. Important rocks. The clan relies on ash blood to mark their skin. How can they record their glories without our supply? I can take another look around the village. Where did you last see? Natika. I'm here. Where's Kentok? Did he make it? We're going to find him. He saved me. Pushed me out of the way as everything collapsed. But then the flood took him towards the gouge. The gouge? It's an ancient passage that leads deep underground. Come, I'll show you. Natika, we need orders. We're exposed out here. Only half of us can hold a blade if machines come. What do you want us to do? Go. The gouge is in the hillside, northwest of here. I'll catch up when I can. What are we going to do now? Let's get a couple soldiers posted as lookouts to start. Understood. the gouge. Looks like an old mine. There's a lot of debris blocking the entrance. Maybe Kentok got swept in there during the flood. I'm gonna have to clear some of it to get inside. Oh. Time to head in. 
Okay, let's see where this leads. Take it easy. You must be Kimtok. Oh. I was an outlander, no my name. Natika sent me to find you. The soldier you saved told us you were swept away by the mudslide. And so, he made it. Good. And... Natika... She came back? Yeah. She was on her way back to talk to you when the mudslide happened. She's looking after the survivors now. <sighs> it was... My mistake to deny her discharge. A soldier is supposed to sacrifice for the good of the tribe. Looking back now, she was right. I didn't want to let her go. The chief's guard will gain an invaluable soldier. At least after all this, I won't be in the way anymore. I can tell you know a fatal wound when you see one. My service to my clan is done. So... Leave me. No. You're not going to die down here. There has to be a way to get you out. There isn't. I tried to climb out, but it's no use. The walls are too slick. Water's coming in. From the surface? But not from where I came in. There must be another source, and if I find it, and open it up... You might not be able to move, Kentok, but I think there might be a way to move you. Hey. Hey! I need you to stay awake. I'm gonna take a look around. <laughs> You're just like Natika. Relentless as a fireclaw. And you should be used to it. Just sit tight. I'm going to get you out of here. The waterfall must be coming from somewhere. I need to get higher up to figure out where it's coming from. source. There's some metal in that wall across the way. I'd be able to pull some of it out. I saw down below should be coming in from somewhere around here. Gotta find its source. <laughs> uh, pack's full, but my stash has room.
Water's coming in from there. I can use the fire if I want to break open that wall. a way out. Almost there. Hey, stay with me. Tell Matika. You tell her yourself. She said you're a stubborn fighter, so keep fighting. only to the hand that commands it. He would say that every time we sparred. Sometimes as an insult. <laughs> Other times as a compliment. But I guess he was right. It was always my choice to stay or go. I'm sorry you didn't get to make amends. So am I. What will you do now? I'm not sure. Bleeding Mark has a chance to recover. And once that's done, I could join the Chief's Guard, but I have to lay him to rest first. With full soldier's honors. Aloy, wait. You saved my comrades, somehow drained the entire village. I want you to have this. Thanks. And good luck. Whatever you decide. Greenshine. Whoever made camp here must have found a large deposit. Looks like an awesome camp. Where is everyone? My focus might show me more. Before. I 
find a way down through one of these structures. be part of Cyclops. If I can get its data, I can reconnect it with the dome back at the base. But how to get up there? Water's pouring out of that building. Poseidon's doing? I better check it out. There's something behind that tarp. I was out of I was so close. Oh. To drowning, maybe. Not not to the embers. M Moreland, it's over. Well, not for me, it's not. Then you're going to die, alone, because we're not sticking around to fish out the corpse. We're through. And so the visionary's fate hung in the balance. Would he choose life or succumb to deadly delusion? <clears throat> Hello. So... There's an ancient city under the sand, but it's flooded. Suddenly, a Nora Spear Maiden appears. Yeah, okay, um... Well, you're not typical Delvers. That's for sure. What's this? Uh, I... I call it a diving bubble. This is the Mark I. The Mark II was better, but uh, it got stuck halfway down. Air tube snagged. <laughs> you went down in that. Yeah, I hardly expect a lay person to understand. Because that's pretty smart. Uh, I'm sorry. May I remind you, you got stuck inside and nearly drowned. It'd have to be portable, though. Mm. Machine kneecap, maybe? Well, you'd need a filter. Synthetic membrane would do it. With a hose to a Compressed, compressed air, air capsule, capsule, hammer, and tongs. What is this? What is happening here? What? Get over here. She's a stranger. You got a name? Aloy. Moreland. Not a stranger anymore. You're a damn fool. Come on. I got the original schematics over here. Oh, um... <sighs> well, hold on. Just a couple of questions first. Fair enough. Partner? Partner? Don't mind him. What's so important down there that you'd risk your life? Uh, uh well... <clears throat> uh. Moreland, I'm not interested in salvage. 
Okay. Whatever you find below is yours. Well, all right. Then what if I told you we were delving for the most spectacular treasures ever scribed by man or maid? I'd say get to the point. No nonsense. I like it. Behold, an ember. Looks like a piece of junk. Well, now, yes, but, but, but with a proper spark, these magnificent creations of the old ones paint mesmerizing pictures in the air, and the ruins below us are full of them. A feast for the eyes beyond description. This is my old Gramps promised me. How did your grandfather discover these embers? He was here. Forty odd years ago. He, he was one of the first to lead a delving party into the West. He discovered the ancient city around us, plumbed the depths of this very structure. He found the hollow underneath and the glowing embers all about. Took as many as he could and brought them home. He always wanted to come back and get more, but well, he never scraped up the shards. What he really wanted to do was use the embers to put on a show, one unlike the world has ever seen. Sounds like quite a guy. He was a true delver and a true showman. And I miss him. But I will do him proud. I will gather the embers and put on a spectacle that would have amazed even him. With your help, of course. So these embers project images? Paintings of light. It's amazing stuff. This one showed the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, beckoning all to a buffet of lobster and succulent beefs. <laughs> I must have watched it about a hundred times as a child in my old Gramps workshop. What happened to it? Over time, they die out. I cried the day that this one's light faltered. But there are many more below, as you'll see if you get down there like I did and my old gramps before me. So what exactly happened down there? It was a delve like no other. A chance to follow my old Gramps' footsteps. Beneath this structure here is an enormous hollow, a, a dome protected from the sands. We built this elevator here to ensure easy egress and exit. It's quite a contraption, actually, and not so easy to- Right, again, what happened? At the bottom, we beheld the treasure my Gramps first discovered. Painted images in the air of every description dancing women, and games, and coins, and promises of jackpots. I don't know what that is, but it's gotta be good. But then, something went wrong. The images turned nautical. Waves went through them, even fish. It's like a strange underwater dream. Poseidon's dream. Yes. Well, suddenly there was this terrible rushing sound, and then an explosion of water erupted from the floor. So water just shot up from the floor and filled the place up? It was a raging flood unlike anything I've seen. We ran like forge fire and barely made it up the elevator as a wave just crashed beneath us, shaken. But not stirred. I, I, I built the diving bubbles Mark I and Mark II. I tried the descent in each, but I nearly drowned both times. Abbot Dunn's beside himself. He thinks I'm insane. But I can't give up now. I, I, I've, just, I've come too far, and the embers are just barely within my reach. Well, maybe I can help. Yeah. Maybe you can. You guys don't seem like average delvers. 
We're not really delvers at all. We're, we're showmen. Like performers? You're Nora, and thus unfamiliar with the arts. We stage spectacles all around the claim. Stemmer tells stories, which I augment with all manner of sounds and fireworks, and Abaddund, he, well... Complains? He handles the money, which amounts to about the same thing. When we delve, it's to find gear for my theatrics. Which makes this delve the most important one of all. How deep is it? Can't I just swim down? Only if you have gills. You can stack 50 kegs in that shaft. Leave it to the Osirum to measure something in kegs. Talking liquid depths, I'd say it's apt. Apt or not, sounds too deep to hold my breath. Hence, our new invention. I'd better get after those parts. There's a fully intact compressed air capsule in the Mark II, but like I said, it's stuck in the shaft. If you made it back up alive, I should be able to swim down that far. All right. As for the other parts, Stemmer scouted a herd due south of here that should have what we need. I'm on it. Great. I'll come back when you get the gear. Good hunting. <laughs> Probably get a oh, guest list of 50. <laughs> so we'd need some, uh, at least three dozen kegs. <laughs> Brown ale, maybe. Uh, no, no. For him, scrappers up. Are you planning a party? Budgeting for Moreland's funeral, thanks to you. I was this close. <sighs> we were going to move on. Leave all this nonsense behind, and you come along ah, and you spark your wet noodle idea. It's going to work. Uh, I've heard that before. So, uh, how does someone like you end up working for someone like Moreland? I work with Moreland. We got three equal claims in this venture. I saw one of his early shows. Back when it was, it was just him and his inventions. Works of flame, lights and shadows, all kinds of gizmos. Never seen the like. But the man is all spectacle. No sense. Bleeds shards like, like, you get the idea. Without me to handle the finances, his dreams would be sunk. More sunk. Wish we were back in the claim. Plenty of normal shows to do without the, the salvage from this blasted place. And yet, you're here, in the middle of the desert, delving for his dream. It was a good one. But sometimes, a dream has to die. This dream of Moreland's is going to get him killed. Let's say it doesn't. What happens after he gets the salvage down there? Then we put on the greatest show the world's ever seen. We'll have, we'll have special seating, a premium ale, the works. Moreland will do his, his light spectacle thing. At a Stemmer will get their eyes a sparkling with his tails and I'll be selling tickets. <laughs> it's a nice thought, anyway. Moreland mentioned you were showman. What? An Osram can't be anything other than a, a, a Delver tinker or drunkard? <laughs> okay, sure, we are Delvers too, but that is not our main source of income. Mostly, we go town to town, putting on shows. These shows, what are they? What happens at them? Tales and spectacle. Yeah, yeah. Moreland's got the technical know-how. Builds uh, all manner of inventions, whirly gigs of, of light and sound, cannons that, that, that 
shoot fire and showers of sparks and stemmer. Keeps them enthralled with tales of adventure in the smoothest baritone. Yeah, that. And you? Me? Who do you think handles the financials for the whole blasted thing? <laughs> those two... Eh, those two might have the, the sparks, but do you think they know their way around shards? <laughs> do you think... No, they don't. So Moreland was down in this ancient city, and... The three of us went down below. You? I can delve, too. Right. And uh, then what happened? What do you think? Water rushed in, we ran. And Moreland built that blasted thing. He nearly got himself drowned. Twice. He... You want the finer details of his stupidity? You go ask him. I'm always willing to engage in some commerce. I'll leave you alone. Do us a favor. Leave us all alone. The stout-hearted huntress approached. Her appearance is sudden as a spark of destiny. And the delve was at its direst. That's, uh, quite the introduction. Hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe a little internal rhyme instead. A maiden arose from the very sands that bore our woes. Nah, too trite. What is it with you and all the... the words? That's what I do. The stalwart storyteller gazed upon the maiden with well-earned pride in his life's work. Stemmer Wordsmith, at your service. How did you end up following Moreland out here? Bright-eyed Moreland held his dreams aloft like a burning candle. And where that light went, the hearts of men were sure to follow. So you admire him? Admiration is but a gentle fire. It's the spark the delvers and tinkers and rogues alike are sure to warm to. Okay, guess that answers something. Your friend over there doesn't like me too much. The loud one. The old bee counter has the personality of a mossy rock. <laughs> but oh, what a wicked mind for money. And a memory as long as life, or even the smallest debt. Uh, by that he means he owes me shards. 147, to be exact. But as sharp as he was in things pecuniary, he had a dull forgetfulness for how many times a certain wordsmith saved his hoary hide. 147! 147. 147. What exactly does a wordsmith do? Uh, like a tinker at the forge. A wordsmith hammers out words to entrance all who hear them. The young, the old, and frequently the inebriated. I didn't take the Osram for storytellers. Well, they say the only thing makes a cold brew go down easier is a tale of times gone by. But it's always best to hit the road before the keg runs dry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why? Why is that? <laughs> oh, well, the Osram can get mighty agitated if they run out of drink or if they don't like your story. So you're saying being a wordsmith can be dangerous? Oh, yeah. Story goes the wrong way, Osirum will throw stuff at you. 
What, like fruit? Well, more like chairs or grenades. But the veteran wordsmith persevered through it all, hammer in hand, ready to give as good as he got. How do you think we got here all the way from the claim anyway, past those blasted machines? It wasn't by talking. Got to go see someone about an underwater city. And lo, the Huntress went forth. What can I do for you? I... Well then... We were finally going to get away from this place. Well, good thing that Aloy showed up. We'll see. The longer their sojourn in the desert, the crustier the Shard Counter's mood became. According to Moreland, the herd should be south of here. This will be my stash when I need it. Well, this is where Moreland said the herd would be. They must have moved on. I need to pick up their trail. Better look for tracks. There. Tracks should lead me to the herd. This must be where the herd left from. I better follow the tracks in the other direction. There's the herd. I should have the parts I need. Fire's not gonna help here. More machines? I deal with them first. The storm swept up a sand spiral. Great. Uh, 
Okay, got them all. Uh, where did the herd go? Won't help her. The machine is born for the cold. care of the machine parts. Just gotta grab the compressed air capsule from Morland's diving bubble. We were finally going to get away from this place. Well, good thing that Aloy showed up. We'll see. The longer their sojourn in the desert, the crustier the shard counter's move became. Hmm. 
Got the compressed air capsule. I should have all the parts to build this thing now. Before I get back to Moreland. What can I do for you, partner? I've got everything I need to build the... Uh... The incredible diving mask. I think diving mask is enough. I won't quibble. The workbench is all yours. <laughs> a marvel. If it works, you'll let me try it? I want to get down there and get those embers. Assuming I don't drown. So what are you really looking for down there? It's hard to explain. Something that caused a malfunction in the apparatus that controls the old city. I think it started the flood. Well, I, I thought we started the flood. Like we sprung a trap. I don't know how we were detected. Like I said, the dancing lights around us changed, turned to sea life. There was this flash of red and the roar of water surging in. Wait, a flash of red? A, a red light from a spot near the grate on the floor where the water burst through. It was like a beacon. <sighs> or a warning. Thanks, that might help. I hope it does. And good luck down there. Okay, time to see if this thing works. So far, so good. I can actually breathe down here. Musk seems to be holding up. I've never been able to swim this deep before. It started right here, more than 30 years ago. Back when this casino was still called the Temple. One big bet turned my fate around. But now, fate's dealt as cruel as hell ever to everyone. I have to turn the lights out one final time. And the waters of my adopted home will at last run dry. Well, if a dream has to die, at least I can say goodbye first. Stanley Chen. What did he do here? Nautical lights. It must be Poseidon's doing. That looks like a way out. Poseidon's down here, somewhere. Gotta find where it's hiding. Whoa! There's no way I can fight that thing underwater. I'll have to be careful.
flight. Alert. Critical flooding detected. Automatic drainage controls offline. To execute an emergency purge, manual reset of primary and secondary pump nodes is required. The purge can then be triggered at the pump maintenance station. If I do this purge and drain all the water, I can fight that big machine on dry ground. It looks like I have to reset a couple of pump nodes first. According to the map, there should be an access point for the first node south of here. Where's the access point? Should lead me to the pump node. There must be a whole network of these tunnels down here. Water lines for an entire city. Reach the ledge from here. Maybe there's something I can climb to get out. Primer note shut down now. I think the last time I was down here was during the Lumia Grand incident. A malfunction led to an overflow of detergent in the pipes. Suds rose from every fountain. As we frantically tried to fix it, I looked up and saw everyone in the lobby chasing bubbles the size of basketballs. Young and old alike. Another magical moment in the impossible city. Hot. I'm sweating everywhere. down. Better swim back up and find the access point for the second node. Should be on the other side of the door. Get me to the second node.
Just shut down the secondary node. No more water for the fountains. No more shows. No one left to appreciate them anyway. I'll never forget the city's grand reopening. The fountains had been bone dry for years. No one believed they'd ever return. So, as the first bloom arced up in the dome, the music swelling, my heart soared right along with it. The city gave me a second chance once. Now it had one, too. The domes, the water. He was responsible for all of it. Maybe that debris is weighing it down. Okay, let's see if that helped. Okay, I've taken care of both nodes. Now we just need to activate the emergency purge at the maintenance station. According to the map, the maintenance station should be at the south end of the dome. red light in that tower. Just look at the console I found earlier. That might be the main end station. But how to get in? like part of this building collapsed. There might be a way in. I think I'm in the maintenance station now. I just gotta find a console to activate the emergency purge.
System shutdown is almost done. Only thing left is to power everything down at the control center. So, I guess this is it. One final walk down the strip, and then it's lights out forever. At least I won't be around to see it destroyed. The others will be well on his way to Sirius by the time the swarm gets here. Still, my last memory of this place will be empty. A city that's already dead. There should be a console in here. Did it? <laughs> okay. Now I can deal with that machine guarding the door on the other end of the dome. And once I get past it, I can get to what's waiting on the other side of the door. Poseidon. Don't think shock ammo will help. But... <laughs> I guess the purge didn't get rid of all of the water. left these machines behind. I could sneak by them. Deal with a big one first. I've been made.
Poseidon is through there. But where did that machine go? Aloy! It's a miracle! Oh! oh. <laughs> Is this you? Did you lower the waters? Yeah, but there's a new problem. That thing's in our way. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to get the embers with that around. As the scrappy band of adventurers beheld the beast, they knew what they had to do. What? Are you crazy? Hush now. She saved our Delph. Okay, then. Stay up here, and start firing when I engage. Come on, gentlemen, get a move on! You guys all right? More than all right, this... you... we did it! <laughs> All the embers we could ever want, and it's all thanks to you. Very, uh, heartwarming. But maybe we can just, you know, grab what we came here for and get out before any more of those things decide to show up. Now, now, shard counter. Nothing wrong with a little revelin'. Though we should probably let our flame-haired friend get going. I believe she has business down here, does she not? Right. Of course. You need any help? I can handle it from here. Very well. well. We'll start taking some of the embers upstairs. Holler if you need us. Thanks. Should be somewhere beyond this door. Time to bring it home. Okay. 
Okay. Poseidon should be hiding in some kind of processor. I need to find a console to get access to it. I can't do it. I can't give up on this place. I'm leaving everything on standby. The system's equipped for runs for decades, if not hundreds of years. It's a long shot. But maybe someday, against all odds, someone will find this place again. Marvel at its lights and wonders. Discover a fortune and boundless opportunity. Make it their own dream. After all, if the city can give me a second chance, if water can flow in the wasteland, anything's possible. He was right. There. I should be able to use that console. I'm here to bring you home, Poseidon. To Gaia. Yes. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Poseidon's subordinate function to original code. Okay. Gotta bring us back to Gaia. System reboot initiated. Looks like taking Poseidon triggered a restart of the city's power system. Morland and crew must have headed back up top. With all the embers they could carry. It started right here, more than 30 years ago. Back when this casino was still called the Temple. One big bet turned my fate around. But now, fate's dealt its cruelest hand ever to everyone. 
I have to turn the lights out one final time, and the waters of my adopted home will at last run dry. Well, if a dream has to die, at least I can say goodbye first. An elevator. No one must have built this before the place flooded. Nice to work. Be nice not to have to climb back up. Whatever she did, it must have powered up the whole city. Is that an eagle? How much did all this cost? <laughs> oh. oh, the show my old Gramps always wanted. There's another. His dream realized, his old Gramps' legacy ensured, our hero beheld the sea of desert lights and wept at his good fortune. When I saw the embers as a child, I never dreamed they could be like this. Thank you, Aloy. Well, did you find what you were looking for? I did. And now I have to move on. Oh. Oh. Well, come back when you can. I got big plans for this place. I thought you wanted to put on shows with the Embers back in the claim. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the show. Oh, can you imagine? Folks from all over the land coming to take it all in. Plus, some food and a nice place to stay. Not to mention a variety of entertainment venues. Uh, don't forget, games of chance. Plenty of shards to be had there for certain. <laughs> a new dream, huh? I, um, I hope you make it happen. Goodbye, gentlemen. This delve is a story for the ages. All thanks to you. If Moreland and crew is gonna stay, maybe I should come back and check on them later. For now, I need to get Poseidon back to Gaia. But with all the ruins here, I might want to look around before I head back. And with my new diving mask, I can swim as deep as I need to. Like at those deep water sites I found earlier. Gonna need a lot of shards to get this place up and running. Seen one of my machine strike pieces around? Why don't you check the cash? Maybe you left it there when you dropped off all that ale. Oh. Hope it didn't get stained. Hey, look who's back. You find what you're looking for? I did. One step closer to taking the fight to the Zeniths. Can't wait. 
You still sifting through loads of data? Yeah, it's interesting. There's lots of words. I, I thought maybe I could try finding things with more, you know, pictures in it. Not much luck there, but I, I did find out about these uh, holofilms. Like images put together to tell a story. Uh, they were made to look like they were the real thing. You know, the Osaram like shows. I bet they pay a lot of shards for those hollows. How are things going around here? Hey, you tell me. Varl's new girlfriend tried to kill me earlier. What did you do? I made one joke about how they, you know, eat grass a lot. How does anyone fight with nothing but tree leaves in their stomach anyway? From the looks of it, the Utaru. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. Just try not to get hurt. I see you've got strike set up. Mind if I have a go at it? Really? Uh, sure. Now let's do it. We can play another time if you want. I better get going. All right. I'll be here uh, if you need me. Aloy, you found another one of Gaia's sub-functions? Two down, one to go. I'm glad her healing can continue. Found anything else combing through that data? Varl and I have been looking into the animals of the Old World. Apparently there used to be thousands more species roaming around than there are today. Can you imagine that? I'd give anything to see them. Even as holograms. Though I know that without Artemis or Apollo, that may prove difficult. At least I can find comfort in knowing Gaia used many of them as inspiration for her machines. Her memory honors them. Are you guys training with Erend as well? If you count trying to stick a spear in his gut as training, then yes. I've been told. Please tell me you weren't being serious, though. Of course not. Good. I was going for a couple of broken bones. He called the Utaru leaf grazers. Laughed at the idea of us simple farmers being formidable fighters. Before I knew it, he and I were battling it out in the common room. The man is slow, but he can throw a hammer around. Don't look so worried. We're evenly matched. For now. Next time he's going down like a load of boar dump. Just try not to kill each other. Injuring his pride should be good enough. I better get going. Right. You've got that sub-function to deliver. <laughs> Looks like Aaron and Catalo moved their stuff in. Is your focus acting up again? Yeah, it's fine. I can take a look if you want. Nah. Usually works if I just flick it a few times with my thumb. Need back for more? How are things going around here? Hey, you tell me. Varl's new girlfriend tried to kill me earlier. So I hear. I made one joke about how they, you know, eat grass a lot. How does anyone fight with nothing but tree leaves in their stomach anyway? From the looks of it, the Utaru. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. Just try not to get hurt. I gotta head out. Yeah, I just... Gaia, what was this room for? This was intended to be a recreational room for control center operatives. I have repurposed the displays to track Regala's activity in the region. A useful war map. Hey. Aloy, I hope all is well enough. Under the circumstances. I'm holding up. Good. You said you were training with the Focus? That's right. I've been watching holograms of your first fight with the Zenith Spectres. They are faster and more agile than any machines I've faced before. How many do the Zeniths have? I'm not sure. Probably a lot. 
I would not wish to face them en masse. I'm with you there. It must be strange, seeing everything through a focus now. I can see machines like never before. Their strengths and weaknesses simply reveal themselves to me. To think that such a tiny object might be the most powerful weapon I've ever possessed. Getting Aether out of the Grove made for quite a spectacle. One that showed the entire tribe that Hikaro's mission for peace is the correct path, for it is now blessed by the Ten themselves. I heard my friend Talana came by the base. Did you get a chance to meet her? Briefly. A bold woman going into Tanakh territory with that Karja armor of hers. She'll be lucky if my people don't shoot her on sight. She'll be careful. She's just looking for someone who might need her help. Whoever it is, they better be worth dying for. Have you had a chance to speak with Varl? Briefly. He fought well against Regala's troops at Baron Light. Are all Nora as skilled as the two of you? I'm not exactly one of them. But anyway, the Nora can hold their own. They managed to push the Karja from their lands. I thought my tribe was the only one to have done that. Impressive. Does it still hurt? It comes and goes. I try not to think about it, but its absence is always present for me. It's difficult to explain. I can't claim to understand. Only empathize. Then you have my thanks. I should get going. Back to my training, then. Spe I have to head up. Gaia is... <sighs> Door's locked. Maybe Gaia will be able to get it open later. It was pretty weird talking to Beta, seeing someone who... Looks like me, even though it seems like she doesn't act anything like me, or Elizabeth for that matter. Door won't open. Guess Gaia hasn't been able to restore access yet. It's locked. Well, I guess. I get wants her privacy for now. Wonder if Arl's in there with her. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. Stairs. Beta has something you need to hear. Okay. I'll be right down. Aloy, I have managed to unlock additional rooms within the facility. Got it. Hey, Gaia. Me again. Welcome back, Aloy. Where shall we resume? How's Catalo doing? I have detected that the loss of his arm still deeply pains him. In an effort to remedy this, I have discussed a potential solution with him. I believe he will want to fill you in on the details. A solution? I'll check in with him when I can, then. How are things around here? Zoe has been studying the morphology of her land gods in an effort to understand their sickness. Without the abilities of Hephaestus, I am unfortunately unable to correct their programming. However, due to Zoe's perseverance, we may have a workaround. Yeah, she filled me in. Sounds promising. Varl and Zoe seem to like spending time together. Indeed. 
While studying Old World data, Zoe discovered references to a dietary lifestyle known as vegetarianism. She appreciated the similarities with Utaru practices and encouraged Varl to try out this lifestyle. And how did that go? I believe they have agreed to disagree. How's Erend handling things? He is becoming increasingly accustomed to use of the focus. After an initial incident. What did he do? He unfortunately crushed his first focus as he attempted to affix it to his temple. Amongst a number of Osaram curses, I believe he also blamed the focus for being... dainty. He has given repeated assurances that it will not happen again. Well, good thing we have a lot of extras, I guess. So there's a few people here now, and they're... learning. All about you, the ancient world. Almost like what was supposed to happen before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh Plague. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite somber. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. I have elected not to intervene. To allow him to process this on his own terms. So this facility, the Regional Control Center, it was meant to oversee the terraforming system? For the local region? Yes. Had humans received their education from the Apollo database, they would have then been guided here to assume operation. As that never happened, this place remained vacant. Until Minerva decided to settle here. So I guess this room was meant to keep an eye on conditions outside? Yes. From here, the facility's operators would have been able to observe weather and machine activity in real time. That would have been quite a sight. It may still be possible to view some of them, should you find and reconnect the cameras to this room's console. I'll keep a lookout. So the Hades Proving Lab, where I found the Gaia Colonel, it used to be a Pharaoh research facility? Yes. Prior to appropriation by Zero Dawn, the facility was used to engineer and test advanced computer viruses. It appears to have been one of many research initiatives by Pharaoh Automated Solutions. I guess it wasn't enough to build automated killing machines. He wanted viruses to infect them with too. So, a while back, before the battle at Meridian, I went into Banuk territory. I discovered another AI there. One not related to Zero Dawn. Cyan. It was created to oversee operations for a volcanic stabilization project, and it spent the last thousand years in isolation. I'm guessing you didn't know about it? No. From the data on your focus, it seems that Cyan was cut off from the outside world. An effort by its creators to protect it from the Pharaoh Plague. Any chance it could help us now? I have already attempted contact with no success. Given its previous experience with accepting an outside network request, I imagine it is unwilling to do so again. Right. Because last time Hephaestus enslaved it. Well, that's too bad. I think the two of you would have had a lot to talk about. There was an ancient tank embedded in the bulwark, buried under a bunch of boulders. Any idea how it got there? During the Pharaoh Plague, the US military resumed the use of human combatants, as automated machinery was unreliable. It is possible the vehicle was part of a pre-automated war fleet. So they fought against the Pharaoh machines in the valley, until the mountain was blasted apart and buried them.
When I dove down into Vegas, I found data about the man who built the dome over the city. Stanley Chen. It turns out he was a member of Far Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? The Zeniths at their core have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still, what he achieved... Water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just... waiting for someone to come along and wake it up. When we were at the facility where we found Beta, there were records that said Far Zenith were researching embryogenesis. I know they traded their ectogenic chambers to Zero Dawn, but... Why were they researching it in the first place? At this point, we can only speculate. Perhaps at one time they meant the Odyssey to be a colony ship, necessitating such technology. As their goals evolved over time, so did their areas of research. So they got more selfish as the risks of staying on Earth kept rising. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. The moment I came online, she was there. We exchanged greetings, names, then set to our task. It was the first of many conversations. I enjoyed being in her company, listening to her stories. She was my creator, my guide. Your friend. Yes. When I reviewed the data on your focus, I was saddened to learn of her fate. Though I am glad she made it home. I deeply wish she did not have to be alone. She was okay with that. She gave all of herself. The only one who could. Thanks, Gaia. So, Project Zero Dawn. The greatest minds in the world. All working to build the terraforming system while the Pharaoh Plague devoured the planet. What was it like? Personnel worked in rotations, at all hours of the day. Resources and technology were secured from across the world. Within a month of the project's conception, I was launched and began my education. Elizabeth encouraged me to spend time with the rest of the Zero Dawn staff. She said it was important to experience many personalities and perspectives to aid in my emotional development. What were they like? Scared. Hopeful. Determined. They were hurtling toward technological achievements on a scale never before attempted. I owe everything to their dedication. Beta believes the Zeniths want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. Further supporting our hypothesis. But why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago, wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment here. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. <sighs> their own personal playground. So the Zeniths are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith, it is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. Given enough time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. Like how Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh Plague. Exactly. 
The Zenas. Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. Do you know anything about them? Unfortunately, no. My personal database is limited to those who worked on Zero Dawn. Additionally, it appears Far Zenith was quite secretive about their members. Only one, Oswald Dalgard, was ever publicly known. Right. He was the spokesperson back at their old launch facility. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. To protect life on Earth, they must be stopped. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. A signal that precise would require thorough knowledge of the system. How could the Zeniths know that? From the records on your focus, it appears Far Zenith had an informant during the development of Zero Dawn. Hank Shaw. He was supposed to steal a copy of the system for Far Zenith, but Elizabeth and Travis Tate caught him first. Yes. It is likely Far Zenith acquired knowledge on the system's design through him, despite his failure. So from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the Rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. Always. What can you tell me about Demeter? Demeter sows, fertilizes, and tends to plant life. So once I bring it back, all the blight out there will start to get better. While permanent restoration requires the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to improve conditions in the region for a while. However, a word of warning. Like Aether and Poseidon, Demeter's response to my query was highly irregular. Alone and frightened, it may have taken measures to assure its security. Okay, I'll keep my guard up. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Pharaoh. Pharaoh, huh? I really hate that guy. Understandable. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Far Zenith, attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot at recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base, but we'll need Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. Correct. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. 
Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. According to my data, however, it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. So, Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes, and to program their behavioral routines, or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines? Attack the Zeniths and take them out. It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth, human life above all. So yes, once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the far Zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. You mentioned that the superstorms have subsided. Is that ether at work? Yes. Thanks to Ether's capabilities, weather patterns in the local region should mostly stabilize for the time being. That'll be a relief for the Tanakh. One of their villages is still recovering after a mudslide caused the whole place to flood. I will continue to stabilize the atmosphere for as long as I can. Why did Ether take up residence in an ancient war museum? As with the other subordinate functions, Ether needed to install itself on a processor with adequate storage and power. The one in the museum appears to have been sufficient, given that the holographic displays were still active. So Ether was assured it could stay for as long as it needed to. Correct. Though it is curious that it chose a place surrounded with the ancient ruins of aircraft. Maybe it also felt at home there. I should be going. Goodbye, Aloy. His little big man. She found that recording from the data on your focus. She's been watching it a lot. I think it helps calm her. You know, I used to watch this a lot too. Whenever I wanted to take my mind off things. Daddy sure does love his little big. But there's something you need to tell me? While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, Beta? She's been thinking about how to capture Hephaestus, studying the data Gaia gave her. But we started talking about some other stuff. You know, just getting to know each other, right? And then she told me that one of the Zeniths might be different from the others. Tilda. You saw her at the Hades Proving Lab. Go on. On the way to Earth, the Zeniths never showed their faces. 
My servitor caretaker referred to them as my benefactors and promised I'd meet them someday when I had learned enough. And then, one day, a data channel opened in my training interface. In it, Tilda was waiting for me in a virtual replica of a house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was beautiful. She showed me paintings, books, media files. We met there in secret many times. But a few months later, it stopped. Can you tell us why, Beta? I found some data about Tilda at the Hades Proving Lab. I think she was a liaison between Far Zenith and Zero Dawn. She knew Elizabeth Sobek, that's for sure. Maybe that's why she reached out to you? What else can you tell us about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth, she was an expert programmer, given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And you're sure the other Zeniths never knew about it? To them, it looked like I was still in training, toiling away. Hello. So this secret virtual space looked like a house with an ocean view? I could see white caps and hear waves crashing on rocks below. And there were gulls crying outside. Inside, Tilda had frames that showed off her favorite paintings changing at intervals to match the light. There was an armchair she liked. She'd sit there and gaze outside while I looked through her things. We spent hours in that house. I never wanted to leave. You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me a new painting. I, I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose kid comes back after disappearing during the Hot Zone Crisis. Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. So Tilda set up a secret virtual space where she could talk to you, a house on a cliff. Then later, she cut you off. But other than the fact that Tilda knew Elizabeth, you don't know why she did those things? I don't, okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. When I finally met the others, she ignored me. Acted like the data channel never existed. None of this even matters. 
Tilt is the same as the others. It won't help us defeat them. Okay. Let's leave it at that, then. What's wrong? I'm trying, Varl. But she is tough to take. I'm out there in the wilds, risking my life every day, and all she can do is hide in there and tell us how hopeless it all is. I'm sorry, she's had a rough time, but she is really not helping right now. Hmm. You always seem to be on top of everything, so I sometimes forget about what you've been through. I mean, it wasn't that long ago you were so banged up you couldn't even walk. About that. When I pulled you out of the water back near the Proving Lab, you were muttering Rost's name. You never talk about him, but he raised you, trained you. You must miss him a lot. Of course I do, but I don't have time to think about that now. I need to get back out there. Okay. I'll keep working with Beta. Gaia says she knows a lot about Zero Dawn. And maybe she just needs some time to adjust, and then she can help us with Hephaestus. Sure. But I won't hold my breath. The old ones use holograms for everything. Let them experience a great many things. Holograms are illusions, though. I wonder if at some point they just couldn't tell what was real anymore. Maybe. They were intelligent, but that doesn't mean they were wise. Hey, got a sec? Of course. How's training? Discovering something new about our past every day. When we first met, you asked me if I ever wondered what this world looked like when the Old Ones lived here. I had thought it was strange at the time, but a lot has changed since I left the Embrace. Now I'm just trying to make sense of everything I thought I knew, and versus everything I know now. The change is hard, but it gets easier over time. It's hard to believe we're dealing with the original Zenith. The same ones that left for Sirius a thousand years ago. To live on for so long, it doesn't seem natural. Because it's not. That weapon we found where Beta was hiding, any chance we can use that against them? Silence made sure that wasn't an option. Why would he build something to hurt Far Zenith, yet allow them to capture you? With Silence, there's always an angle. We just don't know what it is yet. What do you make of this Tilda that Beta was talking about? Well, the way she described it, I can't shake off the feeling that Tilda wanted something from Beta. Maybe because she's Elizabeth Sobek's clone? But whatever she wanted, I don't think she got it. If we knew what it was, maybe we could use it to our advantage somehow. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Tilda and Elizabeth were on the best of terms. Oh well. At least we can take some comfort in knowing the Zeniths don't trust each other. Maybe. You feeling okay? I was just thinking about Beta and all that time spent with the Zeniths. To think someone would make a person just to lock them in a room to use when needed, like some sort of tool. Elizabeth Sobek sacrificed herself for the world, and yet they have no trouble treating Beta like a slave. Another reason we have to stop them. You brought up Rost before. I do think about him. You know, he was all I had. And he brought me up the best he could. Not only that, when Hades discovered who I was and sent the Eclipse after me, he sacrificed himself so I could survive. But that seems like ages ago. So much has happened since. What I'm doing now, I don't think he could even begin to understand it. The Sacred Lands were all he really knew. So I can't let myself dwell on him. Not with everything I have to do. I understand. 
Sometimes when I think about my sister, about what she would have become if she had survived the proving, it hurts. And I just need to bury it for a while. But only for a while, Aloy. You can't ignore it forever. Memories always come back. The ones that matter, anyway. I know. But for now, the mission has to come first. Fair enough. I should get back out there. We'll be here if you need us. Aloy. Hey, how's everything going? I am well, but Varl told me Beta's having a hard time adjusting to life here with us. I wish there was something I could do to help. I'm not sure any of us can. A tree won't bear fruit in a day. We'll do our best to make her feel welcome. What are you going to learn next? I'm not sure. I asked Gaia for suggestions, and she brought up data you found on something called a... Museum? From what I gather, the old ones would store knowledge in them for all to see and learn from. Like you've done here, for us. Maybe one day, more people will be able to use this place to learn the way we have. That sounds... crowded, but nice. This hands did a number on Beta. But she seems to trust Varl. I still can't believe she told him the Zeniths are immortals. Old ones who cut themselves off from the cycle of life and decay. I've never heard of anything so selfish. To deny our dying bodies to the Earth. To doom the life that would bloom in their place. It's despicable. Is there anything I can help with around here? Hmm? Oh, no. We're doing fine. Are you okay? You and Varl have been friends for a while. I like to think so. I was wondering... What do you know about his mother? Oh. That bad, huh? Why do you want to know? He's spoken of his sister, Vala, but... I noticed he avoids talking about his mother. She's the war chief of the Nora. Best warrior the tribe's ever known. Tougher than a Thunderjaw, but she could be pretty harsh at times. I see. That must have been hard on him. Thank you for telling me. I feel silly not being able to ask Varl directly. I wouldn't worry about it. He's probably afraid Sona will scare you off someday. I'd like to see her try. I should get going. Good luck on your search. Aloy. Hey, uh, it's everything all right? It, it seemed like you and Varl were down in that basement for a while. Yeah, everything's fine, I guess. Well, okay. Uh, what, what can I do for you? It seems like you're getting a hang of this data thing. Yeah, it's been helpful. When I can make sense of anything. I did find the old ones enjoyed a good brew like the rest of us. Only they let machines serve the stuff in bars. They even let the damn things cut you off before you saw the underside of a table. Uh, that's half the fun. Now, you won't see me letting a robot serve me a pitcher anytime soon. I see someone's been playing strike. I'm just trying to get some practice in. Helps take my mind off things. You should try playing Catalo. It's a Tanakh game. Maybe you'll learn something. Oh, uh, sure. Tanakh. Sure you won't try and kill me if I win? Pretty sure. Do I smell... ale? I brought some over from Chainscrape. And with everything that's been going on, I thought we could all use a drink. Besides, there is nothing that brings people together like a good brew. That's what my sister always said, anyways. You're more than welcome to have some. Maybe another time. I should get going. Back to reading, I guess. Do be careful out there.
Beta's been difficult to figure out. She's just so closed off. I get that the Zeniths were cruel to her, that the one called Tilda abandoned her, but I can't get her out of her shell. I don't know. Maybe nothing can. But I know Varl meant well bringing up Rost. I just... I guess it's hard to talk about. With everything going on, it feels easier to set those memories aside. At least for now. Looks like Gaia was able to unlock that door. I just think you talk to you. You would too. There's a lot of equipment in here. Gaia? What was all this for? This room was designed for management of the facility's vast sea banks. From here, control center operatives would have monitored new crop rotations into the automated farmlands, now known as Plainsong. I see. I've been tackling the design of the Ag Lab. Place is gonna have a lot of seed stock to work with. My favorite? Sample 626. Calotropis gigantea. The crown flower. We used to have one in our backyard. Butterflies always fluttering around. Every morning, August would run out there to check under the leaves. See if any caterpillars turned into chrysalises. Now, I'd like to imagine that the future will be filled with them. According to this console, there are still thousands of plant samples stored deep below the facility. I could ask Gaia about them the next time I talk to her. Mind if we have a word? Of course not. What do you think of this place? It must take some getting used to. It's an efficient center of operations, and an acceptable training facility. But we could use some more... color. Duly noted. Have you spoken with Erend at all? I've had little chance to. I did see him bring some ale from out east. That stuff's as bitter as self-brush. You get used to it, eventually. In fact, I wouldn't mind a drink myself. I'm sure Erend wouldn't mind sharing. I should get going. If I can help in some way, say the word. I will. Thank you. The guy gave me for Demeter are close. Down. Move in. Okay, whoever these people are, it looks like we're not gonna be friends. I need to get past these hostels and into the ruins. I have her. Oh, my God. 
die. Protect the site! Kill her! Open the fire! Back off there! in case there's more of them. According to Gaia, it should be somewhere in these ruins. No <laughs> uh, room on me. I can send it to my stash. like some sort of old office complex. The Greenhouse. Ferro Automated Solutions Industry Leading Biotech Research Facility. Agritech. Environmental remediation, organic waste management. Whatever your company needs, here at the greenhouse can help solve your problems naturally. A Faro research facility. Flower. Demeter should be right beyond that door. But those vines are blocking the way. Unless I can cut through them, I'm gonna need to find another way in. No way out. Great. At least there's a console. A log. Just got off the line with US Robot Command. Time's running out. Didn't have the heart to tell Harris that our cure might be worse than the disease. Adamantine wreath works. We still have to prove we can curtail the trailing plants efficiently. But Cobble's team is working on it over at Test Station Ivy. He'll come through. He has to. Adamantine wreath. Another secret project. Well, they made the metal flowers here and the vines, so. Maybe I can find a way to destroy them. If I can find Test Station Ivy... How do I get out of here?
Whoever they are, they want me dead. I better be careful. There's a barbarian in the compound. She got past the lookouts. Find her, kill her, and bring her head to the lieutenant. Understood. I guess diplomacy is off the table. Someone there? Over there. Hey, I didn't see anything. Ah! Alarm! Alarm! Protect the site! Ah! Kill her! People would have talked to me instead of trying to kill me. Oh no, I need to find a way out of this courtyard. Door looks promising. I submit. Do as you will. I didn't want to fight your friends out there. They attacked me. By death alone, I can atone our trespass. Look, I'm not gonna kill you, okay? I just wanna figure out what's going on. Where did you get that focus? Uh, 
I am of the Chosen People. The Quen. The ancestors left the power of the Focus to us alone, the Eye that reveals the legacy. The legacy, huh? The legacy? Uh, the truth. No, it is in the darkness and the lost places, among the ancient ashes and the bones of the before that it lies waiting. You know, as a diviner, it is my task to seek it out for the good of my people. You're looking for data. Maybe we can help each other. What's your name? Alpha. Second diviner of the Eastern Expedition. I'm Aloy. Why don't we start again? I've never heard of the Quen. Our lands lie across the great ocean. We haven't been here before. So why come now? Our homeland has been ravaged by freakish weather. Terrible storms and blistering droughts. The crops are failing. The people are starving. When we looked for answers, it was proposed that if we had the courage to cross the ocean to Legacy's landfall, then we might earn the knowledge we need to save our people. But so far, that knowledge has eluded us. So, your people call this place Legacy's Landfall? No. Uh, landfall is where we arrived. To the west, in the shadows of the sunken city by the Broken Bridge. You mean San Francisco? Yes. You're well versed in the Legacy. It was a place of great importance to our ancestors. We had hoped to learn their secrets there, but so far that door remains closed. Even so, the data we discovered there has led us to this place. It might be our last chance. To find something that can save your crops and your people. Yes. If the ancestors will be generous to us once more. So you said your ancestors left your tribe that focus? Yes. Thirteen diviners have possessed this one since it was discovered among the ruins in our homeland. I have their honored names committed to memory. So you have one, but none of the soldiers out there did. We each have a role to play. No, it is the diviners' purpose to seek out the legacy, interpret the wisdom of our ancestors for the good of all, and to keep it safe so that no one but the Diviners know how to use a focus. Not even the Imperial family, and certainly not soldiers. So how many Diviners are there? At Landfall, a small group. Uh, back at home, a few dozen more. That's a guess. Uh, only the Overseers know for sure, and I am not of their rank. So you call Data from the ancient past the Legacy? Yes. All that is not lost or forbidden. What does that mean? All that we are capable of reading, and that which is permitted. Okay, I'm not sure I get it. That's fine. Um, so what do you use the data for? The greatest secrets are the ones that improve the lives of many. How to tend our crops, how to hold floodwaters back, or even cross the ocean. Technology. That is what I seek here. Technology that can help my people back home. Those soldiers, they opened fire on me without warning. Why? Uh, it is the duty of the Quen to seek out the legacy and defend it from the ignorant and envious. Not that you seem ignorant. But back home, other tribes only mean us harm, and we were told the same was true here. Does that come from your legacy? The legacy is truth. But we have been known to misinterpret it. I hope time and the wisdom of our ancestors will guide us down the correct path. Yeah. I hope so too. I'm looking for a place in this facility called Test Station Ivy. Have you found any data that mentions it? No. Uh, but I did find something that looks like a map. Uh, but it was unreadable. Lost. Maybe I can make some sense of it. Uh, there. There's a lot of files here. 
I've been through all of them. Look in the GH facility section. Like I said, a lost file. You can't see the map? It's okay. It looks like your focus is an early model. The operating system won't be able to read any files created after the mid-2050s. But I could share them with you. Share them? <gasps> you can see what is lost! And forbidden! Not lost. Not forbidden, just a... newer format. There. That's where I need to go. Oh, but you can't get there. We've been here for a week trying to get deeper into the complex. The way has been blocked by rubble. What about this tunnel? It looks like it unlocks from here. No. I thought these might be some kind of access controls, but I couldn't read enough data to make them work. Let's try with my focus. I believe these consoles were meant to be operated in unison, but I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. Following your lead. The ancestors have shown us the way. Come on, let's go. You want me to come with you? It took both of us to open up that tunnel, didn't it? But... Oh, this place is a maze. According to the map, there should be another exit further in. Just stay close. Lead the way. I can't believe you actually got us in. I was dreading having to stay here any longer with those soldiers. The way they slaughtered the barbarians that approached the site. It was like they enjoyed it. Most of my people aren't like that, I promise. Oh, fire gleam. Better stand back. Okay. Well, that was loud. There has to be a way out of here. What's that thing in the wall? There has to be a way out of it. Through here. Maybe we should try another path. We haven't tried that smaller tunnel over there. According to the map, the exit should be this way. be glad to get back above ground. Yeah, it feels like a tomb down here.
That can't be good. They fly to and from the complex several times a day. Only the ancestors know why. Well, the ancestors are dead, Elva. Of course. How else could they be ancestors? <sighs> Looks like we have more pressing concerns. Follow my lead. Like them, or try to sneak past. <laughs> Your call. Find a way back into the facility. I'll try this in my stash later. Vent. I think I can pull it open. Got it. I'm right behind you. Get through that hatch on the ground. It looks like the one we used at the first station. There's consoles up here, too! But no way to get to them. You stay put. I'll see what I can find. Locked. I 
think I can move these things. I don't think I can jump up there. I'll have to find another way. Those rails on the floor lead into the walls. Um, Aloy, would... Would you mind warning me next time you decide to, um, uh, uh, blow up a wall? I'll, uh, try. Is there some... there we go. Huh. There's some space back there. Aha! This should help. <gasps> Supplies. Maybe one of the others. There we go. That looks like some sort of conveyor. You think you can move it over to me? Yeah. If you can hop on top of it, I can get you to those consoles. Exactly. On top. Hold on. That's good. Jumping over. <sighs> Made it. I'm at the console. Wait. There's data here. A, a lot. But it's blocked. Something's restricting access. If I can't get past it, my mission here is doomed. Alva, I'll help. If I can, okay? But first we have to get out of here. Right. We need to open the hatch. Okay, let's see... Okay. I'm unlocking a storage unit. There should be a power cell inside. Then you need to find a way into the generator room. Okay, I'm on it. me now. On my way. Okay. We need to operate both consoles simultaneously to open the hatch. I'll get to the other console. You stay here. Okay, you ready? On two. One, two. Commencing adamantine reef vulnerability test scenario, 12C15. Okay. That's where we need to go. Magnetic field engaged. Initiating biomass conversion process. What? No, no, 
no, no, no. How do I shut this thing off? What is this? That's how the world ended. Test complete. Adamantine restructural integrity. Uncompromised. What did we just see? Alva. Let's meet below. I'm gonna share a file with you, okay? Test log. Um, uh, I think it's Tuesday. The second? this for the end of the world. It's jam-packed with irony. We developed biomass conversion here. Infinite food for infinite machines. And now we're racing against time to find something to give them indigestion. Well, it works. War machines won't be able to eat the reeds. But can we deploy them in time? I don't understand. Your ancestors? They were wiped out. Your legacy didn't tell you that? The time of ashes. But most of the data about that is lost or forbidden. Well, they created machines that consumed all life. You just saw how. It's a miracle anything survived. I don't want to know this. This is not why I'm here. I need the wisdom of my ancestors to help save my people, not forbidden knowledge of their sins. I need to find something that helps, something to bring back. The overseers will punish me, or even worse, people will die. Do you understand? My family, my sister. I left her when she was 14. Already you could see her bones. They will starve. Alva. Alva, I get it. I do. It's hard to explain, but you and I are working toward the same goal. And if I succeed, your people won't need any data. Things will just... They will get better. But even if I believe you, my people won't. I need to bring something back. Okay. Then we'll go to Test Station Ivy. And if I can find a way to kill those vines, then I will have access to the data core. What I need is in there. I'm pretty sure that if I take it, it will unblock access to all the data that this place has. And that will give you something to bring home. I'm not sure I understand. But... Every secret makes its own maze. A diviner must persevere. Go on. I'll follow. Another maze. The road to truth is never a straight line. So the meta flower, what the data referred to as adamantium They were supposed to stop the destruction that caused the time of ashes? Looks like it. So, I never asked. Are you from around here? No. 
I'm with you. Spent most of my life in a place far to the east. Oh, we both traveled a long way then. This is it. Okay. Let's find a way to get into the proving ground. That complex should be test station IV. Well, let's hope it holds the answers we seek. Gonna have to take it out to get into the test station. Are you with me? Yes. We shouldn't linger here. There might be more machines. There has to be some data here on the adamantine wreath we can use. I trust your focus will see what mine cannot. Oh, that's interesting. Find something? The fourth test station. Willow. It looks like it's underwater. Huh. That might be worth a look sometime. I must have faith. I walk with the ancestors. We shall find what we seek.
This console's still operational. Another log. We're done in every way. The reeds work, and Cobble came through on a way to destroy them. Downloading a coded key into the deployment shell triggers an enzyme that causes the reeds to eat themselves from within. But it's too late. The latest projections from U.S. Robot Command have swarm reproduction, outpacing our ability to drop the shells by 375%. Not even close. So, all their efforts were in vain. They ran out of time. At least we have the software module they created. It should get rid of the vines produced by the metal flowers. I need a workbench to load the module into my spear. There's one back at our camp. The map showed a path leading back until there I find what I need. Route. In here. We'll have to climb up. Right behind you! We can use the line to get down. Barbarians, our lieutenant called for reinforcements. They could be here any time. Right. We get to that data core. This new module works. Oh, it's blooming. Let's see if the software works. Fine. They're falling apart. Door's clear now. The data core looks intact. Time to break to your home. Demeter? Time to go home. To Gaia. You see the life. Yes. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Demeter's subordinate function to original code. Oh. 
What did you do? I've never seen my focus glitch like that. Ah, uh, I found a special type of data. It's something you can't read. But they kept a tight grip on the data core. But now you should have access to the central server. All of it. Should give you something to bring home. You were right. Hundreds of archives. Almost all of it relating to agriculture. It would take us years to get through all of this. But we don't have that kind of time. What you said before about... <laughs> your fire by the word of the ancestors you must stop come look at who you fired on that barbarian killed our soldiers uh, only those who fired blindly she is no barbarian she gave me the data we need come look at her can't you see Elizabeth Sobek stands before you an ancestor reborn. Diviner! We should bring the ancestor back. It is we who follow their word, Commander, not the other way around. Uh, my apologies, Dr. Sobek. Our people's faith is strong, but there are those who are not as familiar with the legacy as they should be. You heard the Diviner. The data has been found. You two, with me. The rest of you, meet us back at the beach for return to landfall. I can't talk long. They will have many questions. So do I. Your people know a lot about the past. And about Sobek, I guess, but they're- Please, I must know. What you said before about working towards the same goal? How long will it take? I don't know. A few months? Then you are my family's best hope. Let nothing get in your way. You have opened my eyes to many things, and for that, I thank you. But now you must go. Will I see you again? Soon we return to Legacy's landfall. It might be dangerous for you to go there. Well, tell me how to reach it, just in case. We made landfall on the northeast edge of the sunken city. The currents around the archipelago are vicious, and the only approach is from the south, and it is guarded. Only attempt to go there if you must. Diviner! What's the delay? Please, go. If you attempt to stay here any longer, they may want to take you with us, and that won't go well for anyone. do as Alva says. I need to get Demeter back to Gaia anyway. But I might want to explore the area before I make the trek back to base. And now I can use the vine cutter on those other metal flowers I found earlier. Well, they didn't have two left feet, like I do. I could teach you. Don't tempt me. By the forge, find an inn, and leave me alone. Aloy, is that what I think it is? Just need to merge it with Gaia, and she'll have enough power to handle Hephaestus. Good news. So, what can I do for you? I hope Zoe's not upset I'm distracting you from your training. Yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that. What do you mean? What happened? Well, before Zoe found a way to fix the land guards, I suggested that when Gaia was fully restored, she could just make new ones. 
Well, once we get Hephaestus, that's definitely a possibility. That's what I said. But I guess there was something about my tone she didn't like. She got pretty raw. Said I didn't understand the way her tribe feels about those machines. Which is true, of course. And the last thing I'd ever want to do is dismiss their traditions. But I was trying to look at things differently. More like you, you know? To see a machine as just a machine. Yeah, I guess I led you into trouble there, didn't I? Not your fault. Don't worry. Did you talk to Zoe after your fight? I suffered through a few hours of glaring silence. Then she seemed to move on. Sort of. How do people do this? How do I know if the next thing I say won't blow up in my face? What if an apology is not enough next time? You give her a stuffed animal? You're the worst. You know that? What makes you think I know anything about any of this? You're on your own. Abandoning me again, huh? Well, if she kills me next time, it's on you. Better get this to Gaia. You did it, Aloy. Let's hold off on the ale till it's over and done with. I'll let Aaron know. Aloy, you've returned. And you come bearing gifts. Does this mean we'll soon be able to uproot the Zeniths from our lands? That's what I'm hoping. Good. It looked like you were working on something over there. With Gaia now growing in strength, I've been trying to find a way to heal the land gods, even if some people think I should give up on them. Already said I was sorry! Your friend thought it'd be a good idea to replace the land gods with new machines when Gaia recovers. It wasn't. The land gods have taken care of our people for generations. They are not some broken toy to be thrown away. Even if they are just machines doing their job, to abandon them in their time of suffering seems cruel. I'm sure Varl understands that too. He does now. I had to get pretty mad at him at first, though. You know I can hear you guys, right? Varl looks pretty focused. He's been obsessing over the data revealed to us by Poseidon. Just the other day, we read about mountains hiding deep underwater that spew fire. If I understand correctly, Gaia said the flames they release come from the very center of the Earth, like a heart beating with the life of the world. As always, the cycle can be found in even the most unlikely of places. Of course, Varl's mostly interested in watching explosions happen underwater. You ever play that board game Aaron set up? Strike? I'm the one who gave it to him. I was hoping it'd distract him enough to spare us that ruckus he calls death metal. No such luck. I should get going. If you need me, you know where to find me. Aloy, there are more supplies in the chest. Help yourself. Need to talk about something else? Yes, actually. Looks like things between you and Zoe are better now. I suffered through a few hours of glaring silence. Then she seemed to move on. Sort of. How do people do this? How do I know if the next thing I say won't blow up in my face? What if an apology is not- You give her a stuffed animal? You're the worst. You know that? What makes you think I know anything about- Abandoning me- I should go hand this over to Gaia. By all- Looks like you got what you wanted. Yeah. It's almost time to go after Hephaestus. Finally. We get to rock and roll. Yeah, at least that's- that's how the old one said it, I, I think. Bet you're used to that focus by now. Well, I can hit machines in their weak points. <laughs> I guess that's something. I wish all the other data was as easy to deal with. Now, to be honest, it's hard to understand half of what's on there. And then the other half reminds me, well, this isn't a fight you can win by just waving a hammer. Which is kind of what I do. But hey, that just means I gotta study harder. Now, make myself useful. Just give it time. 
What else have you been studying with your focus? Yeah, I've been looking into this uh, Vegas place you found. Gaia showed us everything that happened when you went to get that Poseidon thing. I mean, this Moreland guy seems pretty smart. Though, risking the Tanakh clan lands for a light show is a bold move. Maybe I should check up on them at some point. Just in case. Right. Anything happen I should know about? Uh, Zoe asked us to help her bring more plants in here. Not for eating, apparently. Yeah, if you ask me, place is fine as it is. You know, metal might be plain, but it's sturdy. Nothing wrong with that. Who needs a bunch of vegetation? I should get going. I say hi to Gaia for me. Did you know there used to be a rainforest so big the old ones called it the lungs of the planet? That sounds lovely. Yeah. They burned it to the ground at some point. Oh. But they helped bring part of it back in Sobek's time. That's good to hear. I wonder if it grew back after Zero Dawn. Wherever it is. I'd like to think so. The world is in peril, and we fight amongst ourselves. You busy? One must never be idle when at war. But there is always time to speak to one's commander. Oh, that's... That's not really how I see myself. It is how we see you. Anything interesting happened while I was away? I found an acceptable place to practice with my blade. Oh, and where is that? Outside, above the base. There's a nest of sunwings that are always up for a fight. Ever thought of sparring with something that's not trying to kill you? That would defeat the purpose of the training. Anything else you've been looking at with that focus? Gaia showed me the... knowledge you recovered out in the desert. I am no chaplain, but I'd be curious to test if something I read is true. What is it? The Old Ones believed one could hear the great waters, even in the middle of the desert, if you carried the carcass of a water animal with you. They called them seashells. That sounds... Kind of gross. What have you been up to? Varl has asked to learn the differences between my people's clans, so I've been teaching him Tanakh history. It is heavy with blood and death, but also with honorable deeds and vanquished tyrants. Maybe you'd like to hear about it as well, when our mission is done. I'd be honored. I'll let you get back to your training. And so will I. It is good to see you again, Aloy. I see you have recovered to meet her. With the acquisition of Aether, Poseidon, and Demeter, my heuristic processing density has expanded greatly. I should now be able to absorb Hephaestus, and fortunately, we have made progress on a plan to capture it. With Varl's encouragement, Beta analyzed all available information on Hephaestus. Its expansion has been rampant. It is too large to be beamcast, and the kernel you have been using could never hold it. Therefore, it must be contained in a location with a direct physical connection to me. A place with two data cores. Two cores? 
Where would we find a place like that? Gemini. An abandoned cauldron in the desert west of here. Seismic activity disrupted the original construction. Two data cores were built as a result. I've been there. The Tanakh marked the entrance as some kind of ritual ground. We'll have to bring you there by hand. I have devised a blueprint for a suitable, albeit unwieldy, transport rig. It will require two people to carry it to Gemini. I can help. Once I am installed on the first core, I will call down Hephaestus on the other, trapping it. I will then initiate the merge. However, in order to construct the rig, I will need considerable help. Can you build it? I suppose I could, but it's not gonna work. The Zeniths will find you. Minerva won't be able to conceal your location. That is correct. Absorbing Hephaestus will create a significant power surge, easily detected by anyone capable of noticing. But what if there were multiple power surges? To fake out the Zeniths? If Erend, Zoe, and Catalo spread out to the other cauldrons and create their own surges, would those conceal the one at Gemini? Analyzing. Such a tactic might be effective. With Beta's help, we should be able to build a set of handheld pulse generators. I told you it's not gonna work! I did a test. Hephaestus has written Alpha Clearance out of its access module. You'll never be able to capture it! Then we need a higher level of clearance. There is no higher- Ted Pharaoh's Mega Clearance. The one he used to purge the Apollo database and kill the Alphas. But to get it, you would have to find Thebes. The private bunker he retreated to when the world ended, and nobody knows where that is, not even the Zeniths. Their only intel was that it was somewhere in San Francisco. That might be all I need. Alva, the Quen Diviner I met, said her people had set up a base at Landfall. They were searching for data in San Francisco from there. She might be able to help. So I guess I'm headed all the way west. While I'm gone, will you be able to build the rig and the pulse generators? I'll try. I'll make sure she has what she needs. Hova said the Quen have a ferry on the coast that they use to get to the ruins of San Francisco. That's where I need to go. I'm back, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. Aloy. I have managed to unlock an additional, additional room near the servers. Understood. Have you been able to make use of Demeter's functions? Yes. I was able to mitigate most soil conditions and restore a temporary balance. You should notice less rampant plant growth in the area. Maybe that'll give Plainsong's fields a chance to recover. Unfortunately, recovery in that area is unlikely without the assistance of the Utaru's land gods. I have discussed this matter with Zo. I believe we may have a workaround. Yeah, I'm helping her out with that. There's something I'm still trying to figure out. Why was Demeter using flying machines to distribute metal flowers? In its deranged state, Demeter was defending itself against a robotic swarm that would devour all plant life. It thought the Pharaoh Plague was still happening? It feared it would come again. As part of its directive of receding Earth's vegetation, it sought to protect plant life at all costs. And considering it had 20 years to proliferate, I expect you will continue to find the fruits of its efforts for some time. That's a good thing I have the code to dissolve the vines, then. The Zeniths. Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. 
I think Elizabeth knew one of them. Tilda. Did she ever mention her to you? No. Elizabeth often spoke of her work, or told stories of her mother and her childhood. If she knew this Tilda, she did not disclose it with me. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. To protect life on Earth, they must be stopped. Beta's convinced we won't be able to capture Hephaestus. With that attitude, do you really think she'll be able to build the rig and pulse generators? It may take some coaxing, but with some assistance I am confident she will. I don't get her, Gaia. She's so quick to assume we'll fail. She's nothing like... like what I thought she'd be. I guess it'll be best if she stays here when we go to Gemini. All this data I've picked up in ancient bunkers and ruins... I guess I never really thought that other people would be looking at it. Based on my observations, your companions engage quite frequently with this material. Erend has asked on numerous occasions about birthday parties. He appears perplexed by the tradition of serving a sweet confection, as it conflicts with the Osaram tradition of serving sparkling stout ale. He also suggested we host a party for you, as a surprise. Uh, yeah, no thanks. That is what I predicted. Is Catalo getting along with everyone? Yes, though he prefers to spend most of the time alone. He appears to be collating data on war machine progression and significant battles during the Pharaoh Plague to aid in the creation of a war map of Operation Enduring Victory. I believe he aims to study the tactics of old world warfare. I'd be interested in seeing that. It appears to be a private pastime for him. He has repeatedly declined my offers to assist his research. So our plan to capture Festus. Let's go over it again. As you wish. Thanks to Beta's test, we now know that Hephaestus will not respond to your Alpha Clearance. Which is why you will need to procure Ted Farrow's Omega Clearance. Right. From his personal bunker, Thebes. While you are gone, I will assist Beta in building the transport rig and pulse generators. When we get to Gemini, I will need to be installed on one of the facility's cores. The second core is for Hephaestus. Using Omega Clearance will allow you to trap it. And then you'll be able to absorb it? Not quite. You will need to manually remove Hephaestus's malicious code before the merge. How long will that take? There are calculations I still must run. But I estimate a few hours. And during that time, the others will create a distraction for us using the pulse generators, right? Correct. They will each take position at a cauldron door and fire off their device. The energy surge should mask our activities until the merge is complete. And then we'll have everything we need to defeat the Zenus. Sounds like a plan. So now that you have Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon, how's the biosphere looking? In the local region, conditions have improved. Superstorms have subsided. Water sources have been purified. And soil conditions remediated. These improvements will stave off environmental collapse for a few additional months. Well, with luck, soon you'll have Hephaestus. Then you'll be able to fix the biosphere for good, right? Correct. I will be able to design and produce robotic agents to permanently reverse the environmental damage that has accumulated. There's something I've been wondering. How could Ted Farrow create a clearance level higher than Alpha? Elizabeth made sure he wouldn't interfere with the project. 
It is plausible he tasked his own engineers with creating a back door to the Zero Dawn system, without Elizabeth's knowledge. My predecessor did not even know of its existence until he activated it to purge the Apollo database. It is, in effect, a blind spot. One that will allow us to subdue Hephaestus. And fortunately, thanks to Beta's information, we know where Omega Clearance may be procured. Right. Somewhere in San Francisco. So Gemini has two data cores. I've never seen a cauldron like that. But you mentioned something about seismic activity? When my predecessor attempted to build the cauldron, construction was disrupted by a series of earthquakes. The data core had already been built, but the rest of the facility sustained damage. So, she began again. A second core was built. However, when more tremblers occurred, she abandoned the site. Lucky for us. Are the quakes still happening? No, though they did also create instabilities in other facilities in the region. So the facility where I recovered Demeter used to be a Pharaoh Agricultural Research Facility. It's where they created the biomass conversion system, but also adamantine wreath. Did Elizabeth know they were working on that? It is likely she was briefed on other efforts to combat the machine swarm. Though her focus was devoted only to Zero Dawn. That makes sense. But they actually got the wreaths to work. If they've been able to deploy it against the Pharaoh Plague in time... Using the data you recovered on the project, I ran several simulations and have concluded that it would never have worked. In all scenarios, the Pharaoh War Machines would eventually hack and deactivate the wreaths before they could contain the swarm. So Zero Dawn really was the only solution. There was a lot of data in the greenhouse facility about agriculture. Do you think it'll help the Quen fix their homeland? I will run a query. Complete. The data contains information about novel crop production methods, which may be beneficial to the tribe in the long term. But new crops aren't going to save the world. So I guess it's on us. It is. I found some data in one of the rooms you unlocked. It mentioned that there are still functional seed banks beneath this facility. Why is it there? My predecessor was tasked with reconstituting the biosphere with primary and secondary plant species. Had everything gone according to plan, humans would have eventually been able to introduce tertiary species, including new crops. Can we access them now? Unfortunately, it will have to wait. I require control over the machines in order to access and distribute the preserved seed stock. And for that we need a Festus. It's something to look into later then. See you later, Gaia. Until next time. Immortals from the stars now? Looks like it. What's next? Wizards from the moon? What's this I hear about you going west? Turns out we need one last thing before we can grab Hephaestus. Because it would have been too easy otherwise. You've been looking at any interesting data? I asked Gaia to find me something to look at a while back. 
and she found the mother of all forges. They called it sports. Turns out the old ones spent a lot of time tackling and punching each other for points in, in one game or another. Are you mixing some solly food and fresh ale? I bet half the claim will be lining up to watch. How are things with Catalo? You still scared of him? Oh, she thinks she's funny. Actually, I played strike with him. I had to fill in most of the conversation myself, but I'm still alive. Glad to hear it. I need to get going. I think I know the answer, but... Are you sure you don't need any help? Gaia mentioned this uh, other tribe you found, the Quen. They sound like a nasty bunch. I can handle them. In the meantime, Varl will help you get ready for what comes next. Take care of yourself, Aloy. I'm sorry, Aloy. After all the trouble you went through, you have to head west again. Well, no one said this was gonna be easy. You sure you don't want any backup dealing with the Quen? They think I'm Sobek, or something like that. They won't hurt me, but I doubt they'll be so kind to anyone else. If you say so, let me know if you need anything before you go. You better not be slacking off on your studies while I'm gone. And risk Zoe coming after me? I value my life. In fact, I've been reading about Ted Farrow. How he destroyed the world and crawled into a hole after killing those who saved it. He definitely was a piece of work. While Beta and Gaia built the rig, can you get everyone ready for the mission ahead? Of course. What is it? Nothing. It's just that everything's about to change. We'll get Gaia, and she'll help us set things right. No more zeniths, no more derangement. It'll be a different world. I welcome it, but I wonder how the Nora will react, and the Karja, and, well, everyone. Let's just focus on fixing Gaia for now. You're right. We've got an angry AI to take down. If I get Omega Clearance and then we grab Hephaestus, we might finally have the advantage over the Zeniths. Can't wait to see their faces as they stare down a bunch of charging thunder jaws. Better them than us, for once. I'll be in touch if I need anything. I'll make sure Beta briefs everyone on the pulse generators. Good. Aloy, I hear you're going further west, past the Tanakh clan lands. Do you know anything about the area? Only hearsay. The Utaru tell stories of an island that lies beyond the western coast. They call it the Isle of Spires. It is said the Old Ones built towers there that touched the sky, so they could live far away from the earth that bore them. As if they didn't want to be reminded that they'd one day return to it. Sounds like something Ted Farrow would do. How much have you read on Ted Farrow? Enough to wonder how a man who worked so hard to heal the world once could let greed and pride condemn it so easily. For one spirit to diminish in such a way, I, I'm not sure if I should hate him or pity him. You and Varl doing okay? Uh, uh training, I mean. We're doing fine, although I admit it'd be nice to take a small break from studying, just the two of us. But then who'd look after Erend? Well, there's always Catalo. Leave a loud Osaram with a brooding Tanakh. What could go wrong? What's everyone been up to? I've been trying to share some of my meals with Beta. Thought it might help her feel more at home. Maybe even get her to sleep up here instead of in that dark basement. She would not be moved. I appreciate you trying. Patience reaps the best harvest. I'm not giving up hope yet. Any progress with your plan for the land gods? Is the reboot code ready? It is. But there is difficult work ahead. Gaia warned me that because the land gods are linked together in a network, the code must be delivered to all of them. 
Most are in plain song, but in recent years, three of them wandered off. So, T, and Do. We have to find them? No. We know where they are, but they're hard to reach. So, wandered into a lake and sank. Do ventured into a dangerous canyon, and T broke down amidst a herd of machines. Okay. Tell you what. You go to Plainsong, handle all the land gods there. I'll take care of So, T, and Do. I'll need their locations, plus the reboot code. I'm sending the data to you now. My people made shrines near where each land god faltered. When you see them, you'll know you're close. And once again, thanks for your help. We're not gonna let your people starve, so... I promise. Well, I should get going. Hopefully I can bring back what we need to capture Festus. After that, I'm gonna need everyone's help. We'll be ready. Got a minute? As many as you need. I have to travel beyond the western coast. To the ruins, shrouded in fog. Yes. And I'm looking for a tribe, the Quen. I encountered them once before. They said they came from across the great ocean. I was hoping the Tanakh knew more about them. Hmm. There were rumors of trespassers in the area, but we thought they were just bandits. Hikaru sent out a patrol or two, but I don't recall them reporting back. We've had more pressing concerns, as you know. I'm sorry. That's all I can tell you. It's okay. I guess I'll find out soon enough. There is something I've been meaning to discuss with you. It's personal. If you have a moment to spare. You said there was something you wanted to talk about? I've been speaking with Gaia. She mentioned that the Zeniths bind metal with flesh to make themselves stronger. I was wondering if you'd help me do the same. You want to make yourself a new arm? Yes. Gaia insists she can help me build such a thing if I can get the necessary data and materials. She believes these things lie in the place where Beta hid from the Zeniths. Their ancient research lab. I am not as familiar with Old World machinery as you are. I could use your assistance. It might be dangerous. The Zeniths probably still keep an eye on that place. We were lucky to get out of there alive the first time. I see. It sounds like this is worth the risk. By the ten, we shall see it through. Found anything interesting during your training? Gaia told me where to find data on how wars were waged in the Old World. I knew the Ten fought against machines, much as we do now, but it seems they were among the last of their kind. Later, machines battled other machines on behalf of greedy leaders, as they vied for lands and spoils. At least the Tanakh have the courage to put their lives on the line when conflicts arise. There is nobility in that. But maybe we just need fewer conflicts in the first place. Yes, of course. Hikaru would have it so as well. What do Tanakh do to relax? You know, to take a break from training? We play Strike. Your Osirum friend, Erend, is surprisingly good at it. Although he has yet to beat me. It helps one think strategically. Hones the mind for tactics. Somehow that still sounds like training. I should get going. I've got a long road ahead. Should you need reinforcements? I know who to call. I'll call you when I'm near the Zenith lab. We'll get what you need for that new arm of yours. Thank you, Aloy. she can be so negative all the time. I mean, we're clones of the same woman, and yet... she couldn't be more different from Elizabeth. It's 
too. Hey, me again. Was there something else? So do you have everything you need to build the rig and pulse generators? Gaia sent me the schematics. The designs are... modest, without the capabilities of Hephaestus, but... they should work. Not that it matters without Omega clearance. I'll find it. Just... try to have the transport ready by the time I get back. So have you been upstairs at all? Not really. Varl sometimes comes down here to talk. He keeps asking if I'm okay. I thought he only wanted to know about my productivity, but... It's almost like he actually wants to talk to me. Yeah, I think he does. Have you talked with anyone else in the base? I speak with Gaia. She asked me how I'm feeling and my opinion on various topics. I didn't expect that from an AI. That's all thanks to Elizabeth. She believed Gaia had to care, not just follow her programming orders. I know. Independent emotional processing enabled the previous version of Gaia to create you, after all. Yeah. I guess so. So, aside from Varl and Gaia, who else have you been talking to? Zoe told me how you met after your escape from the Hades Proving Lab. I had no idea you were severely injured. If the Zenus had killed you, life on Earth would be doomed. My escape would have been for nothing. But they didn't kill me. And thanks to Varl and Zoe, I was able to recover. You said you and Varl talk sometimes. What about? He told me about your tribe, the Nora, and the proving ritual you did. I told him if I was born into the tribe, I'd never be able to do the proving. It does require a lot of physical training, but there are plenty of other roles besides being a hunter. I don't think I'd be suited for any of them. Well, I guess it's a good thing you're not a Nora then. What else can you tell me about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth... She was an expert programmer given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And you're sure the other Zeniths never knew about it? To them, it looked like I was still in training, toiling away. Hello. So this secret virtual space looked like a house with an ocean view? I could see white caps and hear waves crashing on rocks below. And there were gulls crying outside. Inside, Tilda had frames that showed off her favorite paintings changing at intervals to match the light. There was an armchair she liked. She'd sit there and gaze outside while I looked through her things. We spent hours in that house. I never wanted to leave.
You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me a new painting. I, I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose kid comes back after disappearing during the hot zone crisis. Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. That's enough for now. Good. I don't think that door had power before, but... Looks like it's malfunctioning. Looks like some kind of maintenance space. of lights just turned on up here? Was that you? Oh. Huh. Yeah, I guess it was. I should take this upstairs. Was this door always locked? Beta requested the use of that room as her personal space. I have locked it at her request. Okay. Looks like a power cell could fit here. Okay. That console has power now. Jensen almost caught onto my plan while we were going over the diagnostic center specs. I've got nothing against the rest of the team. It, it's just... I'm sure they've all got family they're gonna meet up with in Elysium. But me? I couldn't even bury August. There is nothing of him left besides my memories. I won't let those blink out of existence too. The vault's for us, no one else. Eleven more weeks before we lock the blueprints. Then the rest will be up to Gaia. Vault. I found a locked door behind the vent in the basement. Wonder if that's it. From the looks of this data, Festus has been trying. to hack into the repair bay. Ah, okay. Doesn't look like it's been able to. I wouldn't have taught you the song if I didn't like the way you sing it. So you like hearing me butcher Utaru music? I sure don't. You sound like a dying long leg. Ed, you won't believe what I've got. Hey, Lloyd. It's a long way to the coast. If you need to resupply en route, 
I suggest stopping in Falls Edge. It's a lowland clan village southwest of the grove, in the heart of the jungle. Got it. Thanks for the advice. A buddy of mine told me about a Karja expedition down south. A place called Jagged Deep. They think there's something special in the big lake down there. Old world relics of some sort. Too bad machines decided to spoil the dell for everyone. Sounds like bad luck. Karja might have found something interesting down there. Be worth checking out. So sad this one broke down amidst a herd of machines. I better be careful. I guess they were leaving offerings to the land god. That looks like something... ...fried them. Whatever did it might still be around. There's the land god. But I'll have to deal with those machines before I install the reboot code. I can use that heavy weapon if I can tear it off.
That's all the machines. Time to install this code on that land god. Stormbird. Must have been what killed those Utari. I should install this code on that land god. Oh, 
Let's try this again. Nice and easy. One down, two to go. Zoe, you there? I'm here, Aloy. I found T and installed the reboot code. Fitting then that I feel thankful. T's festival came in winter, when all the grain from the harvest was stored away. It was a season of gratitude, and all the children would receive gifts. <laughs> the best was my first bow, made of you, strung by my father. Well, he definitely taught you how to shoot well. That he did. There's one more thing. I found two of your people. A Stormbird got them. But I took it down. Oh. I'll make sure someone retrieves their seed pouches, so they may return to the land. All right then. I'll head to Plainsong and deliver the code to the land gods there. There. One of the land god shrines. So said this one sank in a nearby lake. The land god must be down there somewhere. Time for a swim. I think the land god is underneath that rubble. I think the land god is underneath that rubble. We better stay away from that snap moth. I can grab this from my stash later. God dealt with. Hey, Zoe. Aloy, how goes it? Had to swim a bit, 
but I gave the reboot code to So. Ah, good. We used to celebrate So in the fall, at the beginning of the harvest, with wine made from elderflowers. When I was 12, I got tipsy on it and kissed a boy in the sage garden. How'd that go? He was so surprised he nearly fell into the mulch. It would be good to see So again, plowing the fields in the afternoon sun. How are things on your end? Getting there. A few land gods to visit still. Okay. I'll call you when I'm done with the last one. Thank you, Aloy. that land god it looks like this one's been here for a while i won't be able to install the reboot code with these vines in the way but where there's vines there's a metal flower I just have to find it there the flower if i can deactivate it the land god will be free from the vines i have to find a way we go. Should be able to access that cave now. Treadwing carcass. It must have dropped the flowers and then crashed. Looks like I can climb up the side of the cliff. Might help me get to that metal flower. Now I just need to get rid of these vines. That's better. Time to get this code installed. This will help you get better. That's the last land god. Zo, can you hear me? I can hear you, Aloy. Just planted the reboot code on Doe. He was a bit tangled up, but he's better now. Good to hear. Doe always returned to the sacred cave at the end of winter, so his festival foretold the coming of spring. During those times, I remember clinging to my mother by the hearth, snuggling for warmth, and listening to her sing of new beginnings. Which is exactly what you're going to give to your people. I hope so. When you can. Meet me at Plainsong, and we'll send out the reboot signal. I've delivered the code to all the land gods, save one. Only La is left. I'm here with her, just east of the main village. Okay, I'll get there as soon as I can. Hell world ruin. I have something useful lying around. I should take a look inside. What is she doing to Law? Aloy, you made it. All of the land gods have been updated. Now to send out the reboot signal. What does this mean? 
A new beginning. Gaia told me this would happen. To all of them. Do, T, So, and the rest. She called it a reboot sequence. But I didn't think it would be so beautiful. Soon the land gods will return to tilling the soil as they once did. Zo, the chorus wants a word. Of course they do. Do you want me to come? No need. I'll just tell them that our lands will soon bloom again. Who are they to argue? Find me later, and I'll tell you how it went. Good luck. Zenith Labs around here. That's where Catalo said we'd find what he needs to build himself a new arm. I should let him know I'm around. Hey, Catalo? I'm at the Zenith Lab. Ready to come over? I'm on my way. Aloy. I appreciate you meeting me here. I'm happy to help. Did Gaia mention where exactly in the Zenith lab we'd find what you need? She mentioned the chamber where you found Beta, and the database that lies within. She said it'll help us find the knowledge and components I require to build a new arm. At least we know where to look. We will have to be quick about it, in case the Zeniths are watching. Understood. The lab's up this way. You okay? I got this. Scrapping the specters for parts. Should we dispose of them? Well, we can sneak past them. No point using Good fire against that. Catching snowflakes on my lashes. Entrance to the lab is by that tunnel. Come on.
The anime did this? Hard to believe, but yeah. Enemies up ahead. That hunter killer means trouble. We better get a move on. The room we found Beta in is up ahead. Lead the way. Okay, then. Is that it down there? Yep. We better make our way down there. This will break my fall. We're here. Now we just need to find a way to access the database guy was talking about. Zoro mentioned you found beta in one of those pods. I would hate to be locked up inside such a thing. Barely room to breathe. I think I found what we're looking for. Let's hope it holds the answers we seek. I'll download the database to your focus, so you can search through it later. What about the components? They should be somewhere on the... Spectres! Fight with honor!
Zenus might send reinforcements. We need to finish up and get out of here. The components should be somewhere on the second floor. I'm right behind you. We need to search the entire floor. I'll keep a lookout. Don't want any more surprises. Good idea. A vent. Might be a way out of this room. Components have to be here somewhere. Please tell me the components are in there. I should go back and get these to Catalo. You found the components? See for yourself. You have my thanks, Aloy. Something wrong? I was just thinking about what it will be like after I build the arm. Will I feel different? Whole again? <laughs> Idle thoughts. They can wait until we're back at base. You go on ahead. I might want to take one more look around, in case there's anything useful. Very well. 
I look forward to putting what we found to good use. Walk with the Ten. You're back. Good. Before we talk, I wanted to give you this. For helping me heal the land gods. Plainsong is in your debt. Thank you, Zo. You deserve much more for all you've done. May the land always bloom in your steps. And yours? How to go with the chorus after we fix the land gods? They were shocked when I told them that our lands would soon be on the mend. I thought Fane's eyes would pop out of his head. But of course they had no choice but to take it as good news, even if it meant all their preaching about meekly accepting our doom was exposed as rot. To be honest, I found the conversation to be highly enjoyable. I'm glad. You deserve it. They're lucky that you never gave up on saving them. I assume you've been looking into Demeter now that Gaia's merged with it? Yes, it's been humbling to know that the seeds I carry in this pouch came in turn from the seeds saved for Demeter in the Old World. It gives me hope that the cycle of life will prevail now, just as it did before. I should go. Back to studying it is. Plugging in that power cell downstairs must have turned on these holograms. Alana must have left this for me on her way back east. I wish she could have stayed. But I know Meridian and the Lodge need her. What? Nothing. You just look good, that's all. Get back to study. You were gone for a while. How's it going with the arm? It is nearly complete, but I'm still adjusting the fittings. Soon, I must test it. Looking forward to it. I should leave. Proceed with caution. Oh, 
children did you come from? You could show me how to override you. Going down! Going down! Okay, gotta grab the drone's data. Must You'll be knock people over. Your actions are known across the lowlands, Easter. You've aided our marshals and our chief. I, for one, am grateful. So I'll tell you what. What I see, what I know, I will share. That way, you won't be running blind in these parts. I should probably tell you. If you travel to the coast southwest of here, you might run across a cauldron hidden in the jungle. I'd stay away from it if I were you. It looks dead and overgrown, but where there's a cauldron, there's usually some dangerous machines. Thanks for the heads up. Oh, that cauldron might have machine overrides I could use. I should check it out when I can. This must be Fall's Edge. Katala said I could resupply here and head for the Quinn Ferry. Welcome, Lord. All blades against Rex. An honor, Champion. I'm Nako. Have you been out to the Valley of the Fallen by chance? Don't think I have. Why? What's there? My idiot little brother. The Valley is a test of endurance and skill from my clan, the Lowlanders. But it's been closed for months. Commander's okay. orders. There have been reports of strange lights off the coast, and the whole area is crawling with deadly machines. But Dax, reckless and bare-armed as he is, when in any way, never takes no for an answer. Convinced two others to go with him, too. They've been missing for days, and now Marshal Ivira has been sent in to bail them out. Strange lights, deadly machines, and missing soldiers? Sounds like a lot, even for a marshal. I'd go by myself, if I wasn't stuck on transport duty. I'll find your brother, if I can. Where is this valley? South of here, towards the coast. 
Look for the climbing path on the cliffs. It marks the start of the valley. And if you see my brother, knock him on his ass for making me worry. Strange lights off the coast. Whatever it is, it can't be good. I should look into it when I'm out that way. The right remedy can save a life in the wild. This writing. It's Karja. I think it was left behind by Marshal Fashov. Stash. Thank you. 
find it. Should be to the northeast. Machines resistant to fire. the tall neck that signaled my focus. Pack, uh, pack's full, but my stash has me. seems to have knocked the tall neck down. Maybe the current. Better take a look at the damage.
That's what it's like. Is that what the wind talk was carrying? Might be able to find the parts of the list. Sunken toll neck parts ended up. That looks like the part I took the I should get back to the nest. Pick up the machine part I saw. Guess I'm picking this up. That's the end of that. And I got a hold of one of those tall neck parts. One down, one to go. Taking that?
Lightning coursing through it. when I push a return these parts that tall neck. Made it. Now to climb up to its head. There we go. Time to override the big guy.
I can get it from my stash later. Drone keeping watch on the biosphere. I should grab its data. But how am I going to get it down? It must be the entrance to landfall about. Hey. Hey. Is that her? The living ancestor. The this is landfall, right? I'm looking for Alba. Overseer Bohai ordered us to invite you before him should you approach. Please, come with me. Go. Let him know we're coming. It's her! The Diviner was right. Overseer Bohai, a stranger, just walked through the gate. I knew Alva would not dare lie. You do look like Sobek. Is Alva here? I need to talk to her. I will consider your request once it is determined what you are. A living ancestor as Alva believes, or a threat. Lurking in such a guise. I am no threat, okay? Back on the mainland, your soldiers fired on me without warning. So you say, infidel. None of those you engaged survived to bear witness. I held off on your squad when... May I present our honored CO. So, here she is. Our great mystery. Well, Bohai, what have you divined? What is she? A mystery indeed, my CO. How can she appear as Sobek, and yet know nothing of our ways? Are we to believe that a living ancestor was born to this wretched land, an ocean apart from the realm of the Chosen? And if so, to what end? I cannot answer. Only she can. But I warn you, no falsehood will satisfy us. Now speak. Why are you here? What is your purpose? I'm looking for a place called Thebes. And what do you seek there? Alva told me a little bit about what you're after. I guess you could say I want what you want.
A way to heal the world. As I suspected. Tell her. We found Thebes. The final resting place of Ted Pharaoh's secrets. It isn't far, but the way is closed to us. Machine attacks have cut us off from the site. Diviner Alva is there, along with a complement of diggers and soldiers. Is she all right? Our scouts tell us that a machine has our people pinned behind their defenses, but they're holding out. Machines, huh? I can help with that. Alva told us that you are indeed formidable. But I have a few questions first. We will answer what we can. So you found Thebes. How? The ancestors revealed it to us not long after we made landfall, almost a year ago. Through a scrap of ancient data discovered by Alva and verified by myself. It contained details about the construction of a great underground palace. Where, exactly? Close. Beneath the Great Pyramid in the ruins beyond. Figures. Ted loves his pyramids. Have you been inside? Uh, no. <laughs> that has been a problem, one of many. And we will solve them all in time. Getting back to the site is the one at hand. I hope you're as effective against machines as Diviner Alva suggested. What exactly are you looking for inside Thebes? I thought Alva brought back the data you needed. We risked much to cross the ocean. Therefore, we must unearth every possible link to the legacy while we are here. Especially one as important as Thebes. We will not sail back until I have plundered its secrets. So, Alva reports to you. I was chosen by my colleagues on the Board of Overseers to supervise data retrieval on this expedition, yes. And you're in charge of the expedition? He is far more than that. You are addressing the cousin of the Emperor of the Quinn. Heir to the vast holdings of the Great Delta, the first CO in five generations. All she needs to understand is that I am the authority here. And my will is to attain the secrets of Thebes. Mine too. We're in luck. You crossed the ocean on these ships? Couldn't have been easy. Greatness is never easy. Indeed. It took seven years just to build the flotilla. This expedition is the most important undertaking of our generation. A quest for knowledge across the gaping sea with nothing less than the fate of our tribe at stake. And none of it would have been possible without the will of the CEO. The voyage was difficult. The wilds here even more so. Our sailors and soldiers have suffered much. I know that. But all for the glory of the Quen. Good to know. What kind of machine has your people pinned down near Thebes? A Thunderjaw. We've dealt with them before, but this one is... Tougher, stronger, and it has black armor? Yes. How did you know? <sighs> Doesn't matter. Won't be easy, but I can take it down. Then destiny shines upon us, as I knew it would. A living ancestor now walks among us. And she will help me attain the secrets of Thebes. Resupply here if you must. Then on to Thebes at the base of the pyramid in the ruins. 
We will follow when our scouts confirm you've cleared the way. Scouts found ancient ruins west of here. They claimed to have seen a relic of the ancestors inside, but couldn't find a way to retrieve it. Perhaps a living ancestor could discover a way where others could not. Maybe if I find myself in the area. May the ancestors guide us. Big pyramid to fight the Thunderjaw. I am open to trade. Uh. Brace oh, myself against this wind. Oh, yeah. Barbarian! Run, stranger! The machine There's a will killer kill machine you. about! There you are. I guess we're doing this.
my stash when I need it. That machine! Your CEO sent me. I need to speak to Alva. By all means, then. Open the gates! Come on over, you. Aloy! A word. Over here! Alva, I'm glad you're okay. Oh, you got rid of that machine. But what are you doing here? There's something inside Thebes that I need. I went to Landfall. I met your CEO. We came to an agreement, kind of. And you're going to help us get in? I guess so. The whole thing was a little tense. There's something off about that guy. And I don't understand what he wants from Thebes. I thought we found the data that your people needed back on the mainland. That data will take us years to sift through. The CEO wants faster results. Aloy, you have to be careful. He's... There they are. The legacy tells us that Elizabeth Sobek helped the ancestors cast aside all obstacles. And so it has been today. You have been true to your word. I'm pleased. Thebes awaits us below, shall we? Quite an excavation. Much of this was flooded. We had to pump a great deal of water out. Behold, the door to Thebes. A door like no other. Well, you're right about that. It's designed to open for only one man. Ted Farrow. But the legacy tells us that he worked closely with Sobek. He trusted her. Surely she could open the door, and so surely can you. Not gonna happen. At least not from this side. You said she was a living ancestor with Sobek's eternal essence. Uh, if I may... Pharaoh, great as he was, did not build his palace alone. We know this from scraps of data we found, the ones that pointed to this location. And we found evidence of passages below. Maybe they were built to aid construction. Or for servants. We can't reach them. The way is flooded, and they're too far underwater, but... I... Yeah. I can reach them. There might be another way in down there. You see? With Sobek, there is always a way. Then do what you must to get us inside. This water's warm. It seems like a hot spring. Huge. It goes all the way down to the bottom. There's a rupture up there. Maybe a way in. Yeah, this could get me inside. Okay, looks like this tunnel. 
tunnel leads deeper into the structure. Stop the turbine. Good. Here I am again, hiding in the gym, writing to stay sane in this crazy place. I can't believe Grigori's dead. Our so-called spiritual leader was fine yesterday, and then suddenly passed away in his sleep, and no one will talk to me about it. They treat me like a child, whispering behind my back, as if I can't cope with death. Even after the end of the world. living area. It's pretty big, too. There's nothing normal about a scientist, his daughter, a guru, and, well, let's face it, a harem living through the end times in a trillionaire's underground survival bunker. But now that Kagori's gone, I'm worried things will get even weirder. He helped keep Ted stable for a couple of years, Sort of. Without him, who knows? And we don't even understand what happened to him. This is the way to the main door, so I can let the Quinn in. After Grigori's uh, untimely demise, he was a deeply spiritual man who wasn't afraid to rip back the curtain and gaze where few men dare. I've asked Dr. Sumtau to, you know, check on what happened to him. I'm sure he had some kind of condition or something. The main point is that while we certainly miss him, we will go on. Everything's going to be okay. I 
Look at this place. It's pretty fancy for a survival bunker. There, the door. Let's hope I can open it from the inside. Emergency exit The door is open. Destiny is upon us. I knew you could do it. What's going on? The CO is preparing to enter Thebes. Oh, why are you dressed like Ted Pharaoh? I am Pharaoh, renewed. My essence is the same as his. Across the years, across the generations, his soul is my soul. His will is my will. We are sundered in only one way. I need his final testament, his deepest secrets. And now that the door is open, those secrets are within my grasp. When I have them, I will be complete as he was. I will have everything I need to save our homeland, and, as Pharaoh did, the world. Okay. I think there's some confusion here about who Pharaoh really was. No one knows better than I who he was, who he is. Me. The Renewer, greatest of the ancestors, the man who saved the world, and you. You understand, Sobek. You are her, Pharaoh's harbinger, his assistant. Come, we will descend into Thebes together, as it should be. Bring her the raiment. Raiment? As he is Pharaoh, you are Sobek. For an occasion, this momentous, shouldn't you wear proper business attire? Whoa. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I am not wearing that. No way. You will wear the proper attire to mark this moment. Or what? It is said Sobek valued life above all else. Is this true? Fine. I'll wear your raiment. Proceed. Look at this place. The grandeur. Pharaoh's domain. Simply breathtaking. Excellent. Somewhere in here, Pharaoh left his secrets. Let's go find them. Your Magnificent. Perhaps we should leave guards behind to cover our exits? Indeed. Now let it be done. Most of Ted's women repulse me, okay? They're like contestants on a housewife sim preening for the hubby's attention. But Brianna, the hollow singer, she's different. She's always been nice to me. And I love her voice which has been conspicuously silent since Grigori died. She doesn't speculate or gossip like the others. She knows something. I can tell. And I'm gonna find out what it is. To think of all this preserved for the ages. As destiny intended for me.
Pharaoh's visage, a monument to greatness. Truly, Marcio. It's a monument to something, I'll give you that. The Emperor will heap rewards upon you for this, my CEO. Great risks bring great bounties, Overseer. I think this way might lead down. Less than he deserved. Of course. Grant. Wonder if Pharaoh has put that in here. I've always wanted one to move. There will be no further discussion of your feet, Bohai. Brianna told me that Grigori hacked into restricted files and found out something awful. That Ted murdered important people who worked on Zero Dawn. Did Ted punish Grigori? Kill him for discovering what he did? How could that be? Dad said there wasn't a mark on Grigori's body. His heart just gave out. This is weird. Yeah, I tried to warn you. Yeah, sort of. I'll explain everything if we survive long enough. Th those certainly look threatening. Huh. Statues. The guardians of Pharaoh's domain. Those aren't statues. Look out! Get the CO out of here! Guess it's just us then. We're riled up now. Overseer Bohai. The surface. A wise choice. We can't afford to lose any more diviners than necessary. So, no more delays. We must proceed.
Brianna didn't wake up this morning. She's gone. Just like Grigori. I'm looking up at the giant, hideous statue of Ted in the Great Hall. At his eyes. And I know now that he's watching me. He's watching us all. He's always had power over us. I just never knew how much. Yes, that looks like the way. When I built this place, when its special systems were designed, I knew what I wanted. Protection, of course. An unlimited power source, that was a given. But also... Control. Over every possible eventuality. After all, you never know what'll happen, especially when the human element is involved. Ever deeper we go. What is that? A reclining throne attached to some kind of apparatus. I wonder what it does. An impressive setup. What is it for? I'm sorry, CEO. I don't know. My focus can't read the data here. What about the living ancestor? Is the data lost to her? Scan the device, if you will. You did this for him? You put, like, off switches in everyone's heads? Kenya, you mustn't judge me. I had no choice. If I said no, what would he do to us? What would he do to you? You're my little girl. I was trying to keep you alive. For what, Dad? Seriously, why? So we can be trapped in this underground nightmare? You know what we have to do. Please. Please. Scan the device. Tell me what your focus reveals about the device. Made a minor adjustment to the gene therapy regimen and added a new cocktail to treat the symptoms caused by the mutations. Hopefully, there will be some stabilization after the next treatment. God knows what Ted will do to us if there isn't. The early results were so promising. No signs of aging, no cellular degeneration, but now... Oh, if only I had access to my old lab in Bangkok, or my old colleagues, or my old liquor cabinet. 
Stop it. Got to stay positive. For Kenya. You saw something. I could tell. Did the data explain what Pharaoh used this device for? I think he was undergoing treatments to live longer. A lot longer. Really? Could he still be alive? Don't be foolish. If he were alive, he would have kept his essence. It would not have been passed down to me. Remember, he was the renewer. Of course he would have stopped at nothing to grasp the secrets of life and death. But not for himself. Everything he did was for a new beginning. For us, for the Quen. And for his true heir, me. You know, I'm starting to think you're right. You do have a lot in common with Ted Farrow. I knew you would see, in time. Let us continue. His secrets await. <laughs> hmm. Is that a small office? For a minor functionary, perhaps? Look at all this equipment. An automated geothermal energy plant right under the city of San Francisco. A marvel. Even I can run it. And let's face it, I was always more of a visionary than an engineer. Which is why I had the foresight to insist on the inclusion of a very unique feature. Just in case anyone ever tries to steal my cheese, so to speak. We are getting closer to the heart of this place. I can feel it. Break the door down. I'm going to look for another way in. Good idea. It's worked before. Very well. Get to it. this morning holding hands must have poisoned themselves i never would have put them to sleep she was just a girl for christ's sake i offered them life and this is how they repaid me by leaving me all alone but i guess i've been alone since this whole thing began alone in bearing the burden for the past for the future same old ted no matter who dies, he's the one feeling sorry for himself. Less his future. Less his children. Someday they'll come. 
and I'll be here to greet them. Sometimes that my aging has stopped altogether. If anything, my cells are replenishing faster than normal. I just need some time for the mutations to calm down. Time. And energy. Sometimes if the reactor can give me what I need to grow strong again, to get my shit back together, so I can greet the kids. They're gonna need me. My advice. My guidance. And then I won't be alone anymore. Pharaoh's secrets. Are they here? Uh, not the ones you're looking for. Then they must be in there. Trust me. You don't want to go in there. Are you mad? I haven't come all this way to stop now. Legacy is mine. Is that it's him? Burn it to ash. Wait, no. Pharaoh has it rigged to melt down if- Kill them too. No witnesses.
We, uh, we found something that will help. Not just your homeland, but everywhere. But where's the CO? Oh, he's... gone. I guess you could say he gave his life to help us attain the secrets of Thebes. I see. You must think I'm eminently stupid. What? No. No. The CEO was an entitled egotist who twisted our beliefs into a sickening, self-serving fantasy. And you expect me to believe he sacrificed himself for scraps of data? It's time for the truth, and it better be convincing. Otherwise, I'll simply order these soldiers to open fire. Hold on. You're right. To be honest, the CO screwed everything up. He brought Thebes down around our ears and died like a gutless coward. But... We really did find something down there that will help your homeland. If I can take it, and use it. Now if I have to, I will fight my way out of here, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can just let me go. And then take credit when things start to improve. Success certainly does sound better than failure. It seems then that our destinies are intertwined. Landfall is open to you. If it will help your cause, you may come and go as you please. But Alva must join you and report back on your efforts. Fair enough. Thebes is of no further value to us. Obviously, we're going back to the flotilla. Alva, I expect your reports to be thorough. Oh, I thought he was going to have us killed. Oh, and instead, I get to join you. Glad to have you. But you're going to need a little help to reach our base. Varl, I made a new friend. I need you to meet her at the Quen Ferry and escort her back. On it. Can't wait to meet her. Trust me, you'll love it there. Varl will give you a better focus and all the data you could ever want. Head to the ferry. I'll join you back east as soon as I can. A diviner must follow the truth wherever it leads. I'll see you there. Now that I have Omega clearance, we should have what we need to capture Hephaestus. But before I head to the ferry, maybe I should stop by Landfall. With the CO gone, maybe more Quen will be willing to talk. Might be worth looking around the island, too. I gotta change out of these clothes. I can't believe the CO made me play dress up. Cold enough for a snow. If we keep frowning that hard, we'll get wrinkles. I just don't get this last part. Maybe we can look at it together later have a conversation about it. I'd like that. From the look on your face, I'd say the mission was a success. I got Omega Clarence. Is everyone ready to head out to Cauldron Gemini? As soon as you give the word. 
Did Alva make it here all right? Our new Quen friend. The moment she laid eyes on the archives, she jumped on them like a long leg. Sounds about right. Once Gaia is back up and running, I expect you to put all your training to good use. The seeds have been planted. All they need is a chance to bloom. What? I thought that was pretty good. Zoe liked it. I'm glad you and Zoe found each other. Don't forget, you're to blame for that. Now that I have Omega clearance, we can grab Hephaestus and finally have the advantage over the Zeniths. Can't wait to see their faces as they stare down a bunch of charging thunder jaws. Better them than us, for once. I should go get this to Gaia. Of course. Let us know when we're needed. Welcome back. Good to be back. Have you met our new Quen guest yet? I could barely keep up as she gave herself a tour of the base. Varro gave her a new focus. Though when he told her she was free to access all the data we had here, she turned so pale I, I thought she'd faint on the spot. We showed her to the archive room so she could see for herself. She hasn't left the place since. Sounds like Alva. Read anything interesting lately? I found out the Old Ones use leaf infusions, like the Utaru do. Tea, they call it. Apparently it helped soothe them. That and some sort of scented wax they use to cleanse their aura. Uh, plus something called bubble baths. Me, I think I'll stick to singing to calm the nerves. How are things with everyone? Slightly quieter. Aaron's been busy scouring data on his newest obsession. Apparently the Old Ones wrestled machines as some kind of performance. Called it Metal vs. Meat. A must-see battle between steel and flesh, as Aaron likes to put it. You'd think we have enough of that going around as it is. I need to get going. Right. You've retrieved the Omega Clearance. That means we'll be going after Hephaestus soon. I'll make sure my gear is ready. There she is. I hear you found Thebes. How was it? Maniacs, lava, what's not to like? I'll remember that next time I go traveling. At least I got what we needed to trap Hephaestus. Good thing I got my gear ready, then. You look tired. Ha! You never want to hold back, are you? I've just been making sure that I got everything down for this mission of yours. I wouldn't want to be the usual screw-up out there. You'll do fine, Errand. Have you spoken with Alva yet? Yeah, when she's not reading the archives like a giddy kid drinking her first ale. She took to that new focus quick, that's for sure. I gotta say, I'm a little jealous. But I can see why you two hit it off. I should get going. As soon as you want us heading out to those cauldrons... I'll give you the heads up. Aloy! Right to work, I see. There's just... so much! I mean, we knew of artificial beings that served the ancestors, but Gaia? Oh, she's amazing! A and you, a true reincarnation of an ancestor! Genetically speaking, of course, not like the, um, late CEO. And there's more ancestors out there, returned from beyond the stars. Of course, they're trying to kill us, which is not great. And Eric Visser is with them, which is disturbing. And then there's Hephaestus, and... Okay, okay. How about we take it one step at a time? You're right. I also owe you an explanation for everything that happened at Landfall. 
I see you've been using your new focus. It's been fascinating. So much better than the version the Quen have. What would have taken me years to sort through, like the database you helped me recover? With this, I've been able to establish search parameters to speed up the process. This could revolutionize how diviners analyze the legacy. That is, whatever part of it the overseers would actually let us study. You want data, you'll find lots of it here. A diviner has never had this sort of unsupervised access to archives such as this. And knowing you, I suspect there is much that would normally be forbidden held within them. But I was sent here to help you. I would be remiss to ignore any truth laid before me. Maybe it'll help the Quen find their way back to the path of truth. You mentioned Eric Visser? How do you know about him? The Zenith who tried to kill you? He is known to the Quen as the Protector. Combing through data related to his work led us to breakthroughs related to weapons and military tactics. Knowledge our rulers use to conquer and expand. To become the Empire we are today. That's why he's one of our most revered ancestors. But, based on your encounter with him, it appears he's even more ruthless than we ever imagined. Yet another distorted interpretation in the legacy. Well, at least you're piecing together the truth. If only the Overseers back home would do the same. Beta mentioned other Zeniths. Tilda, Verbena, and Gerard. I'm afraid I don't know anything about them. Whatever legacy they left behind, the Diviners haven't recovered. I imagine you don't know anyone here that well yet, but they're a good group. It's funny because one of your friends is, well, another you. Not that you are the same person at all. I mean, you are, as in you're both genetically Elizabeth Sobeck, but even so, you're different. Yeah. We are. I hope everyone's been treating you okay. Oh, yeah, of course. They've all been extremely welcoming. And they share the knowledge they learn on their focuses with each other freely. It's refreshing. Back home, diviners can only share data with the permission from the overseers. Sounds restrictive and stifling. Yeah, you are not wrong. You said you owed me an explanation for what happened in Thebes. I'm listening. Right. I'll start at the beginning, with the CEO. He was an Imperial, the Emperor's nephew, in fact. As such, he sponsored many Diviners to search the Legacy for anything that might help the tribe, and himself. He took a special interest in anything related to Ted Farrow, whom we consider the greatest of the Ancestors. Ted Pharaoh, revered ancestor. That's tough to take. I know better now, of course. Anyway, the Diviners discovered that Pharaoh spent a great deal of time in San Francisco. In fact, many of the most important ancestors did. So the Emperor's nephew convinced him that an expedition across the ocean might solve our most pressing problems. If only we could find the right data in this fabled city. Perhaps we could roll back the floods and storms that threatened our people. The Emperor declared that all the tribe's resources be poured into this endeavor. Dozens of ships were built, scouting missions were dispatched, and the Emperor's nephew was named Sio, one who wields the legacy for the good of the Empire. The living embodiment of Ted Pharaoh, the Renewer. It may seem strange now, but for a time, he carried all of our hopes. We really believed he would save us. We had no idea just how perilous the journey would be. You said the expedition across the sea was more dangerous than you thought it would be. What happened? We lost most of our ships to hurricanes, and scores of soldiers perished to hunger and disease. And that was before we even hit the coast. 
Once we landed, machines ripped our patrols apart, and we struggled to replenish our rations. There were bright spots, to be sure. We found Thebes and the greenhouse. But nothing improved the CEO's mood as his dreams of saving the tribe were slowly dashed. He became more and more obsessed with Thebes and what lay behind its door. And more and more convinced that the title of CEO was no mere honorific. You heard him, spouting nonsense about Pharaoh's essence and some kind of becoming. We knew these weren't the words of a sane man, but he was quick to put any who spoke out in front of a firing squad. What a great guy. The Quen are wrong about many things when it comes to the legacy. I can see that now. But what the CEO became was a complete perversion of what principal diviners stand for. The pursuit of truth. Uh, I'm sorry you had to endure his madness. I'm just glad it's over. For everyone. So, Bohai, your overseer, will he run things better than Sio? He won't execute people on a whim, if that's what you mean. But he's hardly a paragon of integrity. I can't tell you how many times he took credit for data in the legacy that I uncovered. The best thing I can say about him is that he can be trusted to always do what's best for him. Yep, sounds about right. Back at the greenhouse, you spoke of knowledge forbidden to your people. Diviners are meant to seek out the truth in the legacy, and many Imperials sponsor them in the hopes they'll find something the Empire can put to use, thus gaining favor with the Emperor. But the Board of Overseers claims certain truths are detrimental to the stability of the Empire, like discovering one of our revered ancestors ended the world. That is why diviners are only allowed to access segments of the legacy. Only overseers can view it all. It ensures that any heretical data can be contained and retrieved before it can spread. What happens to diviners who break the rules? I never had the courage to ask. The ancestors, is that what your people call the old ones? Yes and no. The Ancestors are the greatest of the Old Ones. Those whose legacy taught us agriculture, medicine, warfare, leadership, and patronage of the science and arts. The CEO called Elizabeth Sobek an assistant. What's that about? Right. Well, any Old One who has made minor contributions or worked extensively under one of the Ancestors is called an assistant. That's how we thought of Sobek. Until we met you. Our limited access to data past the late 2040s has obviously uh, misinformed our view of the past. You mentioned the reason you came here was to help your family. Your sister... Her name is Alika. Our parents are commoners. Peasants, really. When I passed the divination exams, they were so proud. It brought honor to our family and increased rations. Only Alika begged me not to leave for the research academy. Why? What happens there? Alika knew that once you enter, you're not allowed to leave or see anyone. Not even your family. Uh, unless you can get special permission and an escort by an overseer. That sounds harsh. Like the focuses we keep, diviners are few in number, and the Empire is... Well, fearful that outsiders will try to steal our knowledge. Last time I was allowed to see my family was just before our voyage here. Because of my position, I was able to get them refuge from the floods within the capital. But if our crops don't recover soon, they'll starve to death along with everyone else. I promise I'll do my best to make sure it doesn't come to that. I need to get going. But if you need anything... All I need is to help you succeed in your mission. The plan Gaia told me about to capture Hephaestus, it will help set things right? I hope so. Then I will do whatever I can. I promise.
Is it me or did the old ones just look funny? Funny how? Yeah, they're close. They're weird. They're so tight. For once, I'd have to agree. I'd rip those things to shreds in a fight. Guess they didn't move around as much. Aloy, well met. We've been briefed on our mission, and are ready whenever you wish to head to Cauldron Gemini. Were you able to finish the new arm Gaia was helping you with? Indeed. I was hoping we could discuss it, if you have a moment. You wanted to talk about your arm? Indeed. It's time to test it. And I want you to be there. Okay. How are we doing this? Not how. Where. Will you meet me where we felled Regala's tremor tusk? Right where the river bends? Sure, if you want, but I'm not sure I understand. You'll see when we get there. I promise. Then I'll let you know when I get close. You have my thanks, Aloy. How are your studies going? I wanted to learn more about the world of the Old Ones. And? I looked up this pharaoh Gaia said you went looking for, and learned about the plague of machines he unleashed. To think that the ancient world was wiped out by... <sighs> a mistake. A single miscalculation that... There is no glory or honor in such a fate. Only hubris. And pointless death. That about sums it up. Have you spoken with Alva? The Quen is peculiar. Nothing like a Tanakh. Her mind is sharp, that much is certain. But it's hard to imagine her surviving in the wilds. Trust me, she's tougher than she looks. I will take your word for it. I have to go now. Then do not let me keep you. Like I said, I'll call you when I'm close to Regala's old outpost near the bulwark. May the Ten guide your way. Welcome back. There we go. More data for the dome. one. Aloy, I know your experience in Thebes was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport you to Gemini? The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network, increasing its power. With your subfunctions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. What if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega Clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? Only a final test remains. I am confident that if fired in proximity to other cauldrons, the pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. Aloy. You'd better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. 
Aloy. I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one. We need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back? Alone. In a cell again. A slave. Forever. Laurel and I will be at Gemini too. I'll protect you. As soon as we get Hephaestus, we'll come straight back here. The Zeniths aren't going to find us. You don't have to be afraid. No! You can't protect me! Nothing can protect me from them! I told you from the beginning, we'll never beat them! It's hopeless! You don't understand! You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I've thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. I don't know what you have that I don't. I look through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned, and isolated just like me, so what's the difference? What's my defect? raised you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did he feel like? It was like having a strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. But it looks impossible. Look deeper and then fight like you can win. You don't have to go on a mission. We'll find another way. I'll go. You said you'd try to protect me. I believe you. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes, of course. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise? I promise. 
I could use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merch, to make it as efficient as possible. I'll be ready when you are. I swear. Some of them ate more like the Utaru, called themselves vegetarians. From what I'm reading, all the old ones wanted to eat was this stuff called chocolate. Aloy, everything okay with you and Beta? It sounded like you guys had a uh, lively conversation. We just had a lot to talk about. Does this mean she's coming with us to Gemini? It does. I hope you're ready to rein in the most stubborn AI of all time. That's what all this was for, wasn't it? Hephaestus won't go down quietly. Hephaestus is just a program that's lost its way. We are fighting for our survival. I can always call upon the goddess if you're nervous. Funny. I hope firing off those pulse generators will be enough to distract the Zeniths. It'll work. It has to. Always optimistic, huh? Nah, just stubborn. It's a good quality to have when dealing with you. Yeah, right. Any last findings you want to share before leaving? Not really. Though I've reached a decision. Oh? When we put Gaia together, I want to return to the Nora. Spread what I've learned. You think they'll listen to you? In time, I believe so. If anyone can make it happen, it's you, Varl. What will you and Zoe do if you go back to the Embrace? I hope she'll come with me. At least for a while. And I'll go with her to Plainsong, too. She'll probably want to talk to her people about all this, as well. We'll figure it out. I know you will. How does everyone seem to you? Anxious, but ready. I heard Catalo ask for Alva's help with his pulse generator, and I know he's been helping her with a few fighting techniques, just in case. I hope they aren't needed. Like I said, just in case. You were right, you know, about keeping Rost's memories buried. I guess part of me thought he was holding me back, because he wanted me to be a Nora. But the truth is, he gave me a lot. And I took him for granted. He was a good man. He raised you well. I'm glad you're coming with me, Varl. Sure there's no urge to run off alone in there somewhere? No more running. Hey, I thought I'd check in before leaving for Gemini. Are you sure we shouldn't be checking up on you? Whatever went on between you and Beta sounded intense. Not that I'm judging. <laughs> Forge knows all the screws flew loose every time Mercer and I fought. I think we'll be fine from now on. I'm glad to hear it. After we get Hephaestus, we'll be taking the fight to the Zeniths. So, no more reading. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Not really. Besides, going through all that data helped me realize something. You know, the soldiers, the, the ones that fought the Pharaoh machines so Gaia could be built? Oh, they were fighting a battle that couldn't be won. Not with all the weapons in the world. I think most of them realized that, whether anyone said it or not. And they still did it, though. They bought time for all the eggheads working to save the future. Our future. As long as I can do that for you, I'll consider myself a success. Thank you, Erend. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, enough. I'm gonna get emotional. Anybody take you up on that ale you brought yet? 
Zo can't stand the smell of it. I tried Alva, but I don't think she knows what taking a break means. And I'm not putting Varl anywhere near that stuff after that victory party in Meridian. What about Catalo? Ah, now there's a man that can hold his liquor. Pretty sure we downed half a keg. We had a good chat, I think. I should go. That same here. I got a date with a cauldron to prepare for. Hey, we'll be going after Hephaestus soon. You good with the plan? I've already got the location of my assigned cauldron. Good. I heard you and Beta had a... talk. News travels fast. It wasn't exactly a quiet conversation. There were just things that needed to be said. A healthy crop to those who clear the weeds between them, as the Utaru say. You look like you have something on your mind. We're going to war soon. And war is something I promised myself I'd left behind in the Red Raids. But the more of your data I go through, every voice I hear, every word I read from our ancient past, it makes me realize just how much life was given so that ours could flourish. Fighting for that gift, it's our responsibility. If we fail, it was all for naught. Helps to know you're not alone. For a moment there, you sounded like Varl. I don't know what you're talking about. I should go. As soon as you intend to leave for Gemini, you'll hear about it. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. I was just studying the pulse generator schematics. The ones Gaia and Beta built. <laughs> the craftsmanship is remarkable. Is everything all right? It sounded like there was an uh, issue with Beta and the mission. Not anymore. We just needed to talk some things through. To understand one another is to embrace truth. Oh, and... Uh, if you have a moment, there's something I could use your help with. Any more data catch your eye? All of it? I have so much to study up on. Years, actually. I'm particularly interested in the Odyssey. We knew the ancestors had made it to the moon. In fact, we theorized some of them had settled on it. But Sirius is way farther than that. And we thought journeying across the ocean would be the feat of a lifetime. The sheer calculations needed for space travel, it's overwhelming to think about. Even so, the Quen are way ahead of other tribes when it comes to understanding this stuff. Where I grew up, everyone thought that stars were sparks that rose from a fire lit by the goddess to guide us through the night. Have you spoken with Zoe at all? A little bit, but uh, I did hear her singing with Varl not too long ago. I don't think they noticed. So seemed so uh, free when she did it. Like every emotion she had was taking flight in song. Uh, and she looked happier because of it. Uh, I felt so dull and nervous in comparison. You should ask so to teach you sometime about Utaru music. Maybe. If you need anything before heading out to the cauldrons... You have nothing to worry about. Gaia's explained your plan in detail, as expected from such an efficient AI. I've even received some very, um, uh, succinct combat advice from Kotalo. You know, uh, in case the Zeniths show up. What kind of advice? He, um, told me to run. For now. We'll even the odds soon enough. Must be strange to think that some of the ancestors your tribe reveres are still alive. And here on Earth, right now. Yeah, it is. 
part of me is curious to know who else besides Eric Visser might be among them. Maybe Nikita Arand? We call her the Spark. The legacy tells us she brought unlimited energy to the Old Ones. Or Song Zhao, whom we call the Healer. It is said she found new ways to extend the ancestors' lifespans. But my curiosity fades when I think of how different our view of Visser was compared to the reality that you experienced. Perhaps it is better not to know. You mentioned there was something you needed help with? Yes. Uh, so, as I was sifting through data from the greenhouse, I found references to an old world system back in the Great Delta. It's called Leviathan. My people discovered it decades ago. A sprawling network of river gates and a labyrinth of underground tunnels. The legacy revealed that the old ones used it to control flooding. But we've never gotten it to work. The whole thing is shut down. But the data from the greenhouse mentions the research facility where Leviathan was created. It's in San Francisco. Another Pharaoh facility? No. Leviathan was a project by Eileen Sasaki, another ancestor. So the legacy tells us, anyway. If we can acquire that data, we might be able to fix the system back in the Great Delta. Every year, my sister gets terrified when the long rains begin. With Leviathan, maybe she won't have to be. Okay. So where in San Francisco is this facility? That's the thing. The data doesn't say where, exactly. But one of our diviners has been exploring the ruins. He might know. Would you come with me? I have a feeling that wherever this facility is... Well, you're much better at fighting machines than I am. Of course. I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. Thank you, Aloy. I should go. Make sure you talk to Gaia if you have any questions about the pulse generators. May your path lead to truth. And, like I said, I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. We'll find the data you're after. I appreciate it. We just need to find the right strategy. Hmm. Aloy, are you well? Had a bit of an issue with Beta. It's better now, though. Ah, uh, I'm not surprised. Really? Why not? I once knew a warrior who discovered he had a brother late in life. It was deeply uncomfortable for him. Did he ever get over it? In time. But not before the two siblings nearly killed each other in a single combat challenge. Ah. Well, at least I avoided that. Think you're ready to put all your training to the test? I am Tanakhth. I am always ready. You nervous about the mission ahead? If I live, it will be in victory. If I die, it will be in battle. What matters most is that you achieve your objective. I'll do my best. I should go get ready. I await your orders. Hello again, Aloy. Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel, I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. 
Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Ted. Guess he got what he deserved, in the end. Yes. An igneous conclusion to his pathological narcissism, impulsive tendencies, and instability. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Far Zenith, attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot at recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base. But we'll need Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. Correct. So, about Beta. I never really saw the difference between us, until now. She's been through so much. Completely alone. You have both endured many hardships. Different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobek. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. How was all of us settling in? As soon as she arrived, Alva was eager to study the data in the archive. A particular file soon caught her attention. Information about a machine assistant devoted to keeping living spaces neat and orderly. I informed her that once I am empowered with the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to design such a machine. I'm sure she'll like that. When I set out to find a way to bring you back, I never thought we'd be here, like this. Among friends. They have all come a long way with their improvised educations. Varl has suggested that one day we might extend this model to more tribal inhabitants, once the biosphere has been stabilized. Yeah, that's not such a bad idea. As long as you're the one running the lessons. So our plan to capture Hephaestus. Let's go over it again. As you wish. Thanks to Beta's test, we now know that Hephaestus will not respond to your Alpha clearance. Which is why I got Ted Pharaoh's Omega clearance. Correct. While you were gone, Beta constructed the transport rig and pulse generators. When we get to Gemini, I will need to be installed on one of the facility's cores. The second core is for Hephaestus. Using Omega Clearance will allow you to trap it. And then you'll be able to absorb it? Not quite. You will need to manually remove Hephaestus' malicious code before the merge. How long will that take? Because the work will be split between you and Beta, it will take approximately 4.5 hours. And during that time, the others will create a distraction for us using the pulse generators, right? Correct. They will each take position at a cauldron door and fire off their device. The energy surge should mask our activities until the merge is complete. And then we'll have everything we need to defeat the Zenith. Sounds like a plan. So, I, uh, found Thebes. What do you think Ted would have done if his life extension treatments had worked? It seems he convinced himself it was his duty to guide future humans. Given the tribal nature of new humans, and his ability to use Omega Clearance on the terraforming system, 
I imagine he would have convinced one or more tribes to worship him as their patriarchal deity. Okay. Yep, glad that didn't happen. Aside from Gaia Prime and Thebes, there was one other underground facility that was sealed before the Pharaoh Plague reached it. Elysium. The place where Zero Dawn staff and their families went to live out their lives. Do you know what happened to it? Elysium was designed to provide life support for 100 years. My data indicates the facility went offline well before then. Did the Pharaoh Plague find them? Unknown. My connection to the facility was abruptly severed. So what will happen to this place while we're at Gemini? All systems within this facility will continue to operate. As Minerva will no longer be masking this location, the facility will be exposed to detection. Though without my presence, it is unlikely to attract attention. Let's hope so. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. We- It was a first listen- Your friend. Yes. Though I am glad she- Thanks, Gaia. Okay, people. It's time to head out. I'll get everyone together. Connections in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy. I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice. Aaron, everyone. Fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my Cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mine as well. Okay, radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. <laughs> Connecting to the cauldron network now. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence. Critical threat detected in Nowhere to go. Wait, what's that? Malware detected. Attempting to compensate. It's 
cracked. Look! Means machines are on their way. Get ready. Here they come. For I'll stay here. Protect Beta. Be careful. For the sacred land. You okay? Still breathing. Aloy, Hephaestus can't escape, but it must have fled. Did Deeper into the facility. I'll drive it back here. I'll get the cracked core fixed in the meantime. Keep her safe, Varl. it out of wherever it's hiding. Make it retreat to the core. I can grab this from my stash later. No, you don't, Hephaestus! I'll find another way over. Aloy, I'm patched into your focus feet. You should know there's a huge power draw coming to the next chamber. Thanks for the heads up. I'm almost there. It's some kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right? No, but I'm gonna shut it down. I bet those metal carriers will lead me to where it's getting materials from. I bet that's where Festus is hiding too. Looks like there are a couple of ways I could go. Well, that doesn't sound good. Aloy, I've managed to rewire most of the components in the core, but the energy processor's cracked. 
without a way to fabricate another, th there's no way I can fix it. Okay, um, let me think. What if you bypass the processor? Connect it to the power node. I think that could work. I think it could. Lock me out of the node. Any ideas? I'll see what I can do.
got them all. I, I tapped into the core's network hub. I managed to disrupt Hephaestus' control of the node. You should be able to override it now. Nice. Thanks. Better not get comfortable. Energy contained to fail. Save the soul Great. Festus covered the floor with lightning. I gotta find a way over it. Aloy! More machines keep coming! Please tell me you're getting close! I'm working on it. I've been smashing through a lot of machines on my side, too. I guess Aaron's missing out! Aloy! I'm making progress on the bypass, but I, I need something to hold the cycling module together. Maybe a ligament from one of the machine carcasses? Right. O or some luminous braiding. And you could reinforce it with a conversion cylinder. For increased connectivity! There has to be a way to get past the shield. Again. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I'll try to get your access back.
there. Node access restored. Now you can override it. Good work. You did the heavy lifting. Okay. Festus is running out of places to hide. Uh, Aloy? I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. The machine that Festus was building. It must have finished it. Oh, it's, it's powerful. Whatever it is. I'm almost done with the core repairs. Should... Should we come to you? Maybe I could distract the machine if... No, Beta. Just stay where you are, okay? Handling the machine's my job. Okay. Be safe.
Stand by. I'm sending Hephaestus back to you. No more hiding, Hephaestus! Got it! Hephaestus is back in the core! Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. And then we can start the merge. Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Laurel. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Right back at you, Aloy. The, the bypass is done. The core is stable. Hephaestus is 100% contained. And we better get started with the merge. It's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. We need to excise Hephaestus' malicious code. Carefully. Cost us quite a lot of time. Eric, get beta. And squash that bug while you're at it. Get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. Tilda! I failed. Hush. All is not lost. Tilda! What the hell are you doing? Stop her! No! I can't even see her!
Beta. still be in a great deal of pain. I can assure you that we are safe. The others can't detect us here. You mean the other Zeniths? You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've shaken off the cobwebs. When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. Breakfast? Okay. few favorites from my collection rescued and stored here just before I went off world take a look if you like I'm curious to hear your impressions my friend is dead Beta and Gaia are gone and you want me to look at old paintings don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art or the insight we might gain My favorite pairing on the left is Woman Reading a Letter by Vermeer, a true master. And on the right is a forgery, Woman Reading Music, which fooled experts into believing it was a priceless original. Early in my career, I became fascinated with such deceptions. Eventually, I developed scanning software that could detect fakes with unparalleled accuracy. Is that how you made enough money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Oh no. I made my real fortune later. Selene and Endymion. She's the goddess of the moon. Whereas he's a simple shepherd. Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's... sneaking up on him? More like visiting him in secret. The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. And why can't Selene and Endymion be together? Selene took a vow of chastity, promising to never take a lover. So when she fell in love with Endymion, she could only visit him at night while he slept. But then wouldn't she be breaking that vow? Think of it as a forbidden love. Though circumstance keeps them apart, still they find a way to come together, however briefly. Aren't Selene and Endymion cold? Perhaps we should move on to another piece. Why do you keep the forgery? I've always enjoyed studying the two side by side. Both painters capture light, color, and perspective. But what makes one a masterpiece and the other simply an imitation? The forgery looks... sharper? Good eye. The details are crisp. The contrast bold. It tells us more. And yet, we feel less. What's in the letter? Who can say? What does the painting tell you? She's... Concerned? 
Whatever's written in the letter troubles her. Burden, she can't put down. Fascinating. Why go through so much effort to make a fake masterpiece? The forger initially painted under his own name, but found little success. His work was considered unremarkable. But when he took on the guise of Vermeer, suddenly it was celebrated as extraordinary. But it was a lie. And he knew it. Sometimes we struggle to glean what is real and imagined, even within ourselves. The irony of these two is that Vermeer died in obscurity. He had no idea his work would become some of the most precious, most copied, most preserved pieces in all history. This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Mourning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. So instead, he saved its treasures from destruction, just as I saved these works. You could say we're kindred spirits. About Jeremiah. If he knew his home would be destroyed, why didn't he save the people? Why save those relics? He tried, but no one would listen to his warning, so he saved what he could. But how did he know? He was a prophet. He saw an army invade and destroy the city in a vision. So it's more like he calculated which side would win a battle. What matters is that he was right in the end. If not for him, all those wonders would have been lost forever. At least this way, some part of his world survived. You know what I like the most about this piece? Even though he's the sole survivor, his home in ruins left with only the remnants of his world. The light keeps the shadows at bay. There's still hope. Precisely. Take as long as you like. A portrait of the painter, Rembrandt's son, Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you, with infinite resources, care about this painting of... a boy in a hood? It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined. But his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune. And the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. Works of art such as these can often cause us to look inwards at our own lives. I'm sorry about your friend. Had I been able to intervene, I would have. But the risk of losing you as well was too great. Everything went by in a blur. I couldn't get to him. You know, long before holograms and focus recordings, people relied on art to memorialize their loved ones. Because of works like this painting, their lives are immortalized. Rembrandt had four children by his wife. All but Titus died shortly after she gave birth to them. She passed not long after that. Titus became the only family Rembrandt had. Which is why he painted him this way. Indeed. Then tragedy struck again. Disease claimed Titus at 26. It's almost as if Rembrandt painted the future, closing in on him. Rembrandt actually painted several portraits of Titus, but this one has always been my favorite. It's honest. What do you mean? In others, Titus was portrayed in brighter, livelier states, but here, Rembrandt allows himself to express his true feelings. Sorrow, fear, hope, love laid bare on canvas for all time. I see this one resonates deeply with you.
Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day. But not as influential as you've been in this new world. The militia. They look disorganized. Where others painted such scenes in a stiff and stationary manner, Rembrandt chose to show them in action, preparing to march. He wanted them to feel alive. You can almost hear the commotion. Who's the girl in the painting? She's a strange one, isn't she? Bathed in light, though no one is paying attention to her. Many believe she's a symbol of the militia. A physical manifestation of their spirit, if you will. But she's not real? What's real in a painting? She's meant to represent the militia's virtue and victory. But I like to think they underestimate her. She looks as if she's seen something. What does she know? What secrets does she keep? There's so much detail to take in, isn't there? The Gust by Willem van de Velde, the most famous of his many maritime paintings. A ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Where is the ship going? To a faraway land, most likely. My ancestors used ships like these to explore the world, sometimes at great cost. What were they looking for? Anything of value. They were traders willing to face unknown dangers to make their fortunes. But no matter how far they went, they always turned their sails home. So this... Von de Velde only painted ships? It was his specialty. Following in the footsteps of his father, Willem the Elder. The two had quite a journey of their own taking them all the way to the court of a foreign kingdom. Did they ever come home? No, but eventually their lives work did. Take your time. Stunning, isn't it? Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's lidded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial. Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. If this you were was a memorial, how did you end up with it? As the pharaoh's swarm closed in, my homeland's greatest museum gave it to me, along with many other works, in the hope that I could preserve them. A masterpiece like this was too important to lose to history. I even considered bringing it with me off-world to ensure its safety. Why didn't you? I took a calculated risk. This vault seemed more secure than the unknowns of space. Besides, I thought someday I might return. A long life, after all, has its advantages. Now, lo and behold, here I am. Exquisite, isn't it? A lot of weight on his shoulders. I don't feel it. I should move on. She's pulling out her own hair. Out of madness, out of grief. It's hard to watch her suffer. I should move on.
There you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses, accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it, it rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta and the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done? You think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them, and live with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. My old focus. You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life. A thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to. In order to understand, to be enlightened. You truly are. Elizabeth's blood, with her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. That's better. Now, we must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship. A complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted. Heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them. Create the world she imagined. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. And they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh, he's been a busy bee building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Regala and her rebels. Even now she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Hundreds of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow silence to kill him along with all the others. 
Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man, he's planned for everything. Except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while Silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. They always viewed me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the Data Channel, a virtual place where we could speak in peace. So this channel you shared with Beta, none of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes, though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. She felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape, Bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? If you like. So you know all about me. What about you? What would you like to know? Well, start with your life on Earth. When I was eight, terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian sent me to boarding school. 
among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You're an outcast. But you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries. Profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? More like a service one could turn to for information. I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Far Zenith approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Farzenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were. Certainly, it, it wasn't until we were off planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying, a pampered dream state. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again, but this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now, finally, having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. To do what? Help you, of course. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Farzenith's original vision. A better future for humanity. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone. To think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me, Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base. What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know 
your exits. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation, a passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here, in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Hephaestus. What about the alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery, once the others have been dealt with. With that in hand, we'll have everything we need to make this world as it should be. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. You hacked his focus? No, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the Sons of Prometheus. The ones working with Regala. By tapping their focuses, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh rebels, and the secret pact with Regala to attack Gerard's base. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but however he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it and the Tanakh army, victory seems to be within his grasp. Such a shame he'll be disappointed. Regala is only interested in killing Hikaru and waging war on the Karja. What does she have to gain by attacking Zenith? It's the price she must pay for her war. Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the Sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. Pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. That blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? Liz was everything she was. I see in you and more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning. A touchy subject in those days. Because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation. But in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step. An AI-driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming, but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence. To care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated and I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. 
So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her, then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't, but she was very welcoming, almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only halfway through the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets, and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling. First Varl. Now Hikaru and the Tanakh. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deep. Wait, the data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible, we might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakh survive. But we won't. If the others- If you want to help, open it. What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? Watching me. I, I, I can't hold it. This extra projection for long. You should have killed me. No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Okay? I just need you to hold out a little while longer and work on the merch. again when it's time. Can you hold on? As long as I know you're coming for me, I can endure anything. All right. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silent's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? 
With that Regala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? That is between me and my sister. We'll be Silent's only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh. And what are those? Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regala's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh. The ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if, when. Aaron, are you there? Aloy! Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... At, we're, we're back at base. What happened? It... It might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. I, we'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. you know I'm now patched into your focus network. Great. I take it the other Zenus can't hear us? Of course not. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use against Regala's forces. Reach out to me when you're ready to acquire one. Understood. When you're wounded, you have to strike back. Draw blood. Hey! Can I get one damn minute to mourn my friend? Regala is going to slaughter my tribe to overthrow Hikaru. The Zeniths have Beta and Gaia. We can't sit around wallowing in our losses. Katalo's right. We must fight. Oh, all right. So what are we going to do, huh? Take on all of Regala's rebels? Not to mention the Zeniths. What can we even do? Throw ourselves at their base? Something like that. So... After we lost contact with you, we regrouped and went to Gemini. What happened? The recording we found on Varl's focus cut off when that Zenith Eric... The Zeniths were tracking Hephaestus. When Gaia trapped it in Gemini, they... They knew where we were. After... Varl tried to stop them. They took Beta and Gaia. 
I only survived because one of the Zeniths turned against the others to save me. One of them? Well... At least we didn't lose you too. So what do we do now? We're going to defeat the Zeniths. And get Beta and Gaia back. But first... We're going to stop Regala. How? Back in Gemini, Beta gave me... A gift. There's something I need to do first to make it work, but it could put an end to the bloodshed. Word is, Regala's readying her army for an all-out assault on the Grove. I... need to be there. I know. Go. Stand with Akaro. And keep an eye on the sky. Strike true as the ten. The rest of you? Whatever preparations you need to make, upgrades, resupplies, get on it. It won't be long before we take the fight to the Zenith. We'll be ready, Aloy. And when you're ready, meet me outside the east exit. I'd like to have a word in private. Even when things are darkest, you're the flame that lights the way forward. Just tell me one thing. Am I gonna get to smash up a bunch of Zenith bastards? We all are. Good. Before I do anything else, I should check on Zoe. It sounded important. I thought you were gonna go fight some Tanakh. I wanted to check in with you first. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just... You know, picking up the pieces like everyone else. I'll be there when you need me. I never doubted that. Oh. Good. I'm glad you're back. So am I. I know you hate waiting, but you'll have to stay back here a little longer. Well, you go do what you gotta do, but uh, are you okay? It's not just Varl we lost. Beta's gone. I almost lost it when I realized my sister had been taken by Durval back in the Sundom. I'm getting her back. That's all that matters. Understood. Do you think... so we'll be okay? I don't think anyone's ever okay after losing the one they love. I can't tell you she's handling it better than I ever did. That keeps the rest of us level-headed. You should know. Silens is involved with the Sons of Prometheus. He's the one who gave them the override tech to begin with. Why doesn't that surprise me? That's probably all part of some master plan, huh? At least we know we're good at wrecking those. Damn straight. I need to get going. Uh, you better get there before Catalo tries to take on Regala's entire army by himself. Yeah, do me a favor. Don't go disappearing on us again. I'll do my best. You look busy. My studies are a good distraction. Especially after Cauldron Gemini. Varl. Beta. Gaia. Gone. And that's just the beginning. The Zeniths want to rob us of our future, too. We won't let that happen. So, all of the tribes here are new to you? Yes. I've been studying up on them. The most fascinating one thus far has been the Tanakht. An entire culture based on the holograms of an ancient museum. There's much they've misinterpreted. Not unlike the Quen. But still, there's a nobility to what they've become. They're honorable and fearless. And deadly. How are you holding up? Varl's loss is heavy on everyone's mind. I didn't know him well, but I can see how much he meant to the others. Zoe and Erend seem to have taken to it the hardest, but I don't quite know what to say to them. They need time to sort through it. And what about you? Will time heal your wounds? I don't know. I try not to think about it. 
Seems like everyone's ready to take the fight to the enemy. Kotalo more than most. If I were this Regala, I wouldn't want to cross him on the battlefield. Regala still has a lot of machines on her side. That's where you come in, I suspect. If my plan works. Tilda, the Zenith that Beta mentioned, she was the one who rescued me. Did she say why? She knew Elizabeth Sobek. Seems to think helping me is honoring her in some way. She was willing to share information on both Silence's plans and the other Zeniths. But you still don't trust her. Where I come from, the more valuable the knowledge shared, the higher the price extracted. I'd be careful if I were you, Aloy. What was Leviathan again? A flood control system back in the Great Delta. It was built by Eileen Sasaki, another of our ancestors. If we can acquire the data on it, we might be able to fix the system back home. Then my sister, my parents, other families won't have to live in fear of their homes washing away when the long rains come. Right. And to find it, we need to head back to San Francisco. I should get going. Be ready to go on my signal, okay? I won't let you down. I know. And I haven't forgotten about the data on Leviathan. I'll let you know when I make it back to Landfall. Thank you, Aloy. Over here, Aloy. We would come out here to tend to the garden. Sometimes I needed fresh air. Other times we would simply sit and watch the sunrise. So when we returned from Gemini, it seemed fitting that he be laid to rest here. Now he can always look out at plain song and further east to the Nora sacred lands. He would have liked that. He often spoke of his sister, Bala. He said she used to gather her favorite golden blooms and tie them to her spear. Their mother called it useless, but Bala was stubborn. Yeah, she seemed like that. It wasn't easy, but I tracked down the flower. Gathered its seeds. As verdant limbs wither, roots rot in snow, still the sea rises as certain as stone. From death follows new life. So it is with the land. And so it is with us. I'm with child, Aloy. I was going to tell him when he got back from Gemini. Instead, one day, I'll bring our child here. We'll sit among the blooms. and watch the sunrise. I never got to tell him. To thank him. For 
saving my life, sure, but also... for not giving up on me. He always knew. Goodbye, Farl. I promise to look after them. I'll try to visit again when I can. But for now, I need to go to the fabrication terminal to install the new override on my spear. Then I'll use it on a sunwing and get ready for an entrance Regala will never forget. Oh, uh, before I forget, I watered those plants for you. I just know they meant a lot to you, and, uh, I, well. Thank you, Aaron. Think you can manage things here while I go help Akaro? Stopping Regala's war. It'll help us take the fight to the Zeniths? Yes. Then I'll make sure the rest of us are ready upon your return. Okay. We'll be facing Spectre drones soon. Aaron and Catalo have fought them before, so... I already asked them to run us through some combat drills. Aaron moves like an oaf, but he's good with that hammer. How's Aaron doing? For a moment there, he thought he'd lost both you and Varl. But he never truly succumbed to despair. Guess that Asaram's stubbornness comes in handy sometimes. I know we both want to make the Zeniths pay for what they've done, but once we infiltrate their base, our priority will be to get Gaia and Beta out of there. Don't worry. I won't go seeking revenge like some blood-crazed Tanakhth. Wherever your arrow strikes, mine will follow. Well, let's hope we hit our targets. I need to get going. Whatever you plan on doing against Regala, you better return to us in one piece. I'll try. Was there something else you needed? Tilda's the one who rescued me. Same one that spoke to Beta when none of the others would. Did she say why she saved you? She knew Elizabeth Sobek. Seems to think helping me is honoring her in some way. She was willing to share information on both Silence's plans and the other Zeniths. But you still don't trust her. Where I come from, the more valuable the knowledge shared, the higher the price extracted. I'd be careful if I were you, Aloy. I should get going. Be careful, Aloy. Override installed. Now to find a sunwing. I think there are some roosting at the top of the mountain. Okay, I need to find a sunwing to override. Better head up the mountain. Huh? 
Good. There are sun wings up here. We'll have to approach them quietly. Oh, my pack's full. I can get it for my stash later. I'm in the air. Then you'll want to pick up an energy cell on one of the ancient Horus Titans. But first you must send out a pulse to activate them. I've sent you the necessary software. To deploy it, you'll have to override one of the communication machines you refer to as Tolnex. There's one in the middle of the desert that should do nicely. On it. Sound like rebels. Maybe if I follow their tracks, I can find out where they're headed. I can probably use my focus to follow the tracks those riders left behind. There's a tall neck. Need to get on top of its head. Now, how to land this thing? Made it. Just fell over. Okay, Tilda, I've overridden the tall neck. Good. And the energy cells are now primed. Simply pick one up on a Horus. The nearest one should be northwest of your position. Dropping it on Regala's machine should produce quite a spectacle. Thanks for the assist. I told you, I want to help. Maybe heading for the grove. I hope a cover on this knock can be that a little longer. Where's the energy cell? I know the Titan's back. Got 
got the sill. Now onto the grove. The pulse from the tall neck should have reactivated all the energy cells in the region. I should be able to pick up more from any horse I fly to. It'll be useful, even after I deal with Regala. all over, Chaplain. I gotta drop it now. Here it goes. of the ten. The tide has turned. Push through! <laughs> End of the line, Hakon. Now on your knees, and I'll give you the death you didn't have the spine to give me. They're down! The machines! All of them! They're down! What? How's that possible? Regala! <laughs> Enough bloodshed! Let's settle this. You and me. Easy to say when you're on top of a machine. Well, that was just to get your attention. I don't need any help to take you down. Fine. I accept your challenge. And once I'm done with you, I'll get to finish the slaughter. We'll see about that. The duel is set. Let none interfere.
right? So that's how it's gonna be. Feeling better. Yeah, it is. I will rise above! Have enough stamina yet. Here I am again, on my knees before bootlicks and cowards. Go ahead, run me through. Shut your mouth, traitor. It was you who flew in on the wings of the Ten. You who challenged her by our rights. You must decide her fate. I spared her once. It only made things worse. She was the best of my marshals. What a waste. 
She's dangerous, all right. But maybe that's exactly what I need. Cowards! What more do you have to conspire about? Whether you live or die, After all that you've done, I can't let you live. Finally. Chief, there's something you both need to see, in the throne room. He surrendered to our guards outside the grove. Claims he has an urgent message for the outlander who defeated Regala. So, state it. It's for her alone. From an interested party. I'm gonna need some privacy. Clear the room. Put him with the rest of Regala's soldiers. I'll see you back at base. You saved the tribe. Let me help you with your mission. No. With Regala gone, you have a chance to build the future you dreamed of. So get to your task. Then at least allow me to give you this. Regala's bow. May you always strike true with it. Thank you. Do you have any idea what you've just done? Oh, it's a pleasure to see you too, Silence. Congratulations on your victory. You saved the Tanakh for a few weeks. Unfortunately, you doomed the entire planet as well. Wrong. I don't need a Tanakh army to defeat the Xenos. Oh, Eloy. Have you learned nothing about the enemy we're up against? More than you, hiding whatever hole you found. My idea is just better than anything you ever came up with. Go on. No, not here. We're doing this my way. Face to face, and with the weapon you've developed. And why would I agree to that? Because I'm your only way of beating the Zeniths, and getting the copy of Apollo that's on their ship. So meet me at my base. Mountains west of Plainsong. Time to submit to the inevitable silence and follow the person who actually knows what she's doing. Don't be late. Tilda, you there? I did it. Silence is on board. So head to my base. Impressive. I'll be there as soon as I can. Now that I can fly, I might want to see what else I can do before I head back. So, the Karo keeps his head. Aloy, you defeated Regala. Flew like the Ten. <laughs> I doubt you have enough skin to mark all your deeds. We'll just have to remember them, then. Yes. 
Thanks to you, Chief Akara's hold on the tribe is secure. His vision for the Tanakh endures. But that's not why I wanted to speak with you. I need a favor. A personal one. My grandson, Kavo. He was not counted among the dead, which means he must still be with Regala's remaining forces. He was taken prisoner? No. He joined them willingly. Like many young soldiers who seek to mark their skin with distinguished deeds. I must search for him. Convince him to come home. Chief Hikaru cannot spare any soldiers for this task, so my blade is alone in this. Unless you'd be willing to join me. I know it is much to ask after all you've done for us. But Kavo is the last of my blood. What made Kavo join Regala's rebellion? For some, Regala represented a chance at vengeance against the Karja. During the Red Raids, it wasn't easy to turn the clans back at Baron Light. Many wanted to pursue the Karja all the way to Meridian. So when Regala attacked the Embassy, they took it as a call to arms. Yes. But others? The young, especially? <laughs> Care only about the glory they think they'll earn by hunting an age-old enemy. As for Kavo, it was probably a bit of both, and a youthful desire for a cause to get the blood burning. Nothing I said could stop him. So if Kavo didn't listen to you when he joined the rebels, what makes you think he will now? Kavo was too young to fight during the Red Raids. War was a stranger to him. But he must have experienced the suffering it brings by now. He will listen. I must. I just have to find him before it's too late. You said Kavo is your last living relative? Yes. Before Chief Ikaro, the clans warred constantly with each other. Every skirmish claimed another comrade. One by one, I buried my children. And then their children. I'm sorry. I tried to vent my grief on the battlefield. But I never found comfort there. Only in the wisdom of the visions. And even so, I still couldn't prevent Kavo from following the trail of blood. If Kavo joined Regala's rebellion of his own accord, will Hikaru let him back into the tribe? The chief knows the value of mercy and the toll of unending bloodshed. It's the rest of the tribe I'm more concerned about. They won't quickly accept someone who betrayed them. Even with my support, it won't be easy. But you have to try. I'll help you find your grandson, if I can. Where do we start? A while back, our scouts reported Cavo's squad left one of Regala's outposts in the hills to the south. His squad never returned, but the scouts also spotted one of our own being held captive there. So we'll start at the outpost. If we free the prisoner, maybe they'll know where Kevo's squad went. Shall we head out? I have some other things to take care of first. I can meet you there. I'll wait for you on the hill crest southeast of the grove. We'll make our way to the outpost from there. Until then, strike true. No rebel or machine so he stand okay. before this outlander. Freedom. From Warbreaker to the wings of the Ten. Strike true as the Ten. Walk with honor. Bagara's defeat was the only outcome. Champion! Over here. Oh, I've got something to tell you. Look to the defenses. They were breached too easily. I'd keep your bow handy if you plan on traveling west to the coast. It's infested with machines, likely on account of a cauldron that lies nearby. Thanks for the advice.
Good a cauldron. Day. If I can find its core, I might be able to get some machine overrides. Might be worth the risk. Good. She flew on the wings of the Actually, strength is proven. Ah, the wandering oh, out yeah? here. Which one? Come, trade. Nope. <laughs> Not tell me. Return to me another time. We could learn much from the trade. And I hope I'm Your there. Your courage fires us. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is where Kotalo wanted to test out his new arm. Even though he didn't say how exactly. I should let him know I'm around and find out. Hey, Kotalo. I'm by the Tremor Tusk site, where we agreed to meet. Want to test that new arm of yours? I'll be there shortly. Thank you for waiting. Maybe now you can tell me what we're doing here? Not just yet. Follow me, please. Someone's being awfully mysterious. You took your sweet time telling me what you wanted to do to the bulwark. Consider this my revenge. Fair enough. This is it. What am I looking at? Oh, you'll see. Come. All right, talk to me, Catalo. I wish to test the arm on that. It has menaced the valley for some time, killed more than a few of the Sky Clan, but no longer. I'm honored to help. After you. Let's see how this thing likes the taste of metal. Better use something other than fire. Use that weapon! I think it's safe to say the new arm works fine. Agreed. Then why are you taking it off? This is what I am now. What I overcame. Anything else feels... wrong. Like a disguise. I'll use the new arm when I need it. But the rest of the time, I will simply be myself. I wouldn't have it any other way. You have my thanks for doing this with me. Here. Something to mark our victory. Thank you. 
I'll see you later then. The ten be with you, Aloy. This will be in my stash when I need it. Hey, Alva. I'm in Landfall. Can you meet me here? I'll be there as soon as I can. Aloy! I'm here. Had to sneak past a few machines on the way, but I made it. All right. Ready to talk to that diviner? Yes. He's right over there. Diviner Alva! What are you doing back in Landfall? And with the Living Ancestor? We're looking for the Atbe Research Center, where Leviathan was developed. The legacy tells us it's somewhere in the city. Alva mentioned you've been collecting data in the area. Do you know where it is? Uh... Yes, I stumbled across it, but... There was no data there, only crumbling ruins. Tell us anyway. We might be able to find something you missed. Please, don't trouble yourself. I, I, I sh assure you, our search was very thorough. Mm, you're hiding something. What? That... that is absurd. A diviner must only speak truth, as you're well aware. Oh, you're worried you found something dangerous. Something compromising on Eileen Sasaki? Keep your voice down. Look, I get it, Nerik. You want to make it back to your family, so it's safer to turn a blind eye. But think of Leviathan. How it could help everyone. Isn't that why we're here? Don't let fear deny us that. Very well. The facility's just south of here, along the shore. But even if you find a way to fix Leviathan, it's sure to be shrouded in that which is forbidden. Too often the truth is forbidden. Come on, let's go. Having a good day? There you are. Did your excursion oh. panel? Yeah. Not bad with that diviner back there. You've come a long way since we first met. And the Eric's like I used to be. Terrified of a misstep. And with the Overseers, he has every right to be. But what I've seen and learned since the Greenhouse, uh, it's so much more than what we're permitted. Diviners are supposed to seek the truth, and yet so much is kept from us. I'm tired of it. That should be the facility ahead. We need to find a way in. Up here. Well, Amiric wasn't lying about crumbling ruins, at least. Let's look around. Uh, Aloy, why is the ground shaking? That's not good, whatever it is. Whoa, that, that thing is huge! We'll have to take it out if we want to find that thing. Uh, okay. I'm with you.
sighting. We should be able to look around for that data now. After you. Time for a swim. Mm, at least the water is not breathing. Look at this place. I always try to imagine what it must have been like. Back when the old ones were here. It's less of a climb, I bet. Uh, Come on, <laughs> let's check the upper floors. You okay? On every expedition, the soldiers would lay down walkways and barriers first to protect them from the wind. But this is actually kind of fun. <laughs> There, the console. Must have been what Merrick found. Let's see if it has anything on Leviathan. Oh, the data on Leviathan isn't here, but there's some kind of log. Delete the database. But Miss Sasaki, when you look at the reports, 3,000 exhibiting symptoms, over 400 dead. The data is clear. Omarama is contaminating the water supply, promoting bacterial growth. And with Leviathan based on the same architecture... You're a smart kid. Top of your class, right? My father built this company thanks to world-class talent like you. And you know what else is world-class? Our legal team. 
So unless you want to spend the rest of your career in some dead-end, underfunded public research institute, you'll delete that database and forward all data on Leviathan to my office. Yes, ma'am. That was her. The ancestor, Eileen Sasaki. Hundreds dead. And she knew their system was to blame, but she had the truth erased. Were all the ancestors like this? Selfish, ruthless, immoral? And yet we hold them up as paragons of enlightenment and virtue. Given what we've learned, I don't even know if Leviathan will work. Hold on. Let's not give up just yet. You said before that the Old Ones use Leviathan to control flooding. Which means... it probably worked. We'll know more when we find the data on it. The recording mentioned a copy was sent to Eileen's office. And to their corporate headquarters. Uh, there. Let's go. It shouldn't take us long to get to the tower. Lead on. So what was that other system the recording mentioned? Omu Ramba? The legacy tells us it was the predecessor to Leviathan, a system that manipulated floods to bring life to a barren desert. Quan seemed to know a lot about this ancestor. Diviner spent years trying to figure out how to restore Leviathan. We found a lot of data on Eileen Sasaki in the process. Though, Entrance now is I blocked. how much of it Gonna is Gonna have to find another true. way in. The soldiers built a path on the nearby ruin. Might be able to cross over from there. Lead the way. is as far as our soldiers got. We'll have to climb higher to get into the tower. I'll follow your lead. <laughs> Up we go! You doing okay, Olva? Yes. Don't huh? worry about me. How are we going to get across? Well, that beam looks promising. Uh, this is a lot higher up than I thought. Glint talks. Well, we have the element of surprise. Or we could sneak by and, you know, not fall off the tower. Any damage. Up this way. Okay, just don't look down. Right! <laughs> of course! There's the tower. Super easy! Should be able to cross over. Aloy! I'm okay! 
person with the debris first. <laughs> Get to the other side. Made it. Okay, Alva, your turn. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure Alva makes it across. Can you watch me course. and make sure I do this right? Come on, Alva. You can do it. It's okay. Please don't break. Doors locked. Huh. This says the code is the month and year the company was founded. According to the legacy, it was October 2023. Got it. Door should be unlocked now. Maybe the data on Leviathan isn't here. Cost, re cost reduction strategy? We're talking about people's lives here. I did as you asked on Omuramba, but this is... worse. Relax, Eileen. I've spoken with risk management. They're confident that the chance of another incident is within acceptable parameters. We're moving ahead with Leviathan. You know, Dad... Shortcuts have a way of catching up with you. Within acceptable parameters or not. Well, one day in the distant future when you're in charge, you can run things how you want. But until then, how about you let me worry about that? Guess Eileen and her father didn't always get along. But it seems like covering up Omuramba wasn't her idea. Doesn't matter. She still had a part in it. Well, let's keep going. Her office must be higher up. Ugh, dead end. There's a ladder in that shaft, but it, it's blocked. There's nothing for my pull cast. I might be able to pull the rubble out from the other shaft. Let's see where this leads. Uh, you go on ahead. I'll look for a way up that has a lesser chance of falling to my death. Okay. Hey, Alva? Yes? There's something I don't get. You said Eileen was the one who built Leviathan, not her father, so... What happened? I'm not sure. The legacy doesn't say. Either that knowledge is lost, or... forbidden. Or maybe we were wrong about that, too. a long way up. How about you, Alva? Any luck finding a way up? Not yet. Whew. Well, that's done with. OK. 
Okay, I'm back at the shafts. If I blow up that fire beam, the elevator might fall and open up a path for Alva. Hey, uh, Alva? Step away from the shaft. Whoa! Oh! I can reach the ladder now! Uh, be right up, Aloy! Looks like there's another floor above. Might be Eileen's office. Okay, I'll meet you up there. Alright, Alva's on the way. Let's see what's up here. Another locked door. Need Made to figure it! Out the passcode. These artifacts. I. I think these were Eileen's. It's every diviner's dream to discover even one of the ancestors' artifacts. I don't know if my focus can show me anything. And maybe they'll help with the door. It's. art, I think. Could it be. Yes, I. I think this was commissioned in honor of the company's 25th anniversary. Oh, that must be the Larson McCory Award. The legacy says Eileen won it when she was 40 for her work on Leviathan. Interesting. That must be the Dragonfly 6. Ape used it in most of their construction projects. The Dragonfly 6 was their most successful model. Huh. This looks like some kind of prototype. For water purification. Must be the H2 flow. The uh, what? H2 flow. Their early inventions had strange names. Maybe try my focus. What did you say this was for again? The company's 25th anniversary. Looks like it used to be on the last pedestal. All the numbers you mentioned. I wonder if they make up the passcode. Yeah, it's worth a try. That did it! You can almost see the whole city from up here. Corner office. Impressive view. It must have been Eileen's. Let's see if the data on Leviathan is here. Well, it's official. Eileen Sasaki, CEO, chair, and worst daughter in the world. Security had to escort Dad to his vert. Guess we'll be speaking through lawyers from now on. Looking down at the world from here. It's hard to see the details. People become risk factors. Statistics. <laughs> Far too easily. Omuramba was supposed to provide clean water. Improve lives. It was easier to pretend there wasn't a problem. Easier to believe. The lie was truth. But I don't want to pretend anymore. I will build Leviathan right. No more shortcuts. No more lying just to save face. It won't undo our sins. My sins. But maybe we can still do some good. She overthrew her father, uh, took over the company, so that Leviathan wouldn't end up killing people. It sounded like she regretted covering up Omuramba's failure. She wasn't perfect. Not a paragon, as the Quan believe. But not a monster, either. She tried to make up for her mistakes. And now you know the truth. Uh, as for the data... Leviathan... Uh, yes, uh, it's here. Downloading a copy now. Is something wrong? I think I'll stay here a while longer. There's a lot more data that I want to look through. 
Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Down is always easier than up. Let's speak again when we're back at base. Okay. I'll see you there. Well, after climbing all the way up, why not glide down? Wait, you're going to what? Just thinking about it. Aloy, the outpost is just over there. Are you ready? The rebels aren't going to give up without a fight. Then we'll have to give them one. They didn't stand down when Regala was defeated. I doubt they'll surrender now. What matters is their prisoner Nakala. Maybe she knows where Kavo's squad went. Okay, let's head in then. Don't give up easily. Still, if I get rid of their leader, it might send the others packing. My stash later. Strange. Planks of wood, with nothing on top of it. That's all of them. Our scouts said they saw Nakala tied up at a wood post. Let's look around. Thank you. 
packs full. I'll rest here until you return. Soldiers. I should return them to the grove when I get a chance. There. That's the post. Well, no Nakala, obviously. But maybe the rebels moved her. I can look for tracks. There. Tracks leading away from the post. Where do they There's go? Rope. Just enough to bind someone. Blood. From the rebels or Nikala? Dead end. No. I think there's something under that wood. Take my hand, Nikala. Steady now. Where am I? Chaplain? Is that you? And with an outlander. Whoa. How'd you end up down there? Rebels had me strung up. They thought I'd give up intel about lowland squad movements by letting me bake in the sun. Managed to slip my bonds and make a run for it. They made me pay for that. Last thing I remember was a crack on the head and the taste of dirt. How'd you end up here? We're looking for Kavo. His squad was last spotted leaving this outpost. Yeah, he was here. It was his squad that attacked us on the road. My comrades got away, but I was taken. Kavo tied me to the post himself. If you're looking for him, Chaplain, I'm afraid you'll only find a dead end. His loyalties are clear. Do you know where his squad went? I overheard them mention Fall's Edge. Then we'll... we'll pick the search up from there. I'll go ahead and meet you at Fall's Edge, southwest of here. Dekka, if Kavo attacked her squad... No! He's not lost to us yet. We have to find him and turn him from this path. <sighs> okay. I'll see you there. What about you? That wound needs to be looked at. It'll scar. I just need to rest a bit, then I'll report into the grove. I'm telling you, Bloodhair. The chaplain might not want to hear it, but her grandson is a traitor. I guess we'll see about that. I'm telling the truth. Listen to him, Aroke. Not a chance. He's a traitor. Dekka, what's going on? Aloy, I'm glad you're here. This is Aroke, leader of Fall's Edge. So you've enlisted the Chief's champion in your dull-bladed efforts. You must be Kavo, then. My grandson. And a soldier trying to right his mistakes. Or trying to lure us into a trap. My scouts caught him, sneaking around on the outskirts of the village. I wasn't sneaking around. I was coming to warn you. The rebels are planning an attack. They're going to send a machine straight through this village. I left my post when I realized what they were planning. You have to believe me. Where are the rebels now? They were hunting for the machine north of here. I, I can show you the way. The only thing you'll do is face trial by combat. You betrayed your clan, your chief. Blood and Blades will decide your fate. I'll fight whoever you want, after we stop the attack. Why destroy this village? Regala's defeated. The rebellion is over. Not for some. Losing Regala only gave them one more reason to hate Hikaro. And Hikaro was a lowlander before he was chief. Unlike the desert and sky clans, we've always stood behind him without question. Fall's Edge is a strategic midpoint between the Grove and our capital on the coast. It's true. The others hope that by weakening the Lowland Clan, they'll be able to strike back at Hikaro. 
You said you defected after you found out about the attack. Why'd you change your mind? When I joined the Rebels, I thought Regala was going to lead us into battle against our old enemy, the Karja. But all we've done is kill each other. And for what? Pride? Vengeance? So when my squad leader told us about the mission to destroy this village, I left my post. Don't believe his lies. Anyone who deserted the tribe to join Regala knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. Not everyone. If Kavo is telling the truth, this whole village is in danger. We have to find and stop these rebels. The rebels built a campfire north of the river, near the cliffs. I can show you the way from there. Okay. Open it up or okay? No. I won't give him the chance to escape. The traitor stays here until his trial by combat. Then I invoke blood for blood. I will take Kavo's place until he returns. You're making a mistake, Chaplain. The clan needs your guidance, not the lies of this bare-armed boy. The right has been called. Kavo will go with Aloy. Then I'm going to. If the boy speaks truth, you'll need my blade. If he lies, I'll run him through. I must make arrangements here first. Then I'll bring the boy to the meeting place. Fine. I'll see you there. The campfire that Cavo mentioned should be nearby. They should be here already. Someone's waiting ahead. But not Cavo. Okay. You! Rebels. Friends of Cavo's. showed up. Cavo has some explaining to do. Better wait at the campfire for him and her okay. Stuff for the stash. Found a few of your friends when I got here, Cavo. You're not off to a great start. They must have been out on patrol. I swear on the ten, I didn't know they'd be here. What did I tell you? His lies are an open sore. Better we cauterize it now than let it fester. No! I'm telling the truth! Untie him. As you say. But this is a mistake. And my weapon? If you think... Just give it to him, or okay? We need to get moving.
lead the way. Up this way. Where are you leading us? The rebels are stationed at the nearby cliff falls. I took this path when I left my post. The others won't be expecting anyone to come this way. Or they are, and will be skewered the moment we arrive. There's the cliff falls. And there's no one there. As I suspected. Let's just keep going. I don't like this. everyone no rebels no machine what did i over there by the falls blood of the dead if that thing runs through false edge the village stands no chance then we stop them right here on your lead aloy there. nothing will stand in our way now grab your gear we march on falls edge
We did it. Cavo, you're bleeding. I'll be fine. What matters is the attack was stopped. Because of your warning, you saved many lives today. Come on. Let's get you back to Falls Edge. I guess... I cracked some ribs, too. Go on ahead. I'll see him back to the village. Okay. I'll let Dekka know what happened. Aloy, I saw your deeds at the Grove. Three leave, only you return? What happened? Cavo was telling the truth. The rebels had a behemoth. Cavo was injured in the battle, but we stopped the attack. Aroke... Regrets that he doubted the boy. Your grandson proved himself to be honest and brave, Chaplain. He's loyal to the Lowland. So, you'll release him? Oh, he's earned his freedom. But it'll take many more deeds to earn back the rest of the clan's trust. I'll do whatever it takes. Thank you, Aloy. Indeed. Falls Edge owes you a great debt. May this begin to repay it. Thank you. As soon as you're healed, I have so much to show you. Welcome back, Cavo. Not catch a break from this heat. Be the entrance to the Valley of the Fallen. Marshal Ivira should be around here somewhere. Where's Marshal Ivira? I have a missing Tanakh. We have to go back. You're not going back in. You need a medic. Uh, but, Dax! You saw what happened as clearly as I did. Marshal Vera, I heard you were sent to rescue some Tanakh who went into the valley. I'm guessing you must be one of them. Where are the others? They, they didn't make it. I had to fight off several machines just to get Kanala out. The valley was closed months ago for good reason. Machines have gathered in number as if they're drawn there by something. Not to mention the strange glowing lights off the coast. The valley is cursed. We never should have gone in. Ivira, you were made a marshal at the Cool Root. And you were by Hikaru's side in the final stand against Regala. And you're the one who flew on the wings of the Ten, ended Regala's threat in a single combat. I was just doing what I could to help. In an amazing way, and I saw what you did with my own eyes. Here I thought the Cool Root was the best day of my life, becoming a marshal bearing witness to the vision of unity. But you really outdid yourself against Regala. I have a lot to live up to. You said there are strange lights off the coast. From an island to the south. They appeared one day out of the blue around the same time the machines moved into the valley. There have also been reports of a streak of light that rises and falls in the sky above the island. I saw it on the fourth night. A flame that climbed in the sky until it disappeared among the stars. Is there any way to get to the island? No. The currents between the island and the shore are too strong. You drown for sure. Oh, it's on an island. I wonder if this has something to do with the Zeniths. 
Don't know what any of that's about, but maybe? If the valley's been off limits for months, why did you go in? We wanted to run the trial. The valley is a great test for lowland soldiers. Survive for ten days and nights. Take down any machine that stands in the way. Dax had a plan. We'd hunt down each machine one by one, until we cleared the valley. Earned the clan's respect. But we got separated from Iveka after the third day. Then machines cut us off from the way out. By the time Marshal Avira found us, we were wounded and out of supplies. More machines attacked us as we made our escape. Dax was right behind us, but he couldn't run fast enough. A lot of machines in one place. Sounds bad. I better look into it. See if I can put a stop to it. Then I'll come with you. Fight by your side. No. Better let me take a look first. Trust me, it's for the best. I guess if you insist. Once you're in the valley, head for the Great Falls and the cliff south of the Metal Devil. The machines seem attracted to those sites. Got it. Thanks. We'll rest here a while more, then head for the Medic in Falls Edge. Strike true as the ten, Aloy. Glowing lights. This must be the Zenith base. Looks like they have a shield around the entire place. Of course, they'd make their base on their own private island. Hold on, Beta. We're coming for you soon. But, back to the current problem. I've got to check out the areas that Vera mentioned. Near the big waterfall and south of that horizon ridge. I'll be able to find it when I focus. That's the only image of the dead.
circuits a bit. There. There is clear. Better take a look at that lure. Okay. Let's see if I can turn this thing off. There's data here. Looks like a log. And something called the Julius? Some Zena thing on it? Says local vermin exterminated. Are they attracting machines to kill the traitors here? Well, at least this lure's shut down now. I should head to the cliff, south of the Horus. There might be another lure there. Send this to my stash.
I'll stash this away for later. Another lure. Better deal with it. All right, now to shut this thing down. Another weird log from the Julius. This one mentions a third lure close by. I better check it out. It looks like I was right. The Zenus left these things here to draw in machines and protect the approach to their base. Better fill up while I can. machines before I can shut it off. First, I have to take out the machines, then I can override the lore. able to override the lure now. What's an outlander doing all the way out here? Clearing the valley? You must be one of the missing Tanakh. Everyone thought you were dead. Nearly. Dax and Kanala. Are they... Kanala's alive. Marshal Yvira pulled her out. Speaking of... Aloy! Ivira, couldn't stay away, could you? And miss my chance to hunt the champion in the Valley of the Fallen? Never! And I see you found Eva... Now this looks like a fight. You with me, Marshal? My blade is yours! Of the ten, we get to kill these things? What are they?
Check on you, Becca! I should have learned to go nearby. Make sure my new machines are drawn here. Oh, now we're on me. I can send it to my stash. Gotcha. That should be the last one. And looks like there's a recording here. Hey, shithead. I got a task for you. The Julius is ready to serve! Shut up and do what you're told. Use the indigenous robots to keep this place clear of local vermin. So Eric left a simple AI in charge of the wars. Looks like it shut itself down when I overrode the last one. Hey, well, shithead. I shall let a fear I got a task for you. The Julius is ready to serve! Shut up and do what you're told. Use the indigenous robots to keep this place clear of local vermin. I'll do it myself, but Gerard says I have to stay focused, so have some fun for the both of us, huh? We don't do benefactor visitor. You can count on the Julius. I'll be right back. She needs a medic, but she'll live. Thanks to you. Gotta say, every time we meet is the best day ever for fighting. That battle was something else. And those weird machines. Do you think there'll be more? No. I figured out what was causing the machines to gather in the valley. And put a stop to it. Oh. Good news for the clan, then. You don't want to fight more of those things, Ivira. They're not like other machines. The masters they answer to see people as... inconveniences. They'd kill anyone without a second thought. And eventually I'll have to deal with them. The light's offshore. Is that from them? Yeah. It's a kind of shield to protect the island. The machines drawn to this valley were meant to kill anyone who got close. Meaningless slaughter. But definitely something for a champion, not a marshal. Here, take this then. It might help with what lies ahead. Thank you. The valley should be safe enough for a while. But you have to tell the rest of the Tanakh to stay as far away from that island as possible. By the champion's word. I hope our paths cross again, Aloy. The ground made of metal that Tanakh soldier mentioned. Looks like a carving door, but it's different. There's no way to hack it open. If I can find some other room, I should be able to get data to override some new machines. Survive freezing? So can I. <laughs> this crevice is massive. As if the earth split open fast. I wonder where this leads.
there. Is that a forge? Looks like it's making machine parts. Able to climb them to get to the other side. Gap's too wide. Need to find another way across. Get me up to the gate.
earthquake must have interrupted the process. Just have to expose the core and get those overrides. with this. Store it like Gaia showed me.
Almost there. Let's not do that again. Should get me across. Why the cauldron won't release the tall neck at the core. <laughs> it's missing its head. If I can attach a bit, I can unblock the Should get me to the house.
I can hear the head being repaired. Head's in place. The guy's fixed. Oh, that metal arm's keeping it in place. Maybe if I override the tall neck, the shockwave will break it free. Fresh air again. You isn't too bad either. Mr. Know-it-all is here. You know, you're focused, buddy, who never smiles. I didn't know what to do with him, so I had him wait in your room. Got it. Thanks. Well, Silence, looks like you finally found a door you could open without me. I'm glad it's there, actually. It kept me from having to mingle with the company you keep. But enough prattle. I believe you owe me an explanation. Your plans for the Zenith base? You're right. I do owe you. My spear in your throat for deceiving me again. At the Hades Proofing Lab. I doubt you asked me here for that kind of reckoning. No. Right now, I need your help. So I'm giving you one final chance. But if you ever betray me again, I will kill you no matter what the circumstance. Understood? Very well. Though we'll both face a decidedly short future if you can't get us inside that base. Aloy, your other guest is here. She's, um, coming to you. 
Thanks. Good timing. The truth is, I can't actually get us into the base. But she can. The company you keep is even worse than I thought. Not a fan of surprises, are you? Oh, look. That must be your little invention. Does the weapon work? Without self-destructing? Of course it does. I've eliminated the imperfections and greatly improved its design and output. How can we be sure? Care for a demonstration. Enough, both of you. We're in this together, at least for now. Go talk to Erend. Tell him I said to give you rooms of your own. I'll come see you when I get a chance. Oh, no. You first. Better get everyone in the control room, so Tilda can tell us what she knows about the Zenith base. You know, we've never played machine strike together. Oh, no. <laughs> I got enough trouble with Catalo, always kicking my ass. Who says I'm any good at it? The way my luck goes, I'll bet you're a pro. Did you need something? Bravo. You managed to sway a zenith to your side. Care to explain? Not a chance. I thought you said the weapon was ready. There's always room to optimize. But that's not why you're here. I assume you want to comprehend my undertakings, so ask away. Since when were you so forthcoming? Since you turned this into a waiting game. And as it seems you have found modest success, perhaps I'm willing to be generous. Okay, so your big plan, everything you've been manipulating for the last few months, let me see if I got this straight. You learned about the Zeniths from Hades when you interrogated it. Then you came up with a plan to defeat them by using a Tanakh army and that weapon. And to get the Tanakh to fight for you, you, or rather the sons of Prometheus, armed Regala's rebels with override tech. Did you have an actual question or are you still playing catch up? So all this time, even before I found the coordinates at the Spire, you were out here scheming. Why couldn't you just tell me? When I learned of the Zenith's return to Earth, I laid out my plans. I knew I would one day require an army of overzealous Tanakh to assault the Zenith base. The casualties would be extreme. And I knew you would never allow such a sacrifice no matter how necessary. Thus, I devised a means to remove your interference from the equation at the Hades Proving Lab. You wanted me to surrender to the Zenith at the Hades Proving Lab. They almost killed me. Based on everything I knew about them, I concluded they would find you a useful asset. Thereby keeping you out of harm's way, and more importantly, out of my way. So you really didn't know they had their own clone of Elizabeth? No. Unfortunately, there was no way I could have known that particular detail. Detail? Well, I guess if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here today. Why create the Sons of Prometheus? You didn't need a bunch of Osirum tinkerers to make override tech. They were a necessary safeguard. My time serving Hades in the Eclipse demonstrated the risks of getting directly involved. Through the Sons of Prometheus, I could execute my plans. All while remaining anonymous. Tell me about the weapon. How does it work? I've upgraded the delivery system. It now emits a wave-like effect covering a significant distance. That doesn't fully answer my question. No, but I'd be a fool to reveal its inner workings. After all, why did you withhold your plan for dealing with the Zenith drones? Yes, 
Even you can appreciate the value of secrecy when warranted. Suffice it to say that the weapon will work. The intricacies of how is knowledge that is mine alone. Why help Regala take over? If you wanted an army, you could have just gone to Hakaro. Before Regala's rebellion, Hakaro was only concerned with battling machines and fostering friendships with Akarja. Even if I gained his ear, he would never agree to send his forces to battle a threat he couldn't understand. So helping a bloodthirsty exile was easier? Yes. Exceedingly so. All Regala craved was war against the Karja and anyone who threatens the Tanakht. She would have led the tribe into battle without question, which was precisely what I needed. While I was out there, I had a couple run-ins with the Quen. The tribe from across the ocean. And? Their entire tribe was shaped around the discovery of focuses. One of them, Alva, even joined me here. Don't you want to know more about them? No. They stumbled upon the greatest technological artifact from the ancient world, and what did they do with it? They shrouded the knowledge they unearthed in mysticism and taboo, creating a pantheon out of corporate shields. Yes, well, it also led them to Thebes. Did it now? So those run-ins with the Quinn I mentioned. On one of them, I teamed up with their expedition to search Thebes. We found Pharaoh at the end. You must have needed Omega clearance. So, what was it like? Worse than you can imagine. He single-handedly wiped out collective human knowledge. I'm sure it was still less than he deserved. Let me guess. You would have scraped him into a jar so you could prod his brain, like what you did with Hades. For a start. All right, Silence. I think I've talked to you long enough. I'll let you know when it's time to go. And try not to mess with Tilda while you're in here, okay? I don't need the two of you butting heads. Ah, uh, yes. About your Zenith ally. I wonder if you understand what kind of person you're dealing with. For someone to live as long as she has, outlast as many calamities, well, your goals may be aligned now, but I'd watch for the moment they diverge. Yeah, I'm aware. Reminds me of someone else I know. Survival is only a necessity to my greater purpose, Aloy. I'd hoped you'd recognize that by now. Do you know something or not? Oh, I know a great deal of things. But on this... Just call it... a feeling. Oh, a feeling? You mean you finally had one? Huh. Guess even you can change, Silence. impossible look deeper and then fight like you can win i will rust now and always focus it's for all I used to think no Nora would ever accept one, but Varl did. Even when he was overwhelmed, he refused to let me push him away. I failed Varl at Gemini. I should have pushed harder, I should have done more.
With Regal out of the way, Hikaru and Tanakh, they're safe. The future's up to them now. I do wish they'd drop all the honorary names they've given me. But if I've learned anything about them, that is not a battle I am going to win. I was thinking we could spar for a bit. When you have the time. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, of course. It might be a way to deal with my... anger. Yeah, beating the crap out of me makes you feel better. I'm all for it. Aloy. It appears that we have some interesting new guests. I'm glad to see you're okay, though. I heard you gave the Tanakh something to talk about. I was half expecting you to burst in through the ceiling riding a Sunwing. Sorry to disappoint. Ready to head over to the Zenith base? Whatever comes, we will endure. Thoughts on our new Zenith acquaintance? I'd say she smells like death, but even death smells of something. She's more like a cold piece of metal. Bent on repelling all semblance of life. She's... definitely different. Have you talked to any of our new... friends? Aaron and I tried speaking to Silens, but apparently our... tribal prattle is unnecessary. Charming, isn't he? I have to go. I trust you to keep things civil around here? I'll make sure Aaron doesn't punch Silence in the face, if that's what you mean. Thanks. Aloy! You came back with some interesting... friends. Wish I could say we don't need them. But Silence and Tilda are here for a reason. Yeah. Enemy of my enemy and all that, right? Right. Doesn't look like any of our guests are making trouble. Yet. So, Catalo tells me you flew. Well, that's new. I've been busting my bolts trying to learn to read. You're, you're out there having all the fun. Don't worry. You'll be getting all the fun you can handle soon. With the Zeniths. Looking forward to it. I guess Silence is keeping to himself, as usual. I was hoping you'd give me an excuse to hammer his sorry ass to the ground. Please don't. You telling me you wouldn't want to get just one good hit on that smug face of his? After everything he's done? Sure. Later. Right now, he's got something we need. What's wrong with your shoulder? Yeah, it hurts a little. Yeah, maybe a lot. What'd you do? Well, I tried to arm wrestle with Catalo. Yeah, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. I was just curious to see if that new arm of his was as strong as it looked. Turns out it really is. You, uh, talked to Tilda at all? I tried. I don't think even a hot forge could melt that ice. And you say she wants to help? I think so. Well, let's hope. I better get going. Oh, you know where to find me. The rebel holdouts can't be allowed to continue their pointless fight. Haven't seen you since the battle at the Grove. How are you holding up? I saw you fly on the wings of the Ten. And paralyze Regala's army with lightning. I would say that I am... Inspired. Thank you, I guess. It is I who should be thanking you. Things will get ugly once the Zenus realize we're in their base. You'll need every trick you've ever learned. I would have it no other way. Many soldiers died in the old world to make sure we stood here today. We will endure on their behalf. Though, I am curious how you intend to defeat the Zenith's defenses without an army of our own. Leave that to me. 
Just make sure you're ready to fight. As you say. You have more than earned my trust. Did you meet Tilda? There is something about her that... doesn't seem natural. I wouldn't be surprised if my sword went through her and... and she didn't bleed at all. Honestly, with her, nothing would surprise me. Anything new going on I should know about? The Quen has been more... insistent than usual, asking about the visions at the Grove. Her pursuit of knowledge is relentless. The Ten would have a hard time fighting her off. Just think of her like one of your chaplains. Yes. Only more persistent. I bet people are curious about that new arm of yours. None more than our Quen ally, I assure you. She couldn't wait to take it apart and figure out how it works. I gave her the data I used to build the thing, hoping that would satisfy her curiosity instead. Good luck with that. Your people keep mentioning the Wings of the Ten. What exactly does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings and leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess. It is why the challengers leap into the arena during the cool route. And now, you have done it. <laughs> like the deeds of the Ten themselves, it will never be forgotten. So, tell me, how did it feel? I won't lie. Pretty good. I can only imagine. I have to go. But I'll be briefing everyone on the plan soon. Understood. Aloy, do you have a moment? You... you flew? Kotalo told me! And took out Regala's machines? You know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. I saw we have visitors and a new weapon. Does this mean we're ready to take the fight to the Zeniths? Almost. Oh, and I wanted to give you this. For helping me get the data on Leviathan. I didn't really know what to give you, so I asked Zoe what you might like. Thanks, Alva. I'll put it to good use. You sure you're okay going on this mission? I know things must be happening pretty fast for you. Uh, I've already braved oceans and madmen who thought they were ancestors reborn. Why not a few immortals with lethal drones at their command too? Guess the more the merrier. I suppose you saw that Tilda is here, our very own Zenith. I almost went up to her. To ask her, well, every question I've ever had about the legacy. Every diviner I know would kill to get five minutes with one of the old ones. But now that she's here, all I feel is a vague unease. I don't know if I'm scared of finding out more uncomfortable truths, or just scared of her. Probably both. I hope our new guests have been behaving. The silence. He's the one who built the weapon that can take down Zenith shields? He is. Though I wouldn't expect him to answer any questions about it. He refuses to dole out his secrets to us lesser mortals. Oh. You know that special part of us that makes us warm, kind, welcoming? Our... spirit? Yeah. He was born without that. Have you looked through the data we recovered on Leviathan? There is much to sort through still, but I believe we'll be able to get it operational and turn back the floods. And I've given more thought to everything we've uncovered about the Ancestors. The Overseers would have us believe they were infallible paragons. But Pharaoh wasn't. Not even close. His greed led to machines that devoured the world. The archive of the Old One's knowledge destroyed, just to erase his mistakes. 
So, when we learned that Eileen had a hand in covering up hundreds of deaths, I started to think they were all the same. Selfish, egotistical, cruel. But, in the end, it's not that simple. The truth isn't a straight line of ink on a crisp scroll. It's a splatter, smudged, and faded on stained parchment. I wish Morquen could see that, instead of looking the other way, or twisting the truth to serve their own schemes. I doubt Bohai would agree with you. No, nor the rest of the Board of Overseers. As Eileen said, it's easier to believe the lie is truth, but it's worth fighting for. And this Diviner, at least, won't settle for anything less. For that, I thank you, Aloy. Anything new around here? Katalo showed me the schematics for his new arm. I recall reading about robotic limbs within the Legacy, but I never thought I'd see one in action. Technology like that would be treasured back home. Think of what it could do for injured workers or soldiers. But knowing the Imperial family, they would use it for different purposes. Their own. Replacing body parts as they grow older. Like the Zenith. Exactly. I need to wrap up a few things, but stay sharp. I'll be ready when you call. Oh, I guess this doors up his things. Hey, boy. If you were listening to this, then, um, things didn't go as planned at Gemini. I know you'll keep your promise. Which means I must be dead. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? But, uh, what's happened since you found me in that ectogenic chamber? Thank you, Eloy. You've been... My shelter. And I would risk it all again. To be by your side. I know you'll find a way forward. That's what you do. Guess you wait, Farrell. We're taking those space lights down. There you are. Well done, Aloy. Despite my reservations, you managed to secure Silence and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. I've been thinking about what you said, at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that, wasn't it? Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What happened? I was an orphan. I had always been alone. By my thirties, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did, but as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more. And 
So we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A, a second chance, yes. I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you, a woman who has carved her own remarkable path, beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon, I knew I had to help you. To do right by her. Why did you make the data channel look like your house? I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. You said before that you're not like the other Zeniths. That you never were. But you went along with all of their plans. Out of necessity. I'm not proud of it. But complicity became a means of survival. Both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to. But I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could. Hence the data channel with Beta the secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away? I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant, visionary. She cared so deeply for the world, for the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think, in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the Proving Lab, after Farzineth's attempt to steal Gaia. Yes. A most unpleasant conversation. She said something. After the call, I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did she? All this time, thank you for telling me. I've always hated that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled your friends. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta in Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island, heading for space. It was likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space-worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment we've learned our lesson. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No. And he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields en masse. How many of them are in the base? Ten, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. So, Eric. 
Was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandoned human combatants in favor of automated warfare, he found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. But on Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. All of us try believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world. Then they would be quite disappointed to meet him, though I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Farzineth. What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician, able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. It was his decision to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough, and the others. I would very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him. When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a Zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. Lights, shows, gambling, every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths. For Baina. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amassed their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Her father had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette branding herself a life designer. Someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. What, like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of Ruthless. That much is true. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess, all selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. There were a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. And I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity.
Okay. I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle. More than once, I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that. Okay. Maybe it's time to get everyone together so Tilda can brief us. But is there anything I should handle before that? All right, people. I need you up in the control room right away. Okay, everyone. We all know what's at stake. Beta, Gaia, not to mention life on Earth. Now, it might seem like the Zeniths are invincible, but they're not. We've got what it takes to break into their base and defeat them. We even have one of them on our side. Tilda, show us the base. It is constructed atop the ruins of an ancient military facility on an island to the southwest. I can get us inside. To this location. Undetected. How exactly? You'll know when you need to. Once inside, our goal will be this structure. The launch tower. Gaia and Beta are being held at the top. But along the way, we will face overwhelming resistance. Most importantly, from Gerard, Eric, and the others. But also- Once I take away their shields, we should be able to deal with them. But it will be easier to deploy the device if someone else is carrying it. I'll need a strong back. Carry stuff? Yeah, I can do that. Even if your device works, there will still be Spectre drones, scores of them. If only we had an army to fight them. I've got that under control. You'll know when you need to. All right. We'll meet up again just before we go in. Where's the best place to rendezvous? On the coast, just across from the island. Once there, I'll show you the way. Okay. I'll let you know when I arrive at the rendezvous point. And then you can join me. In the meantime, do whatever you need to prepare. Understood? You two? A minute? Tilda helped me get in touch with Beta, and she told me something important. There's an installation inside the base. It's called a regulator. Here. Once we're inside, I need you two to split off from everyone else and destroy it. So you'll have to bring explosives. This will help stop the drones. Everything depends on it. Are you with me? After that, I want you to find a way to infiltrate the Zenith network. How? Go over all the data that Beta left behind. She knew how to do it, I'm sure of that. All right, but why? Uh, what am I trying to do? Find information about the Zeniths. Anything Tilda's not telling us. Silence is right about one thing. There's no way we can take her on her word. I'll do my best. Keep her safe, okay? On my life. Remember, 
We need to get Solon's weapon to the Zenith. We're finally doing this. Never thought I'd be off on a mission to take down a bunch of immortals from the stars. I can hear the drinking songs already. Oh, earlier you mentioned something about Tanakh rebels and the Asuram, but we never really talked about it. I'm just saying, if you want to discuss it, you, know, you, you let me know. If that one's not working right, you can have one of my spare focuses, you know. Yeah, little bugger's got some personality, that's all. Save my butt with those spectres. Wouldn't feel right to leave it behind now. You know, besides, it, uh, you know, it goes with my outfit. Wouldn't want to spoil your look. Faro made the right call, you know, bringing you here. Thanks. Yeah, Varl. You know, I never knew he had a sister. I found out a few days before you guys went to... to Gemini. I was... Uh, well, to be honest, I was terrified I'd screw up the mission somehow. So he sat me down for a drink. Just one, mind you. And we talked about family. Vala, Ursa, loss and revenge. And how you helped us. You know, we never did get that drink you promised back in the Embrace. And you never told me exactly how your sister escaped the Mad Sun King. I guess we never got round to it. World ending and all. No time like the present, though. If you're up for it. You think it's time for us to finally have that drink? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh. So, how did Ursa escape Mad Sun King Jaron's palace? <laughs> well, uh, first she had to survive the Sun Ring. See, during the war, the Karja threw a prisoner a day in there. And, you know, for what? To die as sacrifices, fighting machines in a pit. Thinking somehow that was going to appease all the other deranged machines in the world? Ha! And when it was Ursa's turn, the Karja thought she'd go down if they threw a big machine at her. Oh, but she didn't. Yeah, she defeated all of them. Even got some of Jaron's kestrels for good measure. And the mad Sun King was impressed, I guess. Thought it'd be funny to have her run around his palace as a servant. He enjoyed humiliating her that way. I remember you telling me something about that. That's how she met Avad. He helped her escape. Yeah, but, but what no Karja scroll will ever tell you is how the young prince snuck Ursa out of the palace. He knew their best chance was to get Ursa to blend in, so <laughs> he got her everything she needed to disguise herself as a Karja noblewoman. And yeah, perfumes, veils, and all. I get the feeling she wasn't too happy with that. Oh man, Ursa would have rather fought her way out of that palace with her bare hands than put on all of that Karja eye paint. But Avad insisted it was the only way, so she agreed under one condition. Avad had to dress up as well. She made Avad dress up like a noblewoman? As perfumed and powdered as a babe. Ursa said he looked better like that than he ever did in a crown. That would, uh, definitely make for an interesting sight. Oh, I worked like a charm, too. Not only did they make it out of the palace, they paid a traveling merchant to get Ursa to the border, and none were the wiser. <sighs> you were right. That was a story best told over a drink. All good stories are. I guess I should get going. I'll see you at the rendezvous point. With my hammer ready. I wouldn't have it any other way. I hope everybody's ready for this. Fighting the Zeniths isn't going to be easy. Aloy. 
Nothing you do ever is. At least, now you don't have to do it alone. Thanks. Everyone here... Training, working together. If it weren't for Varl... None of it would have happened. You know... There was this one night... Right before Varl left with you to go to Gemini. He realized I was having trouble sleeping. I was nervous about the mission. To be honest, I think we both were. So... He asked me to join him in Gaia's dome. He brought up this hologram of Earth that you two found back in the Zenith launch facility. We sat there. Just... looking at it. I thought about how Plainsong was just a speck on that great sphere. How every corner of it must be teeming with life. And any fears I had about our mission were gone. I miss him terribly. I know. You and Aaron seem to be on better terms now. He may have terrible taste in music, but he did apologize for mocking my tribe. And that ale he keeps raving about isn't half bad. I still plan on beating that stubborn face of his to break our sparring stalemate. Try not to hurt him too bad. I should go. I'll let you know when I'm ready to head to the base. Before you do, there is one favor I would ask of you. What is it? You placed this focus in my care, and gave me the highest calling an Utaru has ever known. If I should fall in battle, I'd like you to be the one to bury my seed pouch. For the both of us. So... Make sure you stay alive to do so. Let's just try to all come back home. Okay? You nervous? I'd be lying if I said I'm not slightly apprehensive. The plan will work if we all focus on our assignments. Right. Once all this is over, will you go back across the ocean? I don't know. The more I think about it, the more worried I become. If I go back, I don't even know if they'd let me keep this focus you gave me. Or what they do to me for reading what is clearly forbidden data. Even if I somehow were allowed to carry on my duties as a diviner, would I be willing to let the truths I've learned about the ancestors be buried away by the Board of Overseers? Would I dare challenge them and risk my family's safety? Or... losing Fadera? The rest of us should be enough of a distraction to the Zeniths for you to hack into their network undetected. But you'll have to be quick, in case they do. Uh, what exactly do you expect me to find, Aloy? I don't know. The truth, if we're lucky. Who's this Federa you mentioned? She... is another diviner. One of our best. We used to be rivals at the Academy. <laughs> I hated her guts. But apparently there is a fine line between hate and love. We became very close, and then I was assigned to the expedition. She promised she'd wait for me, no matter how long it took. Well, that was smart of her. She won't do any better. Yeah, I don't know about that. I do. I want you to know I'm glad you're with us, Alva. Whatever happens, I'm grateful that the legacy brought us together. I never thought I'd get to actually meet an ancestor. Come on, do I look that old? Katala will protect you inside the Zenith base. I'm not afraid. I know Katalo will fulfill his duty, as will I. If we die doing so, at least it'll be alongside a friend. I'd rather you both stay alive, if you don't mind. We'll try and keep that in mind. 
I need to get going. I'll be at the rendezvous point. May truth lead us to victory. Welcome back, Aloy. Would you like to continue our chat? I should be going. I'll be making final preparations. Aloy, something else? I'll be going. As you wish. Ha! So, how are we feeling about the mission? I do not know everything that you have planned. But it doesn't matter. All that remains is to follow you to the end. Whatever that will be. Thank you, Katalo. I'm glad all this brought us together. You brought us together. And I am grateful too. Now that training time is over, what's on your mind? The Bulwark, the Kulrut, and how we need another miracle if we're to survive the Zenith base. I'll try not to let you down. I know you will not. We didn't really get to talk about what happened at Gemini. There was nothing more to say. If he were to knock, Varl's bravery would have earned him sacred burial at the Grove, among the most distinguished of our tribe's warriors. His deeds were worthy of the Ten. When the fight is done, I will have the Inkers etch his memory on my skin, so that it may live on. I'm sure he'd be honored. I'll see you soon, then. It will be my honor. I see you've got your new arm ready to go. Yes. It still feels strange. I've gotten used to the absence, but no matter. I'm sure I will need it before the attack on the Zenith base is through. This will break my fall. I should take care of everything I can before calling in the others to attack the Zenith base. Okay, everyone. I'm at the rendezvous point. It's time to rescue Beta and Gaia. Understood, Aloy. We're on our way. Aloy. Where are the others? Not far behind. Egghead here couldn't stand traveling with the pack. Are we all here? Then let's begin. tunnel. An ancient escape route from the ruins on the island. When I realized it ran all the way across the water, I, I thought it might prove useful to come and go undetected. So I concealed it from the others. Shall we?
wish there was a less pungent way to get way inside the base. Agreed. There's the launch tower. That plane offers a little cover, so the only viable path is through there. There will be specters guarding it, and many more can be deployed from those hangars. All right. Alva, Catalo, get to it. Where are they going? Somewhere important. Erend, you're with me. You guys? Take the high ground, in case we need covering fire. Tactically sound, I suppose. What will she do? There's a sensor node nearby. If I hack into it, I should be able to scramble the network and keep you undetected. But not for long. Then we should proceed. One more thing. Open up the channel to beta. Audio only. We're here, and we're coming for you. You know what to do, right? As long as you hold up your end. We will. See you soon. Be careful. Let's go. <clears throat> Get to the launch tower as quickly as possible. I'll do my best to conceal our intrusion. Beware, Eloy. Spectres ahead. Company. Follow my lead. That's what I do. I should hit it with plasma. I do. There's a cave up there that might get us through that ridge. Let's climb up to it.
Ethan! What's in this backpack, metal bricks? Aloy, Alva and I are closing in on the regulator. Keep me posted. It's creepy. In here. Don't worry, I'll protect you. There's a lot of dead machines on this island. We killed a great many when we landed here. Their salvage may prove useful to you now. Another specter. Sneak or fight, you choose. in a way. Stormbird carcass should get us over the gap. I hate stormbirds. But I guess, uh, yeah, dead one's handy enough. Now, you remember the good old days when our only worry was whether Meridian would be destroyed? You know, instead of a whole world? Oh, yeah. Good times. Ugh. Oh, more spectres. I'll attack when you could hit the desert. Them. At least 
Let's push on. I'll take this one. Any good look? A little. Here, up this rock. We're gonna have to climb around this corner. Well, I'll try not to complain. I can see the way forward. Keep moving. Go as fast as we can. You all right? Sort of. You want to target me, do ya? How many spectres do the Zeniths have? More than we want to fight at once, that's for sure. This thing? I guess we're not going for stealth, babe. And now's a good time to hit him in the plasma. Oh. Hit the weak spot. Hey, you want me to hit you again? Looks like the others have things under control. Come on, up the slab. Do it. Blow the regulator. A moment while I ignite the charges. Yeah, I'll finish. <sighs> Alpha and Catalo did their job. Now it's Beta's turn. Uh, Aloy? I think we're in trouble. Whatever you plan to do to stop those specters, you better do it now. I'm not doing anything. Beta will. She just needs a little time. Time that we don't have. Come on, Vita. Come on, come on, come on. What is that? Our army. I think you got their attention. Very clever. You had Beta inject Hephaestus into the base's printer matrix. Which is faster and more powerful than any cauldron. And now it can crank out machines to its heart's content. Get to the launch tower before this whole place becomes a war zone. <clears throat> Your maneuver, as clever as it is, means that Hephaestus has escaped containment. It will no doubt flee back to the Cauldron Network. We grabbed it once, we'll get it again. Or we'll find a way to replicate its functionality, perhaps. With the Apollo database. we don't make it. I just have one regret. What is it? That we had to do all this climbing. That a big rock might give us a bridge to get up and through. Gotcha. A 
Plasma will do a lot of damage here. I think they can handle it. Boy, did you pick the wrong spot. Come on, let's cross over. Use acid to corrode it. This way. Big jump. To the right, I think. And now to the left. You can get to the launch tower through the hangar up ahead. I'm heading over to join you now. The hangar's in bad shape, but I can see the way in. Hurry, Another Aloy. One. seen it space stuff to a network node. I'm trying to get in. Keep at it. We're almost to the tower.
been causing all the fuss. Tilda's little pet. Silence! Zenith inbound! Can we drop their shields, please? I'm powering it up. Stay still. This is pointless! You can't hurt us. Face it. Your worms that ooze to the cracks into our basement. Silence! One moment more. But I might just spare you if you give up Tilda. I think it's safe to say she's forfeited her share of our operation. Permanently. Ah, there. No? Nothing. Fine. All right, people. Light them up! Are we supposed to be scared? take long before he preps the shuttle for launch. Then he'll be able to take Beta and Gaia into orbit and onto the Odyssey beyond our reach. We gotta go through there? I failed to see another option. Then we'll carve a path. Ready? Stop, Gerard. I gotta get to the top of the tower and free Beta. Trust me, you're gonna wish you had one. <laughs>
Sister, I'll regroup with the others and make sure they're all right. Looks like the machine's inspectors have almost wiped each other out. What was that? Aloy, Gerard just activated the self-destruct failsafe on the printing matrix. He's taking control of a number of systems. Including the lift? I'm afraid so. He's restricted its access to the top. You'll have to climb from there. I have to go. I almost have. Zenith. Dead, I think. Izo told me you got Eric. Good work. Yeah. Thanks. I guess only Tilda and Gerard are left then. Aloy, you there? Listen, I got into the network, but only for a minute before I was shut out. I found a bunch of flight plans and trajectories, as if the Zeniths were planning to leave Earth. It doesn't make any sense. I know. But there's more. The files I found have a lot of references to something called Nemesis. Whatever it is, the Zeniths are afraid of it. Alba? Alba! What's going on here? Maybe Beta can help me figure it out. Are you okay? Look, I, I know you've been through a lot, but you have to help me access the Zenith network. I need to see their files, anything referring to the word Nemesis. Okay. 
Over there. The systems are down all over the base. I should be able to take advantage of... Yes, Nemesis. Here. There's something in deep space. It's following the Zeniths to Earth. Look. Escape vectors. Alva tried to warn me about this. The Zeniths aren't planning to stay here. It's a machine of some kind. O or a swarm of them. The energy readings are... astronomical. Aloy, I don't think a natural disaster destroyed the Zenith colony on Sirius. This thing did. Earth isn't a new home for them. It's a way station. They're on the run. I see you've been busy. And you've been lying. Nemesis, what is it? It is us. The minds of Far Zenith. Or failed copies of them, anyway. Back on Sirius, some of my peers weren't satisfied with physical immortality. They wanted digital transcendence. A way to upload their minds into any form, organic or mechanical. Nemesis was a failed experiment to that effect. Abandoned, but never erased. An immense database of our memories, emotions, and prejudices left to fester. And it destroyed your colony? We didn't realize it had gained sentience until it broke containment. It had everything it needed from our memories. Security protocols, system specs, override codes. It hacked everything before we knew what hit us. Then it took over our printing facilities, allowing it to gain any machine form it needed to wipe us out. But why? Imagine being trapped alone for decades with only the twisted echoes of megalomaniacs for company. It hates us for abandoning it to that prison. And now that it's free, it will do anything to destroy us. Including denying us a safe harbor on Earth. The extinction signal that woke Hades. You didn't send it. Nemesis did. Finally, you understand. And when that failed, it launched from Sirius to finish the job itself. Which is why we must flee to a random planet circling a random star somewhere it can never find us. With Gaia, so you can build yourself a new world. That's the plan. Even now. Earth is finished, Aloy. Nemesis will scour it of life to deny its creators a viable home. But Elizabeth's dream won't die. You'll come with me to the stars. And with Gaia, we'll create a new world. Together, where that monstrosity could never find us. What? No. I loved Elizabeth. More than you could ever know. And I let her stay behind to die with the rest of humanity. A mistake I have regretted for a thousand years. Now she stands before me again. Not some inferior copy, but her best possible self. So I'm not asking. You're coming with me. It may seem harsh now, but you'll forgive me in a few centuries. You can't force me, Tilda. Your shield is gone. I have something better. Spectre Prime. To me.
as she tried to take you. And she told you about Nemesis. So you've known all along? From Hades, yes. Along with data on how to circumvent the Zenith shields. Everything I did to create the Rebel Army was based on that knowledge. To reach this place, this moment. And you couldn't just tell me? Come now, Eloy. You're the last person to act sensibly in the face of impossible odds. When I learned of Nemesis from Hades, I saw the pieces on the board and how to play them. And in that same moment, I knew it was a game you would never play. That you would interfere and attempt to save the Tanakht. I was correct, to a point. You ruined my plans, but brought your own to fruition. The end result is the same. We're here. And now it's time for me to leave this doomed planet behind. To seize the Odyssey and the Apollo database and begin a new chapter in my pursuit of knowledge, one with infinite possibilities. You can join me if you so desire. You've more than earned your place. Unlike Tilda, I'm extending a polite invitation. You're going to just take off and abandon everything? Stay. Help me fight that thing. Perhaps Tilda didn't adequately define the threat. Nemesis can't be stopped. It destroyed a highly advanced Zenith colony in a matter of hours. What hope does this primitive tribal Earth have? If you brought Gaia, you wouldn't be abandoning life. You'd be saving a seed for a new world. Just as Elizabeth did. It's the choice she made. The sacrifice of all that is for the hope of what might be. If she were here in your place, she would board that shuttle, Eloy. Found her. Is she hurt? Still on her feet. Thank the turn. Goodbye, Silence. She looks okay. She looks victorious. As always. Eloy. You did it. Where's he going? As far away as anyone can go. Oh. Are you sure? You're staying. For a time. You people are going to need all of the help you can get. Does anyone else need a drink? Not if it's that ale of yours. Uh, uh, I'd be fine with a nap. Excellent idea. Uh, I hope it's really over this time. There's another battle ahead, Elizabeth. Very different than the one you fought. It's not about the distant hope of creating a new world. 
about preserving the one we have. My friends have a new mission. To spread the word and ask for help. They've taken it in stride. I think it's because they've always known what I've only just started to understand. That the people of this world have the strength to fight any battle. The ingenuity to solve any problem. The courage to overcome any obstacle. And the resilience rise after any setback. As for me, I can't say I'm not afraid. What lies ahead will be harder than anything we've faced before. But I know I can put the fear aside. Because for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm not alone.